speaking. Oh, Sherry. I'm glad you called. Oh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some client of mine wants me to locate a missing girl. He doesn't care what it costs, so naturally I'm going to shoot the works. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the killer's key. It is early afternoon in New York, and in a shabby rooming house in midtown Manhattan, a nervous young man named Larry Gordon gives himself a dose of artificial courage. <laughs> Then, deciding further treatment is indicated, he starts pouring again. Who is it? Me, Larry. Open up. Wait a minute, Claire. Did you get them? Everything. You, you fly to Chicago. And there I made a reservation for you on the California Limited. What name did you use? Larry Holcomb. Good. When's the plane leave? 8.25 tonight. Couldn't you get me out sooner? No. Listen, Larry, I, I still think you're making a mistake. Running away is no solution. Are you crazy? Maybe this isn't as bad as you think. It's worse. If Hunt ever lays his hands on me, that's it. I think you're wrong. Look, I worked for the man for eight years. I know how his mind operates. I never should have opened my yacht to those treasury boys in the first place. You had to, darling. Why? Was someone twisting my arm? They got enough on him to send him up for ten years. But without you, they've got no case. And don't think that Mr. Hunt doesn't know it. Now, if you want to help me pack... Larry. You think you could have been followed? No. No, I, I was very careful. Who is it? Kemper. Internal Revenue. Oh, just a minute, Mr. Kemper. Look, sweetie, they'll be awful sore if they know I told you where I was. What do you want me to do? Get in the kitchen and for Pete's sake, be quiet. All right, darling. I'm coming, Mr. Kemper. Hello, Larry. Mr. Hunt. Yes. But I thought it was... I hope you'll forgive the deception. I did it very well, don't you think? Kemper, Internal Revenue Department. You know, the stage may have lost a great talent. Listen, Mr. Hunt. I'm afraid I haven't time, Larry. I'm pretty busy these days combing internal revenue men out of my hair. I wasn't going to testify against you. You weren't? No, no, I was beating it. See, I, I, I've got the tickets right here. So you were bound for California, huh? In my humble opinion, you couldn't have chosen better. Where were you planning to stay? Why? Well, uh, someone should cancel the reservation. Since you're going elsewhere. No, no, don't. Have a pleasant journey, my boy. I'd like to see Mr. Hunt, please. Who are you? A Sergeant Corbett. You don't look like a soldier to me. You're right. I'm with the police. Where's Hunt? Well, it's like this, Sergeant. Uh, Bruce, did you see... Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't realize you were entertaining. He ain't so entertaining. You Charles Hunt? That's right. I'm Sergeant Corbett, homicide. How morbid. Well, somebody's got to do the job, you ever hear of a fellow named Larry Gordon? Yes, of course. He works for me. 
Or should I say, he once did. Why? Well, I'm being investigated on an income tax matter, as you may have heard. Yeah, I've heard. And since Larry's going to testify against me, naturally I don't consider him in my employ. Well, he won't need the job anyhow. Pardon? He was knocked off at three this afternoon. I can't believe it. Well, take my word for it. I saw the body. And I have an idea you saw it even before I did. You're not serious. I certainly am. We got enough evidence. Evidence? Yes. You see, by an odd coincidence, Larry's girlfriend, Claire Marlowe, was in the kitchen when you gunned him. Is that what Miss Marlowe claims? Well... Well, what? Well, it's the way we figure it. We found her fingerprints. You're evading the question. Has Miss Marlowe accused me? Well, I, I haven't spoken to her yet. Why not? She disappeared. She must have been scared to death. The fact remains, until you discover Miss Marlowe, you have absolutely no case. Don't worry, we'll find her. And when we do... And when you do, give me a call. Okay, hon, I'll be seeing you shortly. And then we'll see her. You're creating a draft, Sergeant. Well, Bruce? You heard. How can I help it? I'm not deaf. What do you think? I think when they find Claire Marlowe, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes. On the other hand, suppose I find her first. Who was that private detective Logan mentioned the other day? You mean Mike Waring? See the one they call the Falcon? Yeah. Well, uh, be a good boy and look up his address. I think I've got a case for him. the situation, Mr. Waring. So you see my problem. No, I'm afraid I don't, Mr. Hunt. Isn't it obvious? I want you to locate this Claire Marlowe. You said the police are looking for him. Unfortunately, I haven't much confidence in them. Mm -hmm. You're guilty of Larry Gordon's murder? But there's another side to the coin. If Miss Marlowe saw someone else, she can establish my innocence. Yeah, I suppose that's true enough. What if the police find her first? So much the better. I just want the additional insurance. In my position, I need it. All right, Hunt. I'll do what I can. That's all I ask. You do what you can. And from that point on, it's up to me. Yeah? You the superintendent? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. wonder if you could give me some information about one of your tenants. Who? Claire Marlowe. Hmm. You a cop? Why? So I told the other fella everything I knew. What other fella? Hmm? Tall, thin fella. About your size. Oh, you must mean Sergeant Corbett. Yep, that's his name. Mm-hmm. Well, now that you've told Corbett, why not tell me? I don't know nothing. Came home yesterday like she was scared of something, went right to her room... How long did she stay? Oh, maybe 10, 15 minutes. Did she have a grip with her when she left? Nope. Just a pocketbook. And she didn't say where she was going? Nope, and I didn't ask. I believe a fellow should mind his own... If it ain't one thing, it's another. Excuse me a second. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Well, what do you know? Special delivery from Claire Marlowe. Yeah, let me see that. Hey, what you doing? Uh, just a minute. Dear Herman, please don't tell anyone you've heard from me, anyone at all. I wonder if you'd be good enough to do me a favor. I've made arrangements with North American Van Lines to move my stuff on Wednesday. They know where to deliver it. My bank book is in the upper right-hand drawer of my dresser. If you take it with the enclosed withdrawal slip, I'm sure you'll have no trouble getting the money. Will you please bring it over to me at the Kenton Hotel. I'm using the name Claire O'Brien. Yeah, why does she want to use a name like that for? Kenton Hotel, then. Hey, where are you going? I have to report to my client. You've been a great help, Herman. Thanks a million. Bruce? Yeah? I believe that's the phone. I believe you're right. Don't you think you should answer? 
What's the point, Mr. Hunt? It's probably for you. You know something, Bruce? I'm beginning to dislike your attitude. Now answer the phone. I still say it's a waste of time. Yeah? I'd like to talk to Gerald Hunt, please. Who wants him? Mike Waring. Hold it. But I tell you, it's for you. Who is it? The Falcon. All right. Oh, uh, I don't think I'll be needing you anymore today. You mean you want me to leave? That's what I want. Well, far be it for me to hang around when I'm not wanted. Hello? I've got good news for you, Hunt. Really? Really. I've located Claire Marlowe. That is wonderful. She's staying at the Kenton Hotel. She's registered under the name of Claire O'Brien. I needn't tell you how happy I am with your services, Mr. Waring. Oh, I was lucky. Let's say we both were. You may have been fortunate to find Claire, but I was lucky to find you. I would have had a difficult time of it without you. I'll think nothing of it. When are you planning to see Claire? Immediately. You're familiar with the old proverb, he who hesitates is lost. Well, in my position, I can't afford to waste a second. Goodbye, Mr. Waring. Thanks ever so much. since Mike Waring reported to his client, Gerald Hunt, where Claire Marlowe could be found. And now in that young lady's hotel room... All right, all right, you guys. Come on, let's hurry it up, get out of here. All right, oh, Davis, see if you can find any prints around, though I doubt it. Can I move the body now, Sarge? Oh, you better wait for Lewis. He may want some more pictures. Right. Hey, Levy, how you doing on that? Okay, okay. Oh, you boys carry on. I'll get it. I'd like to... Well, Sergeant Corbett... Hey, what are you doing here? Well, I came to see Claire Marlowe. Okay. Look. Oh, no. Oh, yes. Well, is this close enough, or would you like to hold her hand? No, I don't think she'd get a kick out of it. Neither do I. What'd you want with her? That's a long story. Well, I never knew you to tell any other kind, so let's get started. Well, a client of mine wanted me to find her. And you did. I was lucky. I wonder. Who's your client? Well, I'd rather not say. So you'd rather not say, huh? Look, Lunkhead, an innocent girl has been murdered. Nobody knew where she was hiding out. And if you found her... All right, her... all right. You don't have to draw me a diagram. I was responsible. Yes, indeed. You set her up for a clay pigeon. I've known stupid jerks in my time, but of all... Look, never mind the name, Sergeant. I can think of a million to call myself. Well, who's your client? Or maybe I can guess. Well, don't bother. Look, Mike, don't try to hold out on me. I'm not going to. I admit I was the patsy in this case. You were the patsy? What about her? Well, I know, I know. But someone's going to pay for it. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to have a word with my client. After that, you can have him. Well, frankly, I doubt it will be much left. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. Yeah? Is Hunt in? Who are you? Never mind. I'll announce myself. Now, wait a it's sec. All right, Bruce. Come on in, Mr. Waring. Uh, try and keep me out. Bruce, get the gentleman a drink. Sure. What do you have, Buster? A little privacy. Suppose you leave me alone with your boss. What orders I take, I take from him. You better give him his walking papers, Hunt. Really, Mr. Waring? Aren't you being a bit high-handed? Tell him to blow. All right, Bruce. You may go. Well, as long as you put it that way. All right, now, what was the idea, Hunt? What was what idea? Don't give me any double talk. I'm in no mood for it. How dare you? It's easy. I'll show you. No. Look, you made a sucker out of me. You got me to find Claire Marlowe so you could kill her. You mean Claire's dead? As if you didn't know. But I didn't. I suppose you don't remember me phoning you at 1.30 this afternoon. I told you where you could find her. I could blow my brains out for not calling on her first. But you didn't make that mistake, did you? Let me go. Oh, sure, I'll let you go. Now, confessions are in order. You killed her, didn't you? No. Come on, Hunt. I'm going to get the truth if I have to break every bone in your body. You murdered her just as you murdered Larry Gordon. I swear I didn't. Where's your coat? I'm not going with you. Yes, you are. 
I promise to deliver you to Sergeant Corbett down the headquarters, and that's one promise I intend to keep. Now, will you go quietly? No. Okay, suit yourself. <laughs> now, come on. Get up. You've got a long, rough trip ahead of you. Hey, Matty. Yes, Sergeant. Carlin report in yet? Just about two minutes ago. Well, where's Hunt? He couldn't find him. You mean he skipped? Yeah. Carlin said the place was a shambles. Well, get a 47 out. I want every bus and train depot watch and cover the airfields. If Hunt gets away... Don't we... worry, Sergeant. He won't. Hey, never mind, Matty. All right, you crumb inside. <laughs> no, let me go. What's the idea, Mike? What's the matter with you, Sergeant? Don't you recognize him? Well, who would? He looks... Wait a minute. It's Hunt. That's right. Well, what happened? Well, he had a little accident. Go on, Hunt. Sit down. Did you slug him? No, oh, Sergeant, you know me. Well, that's why I asked. Listen, Mike. Well, look, why don't we both listen? All right, Hunt. Make like a birdie. I don't know what you're talking about. Look, if I've got to bounce you around again... Hey, what's going on here? He admitted to me that he murdered Claire Marlowe. I lied. You what? I couldn't help myself, Sergeant. He would have killed me. Yes, and it's not too late now. Do you deny I it? deny everything. I was forced to make that admission to protect myself. Under the circumstances, I felt I was justified. Look, Sergeant, could you leave us alone for a couple of minutes? Don't be a sap. Well, it's all right for you to talk, but I feel responsible for that girl's death. If I hadn't found her, she would still have been alive. I phoned him at 1.30 and I told... Hey, wait a minute. When did you phone him? At 1.30. Oh, no. Why, what's the matter? But do you realize what you've done? You've just given him an alibi. Are you nuts? Claire Marlowe was killed at a quarter to one. What? Forty-five minutes before you called him. Well, that means... That means he couldn't have killed her. Oh. Well, look, Hunt, if I've done you an injustice... Indeed you have. Uh, will it do any good if I said I was sorry? None at all. Good day, gentlemen. I trust I'll never see either of you again. <laughs> Welcome home, Mr. Hunt. I see you've taken over, Bruce. I didn't think you'd mind. You like some champagne? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. This is the bitter end. Ah. They tell me it's the only thing when you're celebrating. Is that what you're doing? Sure. Aren't you back? I'm flattered. I didn't dream you cared. Yeah, I was real worried. I had a feeling I was never going to see you again. Hey, you ought to do something about that eye. That Mike Waring can really dish it out, can't All right, Bruce. The joke is over. What's the meaning of this? I told you I was celebrating. Surely you don't begrudge your ex-employee a bottle of champagne. My ex-employee? Well, the way I see it, I've been working for you for seven years. So? So I decided it was time I bettered myself. After all, this is the land of opportunity. And you feel opportunity is knocking at your door? Definitely. You sure you won't join me in a drink? Enough of this nonsense. Get me my robe. You don't seem to understand. I'm through taking orders. With what I got and on And what you... have you got on me? For one thing, you knocked off Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. This may come as a shock to you. But the police, I... are satisfied I had no hand in either... You see, I have an unimpeachable alibi. Is that a fact? Yes. It now develops that Miss Marlowe was murdered 45 minutes before Mr. Waring reported her whereabouts to me. Well, what do you know? I know you've been taking too much for granted. I don't think so. I have to know how it was worked. You do? Yeah. I was going through your clothes. What? Well, I thought maybe you wanted me to send them out to the cleaners. Anyway, in your pocket I found this card. Lawrence Regan, Private Investigations. So? So I wondered what you would want with two private detectives, and just like that, it came to me. You were going to use Waring as an alibi. they are mistaken. Well, there's an easy way to check. Who are you calling? The boy Sherlock, Lawrence Regan. You're being ridiculous. Am I? Let me talk to Mr. Regan, please. Speaking. This is Bruce Webster. I work for Mr. Hunt. Well? 
And the boss would like to know whether you had any luck finding Claire Marlowe. What's the matter with the guy? Has he blown a fuse? I reported back to him at 11 o'clock this morning. She's at the Kenton Hotel, registered under the name of Claire O'Brien. I guess it kind of slipped his mind. What's going on here? Nothing you should worry about. Thanks a lot, anyway. Well, you win. I always do. I'm the patient type. I learned that from you. What do you want? $25,000. That's a lot of money. Well, it ain't as though I was going to throw it away. I'm going to sock it into government bonds. That 3% they pay will come in mighty handy. You're making a mistake. I don't think so. I always say the least a fella can do is be patriotic. You better get it up fast, Mr. Hunt. We don't want to keep Uncle Sam waiting. Sergeant, I don't get it at all. Well, you would if I had my way. You ruined everything. Look, are you sure Claire Marlowe died at the quarter to one? Positive. The desk clerk at the hotel heard the shots. Did she have any other enemies? No. This thing's tied up with the Larry Gordon killing for sure. That doesn't make sense. Oh. There was no way in the world for the... Hello. That you, Waring? Yes, who's this? Bruce Webster. Who? I work for Hunt, remember? Oh, yeah, I'm... I just thought you might be interested. I'm terminating my employment. That's supposed to mean something to me? It might mean a lot. If you could dig up some cash, I could let you in on my reason. What are you talking about? Well, wouldn't you like to know how Hunt made a chop out of you? I certainly would. How much dough can you raise? <laughs> I'm not in Hunt's class. No, but every little bit helps. Could you lay your hands on ten grand? Don't be ridiculous. Five? I've got $720 in the bank. Fine, I'll take it. Now, wait a minute. Come on, Waring. Make up your mind. Where are you? I got a little place at the Fortuna Apartments on West 93rd. Drop around when you're in the neighborhood. Okay. Don't go away. I'll be in the neighborhood in 20 minutes. That you, Waring? Yeah. Just a second. Come on in. Mr. Hunt. Surprised? Yeah, I thought I saw the last of you. You thought wrong. What's the idea? It's fairly simple. I'm a man who hates loose ends. Naturally, with you dangling about. You wouldn't. Oh, you recognize the gun. Yes, it's the same one I used on Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe. You'll never get away with it. The cops will know for sure. You're concerned for me. You needn't worry. You see, I've taken the liberty of preparing a note in which you confess to both murders. You're nuts. When the police break in, they'll find the note and the murder gun. Naturally, it'll be in the traditional position for suicide. They'll never buy it. He had no motive to knock off Larry Gordon. You have the way I've explained it in this note. Seems you were madly in love with Claire. When she spurned you for Larry, you decided to rid yourself of the competition. As for Claire, she was a witness to the act. So regretfully, you had to dispose of her, too. Isn't that poetic? Listen, Hunt. I wish I could, my boy. But time is of the essence. No. Don't. minutes have passed since Mike promised to call on Bruce Webster. Now we find Sergeant Corbett helping him keep that promise. This must be it. Yeah. Suppose he won't talk. Just leave everything to me. I left Hunt to you and what happened? Sure he said he'd meet you here? That's positive. I told him I'd be over in 20... Look, get out of the way. What are you doing? What does it look like? Don't you know it isn't polite to peek through keyholes? No, but it could be awfully interesting. <clears throat> What do you see? Give me a hand at this door. Well, what was it? Come on, come on. Put your shoulder to it. One, two. Holy smoke. Yeah. What did he want to do that for? Don't ask me. I'm a stranger here myself. Hey, wait a minute. What do you make of this? To whom it may concern, this was the only way. I killed Larry Gordon. 
It was all Claire Marlowe's fault. She led me on. I thought with Larry out of the way, we'd have a deal, but I was a chump. Don't bother looking for any relatives. I haven't... Hey, cut that out, Mike. I was only going through his pocket. Well, you know better. I just wanted to see what he had on him. Well? Well, Someone was here before me. All he's got on him are these two keys. What do you make of it? One's obviously for his grip, the other for his car. No, this doesn't add up. What do you mean? He didn't commit suicide. But look at the gun. You look at it. I tell you, this was engineered. By whom? By Hunt, of course. Can you prove that? Well, to you? Where's my percentage? Let's find someone who'll give me better odds. I can't believe it. When I was up at Bruce's a few hours ago... And you admit you were there. Why should I deny it? He complained of not feeling well this evening. Naturally, the least I could do was show from home. And when you left? You seemed perfectly all right. I never dreamt he contemplated suicide. I still don't understand why. Well, maybe this note will clear things up. What may concern? Oh, so that explains it. Yes, it would seem to. I never realized he was involved with Claire. Uh, well, things are seldom what they seem. For instance, when we broke into Bruce's room, it looked as though he committed suicide. But you don't believe it? No. You told me you found the gun in the sand? Yes. And it was the same weapon that was used on Larry Gordon and Claire Marlowe? Mm-hmm. Well, I should imagine that would take care of everything. No, not quite. There was one thing missing. When Corbett and I got to Bruce's room, the door was locked. Well? Well, if he committed suicide, it had to be locked from the inside. Obviously. Well, then what happened to the key? That's right. It wasn't in the lock because you were able to peek through the keyhole. And it wasn't on him or in the room. That means the door must have been locked from the outside and the killer absentmindedly walked off with the key. Look, Mr. Waring. All right, Sergeant. Go through his pockets. No, you can't. Who can't? Well, what have we got here? It's all a mistake. Yeah, you said it, friend. And the beautiful part of it is it only takes one to land you in the chair. All right, Sergeant, he's all yours. Well, like my father used to say, another day, another dollar. And believe me, you didn't earn this one. I did all the work. Well, you schlump, you should talk. You gave Hunt that alibi. You're out of your mind. If it hadn't been me, it would have been some other private dick. Come again? Look, it all comes down to one thing. Hunt had two of us trying to locate Claire. He probably waited until the other boy came through for him before he even hired me. Oh, what was the point? Give himself that alibi. After all, when I told you I reported to him after the girl was murdered, it didn't seem possible he could have been responsible. Well, I still say... Wait a minute, hold everything. Well, what's the matter? I just thought of something. I never got paid. Huh? By Hunt for finding Claire. Sue him. Sue him. He's going to the chair. So what? If I were you, kiddo, I'd really make trouble for him. (laughs) Good night, Mike. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. Some people are throwing a brawl and they insist I attend. Mm-hmm. If I'm not there to be the life of the party, they're going to be the death of me. Once again, the Adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the murdering Mrs. It's early evening in New York, and in the shabby kitchen at the Belmore, a blonde named Laura McKenna prepares dinner for her man. But this is one meal neither of the McKennas are destined to eat. Is that you, Mac? Yeah. Oh, wait a second, honey. How 
Hiya, doll. Take off your coat. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Paul Newcomb, drop off a package for me. Yeah, it's on the table. Mm-hmm. Mac. Ain't it a beauty? Hey, where'd that gun come from? Borrowed it from Paul. I'm going back in business. No. Yeah. Paul saw a good thing on 84th Street, a jewelry shop run by a fellow named Vance. And he talked you into heisting it? He could have gotten a hundred guys. I won't let you do it. Don't talk like a I jerk. mean it, Mac. If anything happened to you... Nothing's going to happen. A kid could handle this job. That's what you said in San Francisco before they sent you up. Well, it was an accident. Couldn't happen again. Well, we're not going to find out. Well, what do you suggest? There's eight bucks left in the kitty. We'll get by. I don't want us to just get by. How do you think I feel when I see dames who don't have half your looks parading around with furs and diamonds? Do you hear me complaining? I'm satisfied. Well, I'm not. You're not going to do it, Mac. Let Paul get himself another boy. Look, that's enough. The discussion's over. No, it's not. If you step out that door, so help me, I'll call the cops. What did you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. No, you were right, Mac. I didn't mean what I said. You know, if anything happened to I know, you, I... I know. Don't worry, I'll be back in an hour. Let me go with you. It'll be easier with the two of us. No, no. You're afraid. No, I'm not afraid, but you'd only be in the way. Give us a kiss for luck, baby. I'm off to work. I'm terribly sorry, sir, but we're closed for the night. Oh, come on, mister. Give me a break, will you? It's my girl's birthday. But I've put all my stock away. Well, how long would it take you to open your safe? I saw an engagement ring in your window this afternoon that was just perfect. An engagement ring? Yeah, it was marked $850. dollars you will be crazy about it. Well, in that case... Thanks a lot, Mr. Vance. If you'll just wait a minute. Sure. Do you, uh, you happen to remember how much it weighed? One and a half carats. One and a half, hmm? Suppose I wanted something bigger, say, uh, about four. Oh, I'm sure we can accommodate you. Ah, here we are. Now, if you just look over this tray... Yeah, but why don't I do it at home? What? All right, Vance, keep your hands in the showcase. This is a high... But really... Just keep you... them where they are. You're making a grave mistake, young man. Now, if you listen to me, you... What's that? I... I, I don't know. You don't know. Aren't you the cute when you stepped on the alarm? Uh, no! You couldn't leave well enough alone. you fellas. Let's hurry it up and get out of here. Myers, be sure you get a shot of the showcase. Greetings, men. Oh, no. Wouldn't you know it? Well, if it isn't Sergeant Pulaski. Where's Corbett? He's lucky. He's got a day off. What are you doing here, Waring? I represent the insurance company. Well, fellas, we can all go home now. The Falcon is on the case. Oh, you better stick around, man. You might learn something. What have you got, Steve? Darn little. What about Vance? He died an hour ago. Tough. Did he talk before he went? Not much. Here's a description of his killer. Blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot nine. Small mole on right cheek, V-shaped scar on left wrist. V-shaped scar, that's funny. What's so funny about it? Sounds like a boy I used to know in San Francisco. Well? Well, couldn't be him. Last I heard, Mac was serving five to ten of San Quentin. Mac who? Mac McKenna. What made you think it's him? That scar, he got it in the knifing. But it couldn't be the same one. Couldn't it? Suppose I told you that Mr. McKenna is now guesting in our fair city. He's what? He got it from a stoolie last week. He's living with his wife at the Belmore. Oh, no, it sounds too easy. Well, I'm going to pick him up just for luck. Come along and see how it's done. That you, Paul? Yeah. All right, wait a minute. Hello, Mac. Hey, what the... Uh... No, I can't say I do. The name is Waring. We met on the coast some years back. So? So, now that we've got me identified, I'd like you to meet Sergeant Steve Pulaski here. Yeah, looks like you were right, Steve. Looks like. What are you babbling about? Steve got a rumble you were in town, and I thought it was impossible. Last I heard, you were still in San Francisco. I didn't like the climate. Well, I don't think you like New York's any better, particularly around 84th Street. Come again? A jewelry shop up there was heisted last night, and the proprietor was killed. 
I don't know anything about it. Oh. And how do you account for the fact that Steve found your fingerprints on the showcase? You're crazy. Why? You wore gloves? Oh, you're nuts. Wait a minute. I'll prove it to you. Watch him, Sergeant. Hold it, boy. I just wanted to get my coat. Don't strain yourself. Get it, Mike. You bet. Well, what have we got here? What is it, a thirty-eight? Yeah. And it's been fired recently. All right, Sergeant, since Mac is so fond of jewelry, let him try your bracelets for size. Hey, McKenna. What do you want? You got company. Mac. Hiya, Laura. You're going to have ten minutes. Let me look at you. How are you, honey? Not change much? I'm going to get you out. Hmm. You got a file in your bag? I'll work it somehow. I'll get the best lawyer. Ah, no. Save your money, baby. But if I hired... Look, Laura, I never kidded you for a minute. I'm a going gosling. No. We got to face the facts, baby. They got me dead to rights. They got my gun. Someone ratted. No. Nope. It was Paul. Nothing of the kind. It was a fluke. You remember Mike Waring? The private detective they called the Falcon? Mm-hmm. Well, it seems that he represents the insurance company. He got lucky. He saw the description Vance gave, and he thought of me. Oh, it couldn't happen that way. No, but it did. I don't believe it. Oh, I got a feeling, Paul... Look, forget it. Paul had nothing to do with it. It was Mike Waring. Well, I'll pay him back for this. Hmm? I'll get him for you, Mac, if it's the last thing I do. Now, don't talk like a I tell you, I'll get him. How? Don't ask me, but I'll manage it some way. That you can depend on. You're wasting your time, mister. Huh? Mr. Waring ain't in. Well, that's a nice how do you do. I was supposed to meet him here. Are you Sergeant Pulaski? That's right. Well, he told me to give you this note. Yeah. Dear Steve, sorry I had to rush off, but the insurance company wanted to see me on the Vance Heist. Eddie, the elevator boy, will let you in. It's a bottle in my desk. Help yourself. You Eddie? Yeah, that's right. Got a pass key, or do I use mine? Are you sure it'll be all right with Mr. Waring? Here, yeah, look for yourself. Eddie, I'll let you in. I guess it's okay. Hey, you are. Thanks a lot, Eddie. You've been a great... Sergeant! Sergeant! Back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Sergeant Steve Pulaski was killed while entering Mike Waring's apartment. And now at the scene of the crime. All right, Doc, you can move the body anytime you want. Mind if I take a peek first, Sergeant? Oh, no, he ain't going to tell you anything, Mike. Well, whoever did it wasn't taking any chances. They were probably standing right by the closet. Yeah, yeah. The minute the door opened, they fired. Now, that's what your elevator boy said. Did Eddie get a peek at the killer? Oh, I haven't talked to him yet. Well, what are we waiting for? Eddie! You want me, Mr. Waring? Yeah, come over here. I don't feel so good. And I don't blame you. Oh, you should have seen it, Mr. Waring. It was awful. Every time I think of well, it, I... Well, don't. You better give him a drink. Yeah. Here you are, Eddie. Uh, I don't want it. Come on, come on. This is good for what ails you. <coughs> now, tell me exactly what happened. Well, I... I just opened the door for him and he walked in. Then there was the shot. Well, go on. That's all I remember. Didn't you see anyone in here? No, I just ran down the hall and got Dr. Wilburn. All I could think of was getting help. Oh, please, Mr. Wayne, can I go now? Yeah, all right. I, I'll be downstairs if you want me. Well, he was a great help. He did the best he could. Corbett, I can't tell you how sorry I am about this. If I had been here... You would have gotten it instead. Yeah, I guess so. Who do you know that loves you this much? 
Offhand, I can't think of a soul. Come on, Mike. Use your head. You must have annoyed someone recently. Well, I do that once a week. Well, one of them took it real personally. Uh, the only one who comes to my mind is Mac McKenna. McKenna? I was representing the insurance company in that Vance jewelry stick-up, and when Steve described the killer, I thought of McKenna as a suspect. But do you think Mac... Uh, how, by mental telepathy? You got him tucked away, safe and sound? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got any of that stuff there? Yeah, here it is. All right, thank you. <laughs> Boy, some collection. Look at this, a billfold with eight bucks. A badge, service revolver, and a pair of bracelets. Ain't hmm. much. Wish some of those newspaper boys who keep yapping about crooked cops could see this. Uh, what does Steve want to see you about? Don't if I know, Corbett. He called me from headquarters this morning and set up the date. Any idea what it was? Nope. He didn't want to discuss it on the phone. I got a hunch it was personal. Reminds me. What? Somebody's got to break the news to Mrs. Pulaski. What? You mean Steve was married? Yeah. Just a month ago. Oh, fine. Well, who's going to tell her? You. Oh, now listen, Corbett. Come on, Mike. It's the least you can do. After all, that bullet was intended for you. Okay, Sergeant. But I'd rather have stopped that slug than do this. I got a feeling this will be just as bad. Just a second. Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? My name is Mike Waring. Oh, of course. Steve often speaks of you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Steve isn't home right now, but I expect him any minute. Oh, I suppose I should apologize for the looks of this place. Oh, no. I, I guess I'm not much of a housewife, but I'll learn. Yeah, sure you will. Now, look at me yucking away like crazy. Here, let me take your coat. No, uh, please, uh, don't bother. I, I can't stay long. Well, aren't you going to wait for Steve? Well... He'll be awful disappointed if he missed you. Look, Mrs. Pulaski, there's something I have to tell you. What? Now, you've got to understand... Steve was a cop, and in his business... What do you mean, Steve was a cop? Here, you better sit down. What happened to him? Look, Mrs. Pulaski... He's been hurt. Well... Is that it? Yes. Well, where is he? i got to go see him. Well, you can't. What do you mean, I can't? I'm his wife. Well, I know that, but you see... What are you trying to tell me? He's dead. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. He can't be... It was my fault indirectly. You see, the killer was trying to get me. Oh, Steve. Steve, I... No, no, Mrs. Pulaski, you've got to be brave. Steve would want you to be. Brave? I never wanted him to be a cop if he'd listened to me. Well, he couldn't have been anything else. He was cut out for the job. He liked it. Oh, oh, please, let me alone. Well, can I get you anything? No, Look, if it makes you feel any better, I promise you I'll get the responsible party. Will that bring Steve back? Well, I, I just want you to know... I know that my husband's dead. That's enough for me. Now go away and leave me alone. Coffee, Mike? No, I've had enough. <clears throat> How'd it go? Bad. Say, so, do you know if Mrs. Pulaski has any relatives? Uh, not as far as I know. <laughs> well, I wonder what she's going to do. She doesn't look like a girl who's used to working. Well, with Steve's insurance and the money from the police pension fund, she'll do all right. I hope so. So help me, Corbett. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get him. If I don't get him first... Say, wait a minute. Huh? Why do we keep saying him? Huh? We keep referring to the killer as a him. Couldn't it be a woman? Well, you ought to know. The her or him was after you. Look, can you think of any dame you loused up recently? What about McKenna's wife? Huh? As I recall, she was very devoted to Mac. So? So she might feel I was responsible for putting him away. This could be her way of balancing the books. You're nuts. Yeah, well, there's one way to find out. I'm going up to see her. I'll let you know how I make out. Uh, 
Yes. Mrs. McKenna? That's right. I'd like a word with you. I'm busy. You can't be that busy. Now, look, mister, I don't know who you are. Why not ask me? Frankly, I don't care. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Why, you dirty... Now, take it easy. Well, behave yourself. Let me go. Will you behave? Let's go. Uh, I imagine you're pretty surprised to see me. Am I? Yes. You killed the wrong boy. It was a police sergeant named Steve Pulaski. You're crazy. But doesn't the fact that I'm alive convince you? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you're crazy about Mac. And you felt I was instrumental in nailing him. You wanted to get even. And I will. Oh, no, you won't, Laura. In this league, you get one chance. You muffed yours. Now get your coat. We're going places. Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Laura? Nothing. Oh, then you admit you killed Sergeant Pulaski. I admit nothing of the kind. You tried to gun me, and when Steve walked in, you didn't ask for credentials. You just blazed away. I'm not doing any more talking. Well, will you change your mind? How would you like to see your husband? Huh? I asked if you'd like to see Mac. Could I? If you cooperate. All right, I'll tell you anything you want to know. You were going to kill Waring. That's right. Now, can I see Mac? Oh, you got into his apartment. Huh? You got into his apartment. Yeah, yeah, I did. How? My door was locked. I used the fire escape. I put you in my bedroom? Yeah. Now, can I see Mac? No. Well, you promised me. I promised you you'd see him if you'd cooperate, but you're not. How did you get into my apartment? I told you, through the fire escape. At least to the kitchen. You got me mixed up. I meant the kitchen. What about the window there? It was open. No, it wasn't. I distinctly remember shutting it before I left. I want to see Mac. Well, what do you say, Mike? Okay. Lois, take Mrs. McKenna down to see her husband and then lock her up. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. You won't regret this. Well, can you beat that? She means it. Yeah, she's really mad for the guy. Yeah, she must be to pull that silly stunt. Listen, Corbett, I want you to do me a favor. Release her. Are you nuts? Well, you don't have to worry. She won't skip. McKenna will hold her like a magnet. What's the idea? Because I got a hunch I want to test, and without Mrs. McKenna on the loose, I can't. Oh, you and your hunches. Well, I don't think she's telling the truth. She admitted trying to get you. Well, I know that, but there's something about this that bothers me. Well, you won't be satisfied till she does kill you. All right, then you can say I told you so. Now, what do you say, Corbett? Well, okay. But if it doesn't pay off, I'll have your heart. With a little A1 sauce, it ought to be real tasty. Yes? Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? This is Mike Waring. How do you feel? How do you think I feel? Well, I'm sorry. I only called to tell you that we've finally got a line on Steve's murderer. So? So wouldn't you like to know who it was? Will that bring Steve back? Well, I suppose you're right. Still, I thought you'd be interested. You see, this party was trying to kill me, and I figured she'll try again. What do you mean? Well, I believe this woman is motivated by revenge. Now, if I'm right, Steve's death doesn't satisfy her. Only mine will. That's how we plan to nab her. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. All I know is that Steve is gone. Now, let me alone. Show me exactly what happened when Sergeant Pulaski came here this afternoon. Well, the first I saw him, he was banging on your door. He looked kind of uh, upset because you weren't in. That's when you gave him my note? Yeah. Then he told me you said it was all right for him to wait inside. Mm -hmm. Where were you standing at the time? Uh, right about uh, here. All right, go on. So I pulled out my pass key and opened the door. Show me how. You mean you want me to go through the whole thing again? Mm-hmm. I guess Steve was, uh, here. Uh-huh. All right, now open the door like you did. That's how it was. And then just as he stepped into the room... Oh! Mr. Waring! Mr. Waring! Now, back 
back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike and Eddie attempted to reenact the murder of Sergeant Steve Pulaski. Unfortunately, the effect was almost as dramatic. All right, all right, Mike. Now take a swig of this. What, what happened? Well, you tell me. You were here. Well, I guess I... Oh. Hey, that shoulder's going to be stiff for a week. Never mind. Let me no, 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 no. You just stay there till the doc comes. Oh, I'm all right. Well, who was it? You asked me. Well, didn't Eddie... Eddie did exactly what he did the first time. He ran off to get help. Then he didn't see who fired the shot? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's true about people repeating their mistakes. So I get myself plugged for nothing. Well, it's your own fault. I told you Mrs. McKenna was her baby. Yeah, looks like you were right. Well, I'm going to put out a call for her. So, wait a minute, Sergeant. I just thought of something. What's the matter? You want to give her another chance? No, I tell you, I've got it all figured out. I know we can nail the killer for sure. How? Look, I'm going to need a little help. Where's my coat? Now, now, don't be silly. You're in no condition to travel. I'll survive, which is a lot more than I can say for Steve's killer. Now, get my coat. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Pulaski. Remember me? Mr. Waring, what happened? My shoulder? Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, this happens practically once a week. <laughs> oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Oh, yes, I know. I I can't tell you how sorry I am about Steve, Mrs. Pulaski. May we? Oh, of course. Thanks. I suppose I should apologize, Mr. Waring. What for? Well, I wasn't very courteous when you called. Oh, well, that's understandable. You were under a strain. Have you made any progress? Yes, plenty. Why do you think I'm wearing my arm in a sling? I, I don't understand you. Well, the killer took a shot at me. But I was luckier than Steve. Oh, then you know who it was. I think so. We even got a confession. Well, I'm glad you mentioned that, Sergeant. Because I told you there was something about it that bothered me. Well, now I know what it was. Yeah? What? As a phony. Laura McKenna only made it so she could see her husband. I, I don't understand. Well, you see, Mrs. Pulaski... Originally, we thought this was a plot to kill me that misfired. So we went around looking for people who disliked me. And that's how we came up with Mrs. McKenna. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, let's consider the actual result in the case. Now, who was the victim? My husband. Mm -hmm. Well, suppose it wasn't an accident at all. Suppose someone was really after Steve. You see the possibilities? No. Well, then we come up with a different uh, group of suspects. You remember the personal effects they found on his body? Yes, there was a wallet with eight dollars, a badge, and a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't it strike you that there was something missing? No. Well, what happened to his skeleton keys? Well, what are you talking about? They weren't on his body. Shall I tell you why? Because the killer used them to get into my apartment. The killer knew that Steve was headed there to see me. Now, who would have had the best opportunity to know of that appointment and to lift the keys? Who? You. What? Yes. You were a real clever angel, but you made one mistake. And in this game, that's enough to put you away. All right, Corbett. Prove it to her. I can't get over it. <laughs> When I think it was Mrs. Pulaski... Well, that's who it was, Sergeant. But why, Mike? Well, she had big financial ideas. Uh, oh, you mean she knocked Steve off for his insurance? Mm-hmm. It was as simple as that. What complicated the deal was that we thought I was supposed to be the victim. That's why she made that second attempt. That was calculated to make us all the more certain that Steve was killed accidentally. Oh, you know, it's a funny world. Mm -hmm. Here we had two wives... One married to a crook and the other to a cop. And the crook's wife would have given her life for her husband. And the cop's wife took his. Yeah. Well, fortunately, it very seldom happens that way. But it all goes to prove one thing. Uh, what? Marriage may be a great institution, but in some cases it can be murder. Good night, Sergeant. Hello? 
Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to give me a rain check, Angel. Some people are throwing a brawl and they insist I attend. Mm-hmm. If I'm not there to be the life of the party, they're going to be the death of me. Once again, the Adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the murdering Mrs. It's early evening in New York, and in the shabby kitchen at the Belmore, a blonde named Laura McKenna prepares dinner for her man. But this is one meal neither of the McKennas are destined to eat. That you, Mac? Yeah. Oh, wait a second, honey. Hiya, doll. Take off your coat. Dinner will be ready in 20 minutes. Paul Newcomb, drop off a package for me. Yeah, it's on the table. Mac. Ain't it a beauty? Hey, where'd that gun come from? Borrowed it from Paul. I'm going back in business. No. Yeah. Paul saw a good thing on 84th Street, a jewelry shop run by a fellow named Vance. And he talked you into heisting it? He could have gotten a hundred guys. I won't let you do it. Don't talk like a I jerk. I mean it, Mac. If anything happened to you... Nothing's going to happen. A kid could handle this job. That's what you said in San Francisco before they sent you up. Well, it was an accident. Couldn't happen again. Well, we're not going to find out. Well, what do you suggest? There's eight bucks left in the kitty. You'll get by. I don't want us to just get by. How do you think I feel when I see dames who don't have half your looks parading around with furs and diamonds? Do you hear me complaining? I'm satisfied. Well, I'm not. You're not going to do it, Mac. Let Paul get himself another boy. Look, that's enough. The discussion's over. No, it's not. If you step out that door, so help me, I'll call the cops. What did you say? <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. No, you were right, Mac. I didn't mean what I said. You know, if anything happens... I know, I'd... I know. Don't worry, I'll be back in an hour. Let me go with you. It'll be easier with the two of us. No, no. You're afraid. No, I'm not afraid, but you'd only be in the way. Give us a kiss for luck, baby. I'm off to work. Well, I'm terribly sorry, sir, but we're closed for the night. Oh, come on, mister. Give me a break, will you? It's my girl's birthday. But I've put all my stock away. Well, how long would it take you to open your safe? I saw an engagement ring in your window this afternoon that was just perfect. An engagement ring? Yeah, it was marked $850. You'd be crazy about it. Well, in that case... Thanks a lot, Mr. Vance. If you'll just wait a minute. Sure. Do you, uh, you happen to remember how much it weighed? One and a half carats. One and a half, hmm? Suppose I wanted something bigger, say, uh, about four. Oh, I'm sure we can accommodate you. Ah, here we are. Now... You just look over this tray. Yeah, but why don't I do it at home? What? All right, Vance, keep your hands in the showcase. This is a heist. But really... Just keep you, them where they are. You're making a grave mistake, young man. Now, if you listen to me, you... What's that? I, I, I don't know. You don't know. Aren't you the cute when you stepped on the alarm? No. Oh. You couldn't leave well enough alone. you fellas. Let's hurry it up and get out of here. Myers, be sure you get a shot of the showcase. Greetings, men. Oh, no. Wouldn't you know it? Well, if it isn't Sergeant Pulaski. Where's Corbett? He's lucky. He's got a day off. What are you doing here, Waring? I represent the insurance company. Well, fellas, we can all go home now. The Falcon is on the case. Oh, you better stick around, man. You might learn something. What have you got, Steve? Darn little. What about Vance? He died an hour ago. Tough. Did he talk before he went? Not much. Here's a description of his killer. Blonde hair, blue eyes, five foot nine. Small mole on right cheek, V-shaped scar on left wrist. V-shaped scar, that's funny. What's so funny about it? Sounds like a boy I used to know in San Francisco. Well? Well, couldn't be him. Last I heard, Mac was serving five to ten at San Quentin. Mac who? Mac McKenna. What made you think it's him? That scar, he got it in the knifing. But it couldn't be the same one. Couldn't it? 
Suppose I told you that Mr. McKenna is now guesting in our fair city. He's what? He got it from a stoolie last week. He's living with his wife at the Belmore. No, it sounds too easy. Well, I'm going to pick him up just for luck. Come along and see how it's done. That you, Paul? Yeah. All right, wait a minute. Hello, Mac. Hey, what do you mean? No, I can't say I do. The name is Waring. We met on the coast some years back. So? So, now that we've got me identified, I'd like you to meet Sergeant Steve Pulaski here. Yeah, looks like you were right, Steve. Looks like. What are you babbling about? Steve got a rumble. You were in town, and I thought it was impossible. Last I heard, you were still in San Francisco. I didn't like the climate. Well, I don't think you'll like New York's any better, particularly around 84th Street. Come again? A jewelry shop up there was heisted last night, and the proprietor was killed. I don't know anything about it. Uh-huh. And how do you account for the fact that Steve found your fingerprints on the showcase? You're crazy. Why? You wore gloves? Well, you're nuts. Wait a minute, I'll prove it to you. Watch him, Sergeant. Hold it, boy. I just wanted to get my coat. Don't strain yourself. Get it, Mike. You bet. Well, what have we got here? What is it, a thirty-eight? Yeah. And it's been fired recently. All right, Sergeant, since Mac is so fond of jewelry, let him try your bracelets for size. Hey, McKenna. What do you want? You got company. Mac. Hi, Laura. You're going to have ten minutes. Let me look at you. How are you, honey? No change much? I'm going to get you out. Hmm. You got a file in your bag? I'll work it somehow. I'll get the best lawyer. Ah, no. Save your money, baby. But if I hire... Look, Laura, I never kidded you for a minute. I'm a going gosling. No. We got to face the facts, baby. They got me dead to rights. They got my gun. Someone ratted. No. Nope. It was Paul. Nothing of the kind. It was a fluke. You remember Mike Waring? The private detective they called the Falcon? Mm-hmm. Well, it seems that he represents the insurance company. He got lucky. He saw the description Vance gave, and he thought of me. Oh, it couldn't happen that way. No, but it did. I don't believe it. Oh, I got a feeling, Paul... Look, forget it. Paul had nothing to do with it. It was Mike Waring. Well, I'll pay him back for this. Hmm? I'll get him for you, Mac, if it's the last thing I do. Now, don't talk like a I tell you, I'll get him. How? Don't ask me, but I'll manage it some way. That you can depend on. You're wasting your time, mister. Huh? Mr. Waring ain't in. Well, that's a nice how do you do. I was supposed to meet him here. Are you Sergeant Pulaski? That's right. Well, he told me to give you this note. Yeah. Dear Steve, sorry I had to rush you off, but the insurance company wanted to see me on the Vance heist. Eddie, the elevator boy, will let you in. There's a bottle in my desk. Help yourself. You Eddie? Yeah, that's right. Got a pass key, or do I use mine? Are you sure it'll be all right with Mr. Waring? Here, yeah, look for yourself. Eddie, I'll let you in. I guess it's okay. Hey, I. Thanks a lot, Eddie. You've been a great. Sergeant! Sergeant! Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Sergeant Steve Pulaski was killed while entering Mike Waring's apartment. And now at the scene of the crime. All right, Doc, you can move the body anytime you want. Mind if I take a peek first, Sergeant? Oh, no, he ain't going to tell you anything, Mike. Well, whoever did it wasn't taking any chances. They were probably standing right by the closet. Yeah, yeah. The minute the door opened, they fired. Yeah, that's what your elevator boy said. Did Eddie get a peek at the killer? No, I haven't talked to him yet. Well, what are we waiting for? Eddie! You want me, Mr. Waring? Yeah, come over here. 
I don't feel so good. And I don't blame you. Oh, you should have seen it, Mr. Waring. It was awful. Every time I think of it, oh, I... Oh, don't. You better give him a drink. Yeah. Here you are, Eddie. Uh, I don't want it. Yeah, come on, come on. This is good for what ails you. <coughs> now, tell me exactly what happened. Well, I... I just opened the door for him and he walked in. Then there was the shot. Well, go on. That's all I remember. Didn't you see anyone in here? No, I just ran down the hall and got Dr. Wilburn. All I could think of was getting help. Oh, please, Mr. Wayne, can I go now? Yeah, all right. I- I- I'll be downstairs if you want me. Well, he was a great help. He did the best he could. Corbett, I can't tell you how sorry I am about this. If I had been here... You would have gotten it instead. Yeah, I guess so. Who do you know that loves you this much? Offhand, I can't think of a soul. Come on, Mike, use your head. You must have annoyed someone recently. Well, I do that once a week. Well, one of them took it real personally. Uh, the only one who comes to my mind is Mac McKenna. McKenna? I was representing the insurance company in that Vance jewelry stick-up, and when Steve described the killer, I thought of McKenna as a suspect. But do you think Mac? Uh, how, by mental telepathy? You got him tucked away, safe and sound? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you got any of that stuff there? Yeah, here it is. All right, thank you. Boy, some collection. Look at this. A billfold with eight bucks. A badge, service revolver, and a pair of bracelets. Ain't much. Wish some of those newspaper boys who keep yapping about crooked cops could see this. Uh, what'd Steve want to see you about? Don't if I know, Corbett. He called me from headquarters this morning and set up the date. Any idea what it was? Nope. He didn't want to discuss it on the phone. I got a hunch it was personal. Reminds me. What? Somebody's got to break the news to Mrs. Pulaski. What? You mean Steve was married? Yeah. Just a month ago. Oh, fine. Well, who's going to tell her? You. Oh, now listen, Corbett. Come on, Mike. It's the least you can do. After all, that bullet was intended for you. Okay, Sergeant. But I'd rather have stopped that slug than do this. I got a feeling this will be just as bad. <laughs> Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? My name is Mike Waring. Oh, of course. Steve often speaks of you. Won't you come in? Thank you. Uh, Steve isn't home right now, but I expect him any minute. Oh, I suppose I should apologize for the looks of this place. Oh, no. I, I guess I'm not much of a housewife, but I'll learn. Yeah, sure you will. Now, look at me yucking away like crazy. Here, let me take your coat. No, please, uh, don't bother. I, I can't stay long. Well, aren't you going to wait for Steve? Well... He'll be awful disappointed if he missed you. Look, Mrs. Pulaski, there's something I have to tell you. What? Now, you've got to understand. Steve was a cop, and in his business... What do you mean, Steve was a cop? Here, you better sit down. What happened to him? Look, Mrs. Pulaski... He's been hurt. Well... Is that it? Yes. Well, where is he? i got to go see him. Well, you can't. What do you mean, I can't? I'm his wife. Well, I know that, but you see... What are you trying to tell me? He's dead. Oh, no. No, I don't believe it. I'm sorry. He can't be. It was my fault indirectly. You see, the killer was trying to get me. Oh, Steve. <laughs> Steve, I... No, no, Mrs. Pulaski, you've got to be brave. Steve would want you to be. Brave? I never wanted him to be a cop if he'd listened to me. Well, he couldn't have been anything else. He was cut out for the job. He liked it. Oh, oh please, let me alone. Well, can I get you anything? No. Look, if it makes you feel any better, I promise you I'll get the responsible party. Will that bring Steve back? Well, I, I just want you to know... I know that my husband's dead. That's enough for me. Now go away and leave me alone. Coffee, Mike. No, I've had enough. <clears throat> How'd it go? Bad. Say, so, do you know if Mrs. Pulaski has any relatives? Uh, not as far as I know. 
Well, I wonder what she's going to do. She doesn't look like a girl who's used to working. Well, with Steve's insurance and the money from the police pension fund, she'll do all right. I hope so. So help me, Corbett. If it's the last thing I do, I'll get him. If I don't get him first. Say, wait a minute. Huh? Why do we keep saying him? Huh? We keep referring to the killer as a him. Couldn't it be a woman? Well, you ought to know. The her or him was after you. Look, can you think of any dame you loused up recently? What about McKenna's wife? Huh? As I recall, she was very devoted to Mac. So? So she might feel I was responsible for putting him away. This could be her way of balancing the books. You're nuts. Well, there's one way to find out. I'm going up to see her. I'll let you know how I make out. Yes. Mrs. McKenna? That's right. I'd like a word with you. I'm busy. You can't be that busy. Now, look, mister, I don't know who you are. Why not ask me? Frankly, I don't care. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Why, you dirty... Take it easy. Well, behave yourself. Let me go. Will you behave? Let's go. Uh, I imagine you're pretty surprised to see me. Am I? Yes. You killed the wrong boy. It was a police sergeant named Steve Pulaski. You're crazy. Well, doesn't the fact that I'm alive convince you? I don't know what you're talking about. Look, you're crazy about Mac. And you felt I was instrumental in nailing him. You wanted to get even. And I will. Oh, no, you won't, Laura. In this league, you get one chance. You muffed yours. Now get your coat. We're going places. Well, what do you have to say for yourself, Laura? Nothing. Oh, then you admit you killed Sergeant Pulaski. I admit nothing of the kind. You tried to gun me, and when Steve walked in, you didn't ask for credentials. You just blazed away. I'm not doing any more talking. Well, will you change your mind? How would you like to see your husband? Huh? I asked if you'd like to see Mac. Could I? If you cooperate. All right, I'll tell you anything you want to know. You were going to kill Waring. That's right. Now, can I see Mac? Oh, you got into his apartment. Huh? You got into his apartment. Yeah, yeah, I did. How? My door was locked. I used the fire escape. That put you in my bedroom? Yeah. Now, can I see Mac? No. Well, you promised me. I promised you you'd see him if you'd cooperate, but you're not. How did you get into my apartment? I told you, through the fire escape. At least through the kitchen. You got me mixed up. I meant the kitchen. What about the window there? It was open. No, it wasn't. I distinctly remember shutting it before I left. I want to see Mac. Well, what do you say, Mike? Okay. Lois, take Mrs. McKenna down to see her husband and then lock her up. Thanks a lot, Sergeant. You won't regret this. Well, can you beat that? She means it. Yeah, she's really mad for the guy. Yeah, she must be to pull that silly stunt. Listen, Corbett, I want you to do me a favor. Release her. Are you nuts? Now, you don't have to worry. She won't skip. McKenna will hold her like a magnet. What's the idea? Because I got a hunch I want to test, and without Mrs. McKenna on the loose, I can't. Oh, you and your hunches. Well, I don't think she's telling the truth. She admitted trying to get you. I know that, but there's something about this that bothers me. Well, you won't be satisfied till she does kill you. All right, then you can say I told you so. Now, what do you say, Corbett? Well, okay. But if it doesn't pay off, I'll have your heart. With a little A1 sauce, it ought to be real tasty. Yes? Mrs. Pulaski? Yes? This is Mike Waring. How do you feel? How do you think I feel? Well, I'm sorry. I only called to tell you that we finally got a line on Steve's murderer. So? So wouldn't you like to know who it was? Will that bring Steve back? Well, I suppose you're right. Still, I thought you'd be interested. You see, this party was trying to kill me. And I figure she'll try again. What do you mean? Well, I believe this woman is motivated by revenge. Now, if I'm right, Steve's death doesn't satisfy her. Only mine will. That's how we plan to nab her. What do you think? It doesn't matter what I think. All I know is that Steve is gone. Now, let me alone. Right, 
Now, show me exactly what happened when Sergeant Pulaski came here this afternoon. Well, the first I saw him, he was banging on your door. He looked kind of uh, upset because you weren't in. That's when you gave him my note? Yeah. Then he told me you said it was all right for him to wait inside. Mm -hmm. Where were you standing at the time? Uh, Right about uh, here. All right, go on. So I pulled out my pass key and opened the door. Show me how. You mean you want me to go through the whole thing again? Mm Mm-hmm. I guess Steve was, uh, here. Uh Uh-huh. All right, now open the door like you did. That's how it was. Then just as he stepped into the room... Mr. Waring! Mr. Waring! Back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike and Eddie attempted to reenact the murder of Sergeant Steve Pulaski. Unfortunately, the effect was almost as dramatic. All right, all right, Mike. Now take a swig of this. What what happened? You tell me. You were here. Well, I guess I... Hey, that shoulder's going to be stiff for a week. Never mind. Let me no, 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 no. You just stay there till the dark comes. Oh, I'm all right. Well, who was it? You asked me. Well, didn't Eddie... Eddie did exactly what he did the first time. He ran off to get help. And he didn't see who fired the shot? No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess it's true about people repeating their mistakes. So I get myself plugged for nothing. Well, it's your own fault. I told you Mrs. McKenna was her baby. Yeah, looks like you were right. Well... I'm going to put out a call for her. Wait a minute, Sergeant. I just thought of something. What's the matter? You want to give her another chance? No, I tell you, I've got it all figured out. I know we can nail the killer for sure. How? Look, I'm going to need a little help. Where's my coat? Now, now, don't be silly. You're in no condition to travel. I'll survive, which is a lot more than I can say for Steve's killer. Now, get my coat. Yes? Hello, Mrs. Pulaski. Remember me? Mr. Waring, what happened? My shoulder? Oh, it's nothing. Yeah, yeah, this happens practically once a week. <laughs> oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Oh, yes, I know. I I can't tell you how sorry I am about Steve, Mrs. Pulaski. May we? Oh, of course. Thanks. I suppose I should apologize, Mr. Waring. What for? Well, I wasn't very courteous when you called. Oh, that's understandable. You were under a strain. Have you made any progress? Yes, plenty. Why do you think I'm wearing my arm in a sling? I I don't understand you. Well, the killer took a shot at me. But I was luckier than Steve. Oh, then you know who it was. I think so. We even got a confession. I'm glad you mentioned that, Sergeant. Because I told you there was something about it that bothered me. Well, now I know what it was. Yeah? What? There's a phony... Laura McKenna only made it so she could see her husband. I don't understand. Well, you see, Mrs. Pulaski, originally we thought this was a plot to kill me that misfired. So we went around looking for people who disliked me. And that's how we came up with Mrs. McKenna. Well, what's wrong with that? Well, let's consider the actual result in the case. Now, who was the victim? My husband. Mm-hmm. Well, suppose it wasn't an accident at all. Suppose someone was really after Steve. You see the possibilities? No. Well, then we come up with a different uh, group of suspects. You remember the personal effects they found on his body? Yes, there was a wallet with eight dollars, a badge and a gun. Mm -hmm. Well, doesn't it strike you that there was something missing? No. Well, what happened to his skeleton keys? What are you talking about? They weren't on his body. Shall I tell you why? Because the killer used them to get into my apartment. The killer knew that Steve was headed there to see me. Now, who would have had the best opportunity to know of that appointment and to lift the keys? Who? You. What? Yes. You were a real clever angel, but you made one mistake. And in this game, that's enough to put you away. All right, Corbett. Prove it to her. Get 
get over it. <laughs> when I think it was Mrs. Pulaski... Well, that's who it was, Sergeant. But why, Mike? Well, she had big financial ideas. Uh, oh, you mean she knocked Steve off for his insurance? Mm-hmm. It was as simple as that. What complicated the deal was that we thought I was supposed to be the victim. That's why she made that second attempt... That was calculated to make us all the more certain that Steve was killed accidentally. Oh, you know, it's a funny world. Mm -hmm. Here we had two wives. One married to a... ...crook and the other to a cop. And the crook's wife would have given her life for her husband. And the cop's wife took his. Yeah. Well, fortunately, it very seldom happens that way. But it all goes to prove one thing. Eh, uh, What? Marriage may be a great institution, but in some cases it can be murder. Good night, Sergeant. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Maggie. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to count me out tonight, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm -hmm. Some girl I know has low ideas on high finance, and she's come up with one now where she may make a killing. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Deadly Dame. It's late afternoon in New York, and in the booth at Chico's, a young man named Johnny Fremont nervously toys with his drink while waiting for his light of love. And then when she appears, it's obvious the light annoys her. There you are. Rita. I'm surprised you showed up, Johnny. I didn't think you'd have the nerve. Oh, what are you talking about? I was just shopping at Lawson's. They told me Miss Rita Devlin's charge account has been closed. Oh, well, uh, I, uh, I can explain that, honey. You'd better. Would you like a drink? Later. You sure? Chico makes a martini Quit that... stalling, Johnny. Well, it's, it's like this, Rita. Things haven't been breaking so hot for Steve and myself lately. What do you mean, things haven't been breaking so hot? Well, this oil deal we were supposed to handle didn't pan out. But things will pick up. We're working on a proposition now well, it that... it was looks... nice knowing you, darling. Where are you going? Home and pack. No, you can't. Can't I? Well, watch. No, I won't let you go. Get your hands off me. Darling, darling, listen to me. What for? I did that once, and what did it get me? I left my husband because of you and your promises. Well, if this is the way you're keeping... You've got to give me a little time, just till this deal gels. Okay, when it does, give me a ring. No, I won't let you go. I couldn't live without you. That's very touching. I mean it. I'd do anything in the world for you. Anything? You know that. All right, we'll see. Suppose I showed you how to put your hands on a hundred thousand dollars. What would you say to that? I, I'd say you were out of your mind. How big is that partnership policy you and Steve Morgan carry on each other's lives? A hundred thousand, but... But what? Well, it doesn't become payable unless one of us dies. Well, why not work on it? Suppose Steve had an accident. An accident? Yeah. So he'd be fatally injured. But how could that happen? We could make it happen. If Steve were murdered... Murdered? Shut up, you fool. You want people to hear? I'm sorry. Well, am I right? If anything happened to Steve, that money would go to you. Children, what you're saying... I'd be the first one they suspect. Why? Because of the policy. Who else would have a motive to kill him? Suppose it looked like somebody was trying to kill you. And oh, you're you... not making Don't sense. Don't interrupt. If someone made an attempt on your life 
and Steve got in the way of the bullet. That would leave you in the clear. You know, you know you had me worried for a while. What? I didn't know you were joking. Don't be a schmo. I was never more serious in my life. But you must be. Who would want to kill me? Well, I would if you don't start using your head. Why couldn't George be after you? George? My husband. After all, you did take me away from him. He's probably real annoyed. Who would believe it? Everybody, if you set it up right. All you have to do is go on record that George is after you. How could I do that? Oh, there's a million ways. What's wrong with a threatening letter? You show it to Steve and he spreads the word around. And when something happens to Steve, it all adds up. Oh, you're crazy. Okay, I'm crazy. And you certainly don't want me around. No, wait, wait. Make up your mind, Johnny. I'm not going to wait forever. Suppose I promise I'm you... I'm through with promises. Do we or do we not sit down and compose a letter for my husband for you to show to Steve? Listen, Rita... Do we or don't we? All right. That's my baby. Now, let's go over to my place. Get to work on the typewriter. Who's there? Who's there? It's only me, Johnny. Who'd you expect? Don't ever do that again. Oh, what's the matter, boy? You got the jitters? No, but when I ask who's there, I, I expect an answer. Hey, what's come over you? You're shaking like a leaf. I'm all right. Come on, you can tell your old sidekick. Listen, Johnny, if you're in a jam, I want to help. You're right, Steve. I am in a jam. Huh? My life's been threatened. What? Take a look at this. Dear Mr. Fremont, although I've never had the pleasure of meeting you, I understand we have one interest in common. I refer, of course, to Rita. Like you, Rita has always had a fatal fascination for me, and I swore if a man ever took her away, he'd pay with his life. Naturally, I'm looking forward to claiming yours. Sorry I missed you in Tijuana. Cordially, George Sales. Who's he? Rita's husband. But I thought her name was Devlin. That's her maiden name. Steve, what am I going to do? You're going to forget it. It's a rib. No, it's from her husband, all right. Who else would know that I met Rita in Tijuana? Oh, it could be any number of people. Name one. All right, even assuming you're right. What makes you think he isn't pulling your leg? Does this look like it? What the devil do you call that? What does it look like? Offhand, I'd say sugar. Well, it's arsenic. Arsenic? Where'd it come from? I ordered some coffee sent up this morning. Yeah? I don't know what possessed me, but I tasted the sugar first. Then I noticed the metallic flavor. Hey, you're right. You've got to report this to the cops. Oh, no. Rita doesn't want me to. Listen, Johnny. I wouldn't ordinarily say this. Just because we're partners, I figure don't give me a license to butt in your private affairs. But uh, there's an easy way out. How? Get rid of Rita. What? I don't want you to take offense, boy, but... Look, she's no good. Steve, I'm going to surprise you. You're absolutely right. Well, then why in heaven's name are you... I hanging? can't help myself. I know it sounds corny, but I couldn't get along without her. Every time she's threatened to leave me, I felt like it was the end of the world. Look, kiddo, you've got to pull yourself together. It's no use. I can't give her up. And you won't go to the police? No. Well, then, I... Wait a minute. i got an idea. i got a pal named Mike Warren. Who? Mike Warren. He's a private detective. Is he the one they call the Falcon? Yeah. You're going to have a talk with him. No. Now, don't be a fool, Johnny. It's the only way. But Rita wouldn't want... She don't have to know. Listen, Steve, maybe we're jumping to conclusions. Maybe you were right in the first place. Huh? Maybe it's a rib, like you said. Don't be a fool, boy. That arsenic's no joke. Someone's out to get you. But you don't understand. I understand I... you need protection, and Mike Warren is the one to supply it. Now, quit arguing and get your coat. That's the story, Mike. What do you think Johnny ought to do? Let's see that letter again. Here. When did you receive this, Johnny? Wednesday. Where was it mailed to? Well, can't you see from the envelope it was sent to my hotel? 
Now, look, You'll fellas. have to excuse him, Mike. Naturally, Johnny's upset. He didn't mean nothing, did you, pal? I'm sorry, Wary. You say you received this letter this past Wednesday? Yes. That was April 2nd. Well? Well, how come the letter's postmarked April 5th? Well, I... I, I guess I forgot. Come to think of it, it, it was Saturday. Well, that's a funny kind of mistake to make. Well, I've had a lot on my mind. Yes, I wouldn't be surprised. Well, what's the matter with you, Mike? You sound like you don't believe him. All I can go by, Steve, is my own experience. I've seen a lot of threatening letters in my time, and it's amazing how few of them are signed. His girlfriend's husband seems to go out of their way to incriminate himself. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Yeah. Did you notice the signature? What about it? It's typed like the rest of the note. Well, you'll have to admit that's fairly unusual, too. Most men can muster enough strength to pick up a pen. What are you getting at? Well, any one of these things alone might not mean anything, but when you add them all together, you're forced to one conclusion. What? This letter is a phony. You're crazy. And I'll let that pass. Look, Mike, be reasonable. Who would do a thing like that? Oh, there are a couple of possibilities. Could be the work of a crank, or then again... Yes? It could be yours. What do you mean? Well, it just occurred to me, Johnny, that uh, you might have typed this note to yourself. Are you calling me a phony? Take it any way you like. Why, you no good... Now, take it easy, fella. Let me go. Cut it. Come on. Johnny, behave yourself. Did you hear what he called me? Yeah, yeah. Now, look, Mike... I think you owe him an apology. I don't see why. Uh, leave us alone, Johnny. No. Go on now, pal. This is between us. You trust me, don't you? Well, yeah. Well, then take off. Okay. I'll meet you at Rita's later. Fair enough. All right, Mike. What do you got to say for yourself? I thought I said enough already. You realize you call my partner a liar? Oh, what's the matter with you, Steve? Can't you see it yet? If I will get you ten, he mail that letter to himself. But just give me one good reason why a man should do that. Well, that's what bothers me. There isn't one good reason. So? So I'm convinced there must be a dozen bad ones. Let me know if any of them develop. you, Johnny? Yeah. Open up for you. Hi, doll. I was wondering what happened to you. Give me a drink. What's the matter? I need one, that's all. Oh, what happened? Everything. It's all loused up. Oh, you stupid. Honey, it wasn't my fault. I, I did everything the way we planned. I showed the letter in the arsenic to Steve. So? So it developed Steve has a friend who's a private detective. We went over to see him. You did. Steve insisted. Now, I suppose if Steve insisted, you'd blow your brains out to oblige him. Rita, you don't understand. There was nothing else I could do. If I was worried about my life, wouldn't I naturally try to protect myself? So we went over to see this Mike Waring. Go on. We weren't there more than a couple of minutes when he spotted the whole thing for a phony. How? He tied me up on the note. Oh, you idiot! Rita, I couldn't help myself. I got rattled. And then there were a couple of other things, and... Well, to make a long story short, I tried to take a poke at Waring, and Steve broke it up. Well, that's just fine. Where's Steve now? Still with Waring, but he's, he's due here any minute. What about this man you hired? What about him? Well, we've got to call him off. If we don't... It must be Steve. What'll I do? Well, the first thing is to pull yourself together. Look at your hands. I can't help it. You bet. Huh. Rita. Don't read on me. Can't you be a man for once? Go on, get it. I'm going to powder my nose. Just a second, Steve. Hiya, Mac. This Rita Devlin's apartment? That's right. Yeah, well, I got a little job here. Well, who are you? Oh, you might call me an exterminator. Well, will you come back later? Miss Devlin's very busy. Yeah, I'm kind of busy myself. Yes, but you can't do any work while there are people in the apartment. Oh, that's the only time to do it. So if you don't mind, I'll get right down to business. Huh? What's the idea of the gun? I told you I was an exterminator. But I, I, I yeah, thought you meant... everybody does. Oh, look, you got this all wrong. You're, you're looking for Steve Morgan. You'll do. But you don't understand. Steve isn't here yet. I'm Johnny Fremont. We were just going to call you. You... You made the trip for nothing. Well, just so won't be a total loss. No! <laughs> a 
along about this time of year, we start to see the first signs of spring. Birds are beginning to sing, the first flowers are blooming, and youngsters will be playing out of doors. But there's one sign of spring that warns of danger instead of happiness ahead. Spring also means increased highway traffic, and heavier traffic means more accidents. Yes, that's just as sure as the changing of the seasons. So this is a good time to think about your own safety on the highways. First of all, why not check on your car and make sure it's in safe driving condition? Look at the tires, the windshield wiper, the brakes, the lights, and other safety equipment. But remember, even a car in perfect condition isn't safe unless it's driven carefully. Resolve now not to drive too fast, to stay on your own side of the road, to obey traffic laws, and to observe traffic signs and signals. Never drive after drinking. Be alert every moment behind the wheel. Yes, spring is here, so be sure you stay alive to enjoy it. Drive carefully. The life you save may be your own. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Three hours have passed since Johnny Fremont met the friendly exterminator in Rita Devlin's apartment. And now at Mike Waring's. Hello? That you, Mike? Yeah. Steve Morgan. Oh, look, Steve, if you're calling about Johnny Fremont... It so happens I am. Did you talk to him? No. Well, when you break him down, you'll find I was right. I wouldn't make book on that. Well, I would. I've got a hundred bucks here. You better hold on to it, or you won't be eaten. Johnny was just murdered. He what? You heard me. Well, then I was wrong. Doesn't seem possible, does it? You tell a guy he's got nothing to worry about. Three hours later, he's pushing up daisies. Where did it happen? Over at his girlfriend's apartment. Rita Devlin's? That's right. Where does she live? At Cherokee Arms. Well, I'm going over to see her. I wouldn't. I know I let you down, but I'd like to make it up to you. And who's going to make it up to Johnny? Oh, listen, I Steve... listened to you once before, Mike. It was kind of expensive. So if you don't mind... Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marion. I'm glad you called. Now, I'm sorry, Angel. I'm all jammed up. Mm-hmm. Some boy just came to see me with a proposition I couldn't possibly turn down. If we work it right, it may mean a killing. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Handy Helpmate. It is late afternoon in New York, and at the Miramar, a cheap hotel on the Bowery, one citizen finds release from the cares of the day. But the sound effects annoy Chuck Lewis, and when Chuck is annoyed, he does something about it. All right, Tony. Get up. Ah. Leave me alone. Come on, bum. Get out of my room. I ain't bothering anybody. You're bothering me. That you, Willie? Yeah. Where the devil have you been? I just went out for some air. Oh, you just went... Well, what are you hanging around for, Tony? I told you to get lost. Someone would think you own a joint. What did you say? Nothing. He's a wise guy, that Tony. I wouldn't let him get away with it, Chuck. No? What would you do? Well, what's the matter, pal? Everything rubs you the wrong way. Here, yeah, maybe this will make you feel better. Where'd you get that bottle? I got friends. You raise any dough? No, I never saw such a bunch of tight wads in my life. Come here a second. Huh? I said come here. Now, look, Jack... What's the matter? Don't you understand English? Uh, oh, cut it out. Oh. Empty your pockets. Huh? Quit stalling. Turn them inside out. Oh, listen. Are you going to do like I say? Look, Chuck, uh, I don't want you to think... Oh, that... You little rat. So you're holding on to me, huh? No, honest, I was going to split. Now, I... Where'd you get this C-note? Hey. I... I found You're lying. Oh! Where'd you get it? You remember Marty Braddock? How could I forget if I ever lay my hands on it? Hey, wait a minute. You trying to tell me you ran into Marty? 
No, but I met his missus. Julie? Yeah. Well, what do you know? It must have been real tickle to see you. What'd you do, follow her home? Yeah, I put the bite on her. Yeah. Marty must be doing okay if his wife can shell out a hundred clams. <laughs> Leave it to Marty. He's got a job at the Belmont Bank. He what? You know what I was figuring, Chuck? I bet he wouldn't mind a touch now and then to keep his old friends happy. Oh, you jerk. Is that all you can think of? Huh? Where's your imagination? Marty working for a bank, you expect me to be satisfied with a couple of bucks? Now, if you said a couple of thousand, that would be different. I don't get you. No, but Marty will. Get my coat. We're going bye-bye. <laughs> Yes, sir. Can I help you? Uh, yes. Can you break this bill? Well, certainly. How would you like it? Oh, five, five, ones will be fine. Five, one, two, three. Uh, you, Marty Braddock? Yes, that's right. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. My name is Mike Waring. Well, I'm very busy, Mr. Well, that's Waring. All right. I... The bank is one of my clients. Uh, just close your window. Really, Mr. Waring, that's I... That's okay. It's official business. Suppose we go into Sinclair's office. Sure. Hey, better come around this way. May I ask what this is all about? You'll find out. I hope Mr. Sinclair isn't annoyed with me. Not yet, anyway. All right, sit down. Thanks. I don't know if you're familiar with what I do for the bank. Well, no, I... Well, I'm a private detective. One of my duties is to check personnel. I see. On the course of events, I sent your fingerprints to the FBI. I guess you know what they told me. Yes, I guess I do. Your application here doesn't mention anything about you serving five to ten for armed robbery back in 1945. All right, Waring, I won't take up any more of your time. Now, just a minute. What for? I've heard the spiel 20 times. I'm awfully sorry, Braddock, but naturally we can't afford to have an ex-con working for us. Isn't that how it goes? Well, don't blame me. I'm just an innocent bystander. When did you get out? What difference does it make? Well, just humor me. In 49. What have you been doing since? Getting kicked all over the place. You really been trying to go straight? Would you believe it if I said yes? Who knows? Look, if you get your kicks torturing people, that's swell, but I don't think I no, have... No, 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 no. I'm really interested. Well, I... I was 19 when I pulled that job in Buffalo. It was the only crooked thing I ever did. I threw in with a couple of boys. Yeah, I know. And... Named Chuck Lewis and Willie Frank. How did you know? It's all down here. I see you're married. Yeah, three years ago. Does your wife know him? Everything. I met her before I was sent up. And she waited? Yes. Well, sounds like quite a girl. How is she going to take this? The way she's been taking it all along, she won't complain. Look, Braddock, uh, if I were to forget about this for a while... What? Could I trust you not to make me sorry? Listen, Waring, if you give me this break, I swear you'll never regret it. I hope not. Okay, fella, get back to work. All right, Willie. What do you got to say for yourself? Where's Marty? I swear that's where he works, Chuck. Funny, we didn't see him come out. Everybody else seen Yeah? Him. Well, what do you make of that? Okay, Willie. You wait here in the alley. You ain't gonna pull anything. Just wait. If you see anybody, sing out. Hey, buddy. You know? You got a match? Sure. Here, keep the book. Yeah. You always were a sport. Hmm? What's the matter, Marty? Don't you recognize me? No. I must have gained a few pounds. Chuck Lewis. <laughs> so you didn't forget. What are you doing here? The question is, what are you doing here? Since when do they employ ex-cons in banks? I don't work there. Ain't the way I heard it. Look, I don't care what you heard. Get out of my way. Take it easy, pal. You'll last longer. Know what I mean? So you still pack a gun, huh? You won't believe this, Marty, but this one's a present from your missus. What? Of course, in all fairness to Julie, she didn't know how we were going to spend the money. We? 
Here, keep the book. Oh, I forgot to mention, yeah. there's another friend of yours around. Willie Frank. Look, Chuck. for that alley. You're not going to get away with this. You're not going to get away with this. If I had a buck for every time I heard that, I could retire. Hey, Willie. Look who's here. Hiya, Marty. What are you fellas up to? We're going back in business. No, we're not. Well, you certainly wouldn't want the bank to find out they got an ex-con on the payroll. They know it already. Well, then that alters the case somewhat, but not enough. We're going to teach him it's not right to put temptation in your way. Now, me and Willie got a little plan. I'm not interested. Suppose I put it to you like this. <laughs> what did you do? Keep out of the shoe. All right, Galahad, on your feet. You going to cooperate? No. I say you will. You wouldn't want anything to happen to your missus. What? As I recall, you're awfully sweet on that dame. I wonder if you'd like her as much if she had her face carved up. So help me, Chuck. If you touch Julie, I'll kill you. Oh, don't make me laugh. Now get this and get it straight. You're going to play ball. Otherwise, you'll go home one night and find your wife a mess. He means it, Marty. You're going to join the team? Yeah. Yeah, it's a spirit. Now get on home. We wouldn't want Julie to get nervous about you. You know how little it takes to make some women worry. Yeah. Let me take you. <gasps> Marty. It's all right, Julie. What happened? Nothing. How can you say that? Sit down. I'm going to call Dr. No, Wolf. no. But look at I you. I tell you, I'm all right. You're not. I've got a right to know what happened. I ran into a couple of old friends. Chuck and Willie? Yeah. It was my fault. I'd been careful. Willie never would have followed me. Well, how could you have even known he was in town? Julie, they want me to throw in with them again. You wouldn't. No? What do you suggest? They can't make any trouble for you. They can make you. plenty. But Mr. Waring knows about your records. Yes, but the bank doesn't. If Willie and Chuck went to the powers that be, I'd be out in the street in five minutes. No, you wouldn't. Look, who are we kidding? Can't you see old Sinclair's reaction when he learns he's got an ex-con in his temple of finance? It'd be the same old story all over again. All right, then you'll quit the job. Well, I won't satisfy Chuck. He said if I didn't cooperate, he'd... He'd what? Never mind. Did he threaten you? I've got a right to know. Yeah. Julie, what are we going to do? You're going to do absolutely nothing. But... There are no buts about it. You leave it to me, darling. I'll think of something. <laughs> All right, take it easy. You want to bust my eardrum? Well, how about a little service here? You want service? Try to Waldorf. Tony, how would you like me to come downstairs and give you a punch in the nose? Hey, who is this? Chuck Lewis. What's the matter, Chuck? Can't you take a job? No. You see Willie Frank around? No, I ain't seen him all day. Well, when he comes in, you tell him I want to... Never mind. I think that's him. Oh! Oh, what was that? Hey, Chuck! Hello, Mike. Uh, Sergeant Corbett. <laughs> that brings you down to my little nest. What always brings me down? You. Why, Sergeant, I never dreamed you cared. You know, what's on your mind? You do some work for the Belmont Bank, don't you? That's right. How you doing there? They're satisfied. Guess it doesn't take much, huh? What are you talking about? Well, I thought it was your job to investigate all their employees. So? So you slipped up kind of badly. Did you know they had an ex-con on the payroll? No. You're lying. Now, look, Corbett. 
If you're referring to Marty Braddock... Uh Uh-huh. Well, I figured the guy deserved a break. So you destroyed the report. How did you know that? Because I was down at the bank to see Mr. Braddock. One of his old associates was just knocked off, a feller named Chuck Lewis. No. I'm telling you, yes. And you think that Marty... I think it's highly suspicious Mr. Braddock didn't show up for work today. Well, what does his wife say? I haven't seen her yet. You mind if I join you? I insist on it. After all, when you did your good deed for Braddock, you paved the way for murder. All right, Boy Scout, let's go. Twenty minutes have passed since Sergeant Corbett apprised Mike of the murder of Chuck Lewis. And now we find the two at the apartment of Marty Braddock, whom the sergeant is sponsoring as chief suspect. Well, looks like nobody's home. Well, what'd you expect? Well, maybe we better go in. Yes, I was just going to suggest that. Allow me. But five will get what you... What are you ten- doing there? Huh? If you don't get away from that door, I'll call the police. Well, you won't have far to travel. This gent is one of them. You, Julie Braddock? Yes. Well, this is Sergeant Corbett. My name is Mike Waring. Oh, so you're the one. Yeah, he's the one. Well, uh, what are you gentlemen doing here? Well, I think we better discuss that inside. What's wrong? Well, what makes you think anything is wrong? Did something happen to Marty? No, but something will. Where is he? That's what we'd like to know. I don't understand. Now, you better sit down, Julie. You've got to tell me. Did you ever hear of a man named Chuck Lewis? No. You're lying, Angel. I swear I didn't. Well, you should have. He was one of your husband's fraternity brothers. You leave my husband out of this. No, we can't. Chuck Lewis was murdered this afternoon. And you think Marty did? Yes. You're crazy. Then why did he disappear? Who says he did? Well, he didn't show up for work. Well, maybe he went over to see his brother in Jersey. Oh, don't make me laugh. He could have. His brother had a heart attack last week. Maybe he took a turn for the worse. And Marty didn't say anything to you about it? He doesn't like to worry me. Just a real solicitous kid, ain't he? I swear that's the truth. Well, we'll see how it hits a jury. They can't hold him, can they, Mr. Waring? Well, that all depends. Was Marty in touch with Chuck? No. It'll be easy enough to find out. I give you my word, Marty hasn't seen him since he was sent up. Well, then how do you account for the fact we found your husband's business card on Chuck's body? That was my fault. I was in touch with him. Come again? I was out shopping last week and I ran into Willie Frank. Willie Frank? Yes, he was a friend of Chuck's. I gave him some money. But Marty knew nothing about it. Now, do you expect us to believe that? He had no motive. Oh, yes, he had. Suppose Chuck was in touch with your husband. Suppose he threatened to go to the bank and tell him of Marty's past record. After all, this was Marty's big chance. He'd be peeved with anyone who tried to ruin it. I tell you, Marty didn't kill him. Well, then who did? Me. What? You heard me. I did it. You realize what you're saying? Yes. I went to that place where he was living this afternoon. I went in through the rear entrance. There's one right on off third. Did anyone see you? No. No, you're not buying this, are you, Mike? Well, that was an easy way to check. What did you do with the gun? I threw it in a sewer. Where? I can't remember. But it was somewhere along the bar. Oh, that's a hot one. Why won't you believe me? Because it's obvious you're shielding your husband. Yes, it was a nice try, Mrs. Braddock, but I'm holding out for Marty. And since I can't depend on you to notify me when he comes in, I'll have a couple of boys downstairs who will. Hello? Hello, is that you, Waring? Yeah, who's this? This is Marty Braddock. What? Listen, Waring, I want to talk to you. Well, that makes us even, because I want to talk to you. 
I'll meet you at your apartment in 20 minutes. No, no, let's make it someplace else. There are a couple of squad cars parked in front of my door. I got a hunch there's something wrong. Something is. Where are you now? Did anything happen to my wife? No. You swear? Yep. Okay, I'm in a drugstore on the corner of 12th and 4th Avenue. All right, walk down to the corner of 12th and 5th. I'll come by in a blue Nash. Don't stop to admire the color. Just hop in. All right, Waring, what's up? What makes you think anything is up? There's too much hocus-pocus going on. What are the cops staked out in front of my house for? They're looking for you. Why? Don't you know? If I did, I wouldn't ask. Well, a friend of yours named Chuck Lewis met a violent end today. You mean he was murdered? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, who did it? Well, right now, the police are inclined to give you the honor. I swear I didn't do it. Why didn't you report for work this morning? I was on my way when I got a call from my brother's doc. He wasn't feeling so hot. So you went over to Jersey to see him? That's right. Without notifying Julie? Well, she was out shopping. So you didn't even think of leaving a note? I was too excited. Look, it's easy easy enough to prove. What, What time was Chuck killed? 1.15. Well, you can check with my brother. I was there from 10.30 to 3. Mm -hmm. Was anybody else with you? No. I don't suppose your brother would mind perjuring himself to save your life? You've got to believe me. I tell you, I didn't kill him. Well, then that makes it look worse for Julie. What are you talking about? Well, I forgot to mention it, but uh, she confessed. She what? She claimed she killed Chuck. Why, she's crazy. She didn't even know he was in town. She says she ran into Willie Frank one day who relayed the happy tidings. You don't believe that? Can't you see what she's trying to do? I got an idea. Look, look, Mr. Waring, I was lying. I, I did know Chuck was around. He he, he wanted me to throw in with him again. I, I was supposed to give him my answer today. So? So I, I... I gave it to him with a gun. You got the gun now? No, no, I... Uh, I, I got rid of it. Where? I, I threw it in the river. What about this alibi of yours? It's a phony. I had it all set with my brother in advance. Listen, Waring, you've got to believe me. Julie knew nothing about this. Well, if you say so... What's the matter? Don't you believe me? What I believe doesn't matter. The man you've got to convince is Sergeant Corbett. I'll arrange for you to have a crack at him. That's the story, Sergeant. I killed Chuck Lewis. Julie had nothing to do with it. Okay, that's good enough for me. You're going to let her go now, aren't you? Well, I'll think about it. All right, Haskell, take him away. Right, Sergeant. Will you do me a favor, Waring? Uh, Sure, Marty. Tell Julie not to worry. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. (laughs) Now, that's what I call an optimist. Don't tell me you believe that confession. Well, I certainly do. What about his wife's? Well, her motive was obvious. She was trying to protect him. And he's trying to do the same for her. Well, you're crazy. Well, how do you get around his alibi? What alibi? He admits he set it up in advance with his brother. You notice there was no one else around to substantiate the story. Well, I'm not satisfied. Sure, because you hate to admit this is all your fault. If you had notified the bank of his past record, none of this would have happened. Well, I thought he deserved a break. And he's going to get it. Right in the neck. Now, wait a minute. Aren't we forgetting someone? Who? Willie Frank. What about him? Why couldn't Willie have killed Chuck? Well, why should he? Well, Chuck was a bully boy. Maybe Willie got fed up taking it. Oh, he's been palling around with a guy for 13 years, and now suddenly he gets fed up. <laughs> How convenient. Well, I still think it bears investigating. Well, you go ahead and investigate, Mr. Waring. I wouldn't stop you for the world. I got my boy right here. All right, come on, Willie. Get up. Wake up, boy. You're late for Reveille. Now rise and shine. Cut it out, Chuck. Surprise, it ain't Chuck. Uh, Who are you? The name is Waring, Mike Waring. You're the one they call the Falcon? Why, can you think of something worse to call me? Come on, get up. Uh, What for? I ain't got no place. I say you are. Ow, let me alone. I bet you missed that treatment since Chuck is gone. What do you know about his murder? Nothing. They told me you weren't around when he was killed. That's right. Where did you disappear to? None of your business. Don't give me that, you punk. Where were you? I don't remember. You don't remember. I must have been loaded. What did you have to celebrate? Chuck's death? What do you remember? Nothing. 
And you can't be sure you didn't kill him. Listen, mister, you got no right to come in here and push me around. Who do you think you are, anyway? You said it yourself. I'm the falcon. Now get dressed. We're going places. <laughs> Oh, that you, Haskell? No, it's only me, Sergeant. And look what I found. All right, you inside. Oh, let me go. Hey, what do you got there? Wish I could think of a suitable name. At the moment, it calls itself Willie Frank. Well, why did you bring him down for? Because this is where he belongs. Don't you, Willie? I don't know what you're talking about. Neither do I. Well, if you had done a little investigating, as I suggested, you'd have discovered that Willie has no recollection of what he was doing at the time Chuck was murdered. Well, I have. Huh? You should have asked me. Willie spent the day right here. He was picked up for vagrancy at 11 a.m. But if he was in jail, he couldn't have killed Chuck. No, he couldn't. You know, you surprise me, Mike. I didn't think the one and only Falcon could fall flat on his face twice in one day. (laughs) But you did it, didn't you, boy? (laughs) Now beat it. I got work to do. Back to the adventures of the Falcon. Ten minutes have passed since Mike Waring was informed that Willie Frank, his nominee for the murder of Chuck Lewis, was turned down. And now Mike goes to break the news to the surviving candidate. All right, Haskell, here's my pass. Open him up. Right, Mike. Where is Hello, Marty. Did you see Julie? No, nope, not yet. You've got to get her out. They promised to release... Well, that's kind of impossible. You see, they never arrested her in the first place. They didn't? No. Sergeant Corbett never believed her confession. So you held out on me? Well, you held out on me. Why didn't you tell me you decided to throw in with Chuck and Willie? I wasn't going to. You're lying. All right, so I was. There was nothing else I could do. Then you intended to go through with that holdup? Yes. Look, I, I know I know you think I let you down, but I couldn't help myself. Couldn't you? No, it, it wasn't that I cared about the job or myself. I was afraid for Julie. Chuck threatened to go to work on her. Did she know that? No. Listen, Waring... The cops won't bother her anymore, will they? Not as long as you stick to that story that you killed, Chuck. Then why shouldn't I? On the other hand, why should you? Okay, Marty, maybe someday I'll figure out the reason. Hey, Haskell, I want out. Hello, Julie. Mr. War- Waring. You, uh, remember Sergeant Corbett? Of course. Hi. Where's my husband? Right where he belongs. You've got no right to hold him. He didn't kill Chuck. And he claims he did. He's lying. He's trying to protect me. I did it. What did you do with the gun? I told you I dropped it in a sewer somewhere along the bow. Oh, haven't we been through all this before? Yes, but this time, pay a little more attention. Detail a squad to make a search. What are you babbling about? She's telling the truth. Of course I am. Have you gone crazy, Mike? No, she did kill Chuck. Then you believe me? Yes, I do. Though I'd give the world not to. Now, come on. We'll take you down to headquarters. Stop somewhere for a beer, Mike? No, thanks, Sergeant. I don't feel like celebrating. Why not? You solved the case. Yeah, well, I'm almost sorry I did. I'd have given anything if I could have proved that Julie Braddock didn't kill Chuck. (laughs) Why did she do it anyway? She told the truth all along. She was crazy about her husband, and she thought Chuck represented the source of danger to him, so she put him away. Uh, It seems hard to believe. And your boys found the gun in the sewer along the Bowery. Yeah, yeah. That was the item that convinced me. What convinced you? Marty's confession. Well, it was no worse than hers. Oh, yes, it was. He admitted to me that in order to protect Julie, he agreed to throw in with Chuck and Willie and sticking up the bank. So? So, that was his way of handling the matter. To him, it was the lesser of two evils. If he planned to go through with the holdup, he certainly wouldn't have killed Chuck. 
The only reason he made that confession was because he knew Julie was guilty. I know this uh, doesn't sound official, but I hope the jury goes real easy on her. Aren't many dames around that would do what she did? No, and let's hope we don't run into another for quite a spell, because what this one did was murder. Well, good night, Sergeant. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nora. Oh, I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Mm-hmm. Some boy I know just heard of a new way to commit murder. Naturally, being the inventive type, he's going to make a stab at it. Once again, the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Jumping Jack. It's early afternoon in New York, and a lovely brunette named Dorothy Gould glances nervously over her shoulder as she walks down Madison Avenue. For Dorothy has a feeling she's being followed, and ten feet behind her is a stocky citizen who proves she's right. All right, you. What's the idea? Are you talking to me, sugar? Yes. Why are you following me? Offhand, I could think of a dozen reasons. Uh, but it so happens you're wrong. Oh, no, I'm not. I saw you get off the subway at 52nd Street. Not me. I'm strictly the cab type. You're lying. Who put you up to it? Hmm? It was my husband, wasn't it? Would you believe I have no idea what you're talking about? Was it Jack? The only Jack I know is a fellow down in Norfolk, Virginia. Jack Paxton. Is that the one you mean? Now, look, I'm warning you. If you don't keep away from me... I suppose you'll call the police. Officer? Officer! Well, I guess that's my cue to beat it. Still, it's been fun, sugar. Let's do it again sometime. Four, one, one, three. Oh. Oh. Hello? Oh, Jean. Yeah? Dorothy. You know this isn't smart, Daddy. I couldn't help myself. I'm being followed. You what? Yes, it's been going on for days. You don't realize what you're saying. You've got to believe me. I'm not making this up. What did he look like? He was kind of short and stocky, and he was carrying a camera. A camera? You suppose he got a picture of us? I don't know. Listen, Jean. Maybe we ought to tell Jack everything. But are you crazy? Well, he's going to find out eventually. Maybe eventually, but not now. Well, I've got to see you. Uh-uh, that's odd. Why? Because it's not safe. Especially if you're right about this character telling you. Well, listen, Jean. Suppose I hire a private detective. What for? Because I've got to find out what's going on. Did you ever hear of a Mike Waring? Is he the one they call the phone? That's right. I'm going to talk to him. I wouldn't, Daddy. Well, I've got to do something. I'm going out of my mind. Now, look, honey, you're upset. Have my right to be? Yeah, sure, sure. This has been a real strain. That's why I think you're imagining all no, this. No, I... Now, am... look, baby, with ten million people in town, a couple of bounds will look familiar. <sighs> oh, maybe you're right. Sure I am. Now, why don't you go home and relax? Well, when will I hear from you? Well, I don't know exactly, but I'll keep in touch. All right, take care of yourself, darling. Yeah, you too. Are you through with that phone, sugar? Oh, no. Well, what's the matter, lady? You act like you're seeing a ghost. You are following me. I never saw you before in my life. I am warning you. Now, take it easy, Mrs. Gould. How did you know my name was Gould? How did I know what? You called me Mrs. Gould. Hey, you're not only seeing things, but you're hearing them, too. <laughs> if I were you, sugar, I'd see a doctor.
Yes? I'm looking for Mike Waring. Oh, congratulations. What? You've made it. Oh, oh, are you... Yes, I am. Come in. Oh, thank you. Uh, my name is Dorothy Gould. Mm-hmm. Oh, won't you sit down? Oh, thank you. A drink? No. You better change your mind, Angel. You look like you could stand it. There we are. Well, I... Uh, how long has it been going on? How long has what been going on? Whatever's bothering you. Well, what makes you think anything's bothering me? Would you be here if there weren't? Oh, well, I'm being followed, Mr. Waring. By whom? That's just the trouble. I don't know. What does he look like? He's kind of stocky. And he's got red hair. Mm, Does he have a southern accent? How did you know? He's a large brother of mine. What? He's a private detective named Dixie Hamilton. Oh, I see. Have you any idea who hired him? No. You married? Yes, why? Well, I would open up a flood of possibilities. What about your husband? What about him? You think he's behind it? That's what I want you to find out. If Jack is responsible for this, I will leave him so fast it'll make his head swim. Is he the jealous type? Unfortunately. Does he have reason? How dare you? Now look, Dorothy. It is Mrs. Gould. Yes, well, I always like to maintain a first-name relationship with my clients. I find it's a great time saver. And does your husband have any justification to believe you are seeing some man on the side? I tell you, there's no one. Yet we know for a fact that someone sick Dixie Hamilton on you. You think he followed you here? I didn't see him. Mm -hmm. Well, maybe he's playing it cozy. All right, now here's what I want you to do. When you leave, walk down to the corner. Wait there for about five minutes. That'll give Dixie, if it is Dixie, a chance to pick up the scent. Then what do I do? Then hail a cab and go home. And what about... Dixie, I'll take care of him. Now, on your way, Angel. We don't want to keep the man waiting. Taxi! Taxi! Madison and 84th, please. Hey, Cap! Cap! Can I give you a lift, Dixie? Huh? I got a subway parked on Lexington. Look, where? I'm busy. Yeah, the two Southerners have a reputation for taking things easy. Why don't we go somewhere and have a drink? Let go of my arm. How does a mint julep strike you? You ain't kidding me. I don't understand you, Dixie. I just thought we might have a little talk. Read any bad books lately? You ain't going to help her one bit. Help who? Dorothy Gould. I'll pick her up again. Well, I wish you wouldn't. You're annoying the lady. She's going to be a lot more annoyed before I'm through. Well, that's too bad. Who are you working for? None of your business. Come on, Dixie, break down. You go to let go of my arm. Okay, but you keep out of her hair. Sorry, Warren. I only take orders from my client. And he may want me to give her a new Tony. I'll be seeing you, boy. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Gould. Last I saw your missus, she was in a cab headed uptown. Why didn't you follow her, Dixie? I was rather forcibly detained. But you were right about her. She is playing around. You're fine. Cut it out. Admit it. You made this whole story up. No. So help me, I'll kill you if you don't tell me the truth. I I am now. Let me go. Why, you knew all along she was cheating. You shut up. Well, you must have. Otherwise, you wouldn't have come to me. Who's the man? It's a fellow named Mike Waring. Mike Waring? How do you know? Take a look at this picture. Well? That's where he lives. I followed her there. Who is he? A private dick. Well, what would Dorothy want with him? Why don't you ask her? I've got a better idea. I'll ask him. Beat it. I've got work to do. Yeah? You Mike Waring? It all depends. On what? On who's looking for him. Now, if the party is loaded... And... Come again? Well, there's not a gun in your pocket. You're so right. I wish I weren't. Shut the door. That's what you put it so nicely. So you're the boy, huh? And what boy? You know what I'm talking about. Now, believe me, I haven't the vaguest notion. Suppose I told you I was Jack Gould. Mean anything to you? Yeah, it means a lot. 
You must be the one who hired Dixie Hamilton to shadow Dorothy. Looks like I made a smart buy. I don't think so. How long have you been romancing my wife? Oh, you're crazy. How long has it been going on? I asked you something, Wary. Oh. I wouldn't try that again. You're Dorothy. Tried to make a fool out of me, didn't you? Don't give us credit, Ghoul. You did it all on your own. I'll kill you for this. Don't talk like a jerk. You got it all wrong. I suppose you can explain everything. Yes, I can. Though I don't know why I should bother. Well, I'd enjoy hearing it. Not that it's going to make any difference. Your wife just saw me on business. Don't make me laugh. She knew Dixie was following her, and she wanted me to find out who was responsible. Well, now we know. Yeah. Now you know. But I can't take any bows. You made it real easy for us by coming here. You expect me to swallow that? I don't care whether you do or don't. I'm working for your wife. That's all you've got to say? You don't believe me, do you? Sure, you hated to find out you've been acting like a chump. That's enough out of you. All right, now put down the gun, ghoul. It won't do you any good. The safety's on. What? Now look at it. What are you talking about? My mistake. Stop! Let go! Come on, drop it. I'll break it if you don't behave. All right, now take it in the corner. Stay where you are while I get it. Where'd you get this gun, anyway? Out of your business. You know you could hurt somebody with this? Okay. Go ahead. What? Well, aren't you going to shoot me? You could always claim you thought I was a thief. And then you and Daddy... Oh, stop talking like an idiot. I tell you, the relationship between your wife and myself is purely professional. You don't have to lie anymore. You got the gun. Look, I don't know why I should try to sell you, but I saw your wife for the first time today. She was scared stiff. Is that on the level? Yes, it is. Now, you can take it or leave it. It's all the same to me. But I thought... No, you didn't think. That's your trouble. I... You're going to tell her about this? Of course I am. I have to. I'm oh, working for please, her. Please, please don't. Uh, she'll leave me if she finds out. Listen, Waring, well, I'll give you a thousand dollars. No, it's no it, dice, school. Yeah, but you don't understand. Is she, is she... Yes? Uh, hello, uh, I'd like to speak to Dorothy Gould, please. Who wants her? Just tell her it's Mike Waring. Well, why don't you come over and tell her yourself? Uh, not that it'll do any good. Who is this? Sergeant Corbett. What are you doing there, Corbett? Well, I ain't minding the store. Uh, were you working for Mrs. Gould? Yes. Well, you better apply for unemployment insurance. You're entitled to it. What are you babbling about? You're out of a job. The dame was knocked off an hour ago. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring learned of Dorothy Gould's death. And now in the murdered woman's apartment. Got a minute, Sergeant? Yeah, just about. Now you boys carry on with it. Oh, what's the scoop? Well, it ain't pretty. She was stabbed 13 times. Any one of them could have done the trick. Uh, what was your deal with her? Oh, she was being tailed. She wanted to know who was behind it. Well, did you find out? Yes, yeah, him. Her husband. That's right. Mr. Gould? Yes? I'd like to see you. Can't it wait? Uh, I'm sorry. What do you want? Waring here tells me you were having your wife followed. I was. Why? I suspected her of seeing some man. If I was right, this wouldn't have happened if she wasn't. What's his name? He thought it was Mike Waring. Was it? Don't be a fool. Hey, Sergeant, can we move the body? No. Uh, anytime you're ready. No, no, you mustn't. You can't take her away. Now, look, go. I won't let you. She belongs to me. Easy, fella. Leave her here. Please. Give it just a few minutes. Well, that won't do any good. All right, Haskell, carry on. All right, Sergeant. Hey, Mark, give me a hand. Where uh, You've got to find the man she was seeing. There wasn't any. No, you're wrong. I know she was. He's responsible for this. Okay, okay. I'll do what I can. Easy now. Can I go with him, Sergeant? Well, let Ooh. him call it. Okay. Haskell, take Mr. Gold along. Thanks, Sergeant. You won't regret this. What do you think, Mike? He was really crazy about him. Yeah. Uh, got any idea who killed him? Nope. Uh, got any idea, period? Yeah, one. I'll let you know if it pays off. <laughs> Wait up. Wait up. 
Waiter, how about a little service here, huh? Uh, what are you complaining about, Dixie? You're getting as little as possible. What are you doing here, Ware? Uh, it's a long story. Say, why don't I sit down? Because you weren't invited. Oh, now, where's that board of Southern Hospitality? I left it in Norfolk. Uh, that's a pretty nice spot. But did you hear what happened on 86th Street, Little Old New York? No, tell me. Dorothy Gould was murdered. Think of that. Well, you're taking it pretty calmly. People die every day. Yes, but not quite so violently. She was stabbed 13 times. That just proves my daddy was right. He always said 13 was an unlucky number. Well, I never thought of it that way. When did you go to work for Jack Gould? None of your business. Oh, that's where you're wrong. It is my business. I'm working for him now. Why, the dirty skunk. Well, you can't blame him for canning you, Dixie. After all, you flopped pretty miserably. You never did find the boy she was seeing. I thought it was you. Yeah, you know better than that. Why did you hold out on Gould? You're the smart one. You tell me. All right, was it because you figured I'm playing both ends against the middle? How's that? Suppose you're planning a little shakedown. You know, keep the other man's name out of the picture in return for coin of the realm. Hey, that's a thought. Yeah, well, let's forget it. A woman's been murdered, Dixie. Now, if you know anything... You want me to cut you in? How do you think you'd look without those curly white teeth? I wouldn't start anything, Warren. I got a lot of friends here. You wouldn't care to step outside? What for? This suits me fine. Mm-hmm. Okay, Dixie, I'll see you around. I doubt it. No, I'm going to make it my business. Take care of yourself, fella, until I get a chance to. Is that... Who is it? Hello, Gene. Who the devil are you? You don't know it yet, but I'm a friend of yours. You what? Well, I wouldn't hold out on the cops for everyone. Is that bourbon you're drinking? Put that down. Now, surely you don't begrudge a pal a wee drop. Who are you? Oh, that's right. I haven't introduced myself. My name's Dixie Hamilton. I'm a detective. Detective? Uh, maybe I should have said a private detective. What do you want him? Money. You're crazy. I don't think so, Gene. Do you know a girl named Dorothy Gould? No. That's funny. Because I got a picture of you two. That's a dilly. I thought maybe you'd be interested in buying it. Why should I? Well, then I won't have to sell it to her husband. Seems he suspicioned his wife was meeting some boy on the sly, and I got a shot that proves he was right. Where is it? Right here. Would you like to see it? Yeah. In the view? Look at the detail. You notice how that mustache is going? Now, why did you want to do that for? Get out. You're putting me to a lot of trouble, Gene. Now I've got to run off another print. Huh? You don't know much about photography, do you? You see, once you've got a negative, you can run off a million copies. Where's, uh, where's the negative? Now that's going to cost you dough. Five grand, to be exact. Where's that negative? Just for that, it's going to cost you ten. Is it? Just let me alone. I'll let you alone. No. I'm going to get that negative if I have to kill you. Now, brother, that's just the way I'd like it. No. Look, Dool, don't you think you've had enough? I'll never have enough. I'll always see her lying there. With the all blood. right, all right, stop it. You've got to put that out of your mind. I can't. Why haven't you been able to find the man? Because there is none. Oh, you're wrong. Look, did it ever occur to you that you might have been doing Dorothy an injustice? She's dead, isn't she? Well, yes. Then there must be someone. Believe me, I'd give anything in the world. You want me to get that? Please. I don't want to talk to anybody. Thank you. Hello. Uh, Let me speak to Jack Gould, please. I'm sorry, he's out. Well, when do you expect him back? Well, there's no telling, Dixie. What'd you call me? Well, isn't this Dixie Hamilton? No. I can't believe there could be two such accents in the country. Who is this? Mike Waring. Listen, Waring, suppose I told you the name of the boy Dorothy Gould was seeing. What would you do? Well, first, I'd wonder why you were so good to me. I got my reasons. What's the matter, Dixie? Wouldn't your other customer buy? Get smart and I'll hang up. You'll never get even that way. Who is he? Come on, Dixie. I'll take care of him for you. His name is Gene 
songs. He lives to bright. Well, thanks, fellow. Much obliged. Who is that? Dixie Hamilton. Well, Ghoul, looks like you were right. There was someone else. Who is he? His name is Gene Saunders. I'm going over to see him now. I'm going with you. No, no. We've had one murder already. That's par for the course. Let's leave well enough alone. Yep. Eugene Saunders? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. Is that supposed to mean something? I was hoping it wouldn't. You see, I was working for Dorothy Gould. Of course, now I'm employed by her husband... What are you mumbling about? Well, he suspected she was seeing some man on the side. Looks like he was right, huh? Listen, Waring, if you don't get out of here... Well, look, why don't we go together? You ever been down to police headquarters? Where do you mind? What's the idea of the gun? Well, what do you think? I think you mislaid your knife. And for your information, you left it from Dorothy. What did you say? I think I've said enough. And I think you haven't even started. Oh. Now begin at the top of the page and don't leave out a sentence. Because every time you do, you're going to get one of these. Oh. have passed since Mike Waring tried to argue with a gun in Gene Saunders' apartment with the usual results. Oh, my head. Well, ain't that ironical. First time you use it in a week and look what it gets you. Oh, shut up, Sergeant. Oh, that's a nice snappy ad lib. Oh, how did you know where to find me? I saw Jack Gould. He told me you got a lead to the boy his wife was seeing. Well, he told you right. How long will it take you to pick him up? Who? It's Gene Saunders, of course. Well, that all depends on what we want him for. Oh, for Pete's sake, Corbett. What's the matter with you? Don't you get it yet? Maybe I'm thick. What do you mean, maybe? Well, Dorothy was seeing Saunders in the QT. Maybe she had a reason. Of course she had a reason. She didn't want her husband to find out about it. Suppose I told you this Gene Saunders was an ex-con. Well, that makes it all the more binding. Uh, you might let me finish. He served five to ten at Sing Sing for armed robbery. He got out six months ago. Sure, without a dime to his name, I bet. Yeah. And from what we've been able to piece together, Dorothy was supporting him. Well, you are. That wraps it up. I don't see how. He got nervous when he heard her husband was having a tail, so he killed her. Well, why should he? He was afraid she'd give him away. Uh, why don't you ask me Dorothy's maiden name? What difference does that make? It might make a lot. It was Saunders. Saunders? You mean she and Jean were brother and sister? Oh, you had a beautiful theory there, Mike. Ain't it a shame that parents had to ruin it for you 30 years ago? Well, the standard wearing, I don't understand it at all. Well, I can't blame you, Ghoul. Threw me for a loss, too. But this man Dorothy was seeing was her brother, Gene. But why didn't she tell me? Well, I can think of one good reason. What would be your reaction if you learned your wife's brother was a graduate of Sing Sing? You wouldn't let her see him, would you? Yes, I would. No, you wouldn't. Not with your makeup. You wouldn't want it noised around that your brother-in-law was an ex-con. Listen, Waring, there's some mistake. I wouldn't be surprised if you were right. There must be another man in the picture. Who? What about Dixie Hamilton? No, you're reaching, pal. Well, why else would he give me your name? Because he was being playful. No, no. He did it to protect himself. He must have been the one. Still trying to justify yourself, aren't you? What? You've got to believe there was somebody. Otherwise, you committed murder for nothing. What are you talking about? You killed Dorothy. You're crazy. You never trusted her from the day you were married. What's the matter? Didn't you think you were man enough to hold her? That's not true. You wanted to be convinced she was deceiving you. You were begging for her. You're wrong. When Dixie reported to you that I was the boy, that's all you needed. No. Oh, yes. You could have pulled a name out of a hat and you would have been satisfied. I bet you couldn't wait for her to come home so you could accuse her. Wait, you don't understand. I love Dorothy. Sure you did, but you killed her just the same. I can see her backing off, terrified, and you what? following her with that knife. No, Every time no, she tried to get away. Me, Am no, I right? Please. Am I right? Please. Yeah. I killed her. I killed her. <laughs> Let me alone. Let me alone.
You know, Mike, you could have knocked me over with the Empire State Building when you walked in with Jack Gould. Well, I was kind of surprised myself. <laughs> well, I have to give him credit. <laughs> Certainly put up a wonderful act. Well, that was no act, Sergeant. Hmm. Why the devil did he do it? All seems infected that the infected spy is all seems yellow to the jaundiced eye. Alexander Pope. Oh, very pretty. What's it mean? <laughs> Just what it says. To a guy like Gould, everything his wife did seems suspicious. He was born that way. But he, he claimed there was another man. Naturally. He had to justify himself. Uh, uh, you think he really loved her? In his fashion. But when that passion leads to murder, it's never in style. Good night, Sergeant. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Elsie. I'm glad you called. I'll have to skip it tonight, Angel. I got to play spoil sport. Mm -hmm. Some boy I know is looking for fun with a gun, and I want to make sure he doesn't get a big bang out of life. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you The Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Weeping Willow. It's late afternoon in New York, and a nervous young man named Joey Willow races down the fourth floor corridor of the Belmont building. For Joey is in a hurry. When he comes to a door marked Lester Pharmaceuticals, he barges right in, almost knocking down its sole occupant. Hey, take it easy, fella. I'm sorry. You all right? Sure. Hey, you're limping. Well, I have been for seven years. Oh, you're, you're a... Well, you can say it. You must think I'm a jerk. Where's Lester? No, he isn't in. But he told me to meet him here at 12. Well, I guess he was detained. Look, my name is Joey Willow. Did he leave a package for me? No. You sure? I'm positive. Oh, how can you tell? Why don't you look around or something? Well, it couldn't be any use. What's your name? Al Romano. You work for Les? Mm-hmm. Oh, maybe you can help me out. I need a jolt. A jolt? Yeah. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Well, look, you don't have to worry. I'm one of Les's old customers. Didn't he ever mention a Joey Willow to you? No. Well, I'm one of the boys. It's all right. Here, maybe this will convince you. What are you rolling up your sleeve for? Yeah. You satisfied now? Let me see that. I told you I was no faker. I gotta have a shot. Well, I'm sorry. I... What do you mean you're sorry? You gotta give me one. I'll take anything. M, C, horse. Look, Joey. I, I tell you, I'm okay. Les knows me. Please, you gotta. You don't know what it feels like. Well, I've got an idea. Oh, I get it. Trying to hold me up. Well, how much do you want? Look, Joey, you don't understand. No, I... you don't understand. I ran out last night. That's why I called. Oh, Joey. Lester. Oh, am I glad to see you? I was just telling this fellow. I know, I heard you. Wait in my office. But I need a shot right now. I, I feel... said wait in my office. You won't be long. Just a couple of minutes. Well, Al? I didn't say anything. No, but you were thinking plenty. What a chump I've been. I was real stupid not to see what's going on here. And what is going on? Let's. Please. Get back in there, will you? Oh, hurry, will you? What are you going to do about him? Well, what would you recommend? That boy is a dope addict. You're kidding. You're not going to get away with this. Who's going to stop me? Maybe me. Listen, Gimpy. You just managed to get by on one leg now. Talk out of turn and you won't have a leg to stand on. Just think it over, Al. You'll see I've got a point there. Who's there? It's only me, Ruth. What are you 
doing home? I, uh, I quit my job. You what? Yeah. All right, glad to sit down. Now, let me get this straight. You walked out on Lester? Mm-hmm. Why? Because I didn't like the work. Well, now, isn't that just ducky? And since when can a, a man with your handicap be particular? You don't understand, Ruth. You know what I was doing? I was a pusher. A what? A pusher. Those packages I was delivering contained narcotics. So? What do you mean, so? Well, somebody's got to do it. Why shouldn't it be you? I don't know what you're saying. Don't be a fool. Since when can you afford to be fussy? Listen, if you saw this kid that came into the office, it would have broken your heart. You can't imagine what he was going through. Did you ever stop to think what I'm going through? How do you think I feel being married to a man who can't even support me? I know. Nah, you don't. Now get on that phone and call Lester. Uh-huh. Then what do you intend to do? I was thinking of getting in touch with Mike Waring. What for? Advice. You want advice, I'll give it to you. Call Les and apologize. I won't. It's a dirty, rotten business. It paid the rent. It was blood money. The landlord took it, didn't he? I'm warning you, Al. You got a wearing. We're through. I walked right out. You wouldn't. No? What? Ruth, come back here. Ruth! I tried to follow her, but with this leg of mine... Yeah, I know. By the time you got outside, she was gone. That's right. Well, what about Lester? What about him? You've got to report him to the authorities. Oh, no. Look, Al... Look, you don't understand, Mike. If I open my yap, Ruth will never come back. And you think her return will settle everything? Yes. No, you're wrong. I know it's easy enough for me to talk. You did your duty once before, and it cost your leg. It was worth it. Well, this is the same thing over again on a smaller scale. Men like Hitler poison people's minds. Lester works on their bodies. Well, let someone else nail him. No, that's just it. We can't let other people do our work. You're the only one who has the opportunity. Well, what about this Joey Willow kid who came in for a shot? No, we can't depend on him. Now, what do you say? You're going to let me call the cops? Okay. That's the boy. I'll do it right now. You are going to try to find Ruth. Yeah, sure, sure. Now, the man I want you to talk to is Sergeant Corbett. Uh, don't quote me, but he's all right. This guy... 86 Precinct, Reynolds. Is Corbett there? No. Have you any idea when he'll be in? Who wants him? Mike Waring. Well, uh, he's off today. When will he be back? Who knows? Look, Reynolds, this is official business. Well, that's tough, but it looks like he'll have to deal with me. All right. I got a friend named Al Romano. He works for an outfit named Lester Pharmaceuticals. So? Well, it's a blind. If Lester's up to his ears in narcotics. What have you been smoking? All right, don't be a goon. This is on the level. Where's this Al Romano now? At my place. Well, uh, tell him to go on home. I'll drop by in 20 minutes. Fair enough. What did he say? You ought to go home. He'll pick you up there. Yeah, wait, I'll get my coat. What for? I'm going with you. Oh, don't be silly. I don't need a nursemaid. Well, I still think... I you... know what you think, but I tell you it's all right. Or will be as soon as you find Lucy. I get the work out of him like a good boy. <laughs> Is it? Police, open up. Oh, just a second. Come on inside. What's the matter, Al? What are you doing here, Lester? Well, I'll tell you. I, uh, I think maybe we both acted a little hasty this afternoon. Did we? Mm-hmm. You didn't mean what you said, neither did I. But that kid, Joey Willow, bothered me. Yeah. He bothered me, too. You know, you're trouble, Romano. You're too sensitive. You mustn't let a little thing like that get under your skin. Are you all through? I'd be reasonable. Come back to work for me and I'll sweeten the ante. I'm not interested. Pay you two fifty a week and there'll be a bonus at the end of the year. You think I'd touch that money? Well, if you object to pushing the stuff, forget it. I'd just like to have you around. I'm not that pretty. Beauty is only skin deep. I like a man with character. Are you going to get out? Okay. I see where I made my mistake. You're the kind who won't touch gold, but I'll bet you'll take lead. Put away that gun, Les. What are you complaining about? 
You won't have to worry about that bad leg when they give you a set of wings. Happy landing, kiddo. Oh. Hiya, Mike. Sergeant Corbett. Uh Uh-huh. Hey, I heard you were out of town. Not anymore. Oh, come in. Does the uh, invitation include me? Did you have to bring him along? Yeah, Reynolds is an associate of mine, remember? And he just just told me a very interesting story. Seems you called him this afternoon about an Al Romano. Well? Or was that before or after he was killed? What? You heard me. Well, that's impossible. I just saw Al a couple of hours ago. And it was after he was knocked off at two o'clock. I can't believe it. Well, if you'd like to accompany us to the morgue... Who did it? That's what we'd like to know. Have you talked to Vic Lester? Who's he? He's a real smooth type. Looks like he bays and lanolin plus. Al was working for him. So? So he thinks this Lester character was mixed up in narcotics. He was. Now, take it easy. What did Romano see you about? He wanted me to find his wife. Did you walk out on him? Yes. Did he have any insurance? None that I know of. He was in the army, wasn't he? So? So he must have been covered. Well, even if he was, it's only for 10000 Only 10000 I suppose that was pin money to the Romano. No, you're nuts. Is he? Well, you don't believe him. Well, you got to admit he makes sense. After all, Romano's wife disappeared. Well, she'll turn up. You giving odds? What are you going to do about Lester? We'll get to him. Take care of it, Reynolds. Why can't you? I'm going to concentrate on Mrs. Romano. Well, forget it. I tell you, Lester's our man. Well, then I'll leave him to you and Reynolds. And if you guys can't handle him, we'll get the girl scout. Every day last year on the highways, an average of 103 Americans like yourself or those in your family were killed in automobile accidents. But a lot of highway deaths don't seem to bother us much unless someone in our own family is killed. We are shocked, however, and do become excited when an occasional disaster or catastrophe strikes and claims a large toll of life. Why? If a tornado over which man has no control strikes several states and kills 100 or 200 people, is that disaster any worse than 100 or 200 Americans being killed in a single day in automobile accidents? The daily toll of 103 deaths a day in traffic accidents is America's greatest shame. You can do your part in helping to fight this disaster on the highways by being a safer driver and by working in your community for strict law enforcement that means safer traveling for all of us. At all times, you must remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Sergeant Corbett and Detective Bill Reynolds informed Mike of the murder of Al Romano. Now the office of Lester Pharmaceuticals. Yeah? Hello, Lester. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the Falcon. Yeah, see, I got here before Bill Reynolds. Who's he? A cop friend of yours? No, he isn't. Oh. Nice place you've got here. You like it? I think it's lovely. What's back there? Just another office. Can I see it? Oh, the painting in there now. Well, I'll be real careful. Oh, I wouldn't hear if it might ruin your clothes. Well, that's a nice suit you're wearing. I guess this business pays off better than making books. Hmm? It does. What made you decide to switch? Well, I tell you, I read somewhere that people are always sick, so I figured this might be a good racket. Mm-hmm. Would you believe it if I No, thought... I wouldn't. I'm just going to tell you how much boric acid we handled. <laughs> that's a new name for it. What do you know about Al Romano's death? You mean something happened to Al? Yes, suddenly and violently. So he did it after all. What are you babbling about? Well, I don't know how close you were. Real close. He was my friend. Well, then you know he used to get these fits of depression about that game leg of his. What are you trying to hand me? Well, didn't he commit suicide? With two slugs in him? Oh, I didn't know that. I haven't seen a paper all day. Hey, do you think it could have been his wife? I heard they were having trouble. And I heard he had trouble with you. I hate to upset your apple tart wearing, but I've got an alibi. Oh, sure. Let's hear it. Tell me something. You're a private dick, aren't you? That's right. And cops are city employees? So? So when you pass your civil service exam, ask me again. It's been nice seeing you, fellow. I'm sorry you have to run. I 
tell you, Corbett, this Lester is our boy. If I will get you ten, he'd kill Romano. Well, I kind of doubt it, Mike. After all, you got no proof. Well, if you'd only talk to him... He doesn't have to. I did. Oh, oh, come on in, Reynolds. Well, what's the story? I just came from Lester's office. And? It's all on the up and up. Went through the place with a fine-tooth comb. Well, there must have been a few teeth missing. Quiet. What about Romano's murder? Got an alibi for the time. I don't believe it. Why didn't he spill it to me? I don't think he likes you. You know, that's possible. Now, never mind that. Let's have the dope. At the time Romano was killed, Lester was at the parable. Oh, no. How do you know? I checked with an usher. He remembered him. With 90 million people in the joint, he remembers Lester? Yes. Lester had some trouble with the check room. He thought he left his coat there. They found it later in the men's lounge. Oh, oh that's rich. What's wrong with it? Everything. It's too pop. Oh, you nuts. Anyone who looked the least bit like him could have passed muster. Well, then you think... I think Lester staged the entire bit. While he went over to kill Romano, he had one of his friends make the fuss at the theater. You don't know what you're talking about. Look, Reynolds. I'm lucky. Now, that's enough out of you two. Reynolds, suppose you check with Haskell, see if he's learned anything about Romano's life. Okay, Sergeant. I want to know as soon as they find her. Right. Look, Corbett, you're not buying that alibi. Well, have to, unless you can sell me something better. I tell you, Lester killed Al Romano. He had motive, he had opportunity. So did Mrs. Romano. Remember? Hey, wait a minute. Think of something? Yes. Now, Lester must be part of a narcotic ring. Well, you heard what Reynolds said. I don't care what he said. I tell you, he's a junk dealer. And somewhere in the chain, there's bound to be a weak link. You show me where. Well, it's just it. I don't know. Wait a minute. Hold everything. Al told me about a boy named Joey Willow. Now, suppose this Willow character talked. Well, he wouldn't to a cop. No, but he might to someone else. I'm going to give it the old college try. <laughs> What can I do for you? Is Joey Willow around? Yeah, I think so. I saw him about... Oh, there he is. Hey, hey, Joey. Yeah? There's a fellow here who wants to see you. Oh. You looking for me? Yeah, I am for Joey Willow. Who are you? Mike. I'm a buddy of Vic Lester. Oh, you're working for us? Who else? Let's go in the back. Okay. You sure we won't be disturbed? Positive. Me and the boss are like this. Wait till I turn on the light. Where's the stuff? Huh? Well, didn't Les send it over with you? Oh, sure, sure. I got it right here. Well, start pushing, boy. I'm low. Now, take it easy, Joey. I want to talk to you first. We'll talk later. Remember a boy named El Romano? Where's the stuff? Relax. Don't tell me to relax. What does Les think he's pulling anyway? Well, he's just being careful. You know, this could mean a prison term if I'm dealing with a stoolie. I'm no stoolie. I'm one of his best customers. You get all your junk from him? Yeah. Were you there this afternoon when he had his beef with El Romano? You asked too many questions. Well, I explained to you. Hey, you know what? I think you're a phony. Yeah, I don't think Lester sent you here at all. No, you're wrong, kid. Okay, we'll find out. Put down that phone. I said put down that phone. I suppose we go for a little ride. Phil? Phil? Yeah, what's the trouble? Uh, this guy's pushing me around. Get your hands off them. No, you don't understand. No, you don't understand. He's my brother. What do they call you, Weeping Willow? No, I beat it. That gun loaded? What do you think? I think I'd better go quietly. So long, fellas. I'll be seeing you. My brother kicked him out. I thought I'd better tell you. Well, you were right, Joey. He didn't get nothing out of me, Les. I appreciate it. Why don't you show it? With some stuff. Are well, you fresh out? And I always. Oh, that's tough, kid, because I don't have a grain in the place. What? I was supposed to pick up three ounces today, but I couldn't take delivery with that Mike Waring on my tail. <laughs> Why, that dirty no good. Yeah, it's guys like him that are spoiling your fun. Oh, boy, if I could get my hands on him again. Well, maybe you can. Huh? Suppose I make you a proposition. You take care of Waring, and I'll take care of you. Uh, what does that mean? Just what it sounded like. But I haven't got a gun. Well, that's no problem. Oh, no. I don't want it. Yeah. But don't come crying to me when you feel like you're dying. I'm dying now. Well, it's Waring's fault. With him out of the way, I could keep you supplied forever. No, I couldn't do it. Look at me. A shot will fix that up. Yeah, but you said you I didn't... I just happened to remember I got a loaded syringe in the safe. Let me have it. Will you get Waring? Just give me the stuff. Okay. Forty-one, right? Nine. Hey, 
Here you are. How good is this? The best. Practically 100% pure stuff. Where can Back I... Back office. I'll keep watch out here. Yeah. Your pal, let's... Ain't I, though? Find everything you need in the medicine chest. Well, where is it? Never mind, I got it. Need any help? Where do you think I am, an amateur? I know my way around. All right, hurry it up. I don't know if it's my imagination or what, but I feel a million percent better already. It ain't your imagination, kid. Oh. Roll down your sleeve. Huh? Oh, sure. You're a pal, Les. You said that before. I mean it. Oh, the way I feel now, I can lick the world. Then one man named Waring shouldn't be any problem at all. Here's the gun, Joey. Let's see what you can do. How did you get in here? Ah, you remember me, huh? How could I ever forget? You're Joey Willow. That's me, Joey Willow. How's the air up there? Huh? Offhand, I'd say you were flying at 10,000 feet. Get smart and I'll let you have it right now. Where'd you get that gun? <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know? That's why I asked. But I think Lester made a mistake. He should have come himself. You talk too much. Yeah, so I've been told. Well, I'm going to break you the habit. Oh, you can kill me. But what'll that get you? Enough. No, it won't. Lester isn't long for this world. They'll get to him sooner or later, and then where will you be? Shut up. What's the matter, Joey? The stuff wearing off? Listen, you... You don't get quite the wallop out of it you used to, huh? What'll you do when Lester can't keep you supplied? What? You'll feel like you're burning up. You know how it hits you. You can't eat, you can't sleep, you just want to die. Are you going to shut up? Look at you. Even now you're shaking so you couldn't hit the side of a bar. Yeah, I'll show you. <laughs> what did I tell you? Let go. Come on, drop it. Let me go. Or I'll break your arm. No, I, you have... All right, now sit down and behave yourself. Listen, where are you? Shut up. Who, who are you calling? I'll give you one guess. I didn't mean it. It's all Lester's fault. You don't know how it feels when you... 86 Precinct, Corbett. Hello, Sergeant. This is Waring. Where you been? Working, which is more than I can say for you fellas. I just solved your case. Did you now? Yes. I got a boy and a gun here who'll bear me out. Come again? I just latched onto the weapon that killed Al Romano. And who do you think sent it over? Mr. Vic Lester himself. Can you top that? Maybe I can. Suppose I told you that Lester was knocked off an hour ago. He what? And since you two didn't get along so well, maybe we ought to have a little talk. You want to come over by yourself, or should I send a car? What do you and your family do on a weekend? If you're average Americans, on a Saturday or Sunday, you enjoy your car. You take a short drive or a long trip. If you use your automobile a lot on weekends, you have a good idea how many millions of cars pour out onto the highways on weekends. That's one reason why the traffic death toll is so high, and why the utmost caution is needed in weekend driving more than any other time. Along with the good drivers, we see the speeders, the drinkers, the reckless ones, the inexperienced drivers, and those who won't yield an inch out on the road. As a result, deaths in weekend automobile accidents have increased sharply, about 2,600 annually. That is an average of 50 more fatalities every weekend in 1951 than in 1946. Injuries in Saturday and Sunday traffic accidents are now 200,000 greater in a year. On weekends particularly, remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Twenty minutes have passed since Mike received the general information that Vic Lester was murdered. And now at police headquarters, we find Sergeant Corbett filling him in on the details. Uh, here as we can figure it, Lester was killed at seven o'clock. Where were you at that time, Warren? Now listen, Reynolds. He's entitled to an answer. Well, you certainly don't think I killed him. Where's my motive? You thought he knocked off a pal of yours. He did. Well, I, uh... Oh, you're crazy. I saw Lester once met with enough. Well, where were you at 7 o'clock? On my way home. That's a hard one. Lay off, Reynolds. Look, I said lay off. He didn't kill Lester. Then who did? Let's take it from the top of the page. You better start, Mike. 
Well, we know for a fact that Lester killed Romano. How do we know that for a fact? By the gun I took off Joey Willow. He admitted Lester gave it to him. And the bullets match up with the slugs you removed from Romano's body. Yeah, go on. Well, when Lester felt I was getting too close for comfort, he steamed Joey Willow into gunning me. I'll buy that. Well, even Granny's right, Sergeant. Still doesn't solve anything. Doesn't it? No, we got another murder on our hands. If Lester killed Romano, who killed Lester? What about Joey Willow? I don't see it. Waring's his alibi. That's right. He was waiting for me at my place. Now, obviously, there's someone else we haven't thought of. Well, how about Mrs. Romano? Yeah. That makes sense. Not to me, it doesn't. Where's her motive? Well, Lester killed her husband. Oh, Corbett, make up your mind. First, you were looking for her because you felt Ruth was fed up with Al. Now you claim she was so madly in love with him, she wanted to avenge his murder. You can't have it both ways. So where do we go from here? We've looked high and low. Have we? What do you mean? I know we looked low when we found Joey Willow. But we haven't looked high. I don't get it. You do, don't you, Reynolds? I'm afraid I don't. Well, Lester never could have stayed in business without some form of protection. Doesn't it strike you strange that Al Romano was killed right after he agreed to talk to the police... Wouldn't that be the natural time? Sure. But who knew his plan? His wife did. No, she didn't. She only knew he was coming to see me. But there was one person who knew Romano was going to implicate Lester. Oh, you. What? Right after I phoned you, you must have called Lester and told him the worst. You're crazy. You told him he had to get rid of Romano before you got there. You figured that would solve everything. You don't believe him, do you, Corbin? I want to hear more. Then after Romano's death, when I kept insisting Lester was behind it, Reynolds told he had to get rid of Lester for his own protection. Look, Sergeant, you can listen to this if you want to, but I've got... Stay where you are. It is gun, Mike. It'll be a pleasure. Hey, look what I found. What do you make of this? What do I make of what? His service revolver. It's been fired recently. Let me see that. I I can explain that, Sergeant. Shut up. What do you bet the slug that killed Lester came from this gun? I wouldn't be at all surprised. Uh, do me a favor, Mike. Sure, Sergeant. Leave me and Reynolds alone for a while. I got some departmental business I want to take up with them. Alone. Come on, Corbett, cheer up. How about stopping somewhere for a beer? No, no, I don't feel like celebrating. And I think what the public will make of this. Oh, they'll understand. They know the thousands of decent things cops do, do every day of the year don't make news. It's only when a cop does something rotten that makes headlines. Still, he was a cop. Uh, well, Reynolds wouldn't have been any different if he was a fireman or a garbage collector. There are guys like him in every business in the world. You just can't keep them out. Yeah, but they're the exception, not the rule. Well, everybody knows that. Incidentally, what did he tell you? He was working with Lester for the past six months. When he thought you were getting too close for comfort, he decided to get rid of Lester so there'd be no trail leading back to him. He confessed all that, huh? And more. <laughs> you should have seen him. You couldn't ask for a more cooperative witness. Hmm. Then he was practically crying for the stenographer to get it all down. Oh, well, I can't see why he... Oh, wait a minute. What happened when I left you two alone? Well, this is strictly between us. Oh, sure. But I figured if Reynolds could forget for six months he was a cop, you were entitled to forget it for six minutes. Yeah. Actually, it was closer to 16. <laughs> Good night, Mike. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Irene. I'm glad you called. Now you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Uh, some boy I know thinks he can get away with murder. And I've got to prove that if he leaves a body behind, it's bound to be a dead giveaway. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon... Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the fatal fix. (laughs) 
It's late afternoon in New York, and a young man named Danny Hickok steps out of the elevator and jauntily strides toward the penthouse suite on the 28th floor of the Belmont. Yes, Danny's come up in the world. But right now, he's in for a letdown. Hello, Danny. How'd you get in here? I told the desk clerk I was your father. You got your nerve. Why, isn't it true? Don't blame me. What do you want? I got a call this morning from the police. Well? Have you any idea why they're looking for you? I must overpark. You're lying. Look, I don't have to take that from you. You're going to take a lot more. I found this note on your dresser. Look up George Pulaski. It's signed the Greek. Give me that. Is that the same Pulaski who was murdered last night? I wouldn't know. Now, look, Danny, you've got to tell me everything. There's nothing to tell. There is, if you believe the Morgan Committee. According to them, the crime syndicate in this country is headed by a man called the Greek. So? So how come he writes you notes? And how come I found this money in your drawer? Because you're nosy. There's $8,000 in this roll, Danny. Where did it come from? None of your business. Why, you little punk, who do you think you're talking to? Look, don't ever try that again, because father or not, the next time I'll let you have it. I mean it. Well, I'm going to get the truth if I have to. Ah, sorry, gents, but I did knock. (laughs) Mr. Hickok in the house? There's two of them. Well, the one I want is Danny. That's me. Ah, glad to know you, Danny. Wonder if you'd mind taking a little ride with me. Who the devil are you? Oh, that's right, I haven't introduced myself. The name's Corbett. Sergeant James Corbett, to give my full billing. Yeah, if you'd like to see my shield. Never mind. What's the beef? Well, to make a long story short, a fellow named George Pulaski was knocked off last night. So? So we got a tip you did it for the Greek. Oh, you're crazy. Mm, I've been accused of that before. There must be some mistake. And where'd he get the dough to run this place? I gave it to him. I'm his father. It won't wash, Mr. Hickok. We checked on you, too. I tell you, you're wrong. I'm the one you want. Who asked you to butt in? Shut up. Don't do me any favors. Look, Sergeant, there's an easy way to settle this. I got the proof in the bedroom. Hey, wait a minute. Where are you going? To get it. Hold it, Danny. All right, fella, come on out. I'm warning you. You're not out of there by the time I... What was that? That's what it sounded like. Give me a hand. You don't think... Come on. One, two... Sorry, Mr. Hickok. You better wait outside. I gotta call the coroner. That's the story, Mr. Waring. After the sergeant and I broke down the door, we... You uh, found Danny. Yes, I still don't understand why he did it. Well, it's pretty obvious. He was working for the Greek, and he knew it was the chair once they nabbed him. It's all my fault. If I'd done a better job, he wouldn't have turned out this way. Who's to say? I am. I want your help so as I can make it up to him. Well, isn't it a little late? Well, better late than never. I want you to find the man they call the Greek... Find the Greek? Yes, I want to know who and what he is. So do the police. They've been trying to identify him for years. Danny knew. Well, he certainly isn't going to spill it now. There must be some way. No, no, forget it. I told you that... I know the police have been trying to run him down for years. Well, maybe they're making the same mistakes over and over again. That should make it easier for you. Well, I wouldn't know where to start. I don't care about the where. The important thing is when... And here's $500 to do it now. The bartender is Joey Wilson. Oh, never mind. I see him. Hello, Joey. Well, what'd I do to rate this, huh? You're just lucky, I guess. Mind if I join you? I certainly do, Waring. I'm particular about the people I'm seen with. Well, obviously I'm not. What do you want? A little conversation. I haven't got time. Well, you better change your mind, Joey. You'll find yourself with nothing else but about ten years' worth at Little Sing Sing. Cops are still looking for the party who fixed that Bryson jury. I don't know nothing about it. Uh, my mistake. I heard you did it for the Greek. Well, you got rocks in your head. No, don't let the sound effects fool you, Joey. They're only pebbles. Where can I find the big boy? I ain't got the slightest idea. Okay. 
Let it be like you say. Too bad I got to talk to the cops. Wait a minute. Yeah? I tell you, I don't know who the Greek is. You can start me up the ladder. Go on home. What for? Wait for a phone call. You going to make the first contact for me? I'm not saying yes, I'm not saying no. Just go home and wait. Well, I'll give him ten more minutes. If he doesn't call by then, I'll... Hello? I'd like to talk to Mike Waring, please. Who is this? Never mind. You Waring? That's right. I understand you're trying to locate the Greek. You understand correctly. You know what'll happen to anyone who fingers him for you. You don't have to worry. This is business. He's got enough now to keep him occupied. Then why did you call? I need a stake. I'll pay you 500 bucks for the genuine article. Well, I don't know who the Greek is, but uh, I got an idea who does. You mean I have to do some more climbing? Yeah. So if you got a bad heart, I'd watch those steps. You still interested? Let's have it. How would I get the dough? How would you suggest? Mail it to Willie Smith, care of general delivery. Fair enough. I got your word? Yep. Well, if I was you, I'd see a man named Alvin Myers. He's got a place at the Beaumont. What makes you think he knows the Greek? If he don't, nobody does. This Myers is a chubby party. I think he'll spell if you put it to him the right way. And what exactly is the right way? Look, I can't write the script for you. Just giving you Myers. From there on, you're on your own. Yes, I'm not very bright, Mr. Waring, but I'm still rather puzzled at the reason for this visit. And mind you, I've enjoyed it. Oh, yeah, well, thanks. But I was told Alvin Myers could put me in touch with the Greek. Uh, you were told? By whom? A mutual friend. That's rather vague. It'll have to do. And uh, just why do you want to contact the Greek? I've got a deal for him. <laughs> Tell me something, Mr. Waring. Do I look weak-minded? No. Well, you must think so to come here with that story. What's wrong with it? Everything. Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a private detective? I am. Uh, currently, you're employed by one William Hickok. Where'd you hear that? Well, aren't you? No. Huh. Isn't that strange? I wonder where I got the idea. Yeah, I wonder, too. Well, I was given to understand shortly after his son committed suicide, Mr. Hickok came to you with a request that you find the Greek. For some unknown reason, he thinks our mysterious friend was involved. He was. Danny was working for him. Uh, that's only your opinion. The police share it with me. And I've got a feeling I'm accomplishing something they didn't. Oh, really? Yes. I think I'm talking to the Greek right now. Oh, that's the funniest thing I've heard yet. Well, you're easily amused. Are you the Greek? Oh, don't be ridiculous. Well, we'll soon find out. My informant led me to believe you uh, don't like being manhandled. What? Uh, he thought you might crack under a little pressure. And... You wouldn't dare. Well, you shouldn't have said that. My, it's... I... Are you the Greek? I asked you something. No, 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 no. Well, answer me. Are you the Greek? No. But you know who he is. On my word, I... <laughs> He'll kill me. Well, you better talk now. Who is he? His name is Vincent Romayo. Romayo? Yes. Where does he live? In Brooklyn, on Sycamore. Now, well, that's one for the book. Listen, Myers, if you're tossing me a curve, I'll be back. And believe me, you'll enjoy my next trip to the plate even less. <laughs> Yes, please. I'd like to see Mr. Romayo. Oh, sure. Hey, Papa! Papa! What's the matter, though? Uh, some man wants to see you. Well, why you make him wait outside? Tell him to come in. Oh, you like to come in, Mr. Uh, Waring. Oh, Papa, he'll be right out. Okay. Hey, sit down. Thanks. Oh, no, no, no. Take the other chair. This one's got a broken spring. Oh. I tell Papa he should fix it, but uh, all the time he's too busy. Yes, he huh? All the time he listens to ball games on the radio. All days, dodges, dodges, dodges. <laughs> hey, you a friend of Papa? 
Well, I wouldn't say that exactly. Uh, I thought that maybe you know him when he was in the ice business. Ice business? Oh, sure. Papa used to have a big company, three trucks. Now, wait a minute. Something wrong? I'm beginning to think so. Oh, Papa, this is Mr. Waring. Uh, Mike Waring. Mike Waring. Let me see. Don't I know this name from someplace? Sure. You private detective. That's right. Rosa, you know who this is? It's a falcon. Oh, no. Remember we read about them in the papers? Oh, my, my. Maybe he like a little wine. Oh, no, 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 thanks. Uh, oh, please, try. Rosa, make it herself. Mama, some vino for Mr. Wells. Oh, yeah? sure. Oh, really, Mr. Oh, Lover. it's no trouble. Wait till you taste. Uh, Rosa makes the best wine anybody in the whole United States. Yeah, I'm sure she does. Uh, but look at me, all the time I talk. I know even ask what I can do for you. Well, I, uh... I got a proposition for the Greek. You got a proposition for her? The Greek. No, Stan. Didn't you ever hear about him? Huh? He's supposed to head the rackets in this country. Oh, sure, I remember. They talk about him on the radio. He's a very bad man. Very bad man. Mm -hmm. You know anything about him? Uh, just what I hear. Uh, Mama don't let me listen too much. She says it's bad for my heart. Even the ball game. He's still talking, huh? <laughs> hey, you tried this, Mr. Waring. I got the one for you too, Papa. For such a little one. Uh, it's more than enough. You know what the doctors say. All right, all right. Well, Mr. Waring, you help. Yeah, sure. Salud. <sighs> ah, it's wonderful. <laughs> you hear, Mama? He lied. <laughs> Last year is much better. No, I can't believe that. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mr. Mayo... Uh, your wife tells me you were in the ice business. That's right. I retired four years ago. Mm -hmm. My son, Jimmy, he ran the business now. Uh -huh. You ever hear of a man named Danny Hickok? No. Oh, sure we do, Papa. Huh? You remember we read about him in the paper last week. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a young fellow who killed himself in a hotel. His father find him. Poor man. Ah, it's his own fault, Rosa. If he bring up boy like we bring up Jimmy, he don't go around the killing people. Well, you never know. Anyway, this Hickok was supposed to be on the Greek's payroll. Huh? Uh, I understand. Yeah, well, that makes two of us. As I was told, you were the Greek. Me? Who says such a thing? Well, it doesn't matter. Uh, you got to tell me. I send my boy Jimmy to beat him up. Not Papa. Oh, you hear what he said, yeah? Please. All right, all right, all right. It was just a joke. Forget it. Oh, uh, you go already? Yeah, I got to. Oh, but you know, finish your wine. You know life. Oh, yes, yes, sure I do. But I've got to get back to work. I'm sorry if I put you to any trouble. What's well, not trouble at all. Uh, maybe you come to Brooklyn again someday. Yeah, huh? sure. If the Dodgers win the pennant. <laughs> <laughs> what you mean, if? Arrivederci. Such a nice man. Yeah, yeah. I wish Jimmy could see him. Hey, Rose. I think I smell something burning. Oh, my chicken cacciatore. A, B, four, two, one... One, three. Yeah. Joey. That's right. What's the name of that new boy from Toledo? What boy? The one who knows all about man hunting. Oh, Monty Stevens. Ah. I'll tell him to get in touch with the Greek. I got a little job for him. Summer is just around the corner on the calendar. This year, we're getting a lucky break, too, because there are three three-day holiday weekends. Memorial Day, the 4th of July, and Labor Day. For most of us, that's fine, but we should always keep in mind that these long weekend holidays will be tragic times for some of us who start out gaily to enjoy them. For instance, last year, over the Labor Day weekend, which always lasts three days, the average was 153 deaths a day in traffic mishaps. So, take a lesson from the figures. And at all times, and particularly on long holiday weekends, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. An hour has passed since Mike Waring's meeting with Vincent Romayo. And now at Mike's apartment, he unhappily sums up the matter for his client. Well, that's the story, Hickok. It's a bum steer. When I got to Brooklyn, I found this couple and more wonderful pair you never met. And this Romayo wasn't the Greek. No, nope, Myers was pulling my leg. Well, where do we go from here? Well, where can we go? Every lead I had petered out. 
What about Alvin Myers? Why don't you see him again? No, no, that wouldn't be any use. He'd be ready for me now. No, it just looks as though... Say, wait a minute. Did you see the newspaper accounts of your son's suicide? No. Well, I read them all religiously. There was very little there. All it said was, when you and Sergeant Corbett broke down the door, you found Danny. We did. And there was nothing about your son committing suicide because he was implicated in the murder of Pulaski. Well? Well, Romayo knew that. He knew Danny was a gunman. How could he? I didn't know it myself. Yeah, that's just it. He must be the Greek. Holy cow, I've got to see Sergeant Corbett. Well, then you won't be needing me anymore? Well, he might want to talk to you. I'll be easier to find than the Greek. So long, Waring, and thanks again. You've been more help than you know. Oh, that you, Haskell? Surprise, it's me. Oh, I knew my luck couldn't last. Now, look, Mike, I just got a flash on a murder, so if you don't mind... You know, I... if uh, someone heard you, they'd think you didn't want me around. Yeah, well, they'd be right. Well, yeah, suppose I told you I discovered the identity of the Greek. You what? Uh, I spoke to him a couple of hours ago. And you're just telling me? Well, it didn't dawn on me till later. Uh, well, who is he? You'd never guess. First of all, he isn't Greek. And where do you suppose he lives? Oh, in a luxurious duplex on Park Avenue. Oh, wrong again. In a two-family house in Brooklyn on Sycamore. On Sycamore? Name wouldn't be Vincent Romayo, would it? How did you know? He was murdered 15 minutes ago. You're kidding. Sure, that's what the city pays me for, to make jokes. Who else knew Romayo was a Greek? No one. You sure? Well, I figured it out while I was talking to Hickok. That does it. What? You're out of your mind. Well, he had a motive, didn't he? I say after you left him, Hickok went over to Brooklyn and gave him a belt. Hey, that's a good one, Hickok belt. Mm, you were right when you said the city wasn't paying you to make jokes. Well, I'm not joking. If I will get you ten, Hickok's our boy. You got a bet. And here's where I collect. Yes, sir? Haskell, get a 37 out on William Hickok. I want him picked up immediately. Sergeant, I don't know anything about Romayo's murder. Well, you knew your son was working for the Greek. Yes. You felt he was responsible for his suicide. And... Yes, but I didn't kill him. When did you leave Waring's apartment? It must have been around three. It was closer to two. Thanks. Where'd you go from there? Home. Anybody see you? No, I live alone. So you've got no alibi. I don't need one. Well, we'll leave that for a jury to decide. Haskell, we're through here. Book him. Listen, Hickok. I'll get you out of this. I wish you wouldn't, Waring. You've done enough for me already. Well, I had to tell him. Sure you did. Yeah. You know something, Mike? I don't think he likes you. Well, I don't blame him. But he didn't kill the Greek. No? Then who did? Well, I have no idea. But as long as I found the Greek, maybe I can find his killer. I'll be seeing you, Sergeant. <laughs> Yes? Hello, Myers. Remember me? Unfortunately. Well, you might invite me in. I might, but I don't think I will. Oh, you're doing me an injustice. Now, get out. I just want to thank you. I found the Greek. You saw Romayo? Yeah, a couple of hours before the police did. Did they pick him up? Literally. According to what I hear, they had to use a sponge. What do you mean? He was in a million pieces. Someone took a shotgun to the man. How shocking. Yes, well, I imagine it doesn't make you feel too badly... With the Greek out of the picture, what becomes of his empire? I have the vaguest notion. Well, I've got a feeling you're the crown prince. Naturally, that makes you a suspect. Oh, you're insane. Mm -hmm. Well, then who do you suggest? What about your client? Hickok? Yes. Well, when I collect a fee from a man, naturally, I like to give him the benefit of any doubt. And uh, you wouldn't be above involving an innocent party? No, of course not. Got any suggestions? No. Well, I have. I think you'd look lovely in a frame. You wouldn't dare... Look, you said that once before. Remember what happened? I, 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 don't touch me. Who else knew Romayo was the Greek? What about his wife? Don't be ridiculous. I met the woman. You met him too, and he had you fooled. 
Well, didn't he? Well, you got a point there, Myers. Let's hope for your sake I don't get stuck on it. <laughs> Poor Papa. Why they do such a thing? Why they do it? All right, now, Mrs. Romayo, you've got to control yourself. Papa never hurt anybody. You see him, Mr. Waring. He was a good man. Well, let's open the question. What? Look, Mrs. Romayo, how much did you know of your husband's affairs? Everything. Well, the police believe your husband was the Greek. That's crazy. He was no Greek. You don't believe these stories, Mr. Waring. I tell you, Papa was a good man. Did he ever go out at all? No. He had a bad heart. Well, did strange people ever come to the house? Never. Only relatives and friends. Well, then he must have transacted all his business over the phone. It's not true. Look, Mrs. Romayo, you've got to face the facts. Papa was a good man. He got to church every Sunday. Sure, that left him six days a week to get into the trouble. Get out! Now, Mrs. Romayo... You say bad things about Papa. Get out! And don't ever come back! Oh, no. Yeah, I've got to talk to you, Corbett. I've just been out to Brooklyn to see Mrs. Romayo. Yeah, that makes it a double header for you today. Hey, you ought to be playing with the Giants. Listen, I'm serious. So am I. They could use an outfielder. Well, what'd you learn? Nothing. I'd swear she never knew her husband was mixed up in the rackets. Well, it doesn't make any difference. Hickok killed Romayo. I don't believe it. Well, who else is in the picture? Well, no one except... Hey, wait a minute. What do you think of Alvin Myers? What do you mean? What do I think of him? He was real close to the Greek. So close, he may have been the only one who knew his real identity. Oh, you're reaching, pal. I tell you... Yes? Call for you, Sergeant. I'm busy. It's Alvin Myers. I don't care... It's who? Alvin Myers. He said it was very important. Well, put him on. It's Myers. Speak of the devil. Go ahead, please. Sergeant Corbett? That's right. Uh, this is Alvin Myers. I demand police protection. Well, yeah, what's the trouble? There's someone lurking around my apartment. Just a few minutes ago, I... Uh, 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 Hello, Myers. Myers! What's wrong? Something's gone dead, and I don't think it's the phone. Let's go see for sure. There's a price tag on almost everything. The price tag on speed violations last year was 15,000 killed and 500,000 injured. This year, thousands of lives can be saved if you and millions of other motorists come to the sober realization that speed is the biggest killer on the highways and resolve to slow down before you or someone else pays the price that must be paid for it. At all times, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Fifteen minutes have passed since Alvin Myers phoned Sergeant Corbett and demanded police protection. Apparently, he needed it, for right in the midst of the call, there was a shot. And now, outside Myers' apartment. Uh, it's locked. What'd you expect? Get out of my way. This one ought to do it. You hear that? Hit those lights. Myers, you all right? Hey, we better call a doctor. Yeah, I'll take care of it. Uh, see what you can do for him. Yeah. Uh, uh, all right, all right. Now, take it easy. You'll be okay. Uh, Where does it hurt? Maybe I can eat. Uh, hey, Sergeant, wait a minute. Hold the phone. Yeah, what's the matter? There's nothing wrong with him. I'm hurt. That's yeah, your imagination. A bullet missed you by a mile. Yeah, what are you talking about? Look at that hole in the ceiling. The slug entered there, and it certainly didn't go through him first. Well, then he just fainted. Yeah, he's just a great big sissy. Come on, Myers, on your feet. Let me alone. I'll uh, leave you alone. Uh, what happened here? I don't know. Don't give us that. Who fired that shot at you? I tell you, I don't know. My back was to the window. Well, do you have any idea who might want to kill you? No. I have. It's obvious this is tied up with the Greek's murder. Oh, ridiculous. Well, it doesn't make sense otherwise. Doesn't make sense, period. All right, now let's take it from the beginning. First, Hickok's son commits suicide, and Hickok asked me to find the Greek. Which you did. Yeah, but only because Myers here helped me. That's not true. Shut up. It wasn't that simple, Sergeant. Before I got my lead to Myers, I did a lot of legwork. My first contact was Joey Wilson. Well, did he give you Myers? No, he told me to go home and wait for a phone call. And about an hour later, it came. Who was it? Well, that's just the trouble. He wouldn't leave his name. But he told me 
Myers could put me in touch with the Greek. Hey, sounds like he had a grudge against Myers. Well, he claimed he was doing it for dough. But you don't believe it? No. I got a hunch when we latch onto my mysterious phone caller, we'll be home. You got any idea who it could be, Myers? None at all. Well, it must be someone real close to you. He knew of your business relationship with the Greek. I don't see how there was none. Look, Sergeant, could you leave us alone for a couple of minutes? Uh, don't you dare. All right, then start talking. Who killed the Greek? Uh, I was under the impression it was Mr. Hickok. Well, Hickok couldn't have taken that shot at you. He's in jail. Then who did? I submit it was my mysterious phone caller. Oh, that's absurd. What are you getting at, Mike? Someone, let's call him Mr. X, knew Hickok wanted to locate the Greek, so he made it real easy for me. Why? Because he planned to kill the Greek himself, and he figured if Hickok knew the Greek's whereabouts, my client would get the credit. Well, where's that get us? We don't know who this Mr. X is. Oh, sure we do. Don't we, Myers? Do we? Well, you should. It was you. Huh. That's very amusing. You were my mysterious informant. Screwy as it sounds, you put me in touch with yourself. No. Yes. It was a nice piece of work you did, and you'll probably get the chair for it. And believe me, it couldn't happen to a more deserving character. Oh, I don't get it. I don't get it at all, Mike. Why'd Myers go through that whole routine? What do you mean, routine? Well, for instance, that business of the phone call. Well, he had to work it that way, Sergeant. He had to make it look as though he divulged the identity of the Greek under pressure. Yeah. Naturally, we'd be suspicious if he volunteered the information. And once Hickok knew who the Greek was, then Myers could safely kill him. Well, I still don't see his motive. Well, like Caesar, he was ambitious. He thought he could do a better job heading the rackets than the Greek. And that phony attempt on himself was designed to take the heat off. He knew we were bound to get back to him sooner or later. This way, he beat us to the punch. Yeah, he had it all figured out. Well, I wish I could. Well, what bothers you, little man? For one thing, Romayo. He, he doesn't add up. Oh, sure he does. Just a classic case of a man leading a double life. Only he did it real well. Hey, you, you think his wife knew? No, she convinced me that uh, he was legit. Now, does that uh, take care of all your questions? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks a lot. Yeah. Hey, wait, wait. Wait a minute. What about the check? Well, since you took care of finding the Greek and you took care of his killer... I think you deserve the honor of taking care of that, too. <laughs> Good night, Mike. The Case of the King of Hearts. The Case of the King of Hearts. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon, when Mike Waring learns that even when you play your cards right... Sometimes the game can be murder. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written today by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Chuck Webster as Sergeant Corbett. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Myrna. I'm glad you called. Now, I'll have to take a rain check, Angel. I've got a date for bridge. Mm-hmm. Some card I know thinks he can trump another man's queen, and with the joke of wild, the game can be murdered. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the King of Hearts. It's late afternoon in New York, and a handsome gent named Johnny King steps out of the elevator at the Carlton. Swipe, please. In the lead is an enterprising bellhop named Billy Matthews, carrying two light pieces of luggage. It seems like nothing to Billy, but in just a minute, he's going to have his hands full. That's it, Mr. King. If you'll wait till I turn on the lights. Hey, it's all right. Would you, uh, like me to open the window? Not a bad idea. Okay. Uh, 
Hey, it's quite a sight. They look like ants down there, don't they? Yes, sir. Maybe that's what they are. Look at them run. Mm -hmm. Most of them don't even know where they're going. I suppose not. Uh, will there be anything else, Mr. King? No. Oh, uh, wait a second. What's your name? Billy Matthews. You look like a bright boy, Billy. I bet you don't miss much that goes on around here. Oh, I keep my eyes open. How'd you like to make yourself 20 bucks? What would I have to do? Well, New York's a new town to me. I need someone to show me the ropes. What are you interested in? Women. Women? Mm Mm-hmm. Well, it figures. There must be a lot of rich dames living in a place like this. You must know them all. I'll get you, Mr. King. For instance, uh, who was the gal that got off the elevator as I came in? Good-looking blonde, about 5'3". That's the one. Her name is Grace Burton. Miss and Mrs. Mrs.? Mm Mm-hmm. Judging by that mink she was wearing, I'd say Papa was loaded. He is. What's he do? Uh, I don't know. One double or twenty? He's a gambler. Suppose Mr. Burton's away from home a good deal. Uh huh. Where does he bank? Well, after all, Mr. King, you couldn't expect me to know. It's worth another forty. Federal Trust on Park Avenue. I knew I picked the right boy. All right, kid, you got yourself eighty bucks. You want to go for a hundred and sixty? What can I lose? I warn you, this is going to be tough. I want to know Mrs. Burton's maiden name, where she went to school, who her friends are, what they do, in short. You want a complete case history? You think you can handle it? Well, you see, 160 is a tough number to remember. If you could make it an even two, I could practically guarantee results. <laughs> oh, you're quite a chiseler. Well, I don't intend to be a bellhop all my life. I can see that. Okay, Billy, you got yourself a deal. Now, let's see you deliver. <laughs> Yeah. Mr. King, this is Billy Matthews. Hiya, Billy. What's the score? We're leading. Three to nothing. Mrs. Burton's maiden name was Grace Sherman. Grace Sherman, hmm? Yeah, she went to Clinton High School in Chicago. What about college? Uh, Two years at Northwestern. Her best friend was an Alice Gordon. You must have been reading her mail. No more than I had to. It's pretty dull. What does she do to keep occupied? Uh, Nothing much. Matinees, shopping, the usual cook. But at four o'clock every day, you'll find her in a cocktail lounge downstairs. Alone? Yeah. She drinks Smirnoff. That's good to know. Well, wish me luck, kiddo. I'm off to the races. Waiting. Waiting. I'll be right with you, Mrs. Burton. Grace Sherman. What? Well, if you're not a sight for sore eyes... I beg your pardon. Well, aren't you Grace Sherman? Well, that was my maiden name. So you went and did it, hmm? Now, look, mister... Am I being snubbed or don't you recognize me? I'm afraid I don't. I'm Johnny King. Johnny King? We went to Clinton High together. It's funny that I don't remember. Well, you did go to Clinton. Yes. And as I recall, you and Alice Gordon went to Northwestern for a couple of years afterwards. Yes, that's right. I suppose I should be ashamed of myself. Well, I'm an easy man to forget. No, I wouldn't imagine so. Take my word for it. I've lived with me for 38 years. But if you'd rather... No, uh... no, please stay, mister. You see, you've forgotten again. King, Johnny King. (laughs) Won't you join me? Only if you let me buy you a drink. Waiter. Monsieur. Two uh, Smirnoff vodkas. You have a fantastic memory. Well, I've forgotten very little about you, Grace. Tell me, what have you been doing with yourself these last few years? Well, for one thing, I got married. Anyone I know? No, I don't think so. He's from New York. His name is Dick Burton. What's he doing? Oh, a little of this and that. He's out of town at the moment. And he lets a gorgeous creature like you run around loose? Oh, yes. Serve him right if he lost you. I don't think there's much danger in that. You never know. Y'all drinks, monsieur. Thanks. Uh, let's have two more of the same. Oh, really, Johnny? Look, we got to make up for lost time. Go on, waiter. Oui, monsieur. To us, Grace. I got a feeling that this time, you won't ever forget me. Want to go through the park again, Grace? I see. Let's go on forever. Keep going, Kelly. You know, Johnny, this is the first time I've ever ridden in a handsome cab. It never occurred to Vic. You hear from him lately? Yes, he wired. He's got reservations on the super chief for Friday. Well, that gives us five days. I guess we ought to be grateful for small favors. Why couldn't I go on seeing you? For one thing, I've run out of money. You what? 
Well, I only intended to stay in town for a week, but meeting you messed up my plans. How long would you stay if you had good money? That's a pretty ridiculous question. How long would you stay? As long as you wanted me to. If you weren't married... Yes? Oh, what difference does it make? I want to know, Johnny. Grace, I'm crazy about you. I never met anyone before who hit me the way you did. I'm glad, because that's how I feel, too. Grace. When Vic comes home, I'm going to tell him. No, you mustn't. Why not? Because it wouldn't be any use. You see, I'm married, too. You're married? Don't look at me like that. I can't get a divorce. She's in an insane asylum. Oh, no. Happened four years ago when she lost the baby. Oh, you poor darling. Oh, that's the way it works out sometimes. So, I guess it's back to Chicago for yours, truly. No. No, I won't let you go. I'll give you the money. What kind of a heel do you take me for? Consider it alone. No. Please, Johnny, please. If you love me. That's the one argument I can't answer. All right, Grace. I'll do what you want. That you, Grace? Yes, Vic. Where have you been? Shopping. Oh, I've got to get off my feet. You wouldn't believe how jammed the stores are. I should have imagined they'd have locked the doors and just waited on you. Mm-hmm. Would have paid them. In case you haven't kept tabs, you wrote $18,000 worth of checks last month. I what? Well, isn't this your signature? They're all made out to cash. Well, what's wrong with it? Nothing, but I'd like to know where the money went. Oh, various things. For example? Well, how can you expect me to remember? Well, if I spent eighteen grand, I would. Don't you trust me? Of course. Then I why don't. the third degree? Well, after all, baby, eighteen thousand. There you go harping on that again. Well, if you must know, I, I lost it gambling. You lost it gambling? Yes. Why should you have all the fun? Well, it isn't fun with me, sweetie. It's business. Who'd you drop the money to? I won't tell you. But you don't even have the faintest notion how to place a bet. Are you calling me a liar? No, I didn't mean it that way, but I got a right to know. Look, if you think I'm going to sit here while you make like Mr. District... Uh, Grace, where are you going? Grace! That's the story, Mike. When I asked Grace about the dough, she claimed she lost it gambling. Well, I want to know where that money went. Look, Vic, if you expect me to play I Spy on your wife... I know how you feel about this kind of a case, but I wouldn't ask you to touch it if I... I I've got the feeling Grace got herself involved in something she can't handle. You feel there's another man in the picture? I'll lay eight to five. You think you can find out his name, what he does for a living? Well, judging by those checks, I'd say he's promoting Grace. If he is, it's my fault. Now, let's not be noble. Well, I mean it. What kind of a life is it for a girl to be married to a gambler? With me traipsing all over the country, no wonder she got lonely. Well, assuming I find this man, what do you intend to do about it? It all depends. If he's the right guy... How could he be? And take money from your wife? Maybe he's in a jam. Happens now and then. <laughs> You're a strange bird, Vic. I'm no kid, Mike. I've been around. Maybe I was wrong getting married in my racket. But I did. And anything Grace wants, she can have. If she wants this guy... She can have him, too. <laughs> With six points. I think get to work on it like a good boy. Just let me know the score. Taxi. Hey, taxi. Take me to... Uh, wait a minute. Hey, you. Me? Yeah. Why don't we share the cab and save some dough? <laughs> How's that again? Well, aren't you tailing me? Well, if I was, Johnny, I wasn't doing too good a job. And I thought the Falcon was the best in the business. I thought so, too. Obviously, we were both wrong. Obviously. You working for Vic Burton? Would it do me any good to deny it? Not a bit. But you can tell your client his troubles are all over. I'm giving Grace back to him. Well, that's nice of you. Well, that's the sort of guy I am. Yeah, from here on in, he's got nothing to worry about. Of course, it cost him a few pennies, but think of the lesson he learned. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Johnny, I've got a hunch you've got yours to learn yet. Take care of yourself, fella. Wish I had time to... Mr. King. Uh, what are you doing here, Billy? I, uh, hear you checking out. Oh, where'd you hear that from? Desk clerk? Mistaken. Oh, I'm sure glad to hear that, Johnny. 
Johnny, are you this friendly with all the guests? Are you this friendly with all the bellhops? <laughs> Billy, you're wasting your time here. Boy like you could really go places. I like it here. I was wondering... Hey, hey, beat it. You expecting company? Go on, I said beat it. Just as you say, Mr. King. John. Hello, Mrs. Burton. Oh, hello, Billy. You sure I can't do anything else for you, Mr. King? No, you've done enough already. Well, you know me, always glad to be of service. If you need anything, yell. Darling, I'm sorry I broke in on you. It wasn't smart, Grace. I couldn't help myself. You've got to take me away. Why? What's up? Vic's gone to Mike Waring. So I discovered. You know? Yeah, I ran into him this morning. Well, you can't say that my timing is bad. I had a feeling the party was over. You're joking. Look, Grace, it's time you open those beautiful blue eyes to the facts of life. I'm not a very nice guy. But Johnny, I... No, it's true. Do you see, honey, I got only one talent, if you can call it that. I'm a pretty fair-looking boy. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not conceited about it. It's my stock and trade. Now it's time to move the shop to another spot. No. No, I won't let you go. Now, let's not be silly. I mean it, Johnny. I won't let you. I'll kill you first. Now, you wouldn't do that, would you? <laughs> you were just talking to hear yourself talk. Isn't that right? Oh, Johnny. Johnny, don't leave me. I'm sorry, baby. But it was nice while it lasted. Uh, this is Mr. King in 912. Billy Matthews around there? Uh, I'll have to check the bell, Captain. Will you hold on? Yeah, well, hurry it up, will you? Lover, when you're near me... Uh, Mr. King? Me. Yeah? I'm afraid he's busy. Will one of the other bellhops do? No, no, I want him. Look, as soon as you locate him, tell him... To... Oh! oh! Mr. King! Hello, Mike. Well, if it isn't Sergeant Corbin. Well, don't tell me I wasn't expected. Well, you were overdue. Haven't seen you in a week. Sit down. What's the point? I'll only be getting up again. You know of Vic Burton? Yeah, I just finished a little job for him. Did said job entail getting the lowdown on the late Johnny King? What do you mean, the late Johnny King? Well, what do people generally mean when they say the late? He's dead. He was gunned an hour ago. And you think... I that... think the job you did for Vic Burton supplied the motive... You're a real helpful kid, Mike. Isn't it a crime all your good deeds turn out to be murder? Two hours have passed since Mike Waring's client was nominated by the police as chief suspect for the murder of Johnny King. Now at headquarters, we find Vic Burton declining the honor with little thanks. What are you trying to do, frame me? Well, it won't work. I never even heard of this Johnny King. It won't wash, Vic. Corbett knows I tailed him for you. Thanks. Maybe I can do something for you someday. Don't be a chump, Burton. He had to tell us. Well, the whole thing's ridiculous. I never used a gun in my life. I wouldn't know how. I believe they include directions in every package. All you got to do is follow them. You're crazy. You know King was romancing your wife. It's a lie. They were just friends. Well, his friendship came pretty high. I understand it cost you 18 grand. I tell you, I didn't kill him. No, you hired a pro to do the job. How do you know that, Corbett? A bellboy at the hotel named Billy Matthews spotted him. About ten minutes before the shooting, he saw some character wearing a raincoat and carrying an umbrella get off at King's floor. He thought it was queer. What's so queer about that? It wasn't raining. Oh. And on the basis of that, you're ready to book Burton? Why, you got a better suspect? Sure, I can think of a dozen. Did you talk to his wife? Why, you feel she could have been responsible? You're out of your mind. Where's her motive? Well, suppose she was in love with this King character. Now, you're barking up the wrong tree, Corbett. If she was in love with him, she certainly wouldn't have had him killed. Unless... Uh... Well, I just thought of something. Wait a minute, Mike. Keep away from Grace. Now you're asking the impossible, Vic. Those are orders. If you can't follow them, you're fired. Well, I always wanted to go into business for myself. I'll be seeing you, fellas. Hello, Mrs. Burton. Who are you? Mike Waring. Oh, 
I take it Vic mentioned my name. May I come in? Yes, please. Thank you. Sit down, won't you? Did you see Vic? Yes, not more than ten minutes ago. He's in a bad spot, Angel. He didn't kill Johnny. There was only one way to convince the police. Oh. Give him a better suspect. You got any nominations? No. Uh, you wouldn't care to volunteer for the post yourself. What? Well, you were in love with Johnny. I don't deny that. Suppose he packed you in. Why should he? He did it to other women. You're lying. Oh, you mean you didn't know? What was there to know? That's not true. You going to stick to that story? Why shouldn't I? Because if I can disprove it, it's going to look awful sad for you. Get out of here. Look, Grace, I'm not enjoying this any more than you are. But unless I can dig up another suspect, Vic is going to fry. No. Yes. Now, do you think he killed Johnny? No. Well, then who does that leave? I thought you were the detective. Well, thanks for reminding me. I'll get busy on it right away. Uh, excuse me, you Billy Matthews? Yeah, that's right. Uh, glad to know you. I'm Mike Waring. Who? Mike Waring. You're not the one they call the Falcon. Yeah, but don't breathe it to a soul. Gee, this is a real pleasure, Mr. Waring. You working on a Johnny King murder? Mm-hmm. Where can we talk? Well, uh, I'm on duty now. Well, can't you knock off for five minutes? It's worth a thin. If, uh... Well, uh... Go on, take it. Oh, I don't want you to think I was holding you up. Oh, never entered my mind. Where can we go? Uh, there's a place behind the elevator. Uh, hey, Norris, uh, take over my station, will you? I have to help this gentleman here. How does this suit you? Oh, this is fine. Uh, smoke? Thanks. I uh, can't tell you what a bang I'm getting out of this. I always wanted to be a private dick myself. Uh, well, forget it. I got a feeling what with tips and jips you do better here. Yeah, but it must be exciting. No, most of the time it's real dull. How well did you know Mr. King? Well enough. He was a big sport. Heavy tipper, huh? You betcha. Mm-hmm. How did he meet Grace Burton? Uh, I couldn't say. Uh... I got 20 bucks that says you're too modest. Well... 20 uh... bucks, Billy. That's not to be sneezed at even by a bellhop. <laughs> it was all my fault. Come again? Uh, when he first registered here, he saw Mrs. Burton. He told me he thought he knew her from someplace. I guess I let him pump me. <laughs> it's hard to believe. Huh? You're a shrewdy, Billy. I can't see Johnny getting anything out of you that you didn't want to give. How much did he pay you? Oh, now, you got to understand, Mr. Waring. We bellboys don't do as well as you think. i got to supply my own uniform. Yeah, and you've got a widowed mother in Flatbush to support, I know. Did Johnny see much of Grace Burton? Practically every day. He really went for her. She was nuts about him. They have a fight? Not that I know of. You sure? Positive. About an hour before he was bumped, I saw them together, and they were real lovey-dovey. Yeah. Well, that kind of knocks my hunch in the head. Huh? Skip it. Listen, Billy, uh, here's my card. Uh-huh. Now, if you think of anything else, lift the phone, huh? Yeah, sure will. It was very interesting seeing you operate. Yeah, I told you it was real dull. Well, I don't know, Mr. Waring. You gave me a couple of ideas. Maybe someday they'll come in handy. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Burton. I didn't call for a bellboy. I know. I just dropped by to let you know all the fellas think it's a shame about your husband. Oh, well, thank them for me, Billy. I sure will. Oh, the cops are nuts. Mr. Burton wouldn't hurt a fly. Why, he never even said two words to Mr. King. Did you tell that to the police? What did he take me for, a blabbermouth? If I wanted to talk, I could tell plenty. Me and Johnny got along. Johnny? Yeah. Didn't you know we were real close? How do you think he found out about you? How? I got him the dope. You ought to keep your drawers locked. Why, you little sneak. I wouldn't try that again, Mrs. Now, get out of here. If I do, I go straight to Mike Waring. Suppose I told him you and Mr. King had a beef. What? I heard you threaten to kill him when he sloughed you off. You're lying. You know better. I was parked right outside his door. Of course, I could always have amnesia, but that'll cost you real dough. What do you call real dough, Billy? Five grand? Don't be a fool. I haven't got that kind of money. Are you kidding? You and your husband have a joint checking account at the Federal Trust. You don't miss a trick, do you? No, not a one. So start writing. And since you might have trouble spelling my name, just make it payable to cash.
four, one, one, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Homicide, Corbett. Hi, Sergeant. Who's this? Now, who else would it be? Oh, I was afraid of that. Did you see Mrs. Burton? Yep. What'd you find out? Nothing. I told you you were wasting your time. Yeah, well, I'm more convinced than ever that Vic didn't kill Johnny King. I'd like to see a little proof. Well, there must be something in King's past that supplies the motive. Oh, you're reaching, pal. Well, it figures that in his lifetime he must have offended many a husband. And you think one of them finally caught up with him while he was messing with Grace Burton? I do. <laughs> how convenient. Well, does it hurt to check? You tell me how. He had no record. What did you find in his room? You want a complete inventory? Yes. Eight custom-tailored suits, four pairs of shoes, 19 shirts, oh, no. six of the monograms. No, 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 never mind that. Did he keep a diary? There wasn't a scrap of paper in the joint. Well, I don't get a... Hold it, Sergeant. I've got company. Yes, come in. Listen, Mike, if you're all through... Well, I'm not. I'll be with you in just... Oh. Hello, Mike. Hey, what's going on there? Hello. Hello. Fifteen minutes ago, Mike's phone call to Sergeant Corbett was interrupted by a shot whereupon the good sergeant hustled over and discovered the reason for the disconnect. Oh. All right, Mike, here, take a swig of this. No. You must be hurt real bad to turn this down. It's bonded. Huh? Oh, Corbett. Why don't you ask me what happened? I don't have to. I was here. Oh. Oh, who taped my ribs? Me. You made it too tight. Oh, that's gratitude for you. Uh, did you get a look at the party? No, I didn't have a chance. wonder what he had against you. Not that I can't think of a dozen reasons. Uh, so can I. Must be getting close to the truth. From what you told me, you aren't getting close to anything. Uh, well, this proves Vic Burton couldn't have killed King. Does it? Well, it figures the same one who killed Johnny shot me. So? So Vic's in stir, isn't he? Aren't you forgetting the queer duck in the raincoat the bellboy saw? And you think Vic sent him around to knock me off? Why should he? To unsuspicion himself. Oh, you're out of your mind. Well, then who do you think was responsible? I have no idea, but if you help me into my coat, we'll see Grace Burton. Maybe she'll provide a little inspiration. Hello, Mrs. Burton. Are you back again, Billy? Oh, that's no way to talk. I'm up here to do you a favor. Don't bother. Well, if that's the way you feel... No, wait a minute. What is it? If I was you, I'd be real careful when I use a phone. They got a bug on it. A bug? It's tapped. I think your friend Mike Waring is responsible. What'd you tell him anyway? None of your business. Now, look, I can't protect you if I don't know. I'm only... Tr you expecting someone? No. Well, uh, thanks again, Mrs. Burton. If you want the papers, please let me know. Hello, Billy. Oh, Mr. Waring, I was just on my way out. Oh, stick around. We're going to have a ball. Oh, but i got to get back to work. It'll keep. What's the meaning of this? Uh, you know Sergeant Corbett? Sure she does. I still would like well, to know... Corbett what... and I thought you might be interested in the latest developments. An hour ago, someone took a shot at me. Oh, obviously. They missed. No, I make a real neat bandage. Uh, well, anyway, it came from the same gun that killed Johnny King. Well, then that proves that Vic didn't do it. That's what I claim. But Corbett here is still holding out for the queer little duck in the raincoat. The one I saw? Yeah, uh, tell me some more about him, Billy. Nothing more to tell. He's about five, three, or four, kind of chubby. Mm -hmm. Well, why didn't you question him when you saw him loitering in the hall? Well, I thought maybe he was a guest in a hotel. Uh, and, of course, you wouldn't risk offending. Look, I gotta get back to work. Now, what's I'm... your hurry? You always said you wanted to see how a detective operates. Well, that's on, kid. I'm operating. Now, what do we know for sure? Party named Johnny King was murdered, so the first question is... Who done it? I say Vic Burton. I say you're wrong. What was his motive? Revenge. That's not true. I'm inclined to agree with you, Grace. Want to make it unanimous, Billy? I wasn't paying attention. Well, you should. We're going to ask questions later. I submit the motive was money. What are you talking about? You gave me a list of the stuff you found in Johnny's room. What happened to the 18 grand Grace turned over to him? Well, you must have banked it. Then why didn't you find the passbook? Huh? No, a guy like Johnny would keep that money on him for a fast getaway. Right, Billy? How should I know? Well, you should, if anyone would. You killed him. Well, you're nuts. I swear in a Bible. Now, I save it not... for court. All right, Corbett. What are you standing there with your mouth open for? Close it and make like a cop. <laughs> What's the matter, Sergeant? You don't look happy. Oh, I ain't. 
When I think how that Billy Matthews had me fooled. Yeah, well, he was a real cutie. Imagine holding me up for 25 bucks and him with 18 grand stashed away. Oh, 23. Hmm? You're forgetting the five he got shaken down, Mrs. Burton. Oh, yeah. Well, Billy believed in making the most of his opportunities. As soon as he discovered King was checking out, he figured it was time to act. He knew no one would notice a bellboy around the hotel, so he went up to Johnny's room and let him have it. And the queer-looking duck in the rain color... That was a figment of his imagination. <laughs> you know, I could almost overlook his killing Johnny, but there's one thing I can't forgive him for. What's that? Taking that shot at you. Oh, why, Sergeant, I never dreamed you cared. I don't. I'm just sorry he missed. Oh. <laughs> Good night, Mike. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Doris. No, you have to include me out tonight. I've got to discuss an idea for a movie. Uh uh-uh. uh. No, I can't make it, Angel. No, I can't miss this. These characters have dreamed up the perfect switch. Instead of shooting pictures, they plan to shoot people. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Falling Star. It's Sunday afternoon in New York, and in his hotel suite, Ken Marlowe, who smashed his way to movie stardom by portraying a two-fisted drinking man is giving a sample of the performance that made him famous. I'm good. Only this time, I'll Ken isn't him. acting. I'll fix them all. When I get through with those crumbs, they'll know better than the horse or... Yeah? Well, it's about time, fella. That's what I thought, too. Huh? How are you, Ken? Oh, Jackie Howard. I'm sorry, I... I was expecting somebody else. I'll bet she's a lot prettier. Uh, nothing like that. I'm here with a wife. It's a funny thing. I didn't even know you were in town. I thought I left you on the West Coast. Well, haven't you heard? Trailways runs all over the country. All you got to do is I... buy a ticket. Uh, uh, look, Jackie, I, I I know what you want. I intended to... I intended to clean up that 15 grand I owe you before I left. It's 19. Oh, 15, 19. What's the difference? I'm good for it. I am. Someone told me you washed up at National Pictures. They're crazy. I'm in like Flynn. I'm glad to hear it. Of course, if they don't pick up your option, you see my position. As I said, you're into me for 19 grand. And as I said, I'm good for it. I can write my own ticket at any studio. Who is the number one box office draw on 49? You? Well, they are. No. There you were. That was 49, Ken. Three years is like 300 in Hollywood. Look, I tell you, you got nothing to worry about. National will pick up my option on the 23rd. And uh, when can I expect you to pick up these IOUs? Look, Jackie, if you're going to take that attitude, you can whistle for your dough. Nobody pushes me around. Oh, that's right. I forgot. You're a pretty tough boy in pictures. That's right. <laughs> well, luckily, I never go to the movies. <laughs> That's the idea. Let's understand each other, Ken. You owe me 19 grand. I expect to have it on the 23rd. If I don't, you'll Hello, be... Hello, darling, I'm back. Can't you say I'm busy, Laura? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, there's no need to apologize, Mrs. Marlowe. I'm Jackie Howard. How do you do? Uh, I've heard so much about you. <laughs> I wish I could say it wasn't true. Well, I'm sure I'm in the way, so if you'll excuse me... Oh, no, me. don't bother. I was just leaving. Well, what do you say, Ken? Shall we make it for a week from Friday? I'll do my best. That's all I ask. Well, this has been a real pleasure, Mrs. Marlowe. Maybe we'll uh, meet again. I hope so. A dirty bum. What was he doing here? None of your business. Darling, I don't want to make a noise like a wife, but if you owe Jackie Howard money... I said it's none of your business. Don't you understand? I'm only thinking of you if you're in a jam. Will you stop nagging? But all I want to do is... All you want to do is drive me crazy. (laughs) That's my coat. I'm going to find a place where a man can have a drink in peace. Oh, 
Hi, Steve. Can I help you? Yeah, is Mr. Marlowe or... Never mind, I see him. Hello, Ken. I've been looking for you. How do you watch, Steve? Just saw Laura. You're really living your part, aren't you, boy? What? The two-fisted He-Man. That's a beautiful shiner she's sporting. Somebody asked no, you. No, but I hate to see you louse her up. She's one in a million. Look how she stuck by you when you got in that mess out in Beverly Hills. Why don't you mind your own business, Steve? I try to. Well, you're not very good at it. I pay you 200 bucks a week to take care of my publicity. Haven't seen my name in print for months. Sometimes a publicity man does a job by keeping his client's name out of the papers. What kind of a crack is that? Who squared that beef with that girl in Santa Monica and that little chicken in Encino? Look, Steve, if you don't like it, you know what you can do. You know, I was just thinking, if National doesn't pick up your option, you're going to be in trouble. Who says so? I could go to Metro or Fox. Well, I got a scoop for you, boy. They wouldn't let you through the main gate. Your only chance is National. Now, you've got to behave yourself until they make up their minds. What kind of a jam did you get yourself into with Jackie Howard? Oh, so Laura's been blabbing. She hasn't been doing anything of the kind. I saw Jackie in the lobby. I put two and two together. Well, if you'd stop adding and pay more attention to business, we'd all be better off. Why don't you get me some publicity? Okay. Maybe you could stop a runaway horse. Stop be funny. I was just pointing out that putting three quarts of booze away isn't considered front page stuff anymore. You see, editors are funny. They wait expect... a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I got an idea. Suppose my life was threatened. Oh, forget it. Why? It sounds pretty good to me. Now, if we went to the cops... In case you haven't heard, Ken, horsing around with the law is a pretty serious matter. Okay. Isn't Mike Waring a buddy of yours? Who? That private dick they call a falcon. What about him? Think he'd play ball? No. No, Mike wouldn't touch anything that's phony. Why would he have to know? Suppose we cooked up some anonymous phone uh -uh, call. Uh-uh, it's out. Why? Because I thought of it. Ken, don't be ridiculous. Well, we're going to handle it my way. We'll hire the Falcon to be my bodyguard. Then you leak it to the papers. But it'll be worth a couple of columns. I don't like it, Ken. Well, I don't like paying your salary while I dream up the ideas. Now go call Waring. Set up a date. <laughs> That's the story, Mike. After the third phone call, Ken thought we ought to do something about it. I see. Uh, not that I was worried, you understand. I can take care of myself, but I had to think of Laura. Laura? My wife. You know how a gal worries. Mm -hmm. Tell me some more about these phone calls, Marlowe. Do you recognize the voice? Uh, no, I, I thought it was a gag at first. What convinced you otherwise? Well, this morning, someone took a pot shot at me while I was playing golf with Steve. Did you report it to the police? He didn't want to, Mike, but I insisted. What did they say? They thought it was a publicity stunt. Is this? No. You sure, Steve? Oh, now, look, Mike, you've known me for how many years? Ten, twelve? I think I've always leveled with you. Well, I'm sorry, but you can't blame me for being suspicious. Who did you talk to at headquarters? A Sergeant Corbett. Now, there's a phony if I ever met one. He happens to be a friend of mine. Well, no offense, old man. I only well, meant... skip it. Have you any idea who might be after you? No. You indulging in any extracurricular activities? What do you mean? Women. You take me for an idiot? I'm married to the greatest little gal in the world. Mm -hmm. You owe anybody any money? No, I'm the kind who pays his bills and always on the dot. You sound too good to be true. Huh? The more I hear of this, the more I'm convinced Corbett was right. Come again? The way you tell it, you're the most popular man in the class. Okay, if that's the way you feel, we'll get somebody else. There are other private detectives in New York. And better, too. Come on, Steve. I'm sorry, Mike. Uh, forget it. It's not your fault. Just say it's a clash of personalities. You coming, Steve? Yeah. So long, pal. I'll be seeing you. You bet. Give me a call before you leave town. I will. Well, I hope you're satisfied. I am. I think Waring's going to work out fine. So help me, you're nuts. Didn't you hear him say... I know say what he that... said. He thinks this is a publicity stunt. Well, all he caught was the prologue. He'll play ball after the first act. What are you talking about? Let's find a phone. I gotta cast the show. And I know just the boy to play the lead. Yeah? Is Tex Riley around? Who wants to know? Tell him it's Ken Marlowe. Why, you no good louse. How can you have the now nerve keep to... your shirt on, Tex. Bet you thought I forgot about that hundred bucks you loaned me before I went to Hollywood. Well, didn't you? No, this is my first trip to New York in six years. <laughs> you could have mailed it. Ah, that's too impersonal. I wanted to give it to you myself with a little bonus. How would you like to pick up an additional five hundred? That don't sound like the Ken Marlowe I know and hate. What do I have to do? Well, uh, 
I got a little part I'd like you to try out for. In a picture? It's a play I'm going to produce on my own. But first, I'd like to see a dress rehearsal. I don't get it. Well, my wife doesn't know anything about this, and I'd like to test her reaction. If you meet me in the Creighton lobby in 20 minutes, we'll run over the script. Hey, Laura, you better order some more ice. I'm running low. Oh, I can't. Uh, while you're at it, get some gin. You expecting someone? Well, Steve Nichols said he might drop around. Answer the door. Just a second. Well, hiya, sugar. I beg your pardon. I beg yours. Is Hollywood hot shot in? Who is it, Laura? What? Never I... mind, I'll announce myself. Hiya, Marlowe. Who the devil are you? Oh, just an autograph hound. Get out. Now, where'd I put my pencil? I had it right here a minute. Hey, look at what I found. Ken! What's the idea of the gun? Well, you can't say you weren't warned, Marlowe. You owe a friend of mine some dough. He told you to get it up. Since you did No, you can't. Get out of my way, sir. No. Will you stop butting in? I'm not afraid. You don't know what you're doing. Yes, I do. Look, lady, I got nothing against you. Now get out of the way. See what a hero he is, Ken? He's afraid of a woman half his size. I'm warning you, baby. If you don't get out of the way, I'll... Uh... Was that you, Haskell? No, it's me, Sergeant. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the falcon. Welcome to our little nest. Who writes your material? A fell out in California. He works real cheap. He should. So is Ken Marlowe around to see you this morning? Yeah. I spotted it for a publicity stunt. Yeah, that's what I thought at first, too, but I changed my mind. Someone tried to gun him an hour ago. Obviously, they didn't make it. How do you know? Well, I already talked to you, Mr. Marlowe. Uh, here's the jacket of the bullet we found in the room. What do you make of it? It's a blank. That's right, Mr. Waring. It's a blank. Marlowe was in no danger at all. Well, I guess that makes me the chump of the year. I guess it does. Well, I had a little help. Okay, Sarge, I'll be seeing you. I've got to thank the man who thought me so deserving. That's you, Laura? Uh, sorry to disappoint you, Marlowe. Ah, oh, hey, Waring. Sit down. No, thanks. I just dropped by to congratulate you on a magnificent performance. What's eating you? That was a beautiful job of sucking me in. You hired whoever took that shot at you. You're nuts. What I can't figure out is how your wife got in the act. What happened? She had to live apart for herself? Huh? I don't think she knew the bullet was a blank. You don't rate a gal like that. You got your nerve. Get out. Does that mean I'm fired? What do you think? Good. Because I hate to hit a client. <laughs> Come on, Marlowe. We can't end the scene with you on the floor. Your public would never stand for it. Now get up and make like a hero. Hiya, Mike. Oh, hi, Sergeant. I didn't expect to see you again today. Well, you know me. Always do the unexpected. Are you up to see Ken Marlowe? Yeah. What happened? Nothing worth talking about. Oh, you're too modest. All right, so I slapped him a couple of times. He had it coming. Maybe the slaps, but not the rest. What are you talking about? He's dead, Mike. He's what? He's out for all time. Were you wearing brass knucks? You're crazy. I wish I were. Better get your coat, fella. We got a long ride ahead. passed since Mike Waring was informed Ken Marlowe was dead. And now at the scene of the crime, Sergeant Corbett gives our hero some fatherly advice. Listen, Mike, I got it all figured out. I'm sure you'll be able to cop a plea. What are you babbling about? Well, it was self-defense, wasn't it? You didn't mean to kill him. And I didn't. When I left here, he was at the other end of the room. With the back of his head caved in? Well, that's just it, Corbett. How did it get that way? I didn't slug him from behind. Well, he must have hit it when he fell. Against what? That sofa? Wouldn't hurt a fly. Mm, how about the fireplace? No, he wasn't anywhere near it. There'd be bloodstains if he were. Well, there must be something around that caused the damage. The familiar blunt instrument? Yeah, let's see those fire tongs. Clean. Well, how about those bookends? 
Oh, not a stain on him. Listen, Mike, maybe the killer took the weapon with him. Does that mean you're absolving me? If we can come up with some evidence. You think the murderer might have walked off with it? Uh, I doubt it. A lot of blood flowed. I can't see anyone taking a chance on staining his clothes. Well, he didn't leave it around for us to find. Hey, wait a minute. There's something missing in this room. What? Well, that's just the trouble. I can't... I got it. Liquor. What are you talking about? Marlowe was a drinker. A boy like him would have at least one bottle around. Say, you're right. Where's the trash basket? Probably in the pantry. Well, let's get it. The killer might gamble. The next time the chambermaid came through, she'd dump it without a second glance. Yeah. Quite a collection, huh? There's our baby. Don't touch it. I won't. But mine are probably the only fingerprints that aren't on it. Everyone else who was up here must have been invited to help himself. Yeah, you're probably right. Uh, uh, Haskell, take this down to the lab. Well, now you're convinced I had nothing to do with this murder? Yeah. But if you didn't kill Marlowe, who did? That's what I intend to find out. Why don't you stay out of this, Mike? Oh, no. Whoever tailored this frame did a lovely job. It's just lucky I didn't fit the picture. You can't blame me if I want to get my hands on the artist. I tell you, Mike, I don't know anything about it. First I heard of it was when the cops phoned me, they found Ken's body. Whose bright idea was this publicity stunt in the first place, Steve? Ken's. I didn't want any part of it. Then why did you bring him to me? I couldn't help myself, Mike. I was working for the man. Yeah, that's another thing I don't understand. How come you tied up with a heel like Marlowe? The dough was good. When did you last get it? Huh? According to what I hear now, he was strictly no pay. When did you get your last salary check? Come on, Steve. It'll be easy enough to find out. Three months ago. Then why did you stick? He was on the skid. No, he wasn't. National had till Friday to pick up his option. You think they would have? Well, there's no telling. It was an even money bet. Well, who had it in for him? No one. Look, Steve, we're no longer playing games. If he owed you, Doe, he must have owed others. Jackie Howard. Who's Jackie Howard? He owns a gambling joint off the strip. Ken was into him for around 20 grand. Is this Howard character in town? Yeah, staying at the Brighton. Okay, we got one suspect. Let's try for two. What about Mrs. Marlowe? Don't talk like a chump. She was in love with the guy. Well, he certainly didn't rate a wife like that. Nobody does. Oh, sounds like you go for her yourself. Oh, don't be silly. You know I'm married. I suppose you feel like a big brother to her. That's exactly how I feel. You know something, Steve? I believe you. Thanks. No, I mean it. I think Laura explains why you continued working for Marlowe. Maybe that's why you knocked yourself out suppressing those items that would have ruined him. You didn't want her hurt, right? Yeah. Why, Steve? It won't make any sense to you, Mike. Oh, try me. First day I met her, she reminded me of Edith. Edith? My kid sister. She was married to a boy like Ken. And what happened to her? She's dead. Oh, sorry. Maybe she's better off. So you transferred your feelings to Laura? Anything wrong with that? No, I think it's very commendable. Still, I wonder how Laura feels about it. Huh? Yeah, why don't I find out? Oh, look, Mike, you're not to bother her. She knows nothing about Ken's murder. Yeah, well, I've only got your word for it, Steve. Not that I don't believe you understand. But I'd like to check these things for myself. I'll be seeing you, fella. Who is it? I'd like to see Laura Marlowe. There's no one here by that name. I know there is. This is Mike Waring, Mrs. Marlowe. Please go away. I've got to talk to you. Believe me, I wouldn't disturb you, but it's important. Come in. Thanks. How'd you know I was here? Sergeant Corbett told me. I uh, just saw Steve Nichols. And Steve sent you here? No, as a matter of fact, he insisted I leave you alone. Well, why'd you come? Because I want to solve your husband's murder. Ken meant nothing to you. He was a client. He tricked you. I still took his money. Besides, whoever killed him involved me. I don't forget things like that. Now tell me, what sort of a man was your husband? You must have some idea. Yes, but I like the woman's viewpoint. It was wonderful. Oh, come now, Angel. You can't expect me to buy that. I heard... I don't care what you heard. Sure, he took a drink once in a while. Is there anything wrong with that? What about slapping you around? He never did. Well, you can't blame me for jumping to conclusions. But take a blind man not to notice those bruises on your face and arm. How did you get them? I fell. Question is, did Ken push you? How dare you? Now look, Mrs. Marlowe, I don't mean to be obnoxious, but we've got a murder to solve. Did your husband play around on the outside? No. What about those stories? Lies, every one of them. 
They were started by his enemies. Oh, so he was just a misunderstood kid. No. I understood him, and that's all that counted. All right, Mrs. Marlowe. I think you're telling the truth. I'm overwhelmed. Well, you should be, because if Jackie Howard doesn't turn out to be a liar, I won't know what to do. Take care of yourself, Angel. I got to run along. Take the Telegram, Jackie Howard. 19, please. Telegram, Jackie Howard. Right here, boy. Hello, Jackie. My name is Mike Waring. What's the idea? Well, this was the only way I could think of to get acquainted. Now, I'd like to talk to you about Ken Marlowe. You a reporter? No, a private detective. Who are you representing? Myself. I understand Marlowe wasn't hot to you. Where, uh, do you understand that from? Oh, you mind holding that match? Thanks. Who told you Marlowe was into me? Steve Nichols. Well, I got a flash for Steve. Marlowe took care of those IOUs this morning. <laughs> I don't see how. He owed you 19 grand. According to the police, he had only 800 bucks in his checking account. He paid me in cash. Oh, got it out of his mattress, I suppose. Well, now that you mention it, I believe he did. <laughs> you know, Jackie, you're a welcome change from everybody else in this case. Am I? Yeah, they were telling the truth. Suppose I showed you the money. Well, you probably could. Boy like you always travels well healed. But can you prove it came from Marlowe? Well, let's look at it another way. Can you prove it didn't? If I can, it'll make you a choice suspect. <laughs> you know, Waring, there's one thing I don't like about New York. There must be something in the air that makes everybody run off at the mouth. I suppose it's different on the coast? Well, we have a special treatment for those who do. I'd like to see it. I'll have to discuss it uh, first with a fellow Californian. But uh, don't be discouraged. I'll get back to you. Yes? Hello, Steve. Oh, hiya, Jackie. I thought by now you'd be on your way back to the coast. You thought wrong. Say, you've got yourself a nice little spot here. Uh, look, Jackie, I don't want to seem rude, but I, I was just on my way out. Oh, relax. I won't stay long. Too bad about Ken, isn't it? Yeah. What do you think killed him? I have no idea. Oh, you must have, Steve. You're a bright boy. No, I'm not. Well, maybe you're right. Now, I had you pegs the kind who kept his nose clean. And don't I? Not in my book. Why don't you tell Mike Waring that Marlowe owed me money? He asked me. You're the real helpful type, aren't you? I do my best, yeah. Sometimes it doesn't pay. People don't appreciate it. Dirty. What's the matter, boy? Can't you catch your breath? Dirty. Maybe that's a good thing. You talk too much anyway. Little of Doc Howard's treatment may break the habit. Uh, hold still, Steve. I'm afraid this is gonna hurt. Two hours have passed since Steve Nichols received a little of Jackie Howard's specialized treatment. And now in Steve's hotel room, we find him recuperating from the visit. Where's the doctor? You sure you gave him the right room number? Now, take it easy, Laura. He'll be here. All right, Steve, try some of this. Come on, it's good for what ails you. Mike. Don't talk, just drink it down. I'm, I'm all right. How did you find me? She called me. How do you feel, darling? Laura... Here, raise your head. I'll fix the pillow. You're a doll. Who did it, Steve? Huh? Who gave you the shellacking? I don't know. Come on, Steve. You can't hold out. Look, must you question him now? Yes, I'm afraid I must. This is all tied up with your husband's murder. With Jackie Howard, wasn't it? Yes. Why did he do it? I have no idea. You know anything that would definitely mark him as Marlowe's killer? No. Are you sure, Steve? Anything at I all? I can't think of a thing. You've like... got to. It's our only chance of making this come out the way we want. I don't understand. Well, Jackie must have felt he had good reason to give Steve that beating. What do you mean? Well, you don't feel Laura killed her husband. What? Oh, now, look, Mike, I told uh, you. I take it you don't, so that brings us back to Jackie again. Now, what would be his motive in killing Marlowe? Well, Ken owed him money. 
Well, how could he be sure Marla wouldn't raise it? Ken couldn't. We were broke. But you would have been on easy street if National picked up his option. I don't think they would. Still, where there's life, there's hope. You told me they had till the 23rd. Today is the 18th. So? So Jackie would be sucker not to wait it out. What are you getting at? Well, if neither you nor Jackie killed your husband, who does that leave? I don't know. Yes, you do. It's Steve. No. Yes, that's why Howard gave him that pasting. He felt Steve cost him 19 grand. I don't believe it. You didn't do it, Steve. Tell me. Tell me, I gotta know. He's right, Laura. Why? Why? Ken never hurt you? No. But he hurt you. He was the only man I ever loved, and you killed him. But don't you see, honey? I was don't only trying... Don't touch me! I hate you! <laughs> oh, Laura, listen. Get away from me! Mike, explain to me. I can't. He was no good. <laughs> and she loved him. I'm sorry, Steve. I've got to call the police. <laughs> What do you say, Mike? Some more coffee? No, thanks, Sergeant. Oh, come on, come on. Cheer up. What are you dragging for? Well, you must have some idea. Steve Nichols was my friend. And he committed a murder. Well, there's no question about that. Tell me something. Was he in love with Laura? If he was, he was able to kid himself into believing it was strictly platonic. He thought Marlowe was hard-timing her. Well, he was right. No, he wasn't. You mean there was nothing to those stories about Marlowe playing around? Oh, they were true enough. But they didn't mean a thing to Laura. She was in love with him, and that's all that counted. This goes to prove it's awful dangerous to play God. You never know what's best for other people. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Nancy. Ah, uh, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Mm-hmm. Some boys are planning a surprise party for me, and I'll be hanged if I don't show up. But then again, I may be hanged if I do. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Happy Hoodlum. It's early evening in New York. And at Novak's, a smart gambling spot on New York's east side, the proprietor steps out of his office and surveys his domain. Obviously, what he sees doesn't please him. Let him... Yes, Mr. Novak? I'd like to see you. Sure. Harry, take the stick, will you? The boss and I got business to discuss. What's on your mind, Mr. Novak? Sit down. Thanks. Drink? You know I'm working. Is that what they call it? Huh? Take a look at these. That's last month's take. Uh, 374, 14.95. Not good. Well, that's the understatement of the year, Paletti. We're 14 grand off April. When I gave you the job as manager... I guaranteed I could double the take. Uh-huh. Well, you've got to understand, Mr. Novak. Things have changed. I couldn't figure out Lasker opening his joint just two blocks away. Well, what do you intend to do about it? What can I do? Of course, if this was the old days in Chicago, I could handle it easy enough. Like I once told Al, you know, Al Capone, there's only one way to deal with a character like Lasker. Take care of him. Take care of him? Well, you know what I mean. And uh, you do that for me? That's nothing. If I thought it would help, I'd cut off my right arm. I'm touched. I mean it. I'm not much for talking, but you've been real swell. All you got to do is say the word All and right, Paletti, I'm saying it. Take care of Lasker. What? Aren't those the right words? Oh, now, look, Mr. Novak. What's the trouble? You just said you'd do anything in the world for me. Well, uh... Well, suppose I talk to Alaska first. There's been too much talk already. I think a little action is indicated. You got a gun, Politi? Or will you use mine? The 
that you, Monty? Yes, again, Lasker. Who are you? Tony Folletti. Maybe you heard of me. I can't say I have. I work for Frank Novak. How did you get in here? Never mind. I'm here. That's all that counts. You may have a point there. They do pay off on results, don't they? However, Mr... Uh, Poletti. I'd advise uh-huh. you... Get away from that buzzer. Get away, Lasko, or I'll plug you. I mean it. You're kind of new at this, aren't you? Huh? What's the trouble? Couldn't Novak find a more qualified man? I'm doing all right. I got in here, didn't I? There must be an answer for that. Though it escapes me at the moment. What's on your mind? You ought to know. Novak warned you to shove up shop. Let me ask you something, Pledi. How much does Novak pay you? What difference does that make? You look like a bright boy. How would you like to go to work for me? What? You could start right now. Now Look, Lasker, if you think you can buy me off... I'll pay 5,000 for that gun. 5,000? I know Vac would never know. You're crazy. He'd find out in ten minutes. He needn't. Tell him you couldn't get to me. I don't like those kind of jokes, Lasker. I'm not joking. You said uh, ten grand? I said five. Where's the dough? In my desk. Uh Huh? I'll get it. It's in the top drawer. You'll find twelve one thousand dollar bills in an envelope. Just leave the other seven there. <laughs> Wouldn't I be a chump to do that? All right, Lasker. Well, you take it. Don't be a fool, Pletty. You didn't really think you were going to buy your way out of this? I certainly did. You couldn't walk out if you're alive. I'd like to see someone stop me. That would be fairly simple. You see, there's a recorder in the basement. Huh? It's taking down every word of this dialogue. When you get downstairs, you'll find a couple of boys ready to usher you out. You're lying. Think so? I'll be glad to show you the microphone. Uh. Neat, isn't it? Looks like a cigarette box, doesn't it? Why, you dirty... Now, there's no reason to be annoyed, Pletty. I'm still willing to stand by my end of the bargain. Keep $5,000 and... Let me have the gun. How do I know you won't have me knocked off? You have my word. (laughs) That's a hot one. Naturally, you wouldn't understand, but a gentleman's word is his bond. In any event, you have no choice. If Novak ever finds out, he'll kill me. You should have thought of that before. Now, may I have the gun, please? Thank you. Yes, I wouldn't be at all surprised if this proves a wonderful arrangement. You won't be sorry, Lasker. I'm the kind of guy, if you ask me to cut off my right arm, I... I may at that. All right, Pletty. Keep in touch. I'll have something for you real soon. But, uh, don't call us. We'll call you. Is that you, Pletty? No. He hasn't come back yet, Mr. Novak. That's funny, Red. Did he call in? Not that I know of. What time you got? Uh, quarter past seven. Better check his hotel. He should have... Want me to get it? Uh-uh, I'll get it. Yes? I'd like to talk to Frank Novak, please. This is Novak speaking. You got a Tony Paletti working for you? Why? I just thought you might be interested. He sold you out to Laska. Come again? Laska bought him off. Paid him 5000 Who is this? Well, let's just say I'm a troublemaker. You wouldn't care to leave your name? No, I don't think so. I just want to show my gratitude. That's all right, Novak. I'll get my kicks reading the papers. He hung up. Did you hear that, Red? Yeah. What do you think? I think I made a mistake in Pilotti. I never should have dealt with an amateur. Wire Brackett in Detroit and ask him to send us an expert. On second thought, ask him to send a couple. Yeah. We'll find enough work to keep him busy. Who is it? Mike Waring. The second. Hello, Marie. Hello. Suppose you want to see Tony. Is he in? Sit down. Thanks. Tony, you got a visitor. Who is it, honey? Come out and see. 
Uh, Mike Waring, you old so-and-so. What are you doing here? Well, I was in the neighborhood, so I thought I'd drop by. Well, if you're not a sight for sore eyes. Hey, Marie, put up a pot of coffee, will you, sweetie? No, don't bother. That's no bother at all. Right, honey? When have you ever been wrong? <laughs> what a girl. Always got a comeback. Yeah, so I've noticed. <laughs> hey, Mike, you remember that night around Arnheim when you, me, and Irving Fox went out on that patrol and Irving brought in that prisoner? Yeah, only he turned out to be a chicken colonel from the 76th Division. <laughs> oh, that was a night. I was just saying to Marie the other night, I haven't seen you or Irving in... Gee, it seems like years. Not to me. Get her. Always clowning. Yeah, that's me. Milton Burl. If you'll move, I'll set the table. Uh, uh, please don't trouble yourself. I just stopped by to see if everything's under control. Why shouldn't it be? Well, I don't know whether you've heard, soldier, but uh, you've got a namesake in town. There's another Tony Paletti. You call that news? According to the phone book, there are 11 of them in New York. Yeah, well, the one I had in mind works for a gambler named Frank Novak. So? So I got a rumble that a couple of hoods just moved in from Detroit looking for him. Now, what's that got to do with me? Nothing, I hope. But these boys are kind of trigger happy. I'd hate to see him make a mistake. <laughs> Listen, oh, Marie, ain't he the limit? Well, mistakes have happened before, Tony. That's how they finally caught up with Murder Incorporated. They got the wrong man. What do you think he should do? Well, I've already called the police, and if you people have no objection, I'd like to stick close for a couple of days. You're out of your mind. Why? I think it makes sense. Oh, now, look, honey, there's nothing to worry about. What do you mean there's nothing to worry about? Didn't you just hear him say? Now, Mike was always a great warrior. You should have seen him at Remagen. Well, just the same, Tony, if you don't mind. I do mind. The day I need a nursemaid, I'll be ready for the old soldier's home. Now, come on, Captain, drink your coffee. We're going to fight the Battle of the Bulge all over again. Eighty-six Precinct, Corbett. Hello, Sergeant. Mike Waring. Oh, I knew my luck couldn't hold out. The minute I woke up this morning, I read my horoscope and it said, beware. You know, if someone tapped this phone, they wouldn't realize how much you love me. I hide it real well, don't I? What's on your mind? What's the latest in that Tony Paletti mess? Well, we still don't know who's behind it. But from what I hear now, the boys who were imported for the job went back to Detroit. Where did you pick that up? Some stoolie. And he claims they left without finding Paletti? Yeah. Doesn't make sense. Now, look, Mike. Well, they wouldn't leave without doing their job, not pros. What's your interest in this, anyway? I told you I've got a buddy with the same handle. I'd hate for any accidents to happen. Oh, and you're getting to be a real old lady. I'm serious, Corbett. Yeah, so am I. All you need's a rocking chair, and you could pose for Whistler's mother. <laughs> Maybe I'll get you one for Christmas. <laughs> Taxi. Taxi. That's him, Dave. Let's go. Hey, cab. Oh. Going our way, fella? We'd be glad to give you a lift. No, thanks. What's the matter? You bashful? Well, who are you? Oh, that's unimportant. Question is, are you Tony Paletti? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I was just telling Dave here, I thought I'd recognize you. Remember me? No. Harry Froman. We did a hitch in the Navy together in the Pacific. Well, that's a good trick, because I was with the Army in the Atlantic. Atlantic, Pacific, what's the difference? It's all one world. Get in. Oh, you got the wrong Paletti. I don't think so. I tell you, you're making a mistake. We'll soon find out. Let's go. No. Okay, sucker. Then take it here. Five minutes have passed since Tony Paletti was shot down on a street corner. Now we find Mike Waring down at the morgue in answer to Sergeant Corbett's call. All right, Jim. What's the idea? If you think spending a Sunday afternoon here is my idea of fun, you're crazy. Well, I want you to identify a body. Who's? Well, that's for you to decide. All right, Haskell. Oh, no. You know him? You know I know him. It's Tony Paletti... I warned you about this. I had a hunch. I know, Mike, but what could we do? You refused police protection. Wouldn't even let you hang around. 
How did it happen? Well, there were like 8,000 eyewitnesses, so we got 8,000 different versions. The best we've been able to put together is your friend was waiting on the corner of Amsterdam and 73rd when this Blue Nash pulled up. The driver got out, let him have it, took off. Anybody get the license number? Yeah, yeah. Stolen from a doctor in Brooklyn. Left the keys in the car. <laughs> Seen enough? Yes, too much. Well, I ordered a pickup on the other Tony Paletti. He ought to know who was responsible. Yeah, but until you find him, you're stymied. Well, you aren't. Somebody's got to break the news to his wife. What? You mean Marie hasn't been told yet? No. Looks like you're elected. Oh, now listen, Corbett... He served in your outfit, Mike. That's the least you owe him. Now hop to it like a good kid. Hello, Marie. If you're looking for Tony, he isn't home. Yeah, well, do you mind if I come in? You want to wait? It's all right with me. I don't know why I put up with it. He has no consideration. Hmm? Promised he'd be home at five. Probably met a couple of boys, started to fight the war over again. Yeah, well, uh, listen, Marie, there's something I've got to tell you. What did he do? He didn't do anything. Don't kid me. I know Tony. He got himself in a mess and he sent you here to square it. Well, you can tell him for no, me. No, 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 you don't understand. Tony's been hurt. Where is he? Well... Where is he? I want to see him. You can't. I can't. No, he's dead. No. No. I'm sorry, Marie. I, I, I don't believe it. It's not true. Yes, I'm afraid it is. I identified him for the police. No, there must be some mistake. There was. They got the wrong Tony Paletti. W would you get me some water? Yeah, sure. And maybe you'd like something a little stronger? No, I'll be all right. Here you are. Thanks. Nobody could tell him anything. Well, actually, who could figure this would happen? You did. You warned him just a couple of days ago, but he was too smart to listen. He knew everything. Look, aren't you being a little hard on him? Think it's going to be easy for me? No, I suppose not. Well, look, have you got any family we can notify? Family? There's some friend or relative who could stay with you. Oh, I got a brother in Newark. I suppose we get him over here, huh? If you let me have his phone number... I'll call him myself. Listen, Marie. I promise you one thing. I'll get the party who was responsible. Uh, if it makes you feel better, go ahead. To me, it makes no difference. Won't bring Tony back, but you do what you like. Homicide, Corbett. It's me, Sergeant. Oh, how are you, Mike? Did you see Mrs. Paletti? Yep. How'd she take it? Just the way I expected. Carry on much? No, not Marie. She's your pioneer type. What's the news at your end? We just picked up Tony Paletti. Oh, you mean the genuine article? Yeah. I want to talk to him. Well, I haven't had a crack at him myself, but if you hurry, you can join the party. I try and make it real soon. This ain't going to get away with this. Don't think you are. I know my rights. Anyone abusing him, Paletti? Yeah, where do you come off pulling me in? Well, I told you you could go as soon as you answer a few questions. And I told you I'm not doing any talk. Now, listen, you. Now, take it easy, Corbett. He's right. What? If he won't cooperate, there's nothing you can do. Now you're being smart. Oh, you think so. Well, I can book you as a material witness. I wouldn't. No? What would you do, Mr. Waring? I would let him go. Now you talk. Shut up. Huh? So you'd let him go? Yeah. Of course, you can't help it if the boys catch up with him. Huh. What are you talking about? Yeah, those hoods from Detroit who gunned the other, Tony Paletti. I guess they must have discovered their mistake by now. Yeah. All right, Paletti, beat it. Huh. Well, well, well wait you've a been minute. complaining you wanted to leave. But don't come crying to us when you get a half a dozen slugs in your belly. Huh? Well, what are you waiting for? No. No, I don't want to go. This ain't a boarding house. You got to protect me. That's the law. It's your job to see nothing happens. What could happen? You know they're after me. Who? I don't know. Come on, Paletti. Who is it? I tell you, I don't know. Well, what do you think, Mike? Well, the man's obviously suffering from a persecution complex. Oh, well, then jail certainly isn't a place for him. Oh, definitely not. I'd get him out on the street as soon as possible. No, no. I, I, I'll tell you. 
It's Frank Novak. Why is Novak after you? He got some screwy idea. I sold him out. Did you? You take me for a rat? Yes. Who does Novak think you made the deal with? Gerald Lasker. Gerald Lasker, huh? Well, that ought to give us enough to go on. All right, Paletti, you can go. No, you said I could stay. You promised. They kill me if they get me outside. Okay, okay. Haskell, we're holding Paletti in protective custody. Give him the royal suite. Uh, All right, go on. They'll take care of you. Thanks, Sergeant. You won't be sorry. Don't give odds. Uh, nice boy. Who do you think tried to get him? Uh, sounds like Novak. Mm-hmm. Could be Lasker, too. Yeah, it could be. Well, you take one, I'll take the other. Let's hope that between us we wind up with the killer in the middle. Looking for someone, friend? Yeah, where does Frank Novak keep himself? Who? You heard me. You're just trying to pad your part. Is that his office? Wait a minute, Buster. Mr. Novak is busy. I think he'll make time for me. Look, I told you something. Hello, Novak. Well, if it isn't that high-flying bird, the falcon. I think he needs his wings clipped. Maybe you're the boy to do it. Maybe I That's am. That's enough, Red. Mr. Waring's an old friend of mine. Well, I wouldn't say that. Look, oh, you... It's all right, Red. I can handle this. Now get back to the floor. I'll be seeing you, mister. You got a date? <laughs> I don't think he likes you, Mike. Well, on the other hand, who does? You got a point there. Well, what brings you here? Tony Paletti. Huh? Not the one who worked for you, but the one who was murdered this afternoon. I got a feeling you were responsible. Oh, don't be silly. I didn't even know the man. No, neither did the killers. That was the trouble. They meant to get the other one. Where'd you pick that up? From the original. He told you I was sore at him? Weren't you? Of course not. Just between us, I think the man's crazy. Look, Novak, Tony Paletti was my friend. And naturally, you want to avenge his murder. I'm going to. You know, Mike, I like your attitude. I'm not clowning. Neither am I. Is that all you've got to say? No, I've got lots more. You have to keep. I just remembered I got a call to make. But drop around again when you're in the neighborhood. Only give us a little notice. Next time, I'd like to be ready for you. Never mind, Harold. I'll answer it. Hello, Lasker. Harold. Take it easy. This is a peaceful mission. I may be permitted my doubts. Okay. Have your boy frisk me. It's exactly what I had in mind. He's not the talkative type, is he? I prefer it that way. Sit down. Thank you. Drink? Why not? Was Mike Waring around to see you? No. Well, he will be. I just spoke with him. He's investigating the Tony Paletti murder. Tony Paletti? Seems there are a couple of them. This one was killed by mistake. I wonder who could have blundered. Me too. Waring thinks it was one of us. How absurd. That's what I said, but he didn't seem too convinced. I think he ought to be straightened out. I'm not sure I understand you, Novak. This guy Waring can get into more hair than the new Tony. If he gets into ours, the least they'll do is to close us up. That would be a pity. Yeah. Now, I know a couple of boys in Detroit. I know, thanks. What's the matter? Your Detroit friends don't seem to be too effective. I prefer the local product. Got someone in mind? Harold. You mean the dummy? As you pointed out, Harold isn't given to talk. But he is a craftsman. It's your tools, Harold. And give Mr. Novak a demonstration. Twenty minutes have passed since Mr. Lasker's boy, Harold, was instructed to give Mike Waring a demonstration of his talents. Now, as the unwilling subject and Sergeant Corbett get out of the elevator, they compare notes. So you talked to Novak, got nowhere, huh? Well, you admit you didn't do any better with Lasker. No, can't say as I did. Well, let's go in and hold a cup. Hey, your mouth's open. What do you make of these scratches? Huh? Near the lock. Someone used a gimmick there. Uh, Must have company. Yeah. Lights out? Uh Uh-huh. Wait till I get ready. Okay, kick it open. Get down. All right, Mike? Yeah. The flash came from behind the sofa. All right, you, come on out. Throw your gun in the middle of the floor. I'm going in after him. Don't make like a hero. 
It's your last chance, fella. I'm going to count to three. There he is. I think you got him. Don't move. He's awful quiet. Cover me while I hit the lights. You got him? Yeah, it looks like. Turn him over. Well, what do you know? You recognize him? Yeah, they call him the dummy. His name is Harold Plant. I wonder what he had against me. Well, you were trying to find Tony Paletti's killer. You think this is our boy? Well, he worked for Lasker. But I didn't see Lasker. No, but I bet Novak did. Five will get you ten. They planned this little surprise together. Yeah, you're probably right. Get him out of here, will you? Hey, where are you going? Over to see Mrs. Paletti. Just make sure you don't leave the place in a mess. Hello, Marie. It's you. Yeah, I just dropped by to report the latest. Come on in, Mike. Thanks. Oh, are you alone? No, my brother's here from Newark. He just stepped out to get a paper. Uh-huh. Did you make any arrangements for Tony's... Funeral? You don't have to be afraid to say the word. It's going to be Tuesday. You coming? Of course. If you think of anybody else that should be notified, let me know. Yeah, I'll call the boys myself. They almost had a double header. What do you mean? Some hood was waiting for me in my apartment. Luckily, Sergeant Corbett proved a better shot. Who was it? A boy they call the dummy. He works for Lasker. You think he was the one that killed Tony? No, I don't think so. For one thing, the eyewitnesses who saw the murder said Tony talked to the man who shot him. This boy was a mute. Maybe he was the one driving the car. I doubt it. Well, it's not important. As a matter of fact, it's very important. How did you know there were two men involved in Tony's murder? You said so. I don't see how I could have. I didn't know it myself. According to the reports, there was only one. So I made a mistake? Yes, you did, Angel. A bad one. What are you talking about? You were responsible for Tony's murder. You feel all right? And you heard me tell him his namesake was in trouble. It gave you ideas. You're crazy. You must have figured it was too good an opportunity to miss. Why did you do it, Marie? He loved you. You know, you can be pretty dull. Well, if you think I am, wait till you get a load of Sergeant Corbett. Get your coat. What for? We're going down to headquarters. Okay, if it'll make you happy. Yeah, uh, hold it. Just leave your bag right there. You wouldn't expect me to go out with a good-looking man without powdering my nose. I said drop it. Let go. Come on, Marie, drop it or I'll break your arm. No. Frankly, after your little stunt, I don't even need that much excuse. Just goes to show you. <laughs> Who'd ever have thunk this was just a case of a dame trying to get rid of her husband? Well, I would have if I'd had any brains. The signs were there all along, Corbett. I don't see where. You told me those hoods from Detroit left town without finding the other Tony Paletti. That should have been the tip-off. Oh, my information could have been wrong. Why'd she do it anyway? Well, that's what got me. Then I realized her brother from Newark must have supplied the motive. Huh? He wasn't her brother. You mean the two yes. of them? Yes. You suppose Tony knew? No, he was the trusting type. I can't help thinking it's all my fault. Ah, don't be a sap. Well, if I hadn't told them about the other Tony Paletti being hot, this stunt might never have occurred to Marie. Ah, don't kid yourself. When a dame like Mrs. Paletti makes up her mind about something, that's it. <laughs> She didn't need anyone to give her ideas. She had plenty of her own. And her last one was murder. Well, good night, Sergeant. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Paula. Now, you'll have to cancel me out tonight. I've got to do some antique collecting. Well, I don't like it either, but I have to go through with it if it kills me. Well, don't give up hope, Angel. It may at that. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the burning bridges. It's 
early afternoon in Manhattan and in New York's Chinatown, a rugged-looking gent named George Bridges pushes his way through a mob of Chinese and heads for a small shop. The legend Kessler's Imports is on the store window. Yes, sir? Can I help you? I don't think so. I'd like to see Mr. Kessler. Well, Mr. Kessler doesn't like to be disturbed unless it's very important. Well, if it isn't, I've traveled 3,000 miles for nothing. My name is George Bridges. Oh, well, just a second. Yeah, what is it, Joan? I'm sorry to bother you, Julian, but there's a gentleman out here to see Mr. Kessler. His name is George Bridges. Never heard of him. Oh, tell him I'm a friend of Oppenheimer in San Francisco. Yes, I heard of Julian. All right, Joan, show the gentleman in. If you'll just follow me, please. I'd love to. Ah, do come in, Mr. Bridges. Thanks. That will be all, John. Yes. Oh, this is a great pleasure. Well, this is my associate, Robert Julian. Glad to know you. Like what? Uh, do sit down. Thanks. And what can I do for you? I'm interested in buying a Hoshin Buddha. The Hoshin Buddha? Yeah, I understood you had one for sale. And where do you understand that from? Oppenheimer. Oh, he uh, told me to give this to you. Dear Kessler, this will serve to introduce George Bridges. He's interested in completing his collection of Buddhas. Anything you can do for him will be appreciated, Gustav Oppenheimer. Uh, Julian, don't we have another letter from Oppenheimer on the file? Yes. Get it like a good boy. Uh, what do you think this one is, a forgery? It never occurred to me, Mr. Bridges. But now that you mention it, it might be our investigation. Have you got it, Julian? Yeah. Uh, what do you think? Looks okay to me. Well, now that we've got that settled, let's get down to cases. What do you want for the Hoshin Buddha? Uh, this presupposes I have one for sale. Well, if you haven't, I'm wasting my time. Oh, just a second, Mr. Bridges. You realize a Hoshin Buddha comes very high. There are only four in existence. This one was uncovered during the Boxer Rebellion. All right, never mind the history lesson. What's your price? $250,000. You must think you're dealing with a chump. Perhaps you'd like to see a picture of it. I believe we have I one. don't have to. It figures from the size it couldn't hold more than five kilos of the stuff. Pardon? Look, Kessler, let's not do any more fencing, huh? I'll pay 70000 mm-hmm. You're trying to take advantage of me. You realize what five kilos would yield after cutting? 70000 Take it or leave it. What do you think, Julian? Take it. Very well, Mr. Bridges. I assume you have the money on you. I, am. Um... Got it at my hotel. When can you make delivery? Where are you staying? At the Brighton. Under what name? My own. Is that safe? Do I tell you how to run your business? <laughs> You're so right. And suppose we make it for tomorrow at 12. Okay, I'll see you then. Good day, sir. A nice meeting you, Julie. Yeah. Friendly guy, ain't he? Well, in my lifetime, I've discovered Julian. What's the matter? Something just occurred to me. You think he's a phony? If you step here in the corner, I'd like to show you something. What, sir? Take a look at my desk. You notice anything strange? No. Well, you're not very observant, Julian. You left the key on the intercom down. I what? Mm-hmm. Who's that found? The girl. You think she hurt? There's one way to find out. For Joan, dear. Yes, Mr. Kessler. Would you come in here? I have an errand for you. Of course. She heard. What are you going to do? I haven't made up my mind, Julian. But when I do, believe me, you'll be the first to know. Joan Calvin. Mm, try the sofa. I don't know if I'm doing the right thing. Oh, don't be frightened, darling. It is only a man's apartment. Oh, I didn't mean it that way. I did. Uh, can I offer you a Smirnoff martini? No, thanks. You don't know what you're missing. You see the vodka uh, in it? 
came here on business, Mr. Waring. I see. Well, you can't rule a man out for trying. What's your problem? Well, that's just it. I, I don't know. Come again? Well, you see, I work for an importing firm, and this morning my employer had a conference with a man from San Francisco. I don't know how it happened, but the intercom key was down. So you couldn't help eavesdropping, hmm? Well, yes. They were talking about something called the Hoshin Buddha. It, it dates back to the Wang Dynasty. This man was going to buy it for $70,000. Well, what's wrong with that? Art objects come high. I know. But I checked with the library, and there never was a Wang Dynasty. Oh, no wonder it's so rare. What's your employer's name? I... I can't tell you. I may be doing him an injustice. Now, look, Angel... Oh, please... Don't press me, Mr. Waring. Mm-hmm. What would you have me do? Well, right after this gentleman left, my employer called me into his office and gave me this. Grand Central Claim Department, not responsible for goods left over 30 days. Mm-hmm. You think this is for the Buddha? Uh-huh. Can you describe it for me? Oh, I can do better. I've got a picture. Uh, well, I've seen a million like this in Chinatown. Well, then why should this one be worth so much money? I don't know, Angel. Let me have the claim check. Well, Where do you live? At the Marlboro. All right, go home and wait. I'll be by as soon as I pick this thing up. Hey, buddy. Yeah. What do you want? Uh, I'd like to pick up this parcel, please. Uh, 4177. The Missouri yeah, just Express a leaving for Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, Chicago, and Points West. Now loading at gate 7. Have your ticket. Hey, what's taking so long? All right, keep your shirt on. I got it. Now, it's a funny thing. I remember checking this parcel for a guy this morning. You don't look nothing like him. He sent me to pick it up. Got any identification? Sure. Well, let's do. Michael Waring, 419. Yeah. Uh, sorry I troubled you, Mr. Waring, but company rules, you know. Oh, right, sure, it's all right. Thanks a lot. Yeah, that's okay. The Missouri Express, uh, leaving for uh, Pittsburgh, Cincinnati, uh, Chicago, uh, and Give me, Willie, you, uh, you wouldn't have to have, have, have a match. Seven. Yeah, sure. Thanks. So well, I keep the book. You're a real generous type kid, aren't you? What? Maybe I can do something for you. I doubt it. You never know. How about a lift? No, thanks. I'll take a cab. Come on, fella. You want to know why I'm keeping this hand in my pocket? Just walk on like nothing happened. Why? Is something going to? Will, if you don't behave yourself. Hold it. <laughs> well, make up your mind. I just came to the conclusion it'd be silly to waltz you all the way through this joint. Let's see what's behind that door, huh? Oh, can't you read? Don't get gay. Just pick them up and lay them down. Okay, corporal. Well, nice and quiet here. Eh? Well, I got a feeling it won't be for long. I got the same feeling. <clears throat> Where'd you get that parcel? What's it to you? Look, fella, don't get smart. Just lay it down on the floor. Now, back up a couple of steps. Oh, that's fine. Now, tell me something about yourself. Uh, sure, Julian. What did you call me? Julian, isn't that your name? How'd you know that? I got a great memory for faces. You were pointed out to me about nine years ago in Detroit when you were running with the Purple Mob. And what do they call you? Mike Waring. Where'd you get that claim check? I found it in the street. I asked you something. And I answered it. Joan Calvin gave it to you, didn't she? Look, Julian, I think I've been very patient. I don't know what you want. Get back. Well, you can't blame a guy for trying. No. In your place, I'd probably do the same. You see? But then I'm not in your place, and right now I wouldn't change for the world. <coughs> There's one thing I can't stand. It's a wise guy. <laughs> Kessler. When Joan didn't show up, I got suspicious. Then I saw this character come up and present the check. 
How far away were you, Julian? Maybe 30 feet. And from that distance, you knew immediately our little Johnny had sent him? That was very bright. I well, told you I had a hunch. When he picked up the parcel, I knew I was right. And how do you suppose Mr. Waring came to have the claim check? Why don't you ask Joan? Yes, I intend to. Unfortunately, she isn't here. Well, shall we see if the gods have been kind to us? The Hoshin Buddha. Isn't it lovely, Julian? It puts me in mind of a poem I once read. Puts me in mind of our friend George Bridges. He's still waiting, remember? Oh, yes. Uh, hand me that paperweight. You gonna open it now? Yes. Like you, I'm given to hunches. What are you talking about? Paperweight, please. I was wrong. What do you expect? I thought it might be empty. In any event, I think it needs testing. Careful, you don't want to take off. Huh? I don't think there's much danger of that. It's sugar. It's what? <laughs> See for yourself. We've been double-crossed. So it would appear. Now, where do you think it came from? Could be that Mike Waring. I don't see how, Julian. By your own admission, he had no time to make a substitution. When did you say you saw him? Around 4.30. And you didn't get back to the shop till 7. It was a quarter of... It's still two and a quarter hours to be accounted for. Look, are you accusing What's me... What's the old cliche, Julian? If the shoe fits... Look, Kessler, I don't have to take that kind of talk. Still $70,000 worth of merchandise has disappeared. It would be most interesting to know what happened to it. Aren't you forgetting Joan? Suppose she was working with Bridges. It's a possibility. Get up on high on the phone in San Francisco and ask him what he knows of the gentleman. Ask him yourself. I'm going over to see that wearing character. I wish you wouldn't. Look, I've got as much at stake in this thing as you have. I'm going to do my own checking. Why not wait to hear what Oppenheimer says? It'll keep. You just let me know what happens. I hope you'll do as much for me. Take care of yourself, Julian. I should hate for anything to happen to you. Get in the corner. All right, now you and I are going to have a nice long talk. <laughs> Come on, Julian, get up. We're just starting. I said on your feet. Julian. Julian. Hello, Tony. This is Mr. Waring. Look, be a good kid and call the police. I've got a visitor here who won't leave. No, no, no. It wouldn't do any good for you to talk to him. He's dead. I think we'll just have to wait for the cops. Can you stop in time? Ask yourself that question the next time you drive your car. If the car in front of you should jam on his brakes to avoid a stray dog, if a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, could you stop in time to save a life? Slippery roads, fog windshields, poor visibility, all of these factors mean that you must be more alert in following simple safety rules. Always get the feel of the road before you accelerate. Check on your driving habits. Be careful. Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. Back to the adventures of the Falcon. So, 
30 minutes have passed since Mike Waring slugged Robert Julian, only to discover that his man couldn't get off the floor. Now there's no question in Sergeant Corbett's mind but that our hero packs a deadly wallop. Oh, don't be a chump, Corbett. I didn't kill him. He was alive when you socked him. Yes, now he's dead. You explain it. What do you make of this? The man liked red neckties. Yeah, red shirts, too? Huh? Look under the tie. Notice the blood clot. Where did it come from? No, don't touch him. I just wanted to show you. Well, he was stabbed. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see that letter opener. Oh, don't be a fool. Nothing as wide as a letter opener made this incision. It was probably done by something like a nail file. Five will get you ten. It happened long before he got here. Well, then how did he make it over? Well, with an internal hemorrhage, he could have lived for hours. He might never have even known he was hurt. You said you ran into him earlier today. I did. He took that parcel away from me at Grand Central. Well, then what was the point of the return engagement? I don't know. You suppose your client does? You mean Joan Calvin? Yes. What do you know about her? Uh, everything. She looks like she posed for a Mo Judd hosiery ad. By you, this is everything? Well, isn't it enough? Not for me. Especially with people getting themselves knocked off in your apartment. I guess you're right, Corbett. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll split the assignment two ways. You take care of Julian, I'll take care of Joan. Give you my word, Mr. Waring. I've told you all I possibly can. Well, it ain't nearly enough, Angel. Now, since I met you, the most interesting things have happened. One, I get slugged as soon as I pick up your package. When I come to... I find the same character again waiting for me in my apartment. Oh, that's not my fault. How well did you know Julian? I didn't know him at all. Look, Joan, we're dealing with a murder now. We're not playing games. Who do you work for? Paul Kessler. Did Julian work for him, too? Yes. When did you last see him? Well, this morning at work before Mr. Kessler gave me that claim check. And you haven't seen him since? No. Okay, let's get back to Kessler. How did you get the job? I answered Nat. When was this? Oh, about three weeks ago. Did you notice anything out of line? Nothing, except that they seem to discourage business. Anytime a customer would walk in, they'd... Well, I guess the expression is brush him off. Yeah, but there was one customer they didn't slough off. Huh? The boy from San Francisco you heard on the intercom. What was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Come on, Joan, think. No, I... Wait, wait, wait a minute. Bridges. Bridges? Mm-hmm. Do you remember his first name? Uh, I, I think it was George. You think he killed Julian? Yeah, we'll cross those bridges when we get to the... I don't know what I said. After I see Kessler, I'm going home and wash my mouth out with soap. Sorry, sir. We're closed for the day. Maybe it'll pay you to open again. I hardly think so. Well, you never know. I might prove the customer of the year. I'm interested in the Buddha. Well, there's a shop on the corner. Well, it doesn't handle this kind. I'm looking for the Ho Shin Buddha. It's supposed to date back to the Wang Dynasty. It must be extremely rare. Yes, extremely. You see, there never was a Wang Dynasty. I'm afraid I don't follow you. Well, that's because you're 20 miles ahead. Won't you sit down, Mr. Uh... Waring, Mike Waring. Oh? Well, what can I do for you? I told you I'm interested in a Ho Shin Buddha. But by your own admission, there is no such thing. Now, strangely enough, there is. Matter of fact, I had my hands on it earlier today. Only someone took it away. Someone named Robert Julian. You know him? Yes, very well. Then you should be interested in learning that he was murdered. I beg your pardon? Well, you should beg his. He was stabbed to death. Where did this happen? That's what I'd like to know. When was the last time you saw him? At two this afternoon. He was waiting for me at my apartment at nine. Where do you suppose he was in the meantime? I have no idea. I have. I think he was here. Oh, you're mistaken, my friend. Well, that's possible. It happens often enough. By the way, what made that Buddha so valuable? I wouldn't know. Yet a girl named Joan Calvin who worked for you was supposed to pick it up. She showed me a picture of it. She did? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, it looks like this fella here. Well, please don't handle the merchandise. Oh, I'm so sorry it slipped. There's nothing in it. What did you expect? Well, I don't know exactly. But you had a customer for it. A man named George Bridges. How does he figure in this? Well, correct me if I'm wrong, but you're a detective. That's right. Then you should tell me. Now listen, Kessler. I'm so sorry. As I said before, it's past our closing hour. That'll be 498, please. Huh? For the Buddha you just destroyed. When you make a mistake, Mr. Waring, you should be prepared to pay for it. 498, please. <laughs> Kessler Imports. Are you, Kessler? Yes. George Bridges. Oh, how are you, Mr. Bridges? Not so hot. Your boy didn't show with the merchandise. Oh, there's been an unavoidable delay. Yeah, well, I'm due back on the coast. I got a reservation tomorrow at 8 on the El Capitan. You think you'll be able to deliver before then? It's very problematical. Look, Kessler, there are other dealers in New York. Now, either you want my business or you don't. Oh, I do. But you see, Julian met with an unfortunate accident. Poor fellow. He was murdered. How'd that happen? I have no idea. But I think a man named Michael Waring does. Uh, well, how does this Waring character affect our deal? <laughs> he doesn't. Just be patient, Mr. Bridges. I'll get to you in time. Second time this has happened today. Huh? Yes. Yeah, he had a gun too. You better change your lock. You better change your luck. He wound up murdered. You must be real tough. No, not me. I was scared stiff. Now, what's your name? Or maybe I can guess. Maybe you can. Well, I got a hunter, George Bridges from San Francisco. How'd you know that? I'm psychic. Look, what's your interest in this, Waring? Same as yours. No, it isn't. You're doing business with Kessler? In a manner of speaking. And you ought to know I didn't get the booty you picked up. Hey, wait a minute. You look like the guy in the baggage room. I look like a lot of people. Did you notice what happened to me afterwards? No. I was hijacked. Where's the booty now? I have no idea. Can you get me one? If the price is right. I'll pay 70000 Tell me something, Bridges. What makes that Buddha so valuable? Don't you know? I got an idea, but I'd like to confirm it. You know, Waring, I was right all along. You don't know from nothing. No, but I'm learning. Not nearly enough. If you're smart, you'll start minding your own business. This is my business. A man named Robert Julian was murdered right here. Yeah? Well, if you don't want some of the same treatment, you'll stop sticking your neck out. Now, out of my way. Hey, not so fast. Are you going to move? Now, put the gun away, Bridges. You wouldn't dare use it. A shot would bring down the house. Yes, you're so right. But you forget a gun has two ends. And under proper conditions, one end is as effective as the other. Oh. Let's see what I mean. Unbelievable as it may sound, accidents on the nation's highways in the last 10 years have killed more than 300,000 Americans like you and me. What's more, they have injured no fewer than 11 million men, women, and children, crippling several million of these victims for life. Help to protect your own life and the lives of your family by driving safely. Work for greater highway safety for yourself and for your family in your own community and state. And whenever you take the wheel of your own car, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Thirty minutes have passed since Mike entertained George Bridges in his apartment. And this was one Bridges Mike never should have attempted to cross. Oh. Oh, my head. 
What's the matter, boy? Can't you take it there anymore? You ought to be used to it by now. Oh, what are you doing here, Sergeant? Well, your elevator boy found you and gave us a buzz. Well, who did it this time? The boy who killed Julian. Huh? Now, look, Corbett, I've got it all figured out. His name is George Bridges. George Bridges. Yes, when you latch on to him, we'll be home. Oh, we will. Yes. Why do you suppose he killed Julian? To get his hands on that boot I told you about. Well, for your information, George Bridges happens to be a treasury agent. You what? He's head of the narcotics division. <laughs> you had him pegged as a killer. Oh, you're a real bloodhound, Mike. I'm going to get you a can of strong heart. Yeah, but if Bridges was a government boy, what does he want with me? Well, you know your talent for butting in. You must have wanted to find out if you were mixed up in this deal. Well, at least I'm making progress. Oh, you're making progress. Yep. I know now that Bridges didn't kill Julian. Oh, you're amazing. Mm-hmm. Let me at that phone. Who are you calling? My client. What? Joan Calvin? Yes. She can put the finger on the guilty party. If she doesn't lose her nerve, we can wrap this up in 15 minutes. Hello? Joan, this is Mike Waring. Oh, so glad you called, Mike. I'm getting frightened. Well, now, there's nothing to worry about, Angel. We'll have this thing solved in minutes if you'll only cooperate. Now, here's what I want you to do. Grab a cab and go down to Kessler's shop. But you told me I was fired. Well, I've got a new job for you. Now, be a good girl and go right to work. A second, please. Uh, Mr. Kessler. You seem surprised, my dear. Well, I think it's... Someone else? Well, after all, this is my establishment. I, I'm afraid I made a mistake. You've made several, my dear. Sit down. No, I'll come back later. I wouldn't think of it. You know, you're a very stupid girl, Joan. What? Really, I've misjudged you completely. Why did you hire Mike Waring? Now, look, Mr. Kessler... I'd be very interested in your reasoning. Of course, I have my own theory. And you're probably right. Mike! Hello, Angel. Almost missed my cue, didn't I? Oh, this is Sergeant Corbett. Are we interrupting anything? No, not at all. I bet you were asking Joan why she hired Waring. It's... Not too important. Well, you're not very flattering. She came to me because she was worried, and she had reason. She was mixed up with several unsavory characters. One of these characters subsequently got himself murdered. Poor Julian. Yes, well, at least his problems are over. Tell me, who do you think did it? I wouldn't know. Oh, now, you must have some idea. I'm afraid not. You told me the last time you saw Julian was at 2 o'clock this afternoon. That's right. How was he dressed? He was wearing a blue suit with uh, a yellow tie. Well, he's lying. He, he was wearing a red tie. Thanks, Angel. I knew you'd be helpful. Okay, Sergeant, what are you waiting for? What are you talking about? Well, don't you see who killed Julian? No. Well, who do you suppose dreamed up this double cross? Who's the smart wheel that made all the little cogs go? Well, her? No, him. Really, Mr. Waring? No, really, Mr. Kessler. You did a nice piece of work. This is no time for you to go modest on the people. All right, Sergeant, make like a policeman. I don't get it. I just don't get it at all. What's your problem, little man? Talk about your switches. This is the first time I can remember in this kind of a case where the girl didn't do it. Oh, Kessler was your most obvious suspect. Uh, proving that the most obvious suspect is guilty can get you barred from the union. Now, what made you latch on to him? Oh, it didn't make sense otherwise. According to Bridges, there was $70,000 worth of junk in that Buddha. Now, I ask you. Would a guy like Kessler trust a girl you hardly knew to pick it up? Why should he? Julian was available. 
Then it occurred to me this whole thing must have been a test, and Kessler substituted Buddha's. Only Julian didn't know. Now, and before he could find out, Kessler punctured his uh, vanity. Now, does that answer all your questions? Oh, all but one. How do you account for the mistake you made? Where did I make the mistake? Well, here there was a beautiful blonde in the case, and you wind up the evening with me. <laughs> now, if that ain't a boner, nothing is. My, oh, I'm so sorry. I hope I haven't kept you waiting. Well, what do you know? You say something, Corbett? <clears throat> no. Then I will. Good night, Sergeant. <laughs> Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lois. I'm glad you called. I will be able to make it tonight. No, you heard right, Angel. I've given up being a private detective. I've retired. Yeah, I'm going to learn to take it easy if it kills me. Once again, the adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Dirty Dollar. According to the World Almanac, New York is the city of churches. But you'd never guess it from my business. Instead of peace and quiet, all I've known is violence and death. Well... I've had it. No more playing cops and robbers for me. No more dealings with offbeat characters like Johnny Stone and Steve Haynes. Oh, in case you're curious, those are the two gentlemen getting out of the convertible on Forsyth Street. They're bookmakers bookies, which means they take layoff money. Bets other gamblers are afraid to handle. I guess you might say they live dangerously, which often makes me wonder how they're going to die. Listen, Johnny, maybe you better let me handle this. No. I don't like the way you look. I don't like it either, Steve, but what can I do? You know what I mean. Well, supposing I... I said no, Steve. I'll take care of Mr. Dollar myself. This the place? Yeah. Certainly doesn't believe in putting up a front, does he? That you, Lisa? I was just getting ready to... What's the matter, Paul? <clears throat> nothing, nothing, except this is a surprise. Isn't every day you get to entertain your boss? I suppose that's true. Shut up, Steve. Well, say, why don't you why don't you sit down? No, thanks, Paul. We can't stay long. Well, uh, well, can I get you a drink? Mm mm. You sure you wouldn't care for something? Now that you mention it, maybe I would. If it's all the same to you, I'll take how much is it, Steve? Two thousand five hundred sixty eight dollars and twenty three cents. Huh? Well, that's the way we figured it. I don't understand. You've got sticky fingers, Paul. Unfortunately, you've got them glued to my money. Wait, you're wrong. I, I've worked for you for nine months. Did, did I ever once get out of line? There's always a first time. I'll give you my word. What did you do with the I, money? I, I think I know, Johnny. Our friend Mr. Dollar is a student of the racing form. I see he picked Gallant Kid today at Hollywood. Is that how it went? I was going to return it, Johnny, honest. You never should have taken it in the first place. I trusted you, Paul. I don't let anyone abuse my confidence. Get up. No. I said get up. Let me go. Now, I'll give you 24 hours to make it good. $2,568.23. And I uh, want it to the last penny. Just a second. I said just a second. Is Mr. Stone in? He's asleep. Where is he? In there? Now, look, lady. Get your hands off me. Are you nuts. Now, get out of here before I... Hey, what's going on there? Nothing, Johnny. Go back to bed. I can handle this. No, you can't. So you are Johnny Stone. That's right. Well, this is a great... Hey, what's the idea? I wouldn't do that again. Why? 
Would you beat me up, too? Look, sister. Who are you? Lisa Dollar. Oh. You recognize the name? I believe my husband works for you. You got your tenses wrong. He did work for me. How could you do such a thing? How could you hit a man half your size just because he stood up to you? But you're not used to that, are you, Mr. Stone? What? You're used to people falling all over themselves to cooperate in your crooked deals. Is that what you think? That's what I know. But you don't frighten me. I've met men like you before. Bullies who always pick on someone weaker. Listen, sister. Shut up, Steve. Anything else you care to say? No, I think I've said enough. You just keep away from Paul. You are never to go near him again. Do you understand? I understand. Are you going crazy or something, Johnny? How could you take that, especially that slap in the puss? Forget it. Forget it? I wouldn't believe it if I didn't see it with my own eyes. That Paul must have really sold her a bill of goods. I guess she must trust him. Kind of nice, isn't it, Steve? Huh? Being able to believe what someone tells you. I don't get you. It's not important. Did she say her name was Lisa? Hey, you feel all right? I feel fine. Get the car. I'm going out. Without me? Without you. What's come over you, Johnny? I don't know. Maybe I'll have a better idea after I talk to a friend of mine. Now, get the car while I change. Yes, sir. Can I help you? Mike Waring around? Well, he's kind of busy at the moment. Where is he? In the back? Look, mister, he gave me strict orders. He wasn't to be... Hey, come back here. Don't you understand English? I said come... Hello, Mike. Well, if it isn't Johnny Stone. I was thinking about you today. Must be mental telepathy. Well, I'd ask you to sit down, but you anticipated. Drink? No. Don't let that stop you. It won't. How about doing a little gum chewing for me? <laughs> Haven't you heard, Johnny? I've retired. I heard, but I don't believe it. It's true. I've had it. I've had much too much. What are you talking about? This business of being a private dick finally got to me. They told me it would. You're not making sense. What are you, 36, 37? In this racket, you age fast. You see people at their worst. Guys would stab you in the back for two bits. Even with inflation. Yeah, and sometimes you even feel sorry for some of them. Especially when you find out what makes them tick. You must be bathing in lanolin plus. You're getting soft. I never claimed to be in your league. But that's the story. Now, suppose you hear mine. I hope it's more interesting. I had a boy, Paul Dollar, working for me. He's married to a girl named Lisa. Well, so far it ain't. I'd like you to find out everything you can about her. Johnny, you're not receiving me. I told you I quit. Why don't you get Martin Kane? This Lisa seems to be quite a gal, Mike. <laughs> she slapped me. Well, you sound like you enjoyed it. I did. You better watch yourself, Johnny. You're acting almost human. And that would never do? Never. Well, see what you can find out about it. Look, I told I you. I know you're retired. But, Mike, you're a betting man, aren't you? So? So, I believe all women are alike. They're only out for one thing. I'll give you a thousand to one. This Lisa Dollar is no different from the rest. Well, I'd be a sucker to refuse those odds. Okay, Johnny, keep your checkbook handy. You got yourself a bet. <laughs> Where to, lady? 1427. Oh, just a second. I hate to repeat myself. Oh, mister. Who, me? Yes, in case you're interested, I'm going home. Why would I be interested? Well, you must be. You've been following me for days. Oh, I'm slipping. I guess I was right to retire. Who are you? Mike Waring. And why are you doing this? Well, let's just say that... Hey, uh, will you people make up your mind? Either you want a cab or you don't? He's right. Mind if I join you? What? Well, you want to know why I'm making like a bird dog... All right. Thanks. Okay, driver, let's head uptown. I'll tell you when to stop. I don't know why I'm doing this. It makes absolutely no sense. You're curious. And you're a private detective. Well, let's say I was a private detective. Was? Now, skip it. I admit I'm acting like one now. You're working for Johnny Stone, aren't you? What makes you say that? Just the feeling I've got. Well, you're right. Peculiar boy, Johnny. He's very interested in you, Lisa. I'm overwhelmed. You should be. Johnny's got a very low opinion of mankind. Guess he's been burned too often. And your husband gave him a hot foot, too. What are you talking about? 
Why do you think Johnny slapped him around? Because Paul wouldn't cooperate in some crooked gambling scheme. Uh Uh-uh. Paul got his hand caught in a till. Now, just a moment. That's not true. Look, Mrs. Dollar, I've done a little investigating. It's happened before with Paul. Once in Des Moines, another time... But that was different. Mm -hmm. Well, there's one way to convince you. What's that? Your husband's IOUs. He owes over eight grand around town. How did you get these? Johnny made him good. I told him if it ever happened again, I'd... You'd what? Never mind. I hope your Mr. Stone is pleased with himself. No, this wasn't Johnny's idea. He didn't mean to... Driver, will you please stop? Now, look, Mrs. Dollard. All right, now, either you get out or I will. Okay, Angel. Thanks for the ride, anyway. Sorry you didn't enjoy it. Okay, buddy, take the lady home. you, Lisa? Yes, Paul? Where are you, friend? You said you'd be home by five. I guess I'm undependable. But then so are you. Why did you do it, Paul? Why did I do what? Lie to me. I lied to you? There wasn't a word of truth in that story you told me about Johnny Stone. I made a fool of myself. Honey, I swear... Oh, don't deny it, Paul. I saw the IOUs. You've been gambling again. Oh, Lisa, I'm no good. I don't know why you put up with me. I'm not going to. What are you doing? I'm leaving. Oh, no, you can't. I won't let you. I swear I'll never do it again. Please, please get out of my way. I know I've said it before, but this time I mean it. I couldn't live without you. Lisa, please don't do it. It's no use, Paul. We've played this scene for the last time. Just give me one more chance. You won't be sorry. Please, darling. You know how I love you. No, don't, don't, don't. I'll make it up to you. You won't ever regret it. I... I... I've got to have time to think it over, Paul. But you'll be back. Say you'll be back. Let me go. No. Not until you promise. All right, Paul. I promise. One way or the other, I'll be back. Now let me go. Hello? Is that you, Trudy? Yes. This is Paul Dollar. Is Lisa there? Oh, no. Now, you got to tell me the truth. Have you seen her? Well, she was here, Paul, but she went out at 9 o'clock. Did she say where she was going? No. She promised to come home, but it's almost 11 now. Oh, don't worry, Paul. I'm sure she's all right. You're lying to me. She is there. No. Please, Trudy, let me talk with you. Talk to... What is it, Paul? Paul! They say a dollar doesn't go very far these days. Well, this one was going nowhere. Two hours later, they had his wife down at headquarters. When I waltzed in, Sergeant Corbett was finishing his pitch. It's a lovely bit of salesmanship. Now, you've got to understand, Mrs. Dollar, I'm your friend. Thank you. No, I mean it. I don't blame you at all. Why, anybody in your place would have been fed up years ago. Your husband was no good. He was weak. Well, it's the same thing. No, it isn't, Sergeant. Paul meant well. He just couldn't help himself. Well, the point is... The point is, he's trying to trap you, Lisa. Well, if it ain't that high-flying bird, the falcon. I thought you retired. I have. I just dropped by the kibitz. Obviously, you know the lady. Obviously. How are they treating you, Lisa? All right. Why don't you tell them the truth? We're just getting ready to beat her when you walked in. Have you booked him? Yeah. The charge is murder in the first. Now, if she tells the truth, she might get off with 10 to 20. I have. I didn't kill my husband. You were going to leave him? No. Your bags were packed. I've been packing and unpacking them for the last eight years. And when you got fed up playing mama, you murdered him. Isn't that a little drastic? She could have divorced him. Maybe he wouldn't let her go. Oh, for Pete's sake, Corbett, why... Excuse me, Sergeant. Is it necessary that he stay? Well, not if you don't want him. I don't. Now, look, Mrs. Dollar, I want to help. After all, this is partly my fault. Come again? Well, I was the one who told her that Paul was up to his old tricks. How'd you find that out? I was doing a favor for a friend. Who? I'm no name dropper. You're forgetting something, aren't you? Concealing evidence in a murder case is a little more serious than passing a red light. You don't have to tell me that. I thought maybe it slipped your mind since you retired. 
Now, who's the guy, and why did he want you to check up on Mrs. Dollar? It doesn't have any bearing on this. Oh, doesn't it? It supplies a whole new motive. Suppose this man was in love with her. That's ridiculous. You know who he is? Yes, Johnny Stone. Oh, thanks a heap. Haskell, get a car ready. I want to pick up Johnny Stone. You're making a mistake. When I need your advice, Mr. Waring, I'll come and get it. Now, why don't you find yourself a park bench and wait like Barney Baruch? Hi, Johnny. Oh, Mike. Come on in. Well, I see I got here before Sergeant Corbett. Come again? He's on his way. What are you babbling about? Well, haven't you heard? Paul Dollar was murdered. So what's that got to do with me? Well, this may come as something of, of a shock, Johnny, but uh, you're a potential suspect. When was the last time you saw Lisa Dollar? Why? Because the police are inclined to think you two might have had a romance cooking. Oh, they're crazy. I only saw her that once. And that's the time you fell. I didn't fall. And why did you ask me to check on her? Oh, let's just say I was intrigued. Well, you say it. I wouldn't attempt to sell that to Corbett. Did you kill her husband? Mike, why should I? Well, you know human nature. You might have figured she'd never leave Paul as long as he needed her, and that would be forever. Well, you know a little about human nature yourself. Do I impress you as the kind of guy who'd let a woman take the rap? Why not? You're late. How did you get here before me? I got connections. I know a motorman on the Lexington Avenue Express. Mm, Taint funny, McGee. All right, Johnny, get your coat. Is this a pin? That's what it is. Now, let's shove off. Well, it's about time, Mike. What? Uh, Hold it. Don't move. You've blown your cork, Steve. Just stand still. Okay, sit down. Thanks. You won't think me nosy if I ask what's the idea. I just heard the cops picked up Johnny for Paul Dollar's murder. And you think I had something to do with it? No one else knew he was interested in that dame. She did. You're lying. Okay, have it your way. I'm gonna. He didn't kill Paul. Well, since you seem to know so much, who did? Me. Well, why don't you say something? Do you want to turn me in? How far would I get? You mean the gun? Forget it. Here. Huh? Well, what are we waiting for? Let's go. Relax. Why did you do it? What difference does it make? We're going to ask you that at the headquarters. Okay. I was a lush till I met Johnny. It was 14 years ago. He straightened me out. I swore someday I'd make it up to him. And he told you he wanted Paul Dollar knocked off? He told me nothing of the kind. It was my own idea. I got eyes. I could see he went for Lisa. No, it won't wash, Steve. The cops will never buy it. Why not? I'm handing him a confession. Yeah, that's just the trouble. An unsubstantiated confession to murder is worthless. There has to be at least one outside piece of evidence linking you to the crime. Is this the same gun? No, I, I got rid of the other. Where? Down at Coney Island. Huh, that's pretty vague. Well, you couldn't expect me to make a map of the place? No, that's no good, Steve. I tell you, I killed him. I'm still waiting to be convinced. I shot him twice. That was in the papers. It was a thirty-eight. Likewise. Look, you got to believe me. Johnny had not... Wait a minute. How would it be if I dug up a witness? You mean there was one? Yeah. Where didn't I think of him before? Who? Never you mind. Just set up a date for us at headquarters. I'll meet you there in 20 minutes. Steve. What's the good word? Is Cokey Myers around? He's in the back. Thanks. What do you want with that crumb, anyway? Just be a good fellow and see we're not bothered. Are well, that your doc? Sorry to disappoint you, Cokey. Oh, hi, Steve. Uh, if you're looking for more... No, you... I'm looking for you. Uh-huh. Yeah? Smoke? Uh, thanks. I got a job right down your alley. I uh, better get somebody else, Steve. My nerves are shot. It'll pay a hundred bucks. All right. A hundred clams. You could do a lot with that kind of dough. No, no, it's no use. I'm sick. If you could hold off a couple of days, maybe... I can't. I... Suppose I made it two bills. When would I get it? Right now. I guess I ain't so sick after all. Start counting out, fella. You just got yourself a boy. Hi, Sergeant. Huh? Oh, what did I do to deserve this? Nothing. That's why you should be grateful. Steve, come on in here and bring your friend with you. 
Come on, Cokie. Yeah, right, Steve. Hey, does this look like the Y? Why don't you find some other place to hang out? Quiet. Steve Haynes, Cokie Myers, Sergeant Corbett. Glad to know you. Hi. Haven't we met before? It's possible I work for Johnny Stone. Oh. Can I see him? His lawyer sprung him 20 minutes ago. Oh, that's swell. He'll be back. I wouldn't make book on it. I got Paul Dollar's murderer right here. You what? Okay, Steve, that's your cue. I did it, Sergeant. I killed Paul. Why? Well, now hold it. Don't you think we ought to have a stenographer in here? Why waste his time? Look, lunkhead, this isn't a rib. We've got everything, including a witness. All right, Cokie, tell him what you told me. Okay, Ham. Where do you want me to start? Right at the top of the page. Well, last night around 10.30, uh, Steve here came to see me. It seemed he wanted somebody to drive him. So? Uh, so, uh, we took his car and I ran over to Forsyth Street. He got out and he told me to keep the motor running. About uh, five minutes later, he was back. Uh, there was a gun in his pocket. How do you know that? Because uh, uh, while we drove down to Coney Island, he got a screwdriver and took it apart. And then what? Uh, well, uh, we parked in front of Steeplechase and uh, walked down to the beach. Never mind the rest. Let me congratulate you boys. That's a lovely story. If you put it to music, you might have another South Pacific. Why, what's the matter? Don't you believe it? No. I tell you, I killed him, Sergeant. And Cokie's your witness? Yes. How much did you pay him? I resent that. You don't remember things so well, do you, Cokie? I get by. Well, what time did you get to Paul Dollar's place on Forsyth? Uh, around, uh, five minutes of eleven. Well, then how do you account for the fact that at 9.30 last night, a Cokie Myers was picked up for vagrancy on Chambers Street and wasn't released till one in the morning? Oh, no. Oh, yes. You were right to retire, Mike. Only your timing was off. You should have done it a week ago. Now, all you phonies, clear out. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there were no two ways about it. The Falcon had done it again. After Sergeant Corbett unveiled his haymaker, I watched him toss Steve Haynes and Cokie Myers out of the office. His footwork was beautiful. Then he turned on me, but I jabbed him off balance. I demanded to see Lisa Dollar. I always say, if you're short on brains, gall does just as well. Oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. Because you love me. Yeah, your regular store-bought doll. Haven't you got it through your thick skull what this is? Suppose you tell me. Another Snyder Gray case. The two of them teamed up together to murder her husband. Oh, you're crazy. Johnny only saw her once. Uh, that was enough. Mrs. Dollar. Yes? You've got company. Hello, Lisa. I don't want to appear ungracious, Mr. Waring. But you could do without me. Exactly. Now, you've got to believe I've been trying to act in your best interests. Why? You are not being paid. And that's just the way I want it. It doesn't jeopardize my retirement status. Did your husband have any other enemies? No. You sure? He'd embezzled before. And we'd always made the loss good. I'll do it this time, too. I don't see how. I'll manage it some way. I told Mr. Stone he wouldn't lose a penny. You told Johnny that when? Right after I discovered Paul had lied to me. Yeah, what'd I tell you? She's been seeing him all along. Do you remember the time, Lisa? Yes, it was nine o'clock. The clock was striking when I left Trudy's apartment. Who's Trudy? Her girlfriend, the one who reported the murder. But how could she... Hey, wait a second... I see it now. Let's go, Corbett. Where? Don't worry. I'll lead you there by the hand. Don't go away, Lisa. I'll be back for you real soon. Hello, Steve. Oh, hi, Mike. Sergeant? Hi. Johnny home? No. Mind if we wait? What do you want with him? Oh, I just dreamed up a couple more questions I'd like to ask him about uh, Paul Dollar's murder. I tell you, I did it. Oh, no. Let's not have that again. All right. So I got Cokie to perjure himself, but there was nothing else I could do. You wouldn't believe me? Maybe Trudy could help you out. Who? The girl Paul was talking to when he was killed. There was no girl. Oh, you mean on the phone? Haven't we had enough of this nonsense? Must be Johnny now. Hi, pal. What's going on here? Well, you're just in time to offer congratulations. Steve finally made it. Made what? The chair. And he did it the hard way. What are you babbling about? Now, Corbett, who reported Paul's murder? I told you, a girl named Trudy Bergner. Well, if she didn't live in the same building, she must have heard the shots on the phone. That's what I said. Don't you see, Corbett? 
That piece of information wasn't released to the papers. No one but the killer could have known it. Why didn't I think of that before? Steve, you crazy fool. Why did you do it? I... I always wanted to do something for you. You know, to make up for all the swell things you did for me. When I saw how you went for Lisa, it came to me. You're not sore, Johnny? No. No, I'm not sore, Steve. Then everything worked out fine. All right, fellas. Let's go. Tell me something, Mike. Just between us girls, you were kind of lucky, weren't you? No, I told you right at the beginning Steve was our boy. I figured if he was willing to confess to murder for Johnny, he might very well have gone whole hog and committed it. I still don't see it. Well, what's so hard? Johnny was Steve's god. All his life, he's wanted to prove his devotion. Well, when he thought Johnny wanted Lisa... He tried to get her for him, even though it meant killing her husband. That's right. You think he's crazy? What do you think? Well, he certainly was sane when he planned that killing. He covered his tracks so well that when he confessed to save Johnny, he couldn't prove it. Uh, isn't that a beautiful hunk of irony? But then the whole case was loaded with the stuff. You think Johnny wanted Lisa? But didn't he? No, I doubt it. I think he just admired her. I'll give odds you're wrong. I know human nature. He won't stay away from her no more than you could quit this racket. Don't you kid yourself. I have. Maybe so, but I'll lay eight to five. I see you next week. Good night, Mike. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Iris. Oh, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. I'm leaving for Vienna. That's right, Vienna. City of wine, women, and song. Now, there's a combination that's bound to be murder. Once again, the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the vanishing visa. They say people are the same the world over. It's only the places that are different. Well, I guess whoever it is that does all this saying has a point there. You take the bar of the Hotel Imperial in Vienna. The boy behind the mahogany is a citizen named Al Romano. And to prove my original thesis, Al could hold down the same job in New York. Come to think of it, he once did. But you'd never guess it from his approach. All right, honey. I'd let be. I would like a brandy, please. One brandy coming up. How, how much is it? Fifteen shillings. Four, then. Here you are. Tough when a doll like you has to buy her own. Maybe you'd like me to introduce you to a couple of rich tourists. Oh, I would very much. What's in it for me? A hundred shillings. Uh, I'd rather work on a percentage basis. How about a 50-50 split? Agreed. Yeah, I think we ought to do okay. What do they call you, honey? Trudy. Trudy Brownheim. I don't know you, Trudy. I'm Al Romano. What made you try the Imperial? A friend of mine recommended it. Uh, Mr. Stephen Lorimer. You a friend of that bum? You know Stephen? Why, he's practically a fixture around here. He's in the back room now. I must say hello. Oh, you're wasting your time. You'll get nothing out of that lush. Now, wait a minute. I'll be right out. That's you, Al? No. Oh, truly. Hello, Stephen. I've been looking all over the Ringstrasse for you. Uh, how'd you know I'd be here? Aren't you always? Come to think of it, I am. I wonder what there is about this place that fascinates me. I couldn't possibly guess. You got something for me? Yes. Well, wait till I lock the door. Okay, let's have it. Here you are. Hey, this looks good, Trudy. Real good. Who are your contacts in Romania? You should know better than to ask me that. Sorry, I lost my head. Yeah, I bet the boys in the Kremlin would give plenty to get their hands on this information. 
Okay, I'll see it gets to the right people. Oh, uh, drink? No, thank you. Tell me something, Stephen. Why are you doing this? Why are you? Austria is my country, but... A man without a country, huh? I didn't mean that. It's all right. You didn't hurt my feelings. It's true. But then why are you doing it? Maybe I'm trying to justify my existence. Maybe this way I can kid myself into believing I'm not a drunken bum. You mustn't say that. Why? Does it frighten you? Why should it? I might give you away. Never. I'm weak, Trudy. Real weak. If the comrades got their hands on me, I'd crack in a minute. I'm not worried. Well, I am. I hear Mr. Vaughn's in town. Robert Vaughn? Yeah, Kozlov's right-hand man. I thought he was in Budapest. Not according to my dope. He's here, all right. Monocle and all. Like to meet him? Maybe I can arrange an introduction. You should not joke about such things. Makes you kind of nervous, doesn't it? Putting your life in the hands of a lush... Stop tormenting yourself. You are one of the finest men I have ever known. Let's not kid each other, sweetheart. It's much too late in the day. Uh, are you expecting someone? No. Who's there? Mr. Lottermann? Who wants him? I doubt whether my name would mean anything to you, but it's Robert Vaughn. Stephen. Give me a match. i got to burn this stuff. Please open up. I should hate to cause a disturbance. Take it easy, fella. You'll last longer. Listen, Trudy, there's a door behind the screen that leads to the kitchen. But what about you? I can take care of myself. Now hop to it. Oh, really, Mr. Lottermore? I said just a second. Well, what are you waiting for, Trudy? You afraid I'll give you away? No. I'll be just in. Steve. I'll feed us in. I said, old oh, man, if you don't open this door within five seconds, I shall be compelled. Uh, 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 Let him out. Let him out. Who's oh. got a key for this room? I have. I don't it. argue. Just use it. Oh. oh, no. Well, don't stand there like a bloody fool. Get a doctor. Sure, sure. He's, he's wasting his time. There was a girl in here. Who was she? Come on, man, speak. You're missing the point, Vaughn. That's, that's why I did this. So I couldn't speak. Imagine. She trusted me. I guess she knew what she was doing. Oh, well, never mind the doctor. He's dead. Hello? Is that you, Tori? Who is this? What is the matter, Liebchen? Don't you recognize the voice? Oh, Eric, Eric. I'm so glad you called. Are you going to be home this afternoon? Uh, no, no. As a matter of fact, I was just leaving. I've got to go to Liebnitz. My Aunt Bertha's very ill. You needn't spare me, Trudy. I know that you are planning to run away with that American. What are you talking about? You must take me for a fool, huh? Don't you think I've seen you with that Stephen Lorimer? You followed us? Many times. How dare you? I love you, Trudy. No one's ever going to take you away. I wouldn't be too sure. I would. Your friend, Mr. Lorimer, committed suicide. What? Obviously, you haven't seen the paper. I don't believe you. I will read it to you. Shamed by his country's warmongering tactics, Stephen Lorimer, expatriate American, committed suicide this afternoon in the Imperial Hotel. It's a lie. They're using him for propaganda. Then why did he kill himself? I can't tell you. You, you've got to trust me, Eric. You know that I love you. If you do, you will prove it by waiting. I'm sorry, I can't. Hello, Trudy. Trudy! Yes? You Mike Waring? That's right. My name is Leon Brill. I wonder if you could spare me a couple of minutes. I got a proposition for you. Business? Yeah. Sorry, Mr. Brill. I've quit the racket. Come again? I'm no longer handling private investigations. Well, that's swell. Huh? I'd hate to feel I took you away from anything. Say, so why don't I sit down? Huh? Well, I can think of one good reason. You're not staying long. Oh, I might surprise you. Now, you were one of Donovan's cloak and dagger boys during the war, weren't you? Well? Your serial number was 9823476. On your first mission, you parachuted into Yugoslavia. Second mission, Austria. How the devil did you find that out? Oh, I'm one of the kids myself. Like to see my credentials? Oh, what do you know? I know you're going back on active status. Now, wait a minute. You can't do this to me. Can't we? Uh, yeah, I guess you can. All right, now, here's the pitch. You're going to Vienna. What? We've arranged passage for you. You leave from LaGuardia tomorrow morning at 6.45. You'll be in Paris on Thursday, Vienna on Friday. Now listen, Brill. Uh, you're to register at the Imperial Hotel. We've made a reservation for you. Oh, thanks a heap. My pleasure. 
Are you going to contact a girl named Trudy Braunheim? You've got that? I got it. Uh, she'll be waiting in the bar at the Imperial on Friday at 1 o'clock. She's a blonde, about 5'3", blue eyes, a little birthmark on her right cheek. I just pretend it's a casual pickup. How do I sell myself? I just tell you from New York. She'll reply she's a co- got a cousin in Milwaukee. You answer that's practically a suburb. You got that? You I cash? got it. Yes. Yeah. Now, all you got to do is get her out of Austria. Get her out... Are you crazy? My psychiatrist doesn't think so. How am I supposed to manage that? If I knew the answer, I'd do it myself. Maybe she could fit in that hole in my head. Well, that's an idea. But we're not fussy. Any way you want to work it is okay with us. Just get her to the embassy in Paris. Mm-hmm. Any other practical hints you care to offer? Yeah, look out for Robert Vaughn. Who's Robert Vaughn? He's the boy the Reds use as a troubleshooter. Sounds English. Now, don't bother to find out. Just keep out of his way. If you get caught, you're on your own. We'll have to disclaim you. I understand. Yeah. We'll have to throw you to the wolves. Uh, thanks a million, Brill. Oh, don't mention it. Uh, have a nice trip, kiddo. We all got to go sometime. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. <laughs> I don't know why people are so good to me. Take Leon Brill. Two minutes after we met, he was sending me to Vienna. 72 hours later, I was dodging cars and bicycles on the Ringstrasse. Then I glanced at the clock on the corner of Stefan's plots and realized it was time to keep my appointment with Trudy Braunheim, so I hustled over to the Imperial. I parked myself on a stool, made a deal with the bartender. While I bent my elbow, he could bend my ear. I'm telling you, buddy, give me this town any time. You can have New York. Well, right now, I just want to have a Smirnoff martini. Do you know how to make it? You take four parts of vodka. To Look, one... fella, you're talking to Al Romano, the greatest bartender this side of 42nd Street. Oh, my mistake. You're not around here. Just got off the plane this morning. Then maybe you can tell me something. How are the bums doing? Uh, they're out in front. Oh, I knew the giants would fall. Just don't have it, that's all. <laughs> How long you been here, Al? Since the war. Ever think of going home? What for? The shilling goes a long way here. Back home, I was just a punk. Here, I'm a big man. Mm-hmm. You must know Vienna pretty well. Yeah. Interested in meeting a chick? Oh, I don't know. There's a blonde that drops by every once in a while. I could set it up for you. Real doll. Her name... Hello, Al. Well, speak of the devil. Hiya, Trudy. I was just telling this gentleman about you. Well, how nice. You two ought to hit it off real swell. I'm sorry, but I'm expecting a friend. Won't I do? Perhaps some other time. Oh, I always say there's no time like the present. Uh, Why don't we try that table? No, thank you, really. Come on, Angel. Please, you're hurting. Now, don't be like that, Trudy. I want to tell you all about New York. You are from New York? Yes. Would you like to go there? I would like it very much. I have a... A cousin in Milwaukee. That's practically a suburb. So you're the one. I'm the one. My name is Mike Waring. I'm sorry, Mr. Waring. I did not know. How could you? Hey, Al, how about serving us here? Sure thing. Well, you got any ideas? How about what? How we can get out of the country? I think it would be better if I remained. Look, Angel, that's not for you to decide. The powers that be think it's too dangerous. I suppose I rent a car and we try to bluff it through the border. But I don't have a passport. I got a couple, complete with visas. You're going to be Mrs. Michael Waring. You got a small snapshot? It's no use. They would recognize it as a forgery immediately. You got a better idea? No. Then we're stuck with this. Now, here's what I want you to... What's the matter? Don't look now, but we're being watched. By whom? A boy at the bar. He's wearing a trench coat. Okay, you can take a peek. He's moving off. Oh, Eric. You know him? Yes, it's Eric Hoffman. Who is he? A very dear friend of mine. You think he followed you here? I'm afraid so. Could I tell no, you? No, absolutely not. Those are orders. Where do you live? Leopoldstadt. Number six, Volkartenstrasse. That's across the Danube Canal? Yes, it's right near the left bank. All right, worse comes to worse, I'll swim over. Okay, Angel, get yourself packed. I'll pick you up in an hour. Now, where did I put that? Who is it? Yes, Eric, Trudy. Open up. Just a moment, Eric. Hello, Liebchen. What are you doing here? I just dropped by to wish you a pleasant journey. A pleasant journey? Well, aren't you leaving Vienna? Well, what gave you such an idea? Those bags, for one thing. Oh, I'm, I'm loaning them to Gretchen. They are very heavy, hmm? You're loaning her your clothes, too? Look, Eric. You seem to have developed a fetish for Americans, huh? 
First, Stephen Lorimer, now this new one. What are you talking about? I saw you at the Imperial. Who is he? He's just a tourist. You are lying. I will I... kill you if you don't tell me he's a tourist. I swear. You are going away with him, huh? Aren't you? Heck, Aren't you? Please. Hmm? I, 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 I can't breathe. Eric. Eric. <laughs> All right, boy, you can take those bags. You mean you'd actually trust me, Mr. Waring? Who the devil are you? Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Robert Vaughan. Well? It means nothing to you? Should it? I'd hope so. I'm in charge of security for the Soviet sector. Now, look, Vaughan, I'm very busy. I can appreciate it, Mr. Waring, but I'm afraid I must take up your time, perhaps a great deal of it. You know a girl named Trudy Brownheim? No. Well, that's odd. I have it on excellent authority that you met her at the bar of the Imperial today. Well, your excellent authority is wrong. Then, of course, it would be of no interest to you that she was murdered. She what? A pity, isn't it? Is that on the level? I can assure you I never jest about murder. I find it in horrible taste. How did it happen? Apparently, she was first choked, but uh, that wasn't the cause of death. Well, what was? This. She was shot twice with it at close range. That's a cold automatic, isn't it? Yes. What do you make of the inscription? For the Falcon, a real straight shooter. Now, if I only knew who or what the Falcon was... Where did you find that gun? Right next to a body. You've doubtless heard something about the Soviet penal system. That's a great deal. Well, let me congratulate you. You're in a position now to check on it firsthand. I do hope you appreciate the honor. Please slow down. I'd like the gentleman to see our city. Yavor. Now on the right, Mr. Waring, is St. Stephen. Lovely, isn't it? The spire is 450 feet high. It's considered one of the finest examples of Gothic. All right, never mind the cook's tour, Vaughan. I thought you might be interested. It's probably the last time you'll see Vienna. Look, I tell you, you're making a mistake. I didn't kill Trudy Braunheim. But you did meet her this afternoon. You've been talking to El Romano. Who? The bartender at the Imperial. Isn't that where you got your information? And if it is? And he must have told you it was just a pickup. Well, really, Mr. Waring, you're insulting my intelligence. Trudy Brownheim was working for the American government, as you are. Well, then where's my motive? You were afraid she'd fall into our hands and divulge the names of her associates. <laughs> well, that's pretty cute. Talk about killing two birds with one stone. Pardon? You murdered Trudy and framed me for it. Oh, you're not suggesting... Well, why not? I can build as convincing a case against you as you can against me. <laughs> Aren't you forgetting this gun? No, it's not mine. It's inscribed to the falcon. Any local engraver could have done that. Let's see it. Uh, Just a moment. Esther, stop that. All right, Vaughan. Behave yourself. You won't get hurt. (laughs) Are you being childish, Mr. Waring? You wouldn't dare shoot. What have I got to lose? They can only hang me once. Yes, I suppose that's true now. I'll tell your boy to stop the car. Willie, will you please stop right here? Tell him to get out and walk to the corner. You heard the gentleman, Willie. But Herr Vaughan... Don't argue. Now you. <laughs> You're making a serious mistake. Go on, get out. Are you coming with me? Just to get in the front. I figure it's about time I was in the driver's seat. <laughs> it's very amusing. <laughs> All right, hold it. That's fine. Well, thanks a lot, fellas. I'll be seeing you. I'm sure you will. In the meantime, please take care of that car. It's my pride and joy. Well, Willie, what do you think? I'm constantly amazed at your knowledge of psychology. For a moment there, I was afraid he would not seize the gun. Yes, I was too. Aren't we lucky Americans are so impulsive? How many cars are following him? Three. It's a pity one of them couldn't have stopped and picked us up. Well, looks like we'll just have to take steps. Who is it? Who is it? I'm looking for Eric Hoffman. Yes? Shut the door. You cannot come in here like this. I got a gun that says I can. What's the meaning of this? I'm what they call hot, Eric, real hot. By this time, half the Soviet garrison must be looking for me. Who are you? Mike Waring. Oh, Uh, obviously it rings a bell. Yes. You were the one Trudy was going away with. How did you know that? She told me so. You're lying. I gave her strict orders to keep her mouth shut. I made her talk. How? I choked her. You what? 
I don't know what came over me. So the, the mere thought that she was deceiving me drove me out of my mind. So you killed her. Oh, no. She finally told me the whole story. I don't believe you. Well, how else would I know that an American known as the Falcon was taking her away, huh? Then what happened? Nothing. I apologized and left. And she was all right then? Yes. Well, who do you think killed her? I have no idea. Ever hear of a man named Robert Vaughan? No. He's a big shot among the Ruskies here. He knew about her work with us. I can't believe it. Trudy was very careful. No one suspected her activities, not even I. Well, she must have slipped somewhere. Where does she hang out? Sometimes at Schnitzler's, but mostly at uh, Imperial. Wait a minute. Huh? You know the bartender there? No. Well, you must have seen him. Tall, thin boy with black hair. His name is Al Romano. I got a hunch he's working for the Reds. See if you can find out where he lives. You expect yes, me? Yes, I do. All you got to do is follow him home. When you find out, give me a jingle. I'll wait here. Hey, buddy. Buddy. Uh, yes? Got a match? I think so. Thanks, Eric. Uh, how do you know my name? What are you beefing about? You know mine? No. Come off it, chum. You've been tailing me ever since I left the Imperial. What? And a pretty lousy job you did, too. You know, if you're shadowing a guy, it don't mean you have to breathe down his neck. I, I don't know what you are talking about. Okay, but just in case you're interested, my name is Al Romano. And I live in Brigitten now, 23 Wallenstein Strasse. But give me a call before you drop by. I'm very seldom home. Four to the eight. Where the devil can he be keeping himself? Is that enough time? Yeah? Mr. Waring? What's a good word, Eric? Uh, I'm afraid I didn't do so well. Didn't you latch on to Romano? Yes, but I was very clumsy. He knew he was being followed. He even knew my name. And that proves he's working for the Reds. Did you find out where he lives? Yes. In Brigittenau, Wallensteinstrasse, number 23. Where exactly is that? On the left bank. Well, I don't suppose the 8th Avenue subway runs out that far. I beg your pardon? Come on, skip it. I'll manage somehow. Thanks for your hospitality, Eric. I'll see you real soon. Come on in, Al. The water's fine. But you might be in over your head. Well, if it isn't Comrade Vaughan. Yes. Fancy meeting me here, eh? Just keep your hands where they are. Oh, now, really, old man, I think you've milked this bit for all it's worth. I'm not clowning. Neither am I. This building is surrounded by my, well, shall we say, henchmen. If you just glance out the window. You see what I mean? Yes, but you're in here and I've got the gun. I hate to disillusion you, Mr. Waring, but it's loaded with blanks. What? Well, after all, I couldn't trust you with live ammunition. You might have hurt yourself. Oh, then you let me escape. Of course. I was hoping you'd do exactly as you did. Lead us to all your confederates in Vienna. Well, that's where you're wrong. I'm not working with anyone. No? What about Eric Hoffman? He was just a guy I bumped into. You seem to bump into a lot of people. Eric Hoffman, Trudy Brownheim, and now Al Romano. Well, I can explain that. I wanted to get a recipe from him. He makes the greatest martini... Yeah, so you dropped in unannounced, eh? Well, I didn't think Al would mind. He's from New York, too. I think I'd better tell you something about Mr. Romano. What, that he killed Trudy? What makes you say that? It figured... I got a hunch he's working for you people. And following my orders, he murdered Miss Brownheim? Yes. <laughs> it's a very interesting theory, Mr. Waring. A pity you'll never be able to prove it. You see, Mr. Romano has disappeared. Oh, sure, you took care of that. I wish I had. I just learned he was an agent for your government. He what? It's very clever of your Mr. Brill to plant him at the Imperial. But he got away. Yes. But you didn't. I guess we should be grateful for small favors. However, suppose we discuss it on the drive over to my office. I think you like this car even better than the last. My mother once told me there'd be times when I didn't pay to get out of bed. Unfortunately, my bed was some 4,000 miles away, and even on a clear day, you couldn't see it from Vaughan's office in the Hofburg. All I saw was trouble ahead. I guess Vaughan had the same view. He looked real pleased about it. You might be interested in knowing, Mr. Waring, that I've informed your legation we're holding you. What did you do that for? Well, I wouldn't want you, Mr. Brill, to think we'd molest an innocent American citizen. I am innocent. Oh, now, come, Michael. I may call you Michael. Look, I tell you, I didn't kill Trudy Brownheim. Too bad you can't prove it. Or maybe I can't. 
Yeah, sure. Why didn't I think of that before? I've got an alibi. I'd love to hear it. How long will it take you to latch on to Trudy's boyfriend? No time at all. <laughs> Willie, will you bring in Eric Hoffman, please? Well, you don't believe in wasting time. Never. I hate loose ends. You expect Eric to give you an alibi, eh? That's exactly what I expect. Oh, come in here, Hoffman. Willie, get the gentleman a chair. Yes, sir. Oh, uh, what, uh, what do you want of me? Oh, do sit down, please. I think you know, Mr. Waring. No. Might as well tell the truth, Eric. They know everything. Yes, we do. They think I killed Trudy. I told them you were my alibi. Me? Well, you know I had no motive. Oh, really, old man, this is getting us nowhere. You said that he could give you an alibi. He can. After I met Trudy, Eric followed her home. He was jealous. He thought she was going away with me. He was right? Yes, but for the wrong reason. He thought it was romance. Especially when Trudy wouldn't talk. So he tried to choke the truth out of her. What? That's how she got those marks on her throat. And I suppose at this point the murderer entered and, finding her unconscious, killed her with your gun. That's hmm? exactly how it happened. And uh, where was uh, your alibi, Herr Hoffman, during all this time? I was... Standing right over her. What? Yes, you killed her, Eric. You are insane. You were jealous of me. No. Trudy told me everything about you. How did you know an American called the Falcon was going to take her out of Austria? She told me so. She couldn't have. Nobody over here knows that's my nom de guerre. I knew it. How did you find out? From the engraving on the murder weapon. Well, that's the same way Eric discovered it. Only he handled the gun first. He got it out of my room at the Imperial after he saw Trudy and me together. No, no, that's not true. All right, Willie. Take him away. Come on. I don't... I mean it! I didn't mean it! I swear! I couldn't let her go! I was afraid! Willie! Willie, Willie, Willie! Please, no violence. What will our Mr. Waring think? My apologies, sir. That's quite all right. I'm afraid I owe you an apology, too. Skip it. Cigarettes? No, thanks. I've taken all I intend to from you people. Can I go? Oh, but of course. After all, I did notify your legation I was holding you for murder. And when they learn that an Eric Hoffman is guilty, they might send someone around to ask embarrassing questions. I am afraid I was a little hasty. I'm afraid you were. I'll uh, have Willie arrange for your immediate departure from Vienna. You can leave tonight on the Paris Express. I'm in no hurry. I am. <laughs> I think we'll both be happier with you in France. I know I will. Give my regards to Mr. Brill. <laughs> Yeah, what is it? I'm sorry to bother you, Mr. Brill, but there's a long-distance call for you. Collect. Collect? Who from? A Mike Waring in Paris. Well, put him on. All right, operator. We'll accept those charges. Hello, that you, Brill? Are you got your nerve making a call like this? I just thought you might like to know I got out of Austria all right. Well, you could have dropped me a line. Oh, well, that's so impersonal. Well, I already got the scoop. Uh, well, I'm leaving for New York in the morning. Uh... Uh, what do you want to do that for? As long as you're in Paris, you might as well make the most of it. I'm sure we can find something for you to do. Now, listen, Brill. I wish I could afford to, but this call is costing the taxpayers money. So just stay close to your phone, huh? You'll hear from me in a week. Have fun, kiddo. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, is that? Oh, I'm glad you called. Now, I'm going to stay in Paris for a while, Angel. Mm-hmm. I'm out to prove 50 million Frenchmen can be wrong when it comes to murder. Once again, the transcribed adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the menacing Mamselle. good Americans, when they die, go to Paris, must be wrong. Here I am in the city of light and very much alive. Still, you never know. If the French cab drivers don't get me, there's always a chance someone like Jerry Collier will. Mr. Collier's the good-looking citizen who just checked into the pension in the Rue de Belleville. Obviously, he doesn't believe in traveling light. That's a Colt 45 he's packing. It may look small, but it sure holds a lot of lead. 
Who is it? The concierge, monsieur. The who? Uh, are you called the janitor? Just a second. Where the devil can I put... Okay, come in. Uh, bonjour, Monsieur Collier. Hi. Uh, permit me to introduce myself. I am Emile Diderot. Where are you, Emile? If there is anything I can do to make your stay here enjoyable, you have but to command me. Thanks, I'll remember that. Paris has so much to offer. And Monsieur has seen the Pantheon? Several times. Well, if uh, Monsieur is not interested in dead French men, perhaps live French women would be more to his liking. Look, Emile, I'm busy. I could introduce him to a very charming mademoiselle named... Fleurette Duval. You don't see... What was that name again? Fleurette Duval. She works as a model on the Rue de la Paix. She wouldn't be from the Haute Savoy. Monsieur knows her? Yeah. What an amazing coincidence. Don't give me that. You knew I was looking for her. Give you my word, Monsieur Collier. What'd you do, go through my luggage? Pardon? I asked you something. <laughs> Monsieur is very free with his hands. How did you know I was looking for her? My mother was a gypsy. Don't get gay. <laughs> You went through my diary, didn't you? Yes, monsieur. Where'd she live? <laughs> Come on, Emile. I'm not clowning. Where does this Florette de Val live? She has a flat in the Pelus d'Evron, number 27. It's right off the Grand Boulevard on the east side, isn't it? Yes, monsieur. Thanks a lot, Emile. You've been a great help. Monsieur has such a forceful personality, I could hardly be otherwise. I look forward to the opportunity to serve him again. <laughs> Looking for someone? Yes, an English gentleman with a monocle. Oh, never mind, I see him. Uh, Monsieur Vaughan. My dear Emile. <laughs> Would you care for brandy? Uh, and some caviar. But a member of the proletariat, your tastes are surprisingly exotic. All right, Gosson. Very good, Monsieur Vaughan. How did it go, Emile? Perfectly. I wouldn't judge so from your appearance. These bruises? They merely indicate how well I played my part with Monsieur Collier. He has no idea how you knew he was looking for Fleurette Duval? No. He thought I ran across an entry in his diary. Naturally, I said nothing to contradict it. You amaze me, Emile. I do. Yes. How can a man with your talent be satisfied with being a concierge? I'm only too happy to serve the party wherever they think best. And I suppose the hundred thousand francs I promised you... It was two hundred thousand, Monsieur. <laughs> I'm quite sure I said a hundred. Perhaps. But I am sure you would not wish me to go back to Monsieur Collier and tell him how I knew he was looking for Fleuret Duval. In my country, they call that blackmail. What a coincidence, Monsieur. In France, they call it blackmail, too. I like you, Emile. And I'm very fond of you, Monsieur Vaughan. You burned him, Monsieur. Ah, you're just in time. All right, Emile. Let's drink to our perfect understanding. May Mr. Collier find his meeting with Fleuret Duval as profitable. <laughs> Florette Duval. Oui. I'm Jerry Collier. Jerry Collier? Doesn't my name mean anything to you? Of course. You are the American who is going out with Gigi. No, I'm going out with you. I do not understand. Well, I'll make it real easy. Mind if I sit down? Oh, really, monsieur? I'm expecting company. This won't take long. During the war, you lived in Ancy in Haute Savoy, right? Why do you ask? Believe me, I got a good reason. Would you like to see it? Very much. Well, what do you think of this? What? Why the gun? You never heard the name Jerry Collier before? Mm, no. Maybe you'd be more familiar with my brother's. Your brother's name? He had to bail out over occupied France during the war. He landed in Haute Savoy. He was befriended by a family named Duval. Duval? Yeah, they hid him from the Nazis. But uh, what I forgot to mention was that they had a daughter. She was a mercenary young thing. For a small consideration, she turned him over to the Gestapo. Guess what her name was? You give up? It was Florette. And you think I uh -huh. am? Who told you that? Maurice Lafarge. I do not know any such person. Well, he knows you. All right, honey. Anytime you're ready. No, no, no. You are making a mistake. What are you complaining about? 
You're going to have it a lot easier than my brother. He was tortured first. I, I swear I am not the same girl. Are you kidding? Monsieur does not understand. Duval is a very common name in France. It is like, like Smith in your country. There were a hundred in haute savoir. Don't give me that. I can prove it. You said your brother Paul was befriended by this girl's family. Well? Well, I have none. I am an orphan. I was raised at the convent at Chamonix. There on the wall, you can see my diploma. And why was I told Florette Duval was in Paris? Well, she may be. Did you ever think to consult the directory? They are over 50. I, I, I should have thought of that, but when Emile... Emile? Emile Diderot, he's a concierge at the pension where I'm staying. When he mentioned your name, I jumped to the wrong conclusion. All I can say is I was stupid. Well, you have said it. Now go. Believe me, I'm sorry. Operator, Alpine 5423. Hello. Jacques, Florette Duval. What is it, Florette? I thought you might be interested. I just entertained a young American named Jerry Collier. Well? Perhaps entertained is not the right word. He was going to kill me. How did you talk yourself out of it? You know how inventive I can be. Well, I'll take care of Monsieur Collier immediately. You better. I should hate to play this little scene again. Next time, we might not have a happy ending. Yeah. Hello, you, uh, Jerry Collier? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. I just moved in next door. My name. Thanks. Concierge told me there was a fellow American on this floor. Sit down. Thanks. Drink? Oh, Waring never says no. Did you say your name was Mike Waring? Uh-huh. Seems to me I heard of you in the States. Aren't you the private detective they call the Falcon? Not so loud. I, uh... I wonder if you could help me out. Well, if it entails making like a bird dog, I'm afraid not. I've quit the racket. This would be a cinch. I'm looking for a girl named Florette Duval. <laughs> That's like looking for John Smith in New York. Yeah, so I learned the hard way. I ran into one of them this afternoon and almost got myself in a jam. Well, what happened? It's a long, dull story. Well, I don't mind as long as your brandy holds out. Well, during the war, my brother wound up in the hands of the Gestapo thanks to a Florette Duval. I got a tip she was in Paris and living in the Palouse de Vrong. Lucky she was the wrong girl. Lucky for whom? Huh? I see you're packing a gun. Yeah. If she hadn't done some fast talking, the gendarmes might be hunting a killer tonight. Well, obviously she was the wrong girl. Yeah, she couldn't possibly have known Paul. She was brought up... Wait a minute. She knew his name was Paul. Well, you probably told her. No, I just referred to him as my brother. She was the one who came up with the name. Now look, Collier. Well, what do you know? She was the right Florette Duval, after all. Sorry, Waring, I gotta run. Hey, where do you think you're going? To correct a mistake I made. You're out of your mind. I'll be a good kid and stay out of this. Look, if you think I'm going to let you walk out of here and commit murder... That's exactly what I think. Now, get out of my way. Now, don't be a fool, Collier. You're gonna get out of my way? Give me that gun. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, fella. But you asked me to give it to you. I hope that's what you had in mind. <laughs> Hello. If I had the pleasure of speaking to Monsieur Robert Vaughan. Is that your idea of pleasure? This is Emile, Monsieur Vaughan. I thought perhaps you might be interested in the latest developments. Always. You are prepared to pay for them? But a member of the party, Emile, you show a sordid interest in money. Alas, I am afraid you are right. Shall we say another 200,000 francs? Let's hear your information first. Well, a short while ago I heard a disturbance in Monsieur Collier's room. When I went to investigate, I discovered a new tenant there, a Monsieur Waring. He was on the floor, unconscious. Well, this Waring chap, uh, his first name wouldn't be Michael. You know him? We met in Vienna last week. He's an American agent? So it would seem. Is he uh, still unconscious? Yes. It might serve our purpose just as well if he uh, never came to. I do not understand. Of course you do, Emile. Would be fairly simple to manage. 
Two mannequins indulge in a drunken brawl. One leaves. The other's found later by the gendarmes with a knife in his chest. Monsieur makes it sound logical, but you you cannot expect all this for 200,000 francs. You'll be serving the party. Oh, well, please do not think unkindly of me, but uh, I prefer to serve myself. <laughs> You're a man out of my own heart. Shall we say half a million francs? <laughs> when would I collect? Well, don't worry, Emile. You'll get it. You'll get everything that's coming to you. First attend to Mr. Waring. <laughs> All right, Emil. Oh, what do you think you're doing? Monsieur Waring, you, you startled me. Yes, well, I meant to. What have you got behind your back? Well, nothing. I... Let's see that. No! Oh. By you, this is nothing. Well, I can explain the knife. You better. Well, I, I heard a disturbance in Monsieur Collier's room. I, I thought there might be thieves present. Naturally, I, I came prepared to defend myself. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not bad for an ad -lib. Monsieur does not believe me. Oh, what a question. How long ago did Collier leave? Perhaps uh, 20 minutes. You suppose he went over to see Fleurette Duval? Fleurette Duval? I do not know the name, monsieur. I've got a hunch you know it real well. I don't understand. Well, I'll make sure to explain it later. Right now, I've got a call to make. Get me a cab. I'll be down in a minute. like to see Florette Duval. Oh, but of course, monsieur. Uh, whom shall I say is calling? Mike Waring. Ah. Just uh, follow me, please. You are a friend of Mademoiselle uh, Duval? You might say that. Well, if you will just step in here. All right. I... What's the idea? You wish to see Florette Duval? Is that? Yes. Can I lift the blanket? Allow me. Yes, it, uh, it isn't very pretty, is it, monsieur? Oh, hardly. Well, a forty-five caliber Colt does a great deal of damage. She must have been lovely. You say that as though you had never seen her in life. I didn't. Yet you claim to be her friend. Well, only in a manner of speaking. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Georges Marat. You're the prefect of police? Oh, nothing so impressive. I'm merely a small wheel in the machinery of justice. It would correspond to sergeant in your country. Uh, what do you know of her murder? Nothing. Yet it comes as no surprise to you. Well, I heard someone threaten her. And uh, the gentleman's name? What makes you think it was a man? We have his fingerprints. Well, now look, Mara, this isn't as simple as it seems. Is it? I am afraid I must insist, monsieur. The gentleman's name? Jerry Collier. Merci. It merely illustrates the harmony that exists between our two countries. I supplied the victim, and you supplied the killer. Believe me, monsieur, France is forever in your debt. to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, it merely goes to show that Americans ought to hang together on foreign shores. I'm sure Jerry Collier felt that way, especially after I'd arranged for him to hang alone. The next three hours are kind of hectic. First, Mara took me down to the prefecture of police in the Palais de Justice, where I saw how the French do it. And you know something? They do it just like us. In five minutes, they had a dragnet out for Jerry Collier. But I guess they weren't looking in the right places. Because when I got back to my room in the pension, the phone was sounding off. When I picked it up, I was surprised to hear an American accent. After all, it was a French phone. Yeah, I don't have to ask who this is. You're a hot buster. I guess I can thank you for that. Well, I couldn't help myself. Listen, Waring, I swear I didn't kill that girl. you got to believe me. Where are you now? Near the bridge that goes to the left bank next to Notre Dame Cathedral. Well, it's a miracle you haven't been picked up yet. 
Now, look, do you know Vera's bar on the Boulevard des Capucines? Why? Well, don't ask questions. Just go there and ask for Vera. She'll take care of you. I'll be by in 20 minutes. Now, don't you worry, honey. Any friend of Mike's is a friend of mine. Thanks, Vera. Did he ever tell you about the time right after the war when the two of us... Oh, no, 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 Angel. You're telling tales out of school. Oh. Well, I suppose you two lugs want to be alone, huh? (laughs) Well, I'd appreciate it. Uh, Listen, Vera. If a gendarme should drop around... I don't know from nothing. That's my girl. If you want anything, just holler. Listen, Waring, how well do you know the dame? Vera? She's a legend here. You sure you can trust her? You're missing the point, Collier. The question is, can we trust you? I tell you, I didn't kill Florette. You were on your way over when I last saw you. She was dead when I got there. I didn't even go in the room. I just opened the door and that was enough. Mm-hmm. Did you know that Florette Duval worked for the underground during the war? She still gave my brother away. Where did you pick that up? A man named Maurice Blanc told me. He lives in Old Savoy and knew the whole story. Tall, heavyset character with a handlebar mustache? Yes. He's a commie agent. What difference does that make? Look, Collier, try to get this through your head. Florette Duval was planted in the Communist Party by people who must be nameless. So? So the comrades discovered it and decided to liquidate her. That's where you came in. I don't get you. Well, you were walking around France ready to commit murder. So they planted a bug in your ear that Florette was the party you were looking for. You mean she had nothing to do with my brother's death? Nothing at all. How do you know so much about this? I was assigned a protector. You think it was an accident? I moved into the same pension with you? I can't believe it. Well, you better. They just intended to use you as an executioner. Why, the dirty... Look, who told you Florette lived in the uh, Palouse d'Avron? The concierge at the pension. Emile? Yes. How did he know you were looking for her? I keep a diary. He claimed he saw it there. He was lying. He's a communist agent, too. They just led you around by the nose. I'll get him for this. Or haven't you learned your lesson yet? You said that once before. I'm sorry. Well, you should be. Now, you leave Brother Emile to me. <laughs> Monsieur Waring. Mind if I come in? I was just leaving. I won't keep you long. I guess you heard about Mr. Collier. All Paris says by this time. He claims you told him where he could find Florette Duval. Me, monsieur? All right, let's stop playing games, Emile. You're working for the comrades. It was your job to see Collier located, Florette Duval. You are mistaken. Who do you take your orders from, Robert Vaughan? How would a humble concierge know a comintern officiel? But you do know he stands high in communist circles. One reads the papers, monsieur. One might, but one never saw it there. Mr. Vaughan hates publicity. Is he in Paris? I do not know what monsieur is talking about. Well, would you for a thousand dollars? Now, monsieur is talking my language. Where is the money? I'll have it for you in an hour. Then in an hour, I shall be glad to assist you. Au revoir, monsieur Waring. I look forward to your return. You worrying, I believe. What are you doing here, Mara? Or shouldn't I ask that of a police official? Oh, please do. Where's Emil? Where would you naturally expect to find him? Is that the same blanket you used to cover Florette Duval? Alas, Monsieur France is poor. We must be economical. Can I see him? Oh, I insist on it. Well, now I know what they mean when they say right between the eyes. Was it the same gun? Monsieur is in the best position to know. What are you getting at? Ask yourself this question. In the last 12 hours, there have been two murders in Paris, and each time you appear on the scene. How do you account for it? Just lucky, I guess. Yes, but no one's luck can last forever. May I see your hands? Now, look here. Please, oblige me. Well, if you're looking for powder marks, that... Merci, monsieur. Hey, what's the idea of the handcuffs? Merely a precaution. You seem to know Paris so well, it might occur to you to take French leave. Shall we go?
Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. If you're planning a trip to Paris this summer, let me tip you off about the Palais de Justice. Go out of your way to miss it. France is no place to see through iron bars. One look convinced me I ought to tell Mara about my work as an American agent. Well, he was properly impressed. He phoned the embassy. Uh, I see. And I must have told him plenty. There is no question in All of mind. it bad. Well, I'm very much obliged for your help. Well, it will no doubt come as a shock to you, Monsieur Waring, that your embassy... Knows nothing of my activities. Well, they warned me if I got into a jam and I have to get myself out. Ah, what a pity. Now, look, I tell you, I didn't kill Emile Diderot. No, Fleurette Duval, I suppose. No. Then who do you think did? Well, why don't you ask Vaughan? Pardon? Robert Vaughan. He's the one who made the wheels go. Emile was working for him. Well, then why should he kill him? Emile was going to sell him out. If you'd only pick him up... Uh-huh, but we already have. What? Unfortunately, we were compelled to release him. He had an excellent alibi. Oh, sure. He was at the Soviet embassy when Emile was killed. How did you guess? I'm psychic. You don't believe him, do you? Well, can you prove that he is lying? Uh, wait a minute. Maybe I can. But I'm going to need Jerry Collier's help. Oh, unfortunately, that raises a problem. Oh, no, it doesn't. You know where Monsieur Collier is? I ought to. I took him there. Get a car and I'll do as much for you. My honey. Oh, uh, excuse me, fellas. I gotta say hello to an old friend. Hi, Vera. What have they done to you, sweetie? Not a thing. Well, if you're trying to start a new fad with those iron bracelets, forget it. I don't think it'll catch on. Uh, oh, uh, Vera, this is Inspector Mara of the prefecture. Enchanté, madame. Hmm. Likewise, I'm sure. Uh, we've come for Jerry Collier. Why? You know, the boy... Oh, uh... yeah, I know. You're turning him in? I don't have much choice. Well, they say you learn something new every day, but this is kind of a shock. I never took you for a rat. I'm sorry, Angel. Is he still in the back? Mm-hmm. All right, Mara, let's go. Your friend seems disillusioned. I can't say I blame her. Yep. Yeah. yeah. That you, Vera? No, it's me, Carlin. Who's he? The cop. Why, you jerk? I couldn't help myself. They had me pegged as the killer. You? Yes. I guess I'm selfish, but... I'm kind of attached to this neck of mine, and I'd hate to give it up to the guillotine. Uh, correction, monsieur. We hang you now. Not me. Collier's going to bail me out. How? Remember me telling you about that Robert Vaughan character? The commie? Yeah. Well, it now develops he has a cast-iron alibi. Now, get this. He claims he was at the Soviet embassy when Emile was killed. You mean Emile? The concierge? Uh Uh-huh. When did that happen? Well, if you don't know, no one does. After all, you murdered him. You know what you're saying? I think so. You're out of your mind. Where's my motive? You felt he was responsible for your killing Fred Duval. And I suppose he was. You're crazy. I told you she was dead when I got there. Yeah, that's what you told me. You also said you didn't go into her apartment the second time. I didn't. I just stood in the doorway. Then uh, how could you see the body? It was in the bedroom. You see my point? Five will get you ten. He's still got the gun on him. You're darn right. All right, both of you. Stay where you are. Don't be a fool, Carl. Let me have it. You asked for it once before. Remember what happened? Yeah, but I think your luck's run out. I'm warning you. You worry. It's all right, Mara. He wouldn't dare shoot. No. Didn't fire. Yes, but mine will. Shall I demonstrate, or will you take my word for it? I cannot get over it, Monsieur Waring. Such fortitude, such courage. I have never seen the like of it in my life. Who are you talking about? You? Oh. The way you walked up to Collier when he had that gun pointed directly at you was most impressive. There's nothing, Mara. Oh, nothing, he calls it. I know whereof I speak. How many shells does a Colt 45 hold? Six. How many slugs did you find in Emile? Three. And in Fleurette? The same number. Well, there you are. Three and three make six. I knew Collier's gun had to be empty. But he could have reloaded after the murders. Huh? Uh, 
But, of course, with your knowledge of criminal psychology, you figured on that. You want to know something? I never even thought of it. Good night, Inspector. <laughs> Bonsoir! <laughs> Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, is that? No, I won't be able to make it tonight. I'm on my way to London. That's right, Angel, London. Someone committed murder there, and I'm supposed to accept the defense. Yeah, he claims he knows nothing about it, because at the time, he was in a fog. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Babbling Brook. The funny thing about women, you never know how they're going to react. I suppose that's true of men, too, but I haven't been interested in doing research there. Give me a girl every time. Especially in a city like London. Now, you take Christina Draper, for example. And uh, if you're going to take her, you'll have to work real fast. Chris is a luscious blonde getting out of the lift on the eighth floor of the storm. One glance, and you can tell immediately this is a girl who believes in standing on her own two feet. And who can blame her? Just look at those ankles. Who is it? It's Chris, Robert. Open up. Darling, what a pleasant surprise. I was just thinking of you. Mm, not that. What about my darling? Have you got it for me? You don't believe in wasting time, do you, Mr. Bond? Hey? I remember when you couldn't wait to kiss me. Oh, I still can't. I'm mad about you, darling. Mm, you're pretty cute. <laughs> I don't understand you, Chris. Not much, you don't. You'd cut my throat in a minute if you thought it would do you any good. Well, not dear. Don't worry. Doesn't bother me. <laughs> Funny, is it? Well, at the end of the season, I think I'm the original hard-hearted Hannah. If they only knew, huh? Well, it mustn't, my love. Would be disastrous for our cause if they did. And then I just heard from Moscow that tremendous disease. Get it. I thought you'd be interested in knowing your efforts on behalf of world peace are appreciated. Just not kid each other. I'm a traitor. Oh, Chris, please. Well, isn't that what they call people who sell out their own country? Darling, you mustn't talk like that. After all, your motive is... Yeah, how about my motive? I'm in love with a common term big shot. Do you think I'll take that into consideration before they hang me? Oh, really, Chris. I don't know what's come over you. You're displaying horrible taste. No, I apologize. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You're an angel. Well, what have you got for me? The minutes of a conference between Colonel Logan and Sir Ralph Gordon. May I? Do you mind if I help myself to a drink? I've uh, got some items. That's then. fine. Can I pick you one? Yes, please. Chris. Chris is wonderful. I see they discuss a new tank. Yeah, the F7. Where are they testing it? Back in the state. Nobody. Here. Thank you, Chris. Uh, would there be any plans in England? General Logan has a set. Mm-hmm. I've got to have a copy. I'll get you a camera. Uh-oh. Include me out. Now, darling, don't you want to help the cause of world peace? And I do that by presenting you with the plans for the F-7? Of course. Well, I must be stupid. I don't see it. Well, if we had known in advance that the Americans were going to use their warfare in Korea... Now, honey, this is Chris. Remember, you're not writing articles for the Daily Worker. <laughs> My mistake. But you will get me a copy of those plans. Mm. I don't think I'd better... The, the heat is on. Scotland Yard just nabbed the coating truck in the British Foreign Office. Oh, you're a bungler. What about you? And you claim you love me, hmm? You don't know it by now. Oh, well, then you can't refuse me this. Oh, no, stop it, Robert. Oh, you know, I'm mad about you, Craig. No. After this is over, I'll take you out of this piece of country. We'll go to Vienna, Moscow, anywhere you want. What do you say, darling? I, I have to have my head examined. But you'll do it, hmm? I'll do it. Get me a camera and I'll take care of it tonight. There'll always be a new... Who's that? Ah, uh, uh, beg your pardon, miss. Only Alfie Brooks. I thought everyone was gone. 
Well, I'm, I'm working late, Brooks. Oh, so I noticed. Is Colonel Logan here? No, he, uh, he's, he's away for the weekend. Oh, uh, well, I started the course. Would you like me to start over? Hey, that's a smasher. Hmm? Oh, that camera. My brother brought back one like that from Germany. Oh, it took lovely pictures. Yes, I'm sure. But, uh, ain't that a game for Huh? It's been a camera in here. Well, I'm going down to Devonshire for the weekend. I didn't want to have to go home again to pick it up. Ah, I see. Oh, I hope you won't say anything to Colonel Logan about this. Well, I don't know, Miss Stacey. Now, you wouldn't want to get me in trouble, would you, Brooke? Of course not. I know what trouble is. I got my share. Oh, I think the blooming fortune keep a body alive. You know, the pound ain't worth what it used to be. Could you use five? Oh, I hope you don't think I was thinking for money. Of course not. Not that I couldn't use it, young Imagine, two shillings now for a pint of bitters. Yeah, you thought to buy your bell. Oh, oh, thank you, Miss Saber. You're a real lady. And you won't say anything to Colonel Logan. Ah, you don't have to worry, Miss. Ask anyone. When Alfie Brooks gives his word, it's like a bond. I've forgotten about it already. <laughs> Hey, look, he's the gentleman, Governor. Uh, yeah, Alfie Brooks. I was told I could find him at the Fox and Beagle. Uh, what's Brooks done now? Well, what makes you think he's done anything? Oh, I know Alfie. Hey, Alfie. Gentlemen, I'll see you. Uh, what's this? Hello, Brooks. My name is Mike Waring. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. Oh, sorry, Governor. I'm playing dark. Well, this won't take much time. Hey, right, bartender. Do we have a couple of pints here? Thank you. You want to sit at this table here? All right. Well, uh, you've got your blooming nerves. Uh, here, take a look at my credentials. Well, you ain't a blooming cop, eh? No, not exactly. But Colonel Logan suggested I talk to you. Oh, I ain't nothing. If somebody said something, well, it wasn't me. No, I'm sure it wasn't. I was just wondering if you ever saw anyone in the Colonel's office after hours. Oh, uh, like who, for example? Like any of the men, or Mr. Draper, the Colonel's secretary. You mean the spies at work? What makes you ask that? I go to the cinema. I see how those fellows work. If I thought there was some anky panky going on... There is. Who uh, What do you know? The question is, what do you know? Not a ruddy thing. But I'll give it some thought, Governor. If I come up with anything, you leave it to Alfie Brooks to know what to do. What's the trouble, Chris? You look nervous. I am. Maybe this will calm your stupid brow. I-, I tell you, they suspect something, Robert. I'm being followed. Your imagination, darling. Then why did they send for Waring? Michael Waring? You know him? I met him in Vienna two weeks ago and in Paris last week. Who is it? My avocation is a private detective called the Falcon. But according to my information, he's being recorded temporary duty with American intelligence. I knew it. Now, okay. <laughs> Are you expecting someone? No. Who is it? Ford, Mr. Vaughan. Well, I don't. Oh, really, darling. You do have the window. I'll be in there. As you like. Just a moment. Hi, Governor. Who the devil are you? Oh, uh, Alfie Brooks is the name. Is Miss Draper here? I'm afraid you're making a mistake. <laughs> no, 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 I followed her. So you're the one. Uh-huh. Uh, can I come in? Perhaps you'd better. Sit down. Uh, yeah. Cool, eh? Uh. Oh, you've got a lovely place. What are the issues for a flat like this? Why, you think you're renting one? Ah, oh, you never know. Someday I might be in the ship yourself. And if you are, it'll be through me, eh? Ah, uh, now that's what I like. A gentleman who comes right to the point. What's on your mind? Well, a bloke named Mike Waring. It's a man to see me the other day. Yeah. Wanted to know. I can that... imagine what he wanted to know. I didn't tell him about Miss Baker. You see, I gave her my word. And that's the way he wouldn't break it, naturally. Unless, of course, there were conditions I got no control over. Like, uh, well, uh, if there was anky panky going on. What do you mean by anky panky? I suppose for the sake of argument, Miss Baker was a spy. Oh, not that I think... You understand. I understand. Oh, well, naturally, it would be my duty to tell what I know. I'm a patriot. I am. That's obvious. Of course, I don't to make trouble for Miss Draper, and there's no reason why I should. If you're paid. <laughs> like I said before, Mr. Vaughan, I like a gent who don't beat around the bush. How much do you want? First, we say, I've understand. How do I know this won't be the first of many such calls? Now, I'm no pig, Mr. Vaughan. Ask anyone what knows Alfie Brooks. They'll tell you he's a reasonable man. Well, that raises a problem. I don't have that much on me. That's all right. I trust you. <laughs> you might be making a mistake. <laughs> no, I don't think so. You see, 
I can always go back to Mr. Waring. Yeah. He's my insurance policy. A sort of Lords of London, eh? Uh-huh. Where do you live? 13 Oakley Square, that's in Town. I'll be by at 3.30. In the morning? Yes, I have a few different days. Uh, you won't fail me. Oh, don't worry, Brooks. Like you, my word is my bond. That's all I ask. Well, sir, mate. Uh, give my best to this paper. I will. Well, was I imagining things? Apparently not. What are we going to do? Well, first I'm going to have a drink and meditate, my darling. Obviously, I can't permit myself to be blackmailed. So there's only one solution. No. I'm afraid yes, darling. What do you think I told Brooks I'd be there at 3.30? I don't know what you Well, that's the time I expect to be with your employer. Can you look at Yes. Ironic, isn't it, that the American military attaché should be my alibi? But if you're going to be with the colonel... I can't take care of our Mr. Brooks. Then who will? You. You're crazy. What's the trouble, darling? Something wrong with my logic? Everything. You don't think I'm going to commit murder? Oh, really, Chris, the time you show your bourgeois background. I've done a lot for you, Robert. But I won't kill anyone. Why not? And, Rector, my dear, you've been responsible for thousands of deaths. What's a lie? Did you ever think of the end results of all the work you've done for us? Those bits of paper you brought us ultimately meant the death of some American boy. No. Well, darling, you've got to face the facts. You're a big girl now. There we are. What's that? A moment ago, I've been keeping for just such an occasion. It's a cufflink. You'll notice the initials. M.W. M.W. Didn't you say Mike Waring was in London? Yes. Well, I'll you take care of Mr. Brooks. You're to drop this near the body. I won't do it. And I say, well, what is your drink, Pet? I'd hate to be late for my appointment with Colonel Logan. So much depends on it. Are you in a hurry? Are you in enough of a hurry to risk your life? Statistics show that by far the largest percentage of all fatal highway accidents are caused by drivers who go over the speed limit. Speeding on the highway gets you nowhere except in the trouble. The faster you drive, the less control you have over your car. The longer it takes you to stop, the greater strain you put on your tires, and the more likely you are to skid if the roads are bad. Weigh all these facts against the few minutes you may save by driving too fast, and then slow down. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. I say what you don't know will never hurt you. The prize selling up to Alfie Brooks. He had no idea the little surprise party Robert Bourne and Chris Baker were preparing for him. Meanwhile, I had a dinner date with Chris's boss, Colonel Logan, at the Savoy. I don't know if the fuel shortage had anything to do with it, but uh, we ate by candlelight, so that made two more of us in the dark. Some more wine, Mike? Is that what it is? I couldn't tell him this life. <laughs> I'm surprised that you might. Don't you know there's nothing more romantic than eating by candlelight? Well, how can you expect me to be romantic with a colonel in the army? Now, if you were that blonde secretary of yours... Chris? Forget it. She's spoken for. Yeah, just the same. I think I'll have to talk with her tomorrow. What for? Well, I've covered everybody else on your staff. Time I got around to her. Wasting your time, soldier. You might as well suspect me. <laughs> Don't think I haven't. <laughs> what I like about you boys and intelligence, you wouldn't even trust your... Look, what's the trouble, Colonel? I don't know. Here, I'll get the doctor. No, no, get the sick. A little pants. Uh, feel better already. Well, let me take you home. No, no, it's, it's nothing nice. It's a touch of indigestion. But just the same, we're going to see you home. I'll have the way to call a cab. No, no, I, I've got a date. Well, let me keep it for you. I guarantee she won't be disappointed. No, but you will. It's a heat. Oh. Yeah, although you and Vaughn might hit it off at that. What Vaughn might that be? Robert, is he in England? Don't tell me you know him. I certainly do. I met him in Vienna two weeks ago. He's working for the Reds. He's what? Sure, he's a big shot in the party. <laughs> I bet he's behind all these shenanigans. Mike, you haven't seen too many movies. But I tell you, Colonel... Tell me tomorrow. Vaughn and I have got a date to play chess. And if I'm going to keep it, I'll have to move. I'll be seeing you, fellow. All right, Colonel. Your move. You're going to regret this, Vaughn. Suppose I move my bishop here. I believe that's checkmate. Now, how the devil did I miss that? <laughs> too much too good, Colonel. I resign. How about another game? No, no, I promised my doctor I'd be in bed by one. Oh, but it can't be more than 12. Well, if it isn't, someone better notify Big Ben. That's three striking now. Hmm. I can't imagine where the time went. Would you like me to drive you home? No, no, don't bother. I'll get a cab. Oh, ridiculous. In my nice here, it'll take us no time at all. Well, Yvonne, I hate to put you in any trouble. Oh, forget it. Just let me get my coat. Well, I certainly appreciate it. My pleasure. I'll be right out. 
Operator, let me have Savoy. 4112, please. Hello? Hello, Chris. Robert here. Just wanted to know everything is proceeding according to plan, my dear. I'm leaving now with Colonel Logan. You have that cuff link I gave you? Yes, uh, Good. I should be at the Colonel's flat at 3.30, at which time you should be knocking on Mr. Brooks' door. Hello. I wish I had time to, but it might throw our schedule off. Good hunting, darling. Hello, Bert. What? Miss Draper. Mm-hmm. I was expecting Mr. Vaughan. He couldn't make it, so he sent me in his place. Uh, I don't like that, miss. It seems to me when you make an agreement... It couldn't be helped, Brooks. Now, may I come in? All right. You got it? Yes, I've got it. Where's the wife? I sent it to our ma. I knew Mr. Vaughan wouldn't want anyone around while we were conducting business. That was smart. <laughs> you leave it to Brooks, miss. I'm a bloke who... A bloke who what? What? <laughs> What's the idea of the gun? What's usually the idea? Please, he, he mustn't joke with me. I'm not joking, Brooks. <laughs> Look, we can forget about the money. Can we? Sure. Well, what do I want with 500 pounds? I wouldn't know what to do with it anyway. You tell me some more. Uh, uh. Will you call in the yard and ask him to send over the lorry? I'll get it. Yes? I'd like to see Alfie Brooks, please. I think we can oblige him. Come in. Right. There he is. Oh. Do you care for a closer look? Yes, if you don't mind. I insist. Oh, it's not very pretty. What murder is? I, uh, I don't believe I caught your name. Mike Waring. Oh, how are you? I'm Heathcliff. Heathcliff? Now, if you're going to make any bad jokes about weathering heights, I'd rather you didn't. You try to carry on with him. I take it you're with the yard. You take it correctly. Well, I'm with American Intelligence. If you'd like to see my credentials? I'd love to. There you are. Mm-hmm. Seems to be in order. Uh, if I can help in any way, yes, you can. Now, what do you make of this coupling? Well, let's see it. Oh, I'd rather you did, though, man. But the initials on it are M.W. Well, it could stand for Mike Waring. Couldn't it? Which merely proves how long I've been... I don't get you. Well, every time I read one of your American thrillers, I'm amused when the criminal is apprehended because he conveniently leaves behind a coupling. But apparently, truth is stranger than fiction. This is Vaughn's work. I beg your pardon? Two weeks ago in Vienna, I ran into a man named Robert Vaughn. He was in charge of Soviet security. He had an opportunity to go through my things. And it's your theory that he appropriated this coupling at that time. Yes. Now, why did he do that? For just this purpose. Well, I'd say he was remarkably far-sighted, wouldn't you? Look, Inspector, this isn't for publication. But there was a spy at work on Colonel Logan's staff. The deceased, uh... Apparently. Well, it hardly seems like that, old man. After all, Brooks was just a porter. He'd be in no position to know anything. Well, he must have known something. That's why Vaughn killed him. Still, it was your coupling we found near the body. But can't you see it's a frame? I knew you were going to say that. Huh? Those American pictures aren't exaggerated. Oh, don't be a fool. If I kill Brooks, why would I come back here? Doesn't the killer always return to the scene of the crime? In your case, probably to retrieve the coupling. Oh, what's the use? When did he die? Half past three. What were you doing at that time? I was asleep. I'm afraid that isn't much of an alibi, old man. But I'll give you eight to five at horns. Isn't any better. And those are excellent odds. I think you take, I'll take you up on them. Primrose, be a good chap and get us a car, will you? We've got to settle a bet. <laughs> Very interesting tale, Inspector. So Mr. Waring believes I framed you, eh? I know you did, Vaughn. You're the only one who could have farmed that coupling. And where did I have the opportunity? Two weeks ago in Vienna at the Hotel Imperial. Oh, really, old man. You're not serious? Why should I kill this, this, uh... uh Brooks. Uh, oh, yes. Alfie Brooks. Thank you, Inspector. Why don't you say you didn't even know the man? I didn't. Oh, come off it, Vaughn. He was working for you. Then why should I kiss him? All right, maybe he wasn't. I do wish you'd make up your mind. Was he or wasn't he? Look, Inspector, suppose there was someone else in that office cooperating with Vaughn and Brooks discovered it. Then suppose he tried to blackmail Vaughn. You're doing an awful lot of supposing. Then why won't you tell us what you were doing at 3.30 last night? Because I hate to involve anyone. You're bluffing. I wouldn't advise you to call me. Well, I am. The Inspector and I have a side bet on your hand. Well, I'm going to pull house, old man. At 3.30 last night, I was with Colonel Logan, the American attaché. You're lying. I saw the at Colonel... eight. He told me so. 
But he never would have stayed up till three thirty. He wasn't feeling well. I know. I drove him to his flat. We got there at four fifteen. Well, I don't get it. You will. Is it fact that you mentioned something about a wager between yourself and Mr. Waring? Yes, he staked his life on the outcome of this call. I do hope he can afford the loss. There's a price tag on almost everything. Whether you drive a shiny new 1952 model or a pre-war jalopy, you have to pay the price. And when you are driving that car, remember that speed also has its price. The price tag on speed violations last year was 15,000 killed and 500,000 injured. This year, thousands of lives can be saved if you and millions of other motorists come to the sober realization that speed is the biggest killer on the highways and resolve to slow down before you or someone else pays the price that must be paid for it. You can do your part by keeping within speed limits. At all times, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I can't say I wasn't warned. Mama always told me not to gamble, and here I had staked my life that Robert Vaughn didn't have an alibi for the time of Brooks' murder. But there was one consolation. My luck had to change. I couldn't possibly lose two bets in a row like this. Well, what do you say, Wedding? Are you satisfied now? No, he's lying, Inspector. Oh, really, old man. You couldn't possibly have been with Colonel Logan at 3.30. And suppose the Colonel bears out my story. Well, then, there was some horsing around with watchers. Horsing around? <laughs> I see you one. You mean jiggly program? Yes, that's exactly what I mean. The colonel wasn't wearing a watch, and Vaughn here probably doctored his own. Did I doctor Big Ben, too? Huh? The colonel called the hour to my attention as Big Ben was twice three. Oh, no. You really seem to be putting your foot in it, Mr. Waring. Well, I tell you, his alibi is a phony. Well, in England, we know a wonderful way to find out. Suppose we go over and see Colonel Logan. <laughs> because that's how you do it in America, too. <laughs> I hate to disturb you, Miss, but I'm Inspector Heathcliff of Scotland Yard. Yes, we've been expecting you. So why should you? Oh, uh, this is Mr. Waring and Mr. Vaughan. I've already had the pleasure. How are you, Miss Paper? Uh, Colonel Logan in there. Yes. Go on in. No. Oh, oh, come in, gentlemen. Say, hey, what's going on? There, this is. I cautioned him. He just wouldn't listen. Who are you? It's Dr. Wilburn. What's wrong with the Colonel? Oh, can't you see? He's dead. That's impossible. Oh, no, no, no. Typical coronary. They often go like that, you know. Late hours, overwork. Mm, poor guy. But I can assure you there was no pain. You never knew a thing. Well, kind of upsetting, isn't it, Vaughn? Hey, you claim the colonel was your alibi. He was. How are you going to prove it? That does create a problem. If you gentlemen will excuse me, I'll make the necessary arrangements. All right, Vaughn. What have you got to say to yourself now? Well, gentlemen, I'm afraid you'll leave me no choice. I didn't kill Brooks. But I know who did. Well, why didn't you say so before? Well, after all, I am a gentleman. And where the lady is involved... A lady? Christina Draper. The colonel's secretary? Yes, that's right. I've been seeing a good deal of the girl. Well, why should that make any difference? You might let me finish. I understand she's engaged with some chap in the state. Brooks apparently found out about it and attempted to blackmail her. I don't believe it. Thanks for the vote of confidence. Chris, darling. I guess it's true what they say about people who listen at keyholes. They never hear any good about themselves. I'm sorry, my pet, but you do understand... I'm not angry, Robert. I always knew you'd cut my throat someday. But you taught me a lot, too. Like you said, my reaction to murder was distinctly middle class. Well, I'm over that now. Listen, Miss Draper. Stay out of this. Put away that gun. This doesn't concern you. This is between Mr. Vaughan and myself. Right, Robert? You're being very melodramatic, Chris. What can you expect of a woman in love? You know, I do still love you. Oh, really, darling? I guess I will as long as we both live. Which isn't saying very much. I'll be seeing you, honey. No. Oh. Oh. All right, Angel. Let's have that gun. Yes. How is he, Inspector? He isn't. He's dead. I'm not going to care of that. All right, fellas, let's go. Kind of ironic, wasn't it, Willie? Huh? I mean, Vaughn's alibi turning on Colonel Logan and the Colonel dying of a heart attack for he could testify. Yeah, it just proves you can't depend on anything these days. Too bad, too, because it was really a nice twist. While Vaughn is with the Colonel, Chris killed Brooks. Pretty clever. 
Well, I got to give the devil his due. He had it all planned but the ending. Well, now that he's ended, I suppose we'll be going back to the state. <laughs> and am I looking forward to seeing them again? When are you leaving? First plane out. I do wish you'd change your mind. I'd like to show you around the yard. Oh, no, thanks. I made up my mind. And once I do, I... Excuse me, sir. Is either of you gentlemen, Mr. Michael Williams? Yeah. Uh, his cable for you, sir. It's been forwarded from your hotel. Oh, thanks. Oh, no. Bad news? Listen. Glad you're enjoying your holiday. No use coming back to New York now. It's hot as blazes. People peeling over in the streets. Understand they're doing the same in Italy, only they never get up again. Proceed immediately to Rome and find out why. Love and kisses Leon Brill. You're not going to take that. So what do you think? If I ignore this, Brill can have me court-martialed and shot. And if you go to Rome, you might end up the same way. Yes, ain't that a jolly prospect? Well, good night, Inspector. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Kathy. I'm glad you called. Now I'll have to have a rain check, Angel. I'm leaving tonight for Italy. Yeah, I just heard when it comes to murder, there's no place like Rome. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the running waters. If you ever wondered why Rome wasn't built in a day, maybe I can explain. They didn't use American labor. I take a craftsman like Steve Waters. Mr. Waters is the rugged-looking citizen sauntering down the eighth-floor corridor of the Hotel Nationale. He just arrived in Rome an hour ago without baggage and without friends, and already he's got a gun and a girl. Now, that's what I call a fast worker. Yes? Uh, you Marie Antonescu? That is right. Well, I must say, this is a pleasure. I'm Steve Waters. I beg your pardon. You never heard of me? No. Well, that's funny. I'm an old friend of your family. Matter of fact, I just saw your father yesterday. You saw my father. Yeah, and he sends his love. Oh, but that is impossible. My father is in Bucharest. I do not understand. Romania is behind the Iron Curtain. Yeah, yet apparently I can get in or out any time I want. I guess I must be a magician, huh? You are a coming turn agent. Well, that's a possibility. What have you done to my father? Nothing, absolutely nothing. He looks real fine. You'd think prison agreed with him. He is in prison. Oh, didn't you know? I'm sorry. But you don't have to worry. He won't be there long, either way. Uh, a cigarette? No. You sure? I want nothing from you. Not even your father's life? What do you want, Mr. Waters? All right, I'll make it short and sweet. Now, you're kind of friendly with a boy named Kirby Patterson. How did you learn that? Well, I probably know more about Kirby than you do. Uh, for instance, did you know he's with American Intelligence? No. Yeah, yeah, he's a spy, just like I am, only he's working the other side of the street. And his current assignment is to meet a man in Rome named Mike Waring. Only, uh, he's not going to make it. He isn't? No, no, you're going to see to that. Get out. Okay. Oh, uh, anything you want me to tell your father? Wait. Ma? What is it you wish? When do you expect to see Kirby again? Tonight at seven. Uh huh. Well, now, suppose the two of you have a drink up here before you go out. Only, uh... When you pour Kirby's, add the contents of this bottle. You expect me to poison him? Oh, now, let's not jump to conclusions. Now, this won't kill him. It'll only put him out long enough for me to keep his appointment you with mean Mike Waring. You are going to pretend to be Kirby? Ah. Uh-huh. I will not do it. Look, Marie, let's not argue. We both know you will. Just take care of that bottle. Where are you going? Is this your bedroom? Oh, you cannot sleep in there? Oh, I don't intend to. Now, you see, I figure you and Kirby need a chaperone, what with this drinking and such. So, uh, I'll just keep an eye open to see that you don't get into trouble. Marie, I don't like the way you look. You sure you feel all right? I feel fine, Kirby. What makes you say such a thing? Well, your hands are like ice. I'm going to get your coat. Where is it, in the bedroom? Don't go in there. What's the matter? 
I, I hate to be treated like an infant, that's all. Someone would think I was helpless. Yes, but uh, you've got a chill. I tell you I'm all right. I, I, I just need a drink. All right. Where do you keep the... Uh... Never mind. I'll fix it myself. <laughs> You're not going to let me do anything tonight. What will you have? Scotch on the rocks. Kirby, you know I love you. Well, I certainly hope you do. I would die if anything happened to you. Now, what brought that on? I just hope you understand. Sometimes we cannot help ourselves. Okay, Marie, let's have it. What are you trying to tell me? Nothing, darling. Here's your drink. Thanks. Well, salute. Salute. Take Get this stuff. Is, is something wrong? Well, it's got a peculiar taste. Oh, it's your imagination. How do you know? You haven't even tasted yours. Oh, Oh, no, it is fine. I still say it's got an off taste. Here, you try mine. Oh, you're trying to be ridiculous. They were both poured from the same bottle. What are you getting so steamed up about? All I said was... Marie. What, what is it? I... I don't know. I... I can't catch my breath. I... Maybe if you sit down. Get me some water. Yes, darling. Hurry, honey. I feel like I'm going to... Kirby! Kirby! You'll wake the baby. What have you done to him, Walter? What did I do? I'm just an innocent bystander. He's dead. No, no, no. He's going to be fine. Now, why don't you just sit down and relax till Mike Waring's train pulls into Rome, huh? Oh, I sure hope it's on time. We'll have to give Kirby another treatment if it's late. <laughs> Pal, what do you think you're doing? Oh, Scusa, signora. I uh, look for my friend. They tell me he's in this compartment. Well, did you think he was hiding in my luggage? No, capisco. In case you hadn't noticed, that's my bag you're handling. Oh, I, I uh, want to see if this is his suitcase. What does that tag say? Uh, Michael Waring. Well, now that we've got me identified, who are you? Roberto Stefani. Roberto Stefani? Si, what were you doing with my grip? Oh, you make a mistake. No, you did. You should have closed the straps. All right. I tell you the truth. I have to make sure you really are Michael Waring. Why? You work for American intelligence, no? How did you find that out? Did they not tell you in London a man would meet you on the Rome Express to give you your next assignment? No. <laughs> Maybe they, how you say, uh, double check. You are to go to the Hotel Nacional and meet the Kirby Patterson there. Am I right? Keep talking. You are supposed to deliver some information to him which can be used by our friends in Romania. How come you know so much? I work for American intelligence, too. <laughs> That's pretty good. You do not to believe me? Oh, what a question. Uh, uh, Senor Waring, please. Uh, stand still. Oh, so you pack a gun, huh? <laughs> Naturally. In our work. Yeah, tell me more about your work, Roberto. I see your dues are paid up through August. Huh? Well, isn't this a membership card in the Italian Communist Party? Oh, oh. <laughs> well, uh, I can explain it, Senor. Yes, I'll bet you can. <laughs> tell the comrades I enjoyed my entrance to Rome. Only next time, let me choose my own welcoming committee. <laughs> Get this straight, Waring. You mean this Roberto Stefani actually had the nerve to pose as one of our boys? Yeah, he even knew I was supposed to meet a Kirby Patterson in Rome. <laughs> you sure got to hand it to the bums. They don't miss a trick. No. Lucky I'm suspicious by nature. I used to say I wouldn't trust my own mother, so uh, naturally... You uh... want to see my credentials. Uh -huh. I was wondering when you'd get around to that. Come here. Andy Patterson, 5'9", 172 pounds. Brown hair, brown eyes, birthmark on left temple. Well, you certainly fit the description. Well, I ought to. I wrote it myself. <laughs> uh, when are you leaving for the States? Just as soon as I finish this assignment. Well, there's no time like the present. Where's the dope? Right here in this notebook. 
Uh, well, it's in code. What did you expect? How soon do you think you can get it to your contact in Romania? Well, I'll have it by Thursday, maybe Wednesday. If... Expecting someone? No, put the notebook away. Right. All right, come in. See your wedding. That's right. My card. Julio Farinacci, Hotel National. I'm going to run along, Mike. Yeah, okay, Kirby. Uh, lots of luck. Yeah, same to you. Oh, lift one for me when you get back to Times Square. Huh? <laughs> I'll do that. Now, oh, what can I do for you, Julio? I am what you call the house detective here. Oh, well, I'm glad to meet you. The honor is all mine, senor. It is a great pleasure to greet my opposite number from the great democracy across the Atlantic. How's that again? Well, are you not the private detective they call the Falcon? Oh, only when they can't think of anything worse. You are here on business? No, I've retired, Julio. Oh, what a pity. I had hoped to be allowed to cooperate. No one knows the criminal mind like Giulio Farinacci. Mm. Uh, I trust you will forgive me for mentioning it, but uh, as one in the profession, you will understand. What? The senor who was just here. You call him Kirby. What about it? It is uh, an unusual American name. No, not too. Why? In the lobby yesterday, I heard a foreign lady call a gentleman Kirby. He did not look like your friend. You sure? Yes. He was a tall, blonde man. Or was Kirby his first or last name? I would have no way of knowing. Look, Julio, this is very important. Now, if you run across this other Kirby again, let me know. I'd certainly like to meet him. <laughs> Senor Waters. Well, what's the matter with you, Roberto? Can't you see I'm busy? But the Senor Patterson here. He is opening his eyes. Oh, it's about time, too. Give him some water. Here, Senor. Huh? Drink. Hiya, Kirby. Oh. Who are you? Well, generally, I go under the name of Steve Waters. Steve Waters? Yeah, though lately I've been using yours. I, uh... I don't understand. Oh. Oh, your headache? Where's Marie? Marie? Marie Antonescu. Is this her room? Uh, yeah, yeah, now that you mention it, I believe it is. Where is she? Oh, one of my associates took her for a ride. I didn't think this was any place for a woman, especially if we wanted to have a little man talk. Um, you recognize this? No. It's a notebook I got from Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Yeah, yeah, only it's in code. Would you happen to have the key? Let's see now. Uh-uh, mustn't touch I got a Mickey. Hey, did you hear that, Roberto? He thinks he was drugged. But uh, who would do such a thing? Well, I wonder. Well, if I'm not the world's prized chump. Senor Waters. Well, I put down that phone, Kirby. Operator. Look, boy, don't make me do something you'll be sorry for. Operator. Senor Waters. Hang up the phone. But he is dead. Well, and he certainly won't want to use it. Hang up, Roberto. We got work to do. You and your children can expect to live long thanks largely to better medicine and surgery. But you could expect to live even longer were it not for the danger of automobile accidents. If driver education could be taught in all of our high schools instead of only a third of them, it might someday help to save the life of your own son or daughter. If your schools don't have these courses, demand driver education for your children. And if your own automobile is not in the good repair it should be, be sure to have it fixed. Remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's life for you. One minute you got it, the next you haven't. Miss Kirby Patterson learned the hard way. But I had no idea what was going on. The first I knew of it was some eight hours later. I just finished tangling with the mess of Bragioli at Angelo's on the Via Cavour when I looked up and saw a gentleman dressed in blue standing over me. If his uniform wasn't a giveaway, his feet were. They were flat. He was a cop, all right. His name was Emilio Balbo, and he was a captain in the Carabinieri. It seemed the Capitano had heard of me and wanted to show me the local sights. It was a deluxe 50-cent tour. He started with the morgue, and that was my finish. You will be good enough to observe, Senor Wedding. I'm observing. I would be most interested in your deductions. Well, offhand, I'd say he was either English or American. Uh-huh. 
Probably American, judging by his clothes. See, si, see. Si. Yeah, and he must have been pretty handy with his fists. And what do you base this? The broken knuckles on the right hand. Ah, capisco. Uh, how come his clothes are so wet? Perhaps you can guess. You fished him out of the tiber? Exactly. Well, he wasn't in there long. Maybe four or five hours. Formidable. Uh, would you care to venture a guess as to his identity? No, I'm afraid not. The desk clerk at the Hotel Nazionale said he visited you this afternoon. Mm, he's out of his mind. Uh, perhaps I can refresh your recollection. His name is uh, Kirby Patterson. What? That's impossible. Or is it? If he's Kirby Patterson, who's the other one? What other one? The boy who called on me yesterday, and I gave him the... Listen, Capitano, you're positive this is the right Kirby Patterson? Absolutely. He was identified by a member of the American Embassy. Oh, poor devil. You have no idea who killed it? Yes, I've got a big idea. Who? The fellow who called himself Kirby Patterson. What the... Yeah, if you're confused, think of me. But maybe I know the man who can clear up this mess. Who? The house stick at the Hotel National. I'll let you know how I make out. The more Chianti Signor wearing? Uh, no, thanks, Julio. Right now I have more pressing problems. My ears are at your command. Uh, well, you told me you saw a woman with a man named Kirby in the lobby of the National. See, si, I did. Are you sure about that? The memory of Giulio Faranacci is not to be doubted, Signor. It has been said. Yeah, okay, okay. Who was the gal? Uh, let me think. Oh. She might have been a guest of the hotel. How do you arrive at that conclusion? Well, you said she wasn't Italian. So it's a good bet if she met Kirby at the National, she must have been living there, because he wasn't. Beautifully reasoned. Well, you know who she is? Uh, it escapes me at the moment. Okay, we'll start at the hotel register. That ought to give us a lead. Wait. Wait. I believe I know the very woman. Yes. Suite 813, Marie Antonescu. Marie Antonescu? She's from Romania, I believe. Thanks a lot, Julio. Uh, perhaps I can assist. No, no, you've done your share. From here on, it's up to me. Let's hope I do as well. Hello, Marie. I beg your pardon. Well, aren't you Marie Antonescu? Yes. Kirby Patterson sent me around. Kirby sent you here. In a manner of speaking. Oh, please come in. Thank you. Uh, sit down. Thanks. I imagine Kirby's feeling very angry with me. No, as a matter of fact, he isn't feeling a thing. Oh, I am surprised. And he's dead. No. Yes. I do not believe you. You are lying. Where's my percentage? But they promised oh, me that... Oh, now we're getting to it. What did they promise you? Nothing. Look, Angel, you're in a jam. Stop talking. I know nothing, Mr. Waring. You know my name is Waring. Uh, you, you said so? No, I didn't. Kirby must have told you about his appointment with me. Now, like Kirby Patterson showed, all right, but he wasn't the right boy. How do you know? Because I saw the genuine article down at the morgue. They just dragged him out of the Tiber. He wasn't pretty, Marie, the fish. Stop it, stop it! What's the matter, getting sensitive all of a stop. sudden? What did you do, take a walk while they killed him? He wasn't killed here. No? What's that rust-colored spot on the rug near the phone? Blood. It ain't borscht. But he told me would only put him to sleep. Who told you? That's Steve Waters. Stocky lad. Brown hair, a little birthmark over his left temple. Yes. How much did he pay you? Oh, you do not understand. This Mr. Waters came here yesterday. He told me they had arrested my father in Bucharest. And if you I didn't did... cooperate, you'd never see him again. Yes. Oh, come on, Angel. You can dream up a better story than that. I swear it is the truth. You must believe me. That was the first time you saw this Steve Waters? Yes. He had just flown in from Romania. Then he might be out of Italy, but... No, no, he wouldn't. That material is worthless unless it's decoded. What? Nothing. I was just talking out loud. He's got to stay in Rome till he solves it. We're all behind the eight ball if Mr. Waters is gone. Uh, two equals A. Seventeen is I, and twenty-three would have to be O. No, it doesn't work. It ought to be so. That you, Roberto? See, si, Senor Waters. Wait a second. I bring you something to eat. Well, put it down on the table. What do you got there? Pasta, lasagna, vino. That ah, looks good. My wife make. Well, my compliments to the little woman. Uh, Senor Steve. No. 
You know they are looking for you. Do tell. They ask questions everywhere. My wife, she's very nervous. We have a little one on the way. Well, what's your excuse? Huh? You're nervous, too. And yeah, maybe you should be. Because when the chief hears about Mike Waring nabbing you on the Rome Express with a party card in your pocket... Uh, you would not tell him. He would kill me. Senor, I beg of you for the sake of my wife and my children. Yeah, we've got to consider them. Yes. Well, my youngest is only two years old. Yeah, and you've got another bambino on the way. Si, eh? si. Well, that does raise a problem. I got it, Roberto. Why don't you quit the party? You think the chief would let me? Well, of course. What didn't you know? The party's like a social club. You can resign whenever you please. Sure. Hey, just let me talk to the chief. I can guarantee your troubles are over. Yeah? Signor Wary. That's right. Giulio Farinacci at your service. Uh, where'd you find out, Giulio? Your friend Stephen Waters came to Rome by way of Berlin. Berlin? There is no airplane service direct to Bucharest. He had a return ticket. What's the next flight out? Tomorrow morning at 11. Well, then there's a good chance that Waters might still be in Rome. Yes, he is. According to my information, he's living with a despicable type named Roberto Stefani. Roberto Stefani? That's the comrade I ran into on the Rome Express. What's the address? Corso Vittorio, number 23. Got it. Thanks a lot, Giulio. You're the greatest house dick this side of 42nd Street. Anytime you want a job at the Waldorf, let me know. Apparently, there is no one here. Apparently, Julian. Could it be my informant misled me? Well, let's find out. Wait. Senor Waring, what do you call that? Well, in English, they call skeleton keys. Anyone coming up the landing? I do not like this. It is against the law. That was murder. You think they take an oath not to use soap and water when they join the Communist Party? Those things they consider unimportant. Uh, what's behind that curtain? Oh, that is where they sleep. Senor. Yeah? That... That is Stephen Waters? That was Stephen Waters. He's dead. Yeah, well, I didn't think that extra hole in his head was for ventilation. We should not be here. All right, take it easy, Julio. I want to look around. He had some papers that belonged to me. Help me turn them over. If the senor will excuse me. Oh, what do you know? Here's a little item that did the trick. It is a German Luger. Yeah, that's what it is. Got a handkerchief? I do not think the carabinieri will approve of this. No? I uh, do not think they will. Ah, senor, well, we meet again, huh? Yeah, I know this sounds antisocial, Capitano, but you're the last man I wanted to see. My entrance was a trifle premature. A trifle? What a pity. I could have timed it to give you an opportunity to wipe your fingerprints off the weapon. Hey, now, wait a minute. You don't think I'd do that? Oh, I know appearances can be deceiving. Would you like to convince me here? Or wait till we get to my office? Every day last year on the highways, an average of 103 Americans like yourself or those in your family were killed in automobile accidents. But a lot of highway deaths don't seem to bother us much unless someone in our own family is killed. You can do your part in helping to fight disaster on the highways by being a safer driver and by working in your community and state for strict law enforcement that means safer traveling for all of us. At all times, you must remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. If you know anything worse than being discovered standing over a cold corpse with a hot gun in your hand, I'd like to hear it. Just drop me a line and carry the Italian police in Rome. They'll know where to reach me. They don't have far to travel. Let me congratulate you, Senor Waring. You relate a very interesting story. So help me, it's the truth. Ask Julio here. See, si, Capitano, I take an oath he does not lie. I was with him every minute of the time, from the Excuse moment... Excuse me, that... please. Barbuqua, 
Sì? Sì. Capisco. Hai fatto benissimo. Sono molto gradito, grazie. You're wearing my apologies. Eh? You too, Giulio. I do not understand. No, that makes two of us. You will be pleased to learn we have solved the case. You have. You are interested? Vitally. Bet. The murder of your colleague, Kirby Patterson, is no mystery. He was killed by the communist agent, Steve Waters. Agreed? Agreed. But who killed Waters? You care to venture a guess? Yeah, Roberto Stefani. Wrong. It was his apartment. But Roberto had no reason. The death of Waters was motivated by revenge. I don't see it. You are forgetting the woman in the case, Maria Antonescu. Maria Antonescu? She was in love with Kirby. And you think she killed Steve Waters? Yes. Never. Then how do you account for the fact that the murder gun belongs to her? What? And her fingerprints were found on the bed near the body? Well, there must be some mistake. I hope not for your sake, senor. If there is, we shall have to return to you. But let us see what the lady has to say for us. <laughs> are wrong, Captain. I, I did not kill Steve Waters. I was in my hotel all evening. And the gun, you say, was stolen from your room? Yes. Ask Julio. I reported it to him this morning. She tells the truth, Capitano. Did her door show signs of forced entry? No. Then she was merely preparing an alibi. No, it is not true. How do you explain your fingerprints being found near Steve Waters' body? I cannot. Maybe I can. It would be most interesting, Sir Wary. Well, it's simple. She was there. No. Look, Marie, you've got to stop lying. You're panicky and you're not thinking clearly. We can buy that stolen gun routine, but not the fingerprints. You had to be in that room. I tell you... Well, I... don't bother unless it's the truth. Now, you went to Roberto's flat, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. But when I got there, Waters was dead. But I did not kill him, I swear it. How did you learn where he was? Through a telephone call. Who's? He would not give his this name. This is most amusing. All right, give her a chance, Capitano. Sure, you don't believe her. Well, why not? What's so hard to believe about an anonymous phone call? You got one. Me? Or you just didn't blunder into Roberto's place? Someone must have tipped you off. True. Well, there you are. But if she did not kill Waters, who did? Aren't you forgetting someone? Roberto Stefani. Well, he's a possibility, Julio. Let's see if he meets the acid test. Now, this whole case is tied up with politics. Steve Waters was brought to Rome to do a job. But in accomplishing it, he killed Kirby. That made him a liability to the comrades. They had to get rid of him. Then the order to liquidate him must have come from a higher functionary here in Rome. That's right. But who could his superior be? Well, that's a good question, Capitano. Just ask yourself, who knew I was looking for Steve Waters? Who was in a position to remove Kirby's body from Marie's room? Who alone had the opportunity to steal her gun? Obviously, someone employed by the Hotel Nazionale... <gasps> oh, obviously. You, uh, you are referring to me. Who else? Yeah, she did a nice piece of work, Julio. I'm sure the party appreciates your efforts. Maybe when you join Steve Waters, you can start a new communist cell. You'll find a lot of hot prospects down there. Attenzione. Attenzione. Volo numero novantuno da Roma a Berlino. Cancello numero cinque. Your attention, please. Flight 91. Roma. Well, I guess that means me. Before you go, Senor Waring, on behalf of my colleagues, let me thank you again for your valuable assistance. Oh, my pleasure, Captain. Uh, I know it is undiplomatic of me to inquire, but that notebook of yours, yeah. uh, did you ever find it in Julio's belongings? Uh, you know, I couldn't answer that. But don't bother looking for it. I understand. But I'm just sorry you could not visit with us long. Oh, I'll be back, if only for one reason. They say when in Rome, do as the Romans. But I never got a chance to find out just what it is the Romans do. This I got to learn. Arrivederci, Capitano. The Case of the King of Clubs. The Case of the King of Clubs. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that when trumps are led, the game can be murdered. The adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, 
Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, written by Eugene Wang, and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Susan Douglas as Marie. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Martha. I'm glad you called. You'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. I'm on my way to Berlin. That's right, Berlin. Seems Army Intelligence needs a troubleshooter in Germany. I know, I don't like it either. That's the sort of assignment that kills me. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon sounds the case of the King of Clubs. I don't know how you feel about advertisements. Personally, I love them. Especially the one that goes, never to underestimate the power of a woman. Believe me, Shakespeare never poured more truth into fewer words. Let's go through the pages of history. Eve, Delilah, Cleopatra, Lily Thiessen. And if you've never met Lily, this is your chance. She's a luscious-looking female making with the lipstick in her apartment off the tear garden in Berlin. And though our armed forces may occupy West Germany, it works both ways. Lily keeps our armed forces occupied. Who is it? It's me, Lily. Open up. Just a moment. Henry, darling, what a wonderful surprise. I thought you'd be busy at the office. I had to see you, Lily. I've been going out of my mind since last night. So sweet. Every time I think of you... Henry, behave yourself. Now, you bad boy, look what you've done to my hair. Oh, uh, I ran into some character on your landing. Who was he? How should I know? Well, he must have been up here. Tall, thin boy, blonde hair. You don't trust me. You're darn right. You're not kidding me, Lily. I know all about you. And I know all about you, Major Bud. Why didn't you tell me you were married? Well, what, uh, what makes you think I am? I met your wife yesterday on the Dream Lindy. No. Yes. She's a very lovely woman, Jimmy. A little thin, perhaps, but most charming. Lily, you, you didn't say anything to her. Of course not, Lisa. Would I do anything to hurt you? I just know now what I have to do. What do you mean? Well, naturally, I can't continue seeing you. It wouldn't be fair. Lily, I won't give you up. Then it's very simple. Divorce your wife. No, no, no. I I can't do that to Grace. But you have no objection to doing it to me. Now, Lily, you don't understand. Grace is a wonderful girl. And I'm a mercenary female without a conscience. Yes. Yet you love me. I'm crazy about you, Lily. I can't give you up. And you won't give up your wife. You do have a problem, darling. <laughs> All right, I'll give it till the end of the week to solve it. All right, Jimmy. What is it? What's what, Grace? Well, there's something bothering you. You want to tell me about there's it? There's nothing to tell. If there's any way that I can I help... tell you it's nothing. Now, for Pete's sake, let me alone. Of course. I, I, I'm sorry, Grace. I, I don't know what's come over me. Oh, you've been working too hard. What you need is... Oh, dear. I'll get it. Just a second. Good morning. Good morning. Is Herr Mayor Dodge in? Uh, yes. I wonder if I might have a word with him. Who is it, Grace? Well, it's someone to see you, Tim. Uh, Mr... Keller. Fitz Keller. You probably don't remember me, Major. Why, no, I don't. We met for a few short minutes this afternoon on the landing at 41 Wolfenstrasse. Oh. Comes back to you now? Uh, yes. What do you want? I would prefer to discuss this privately. Uh, Grace, do you mind? Oh, of course not, Jimmy. I'll run over and talk to Twyla. It's uh, been nice meeting you, Mr. Keller. The pleasure was all mine. Uh, I'll be back in about 20 minutes, please. Yes, that'll be fine. Lovely woman, your wife. All right, Keller, what's on your mind? Well, you might at least invite me to sit down. I don't think you'll be staying long. 
I trust you will appreciate my position, Major Dodge. We Germans are a poor people. Circumstances often compel us to do things we cannot help. In my case, I have a rare opportunity to go into business with one of my compatriots. Unfortunately, we lack capital. So? So I would be obliged if you would loan me 45,000 marks. That's 10,000 American dollars. Are you crazy? It isn't as though I have no security to offer. In exchange, I am prepared to turn over... Where did you get these pictures? Doesn't Lily photograph beautifully? But personally, I... If you think I'm going to let you blackmail me... What an ugly world. What I asked was a loan. Of course, there is the chance you will never be repaid. Why, you... No! I'll show you... No! Come on, get up. No one... No one has ever struck a killer. I'm not regretting it. What are you going to do? Have your second call on me? I might even call on you myself. Good Norman, Major Dodge. I'm sure we shall meet again. Hello. Um, is that you, Lily? You, yeah, darling. Uh, I've got to see you. Suppose we met at the uh, Kreutzkerning. Have you told your wife about it? Uh, no, no. Something's come up, Lily. Do you know a Fritz Keller? Keller? No, no. Keller with a K. Why do you ask? He knows about us. He's even got a set of pictures. He wants 45,000 marks for them. How dreadful. Yes, he was the same boy I met on your landing the other day. You think I cooperated with him? I didn't say that. But you intimated with me. Now, wait a minute, Lily. You practically accused me. I didn't you. mean it, I swear. Well, what are you going to do? What do you recommend? Let this Keller do his work. I'm not ashamed of our love. Uh, no, no, really. I, I, I don't want Grace to find out about us this way. Then you have no choice but to pay him. Where will you raise the money? Well, I, I'll manage somehow. You do love me, don't you, Lily? You sure, boy, of course I do. Well, can I see you tonight? I'll tell Grace. I don't think you better, Jimmy. I want you to be able to give her killer your undivided attention. He needs it. Of living, darling. <laughs> And the major is of the O P I M I. Yes? I'm looking for Major Dodge. Oh, he isn't in. I'm Major Dodge at Civilian Aid. Can I help you? Yeah, maybe you can at that. I'm Mike Waring. Mike Waring. Now, wait a second. Haven't I heard that name before? I don't know. Have you? Why, sure. You're the private detective they call the Falcon. Yeah, not so loud. I'm trying to live it down. <laughs> what are you doing here? I haven't recalled a temporary duty with Army Intelligence. Well, sit down. Thanks. Uh, I'm Alan Bruce. You uh, just get into Berlin? No, I've been here for a week doing groundwork. You don't think that we've got a couple of spies on the payroll? Well, you might be from the looks of your accounts. The Pentagon cables me are $10,000 short. Uh, oh, they're crazy. No, it's been double-checked, Bruce. Someone around here has sticky fingers. How long have you known Major Dodge? Don't tell me you think that Jimmy... Yeah, he's a possibility. Oh, well, you're out of your mind. You might just as well suspect me. I do. Well, that makes a lot more sense. Jimmy's as honest as they come. Oh, I'm sure. You know where I can reach him? Why, no. Uh, he and Grace just moved. What's his phone number? I don't think they've got a phone. That's right. He told me he was having trouble getting it transferred. Mm -hmm. Well, when he gets in, ask him to call me. Huh? I'm staying at the Hindenburg. I'll do that. I'm staying at the You bet. Operator, get me Grenadier. 1341. Oh, come on, come on. Hello? Is that you, Jimmy? Yeah. Bruce here. Can you talk? Why, what's up? I don't know, but you better get down to the office pronto. Washington sent an investigator named Mike Waring to see you. Mike Waring? I thought he was in Rome. Not anymore. He claims we're $10,000 short. What? Yes, he's been sent here to find the guilty critter. Well, Bruce, you don't think I... Oh, of course not. What do you take me for, anyway? Well, is Waring there now? No, no, he left a minute ago. He wants you to get in touch with him at the Hindenburg. You better do it real fast. What's my hurry? Now, listen, Relax, please. Relax, Bruce. I'll get to Waring in due time. Uh, thanks for the tip, anyway. <laughs> Taxi. 
Sir, 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 I beg your pardon. You do not remember me? No, I'm afraid not. Fritz Keller. I was to see your husband a week ago. Oh, of course. How are you? Wonderful. I wonder would you care to join me in a glass of wine? Well, I'm sorry. I'm I'm late for an appointment now. I think this might be to your advantage, Grace. Grace? Forgive the informality, but I do hope we can be friends. Perhaps you will accept this uh, portfolio. Yeah, as I'm talking of my esteem. Well, well, what is it? That is snapshot of Berlin. Uh, for example, here is one of our zoo. Oh. Uh, isn't that to me in the foreground? Well, I believe it is. And I'm sure you must know the woman. Yes. I just happen to know that she's an old beast picture. Um, your husband's sister, perhaps. Yes. Very lovely. And she looks at him so adoringly. Obviously, they are very fond of each other. Obviously. Yes. <laughs> well, I hope you'll keep these as a little souvenir of your stay in Berlin. You're very kind. Now, if you'll forgive me, Herr Keller, I'll run along. Oh, I have work to do. Come. Am I or dodge? That's right. I, uh, I trust you will forgive this intrusion. <laughs> My name is Adolf Weinler. Adolf Weinler? Yes, I'm sure it means nothing to you, but we do have a mutual friend. Oh, who? Would you care to venture a guess? Uh, look, Weinler, I happen to be busy, so if you don't mind... The typical American spirit, nicht wahr? <laughs> you must make every moment count. But then, who can blame you? We are on Earth for such a short time. You're quite a philosopher. Yes, in my work, one must be. All right, what are you getting at? Perhaps this will clear up matters. Then I'll put away that gun. Well, you showed an interest in my profession. Why are you doing this? For money. I know I should be ashamed of myself, but when one is poor... Well, if it's money you want... Get away from that desk. Well, I just want to show you. I said get away. (laughs) That's the trouble with you Americans. You are so used to giving orders, you never learn to take them. (laughs) This will teach you... stop in time? Ask yourself that question the next time you drive your car. If the car in front of you should jam on his brakes to avoid a stray dog, if a child should dash across an intersection, if a tire should blow out, could you stop in time to save a life? Slippery roads, fogged windshields, poor visibility. All of these factors mean that you must be more alert in following simple safety rules. At all times, remember... Accidents don't always happen to the other fellow. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I guess it only proves that a little 38 can make some men a big shot. And three hours after Adolf Bimler pumped those slugs into Major James Dodge, I did a tour of the West Berlin Police Headquarters. Her General Inspector Schiller, who was in charge, was quite proud of their facility. The cells were complete in every detail. This one even came equipped with a brunette. Frau Dodge? Yes? You have a visitor. Hello, Mrs. Dodge. Who are you? Mike Waring. You will call me when you are through? Uh, yeah, thanks a lot, Herr Inspector General. Uh, cigarette? Oh, yes, please. Is the embassy sent you? No, I'm here on my own. I'm working for Army Intelligence. I wonder if you'd mind answering a few questions. If it's about my husband's murder. Yes, it is. I can only tell you what I told the others. I don't know anything about it. They think you killed him. That's ridiculous. You know an Adolf Bimler? No. He's the boy who pulled the trigger. Does he claim I hired him for the occasion? Well, so far, they haven't been able to ask him. He escaped to the Russian zone, and the comrades show a strange reluctance to turn him over. Well, when they do, you'll find that I didn't hire him. Where's my motive? Well, you know your husband was playing around with some Fraulein. That is a lie. Then how do you explain those snapshots of Jimmy and the blonde Venus they found in your purse? They didn't mean a thing. She, she was an old friend of the family. Mm-hmm. What's her name? Gretchen. Gretchen Schumann. Where can I find her? You can't. She moved to East Germany a couple of months ago. 
Now, look, Mrs. Dodge, I'd like to help you, but I've got to know the truth. Now, who is this girl? I told you her name is Gretchen Schumann. Mm -hmm. That's what you told me. You don't believe me? Nope. I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. Because I'm going to find her. And if you won't help me, maybe I know the party who will. Hey, Schiller, one out. I wish I could give you a lead wearing, but honestly, I don't see how I can. I never know unless you try, Bruce. You think Mrs. Dodd killed her husband? No. Why should she? He was cheating. I don't believe it. Why not? You were covering for him. Who said so? I do. When I saw you at the office, you told me the major had moved and he didn't have a phone in his new place. You were lying. Now, look. Well, weren't you? Yes. I called him right after you left. Why? He was my friend. Even though he had his hand in Uncle Sam's pockets? You'll never get me to believe that. Do you believe he was involved with some female? Yes. How did you find out? I ran into them together a couple of months ago. Mm -hmm. Is this the girl? Yes, that's Lily, all right. Lily? Lily Tisson. How did Dodge meet her? Oh, what difference does it make? Well, maybe I'd like to make her acquaintance the same way. There's a little nightclub on Kuhnstrasse. It's called the Kreutzkennig. Oh, that's the uh, king of clubs? Yes, yeah, she she works there. Uh -huh. Doing what? I don't know exactly. Good, then I'll have a chance to find out for myself. That ought to be fun. Yeah, but Lindsay Harbin. Uh, yeah, a Smirnoff martini, real dry, five parts vodka, one of vermouth. Make it two, Paul. Hmm? Unless the gentleman objects. Well, if I do, I'm no gentleman. Go ahead, Paul. Uh, good man, dear. I suppose I should introduce myself. My name is Lily Tilson. Well, uh, glad to know you, Lily. I'm Mike Waring. <laughs> you probably think I'm very forward. Well, wouldn't have it any other way. I hate retiring women. You intend to stay long in Berlin? Well, up to a minute ago, I was ready to leave, but now I'm beginning to like it. You are very gallant. <laughs> yeah, your drinks, sir. Oh, yes, yes. Uh, keep the change. Drunk is there. Thank you very much. That's all right. It was most unwise. Hmm? It's playing all that money. It may give people ideas. Well, if it gives you any, I'm all for it. You think your wife would approve? My wife? Well, I noticed that wedding ring. Oh, oh. Where is she? Oh, she's back in New York. She wouldn't leave the kids. You have children? Uh-huh, six. But you are kind of young to have so many. Well, I got an early start. <laughs> Tell me about her. Elsie, the greatest little girl in the world. Real wonderful mother. Imagine, you get eight servants in the house and she won't leave the kids. You have eight in hell? Well, I mean on the permanent staff. Of course, when we throw a shindig, we bring in a dozen more. You must be very wealthy. Uh, you leave it to wearing. I do all right. Oh, but it is so noiseless here. Why don't we go over to my place? Uh, what? I have a little flat near the tear garden. I think you might like it. Well, gee, uh, would uh, <laughs> would we uh, be alone? And... Surely you are not afraid. Oh, no, no. I was just thinking of a little woman. <laughs> she might not understand. <laughs> don't you have a saying, what you do not know can never hurt you? <laughs> hey, that's right. <laughs> then you are as you can never be hurt. Shall we go... Wait till I turn on the light. Hey, this is all right. You like it? Like it? <laughs> I think this is the softest touch since Lanolin Plus. <laughs> I just hope Elsie would understand. I'm sure she would. Sit down. Uh, now, what about you? I'm just going to slip into something a little more comfortable. Uh, wait, wait a minute. Uh... Don't worry, sir. I won't be long. Hello? An overfeed right right side. Yeah. I say, Lily. I'll be right with you, Michael. Help yourself to a drink. Hello? Yes? Yeah. Lily. Oh, you know, this is not very bright, Lily. There are extenuating circumstances. I just discovered Jimmy Dodge's successor. What? Make another American. What is his name? Mike Waring. Is he rich? Surely. He also has a wife and six children. He sounds most interesting. That's why I thought you should make his acquaintance. 
Won't bring along your camera, Fritz. I think Mr. Waring will prove a most photogenic subject. I'll be right there. Oh, the devil is my lord. All right, I'm coming, I'm coming. Yeah? Michael Waring? That's right. My car, sir. Mm-hmm. Which Keller? At your service. Well, what can I do for you? I prefer to discuss that inside, may I? Uh, why not? You should have. Thank you. Well, what's on your mind, Fritz? That I am a photographer by trade, Herr Waring. Oh, so? So I thought perhaps you might like a set of pictures as a souvenir of your visit to Germany. No, I don't think I'll need them. I've seen the concentration camps and gas chambers at Buchenwald and Dachau. I remember that for quite a while. You must understand. We Germans knew nothing of what was going on. Oh, sure. All you people thought they were rest homes for the aged. I refuse to be involved in a political discussion. I have more important business. Perhaps you would care to see a portfolio of my work. Yeah, sure. Love to. Ah. Hmm, that's nice. You recognize the lady? Yeah, it's Lily Thiessen. Yeah, she looks wonderful. But I don't think you did me justice. But it is undoubtedly you. Oh, yeah, that's me, all right. <laughs> I'm willing to sell them for 45,000 marks. Yeah. Well, do I get a discount if I buy in gross lots? If you think I'm joking. No, no, I think you're quite serious. You would not care to have your wife receive a set with my compliments. My wife? I believe her name is Elsie. Oh, Elsie. Uh, say, Fritz is a photographer. Maybe you'd like to see a picture. I think there was one in this magazine here. Yeah, she does a lot of modeling. Yeah, here we are. Oh, what do you think of Elsie? But this is a cow. That's no way to speak of the woman I love. But you don't, Lily. Well, she didn't take me serious. You tricked us. Uh, I guess I should be ashamed of myself. Uh, no! I would not advise you to try that again. You never should have said that, Fritz. I'm the kind of a kid who can't resist it. If you pull the same stunt on Major Dodge, don't you? I say you did. Now, don't bother getting up, Fritz. Just stay right there till I get dressed. I'll call you as soon as I'm ready. I must admit that you build a very substantial case against the man hair wearing. But you don't believe he was responsible for Major Dodge's murder? Frankly, no. Thank you, Hans Victor Gurner. Oh. Shut up. You practically admit it to me. I did nothing of the kind. Why, you dirty... Hair wearing, please. Well, I'm sorry, Schiller. But what does it take to convince you people anyway? What it requires in your country. Evidence. Well, you know he and Lily Thiessen were working this blackmail racket on Major Dodge. Can you prove it? Yes, to his wife. You gave her a duplicate set of those pictures. Aha! Then she knew that her husband was untrue. Yes, she knew, all right. But she didn't have him killed. Fritz here did. Why should I? Well, maybe he wouldn't pay off. But he did. If you gentlemen will examine my bank book, you will find a deposit entry of 45,000 marks on the 7th of July. But if Dodge paid you... Then there was no reason for me to have him killed. Then why did you give those pictures to his wife? I thought she might be interested. Apparently she was. If I can be of any further service to her during her trial, please feel free to call on me. Couldn't talk my head. You and your children can expect to live long thanks largely to better medicine and surgery. But you could expect to live even longer were it not for the danger of automobile accidents. In the 15 to 25 age group alone, traffic accidents wiped out 300,000 years of life last year. If driver education could be taught in all of our high schools instead of only a third of them, it might someday help to save the life of your own son or daughter. In your own automobile, remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Now I know how Hitler must have felt when they dropped a blockbuster on the Reich Chancellery. He must have been real upset. And after Fritz Keller bowed himself out of Schiller's office, the Air Inspector General and I looked at each other. I don't know what he saw, but I was disappointed. And I thought of Grace Dodge. That didn't cheer me up either. Mr. Waring? Hello, Mrs. Dodge. You don't look too happy. He isn't. My fault? Yeah. 
I had a nomination for the party responsible for your husband's murder, but the convention turned me down. Who was it? Fritz Keller. Wait, I don't know the gentleman. Well, he knows you. He gave you that set of pictures of Jimmy and Lily Teeson. Is that what he claimed? That's what he claimed. He's lying. We can't prove it, Frau Dodge. Go right ahead. Now, look, Angel, if you think by denying everything you can escape the rope, you're wrong. Fritz was blackmailing your husband. If he was, I had no knowledge of it. I hate to contradict a lady, but you did. On the 5th of July, you were called by Meyer Albrecht and company. Who were they? A brokerage firm here. They deal in American securities. Frau Dodge and her husband jointly held several shares of stock. To sell them, both their signatures were required. Well? Albrecht thought your signature was forged. He called you to verify it. And I told him it was genuine. Then obviously you knew your husband was being blackmailed. Wait a minute. Hold it, Schiller. I think I see it now. <laughs> it was apparent to me long ago. No, I tell you, you're making a mistake. With a little luck, I can prove it. Keep your fingers crossed, Angel. We're going to need all the help we can get. I don't get it, Waring, but if you feel I can help Grace... I'll do everything I can. Well, that's what it's going to take, Bruce, everything. I want you to help me bait a trap. A trap? Yeah. You believe Grace had her husband killed? Of course not. Well, that makes two of us. What do you think was the killer's motive? Money? That's what I think, too. The $10,000 that Fritz Keller got? No, the 10000 was lifted from the office. But you said Keller wound up with that. No, it wasn't the same money. Jimmy raised his by selling some personal stocks that he and his wife owned. I don't get it. Well, you see, there were two sums of $10,000 involved. The one Dodge paid off to Keller, and the one you lifted from the office. What? Yes, you had Dodge killed to cover the theft. Do you realize what you're saying? Of course. Why do you think I invited you to drive me down to police headquarters? Now, just keep going, Bruce. You're on the right road. You took the wrong one when you turned to murder. Now you're doing fine. Kellner, eine Flasche Wein und mach schnell. Jawohl, thank you, General. Well, you like it here, Herr Wedding? Yeah, but it doesn't seem the same without Lily. I sure would like to have another couple of pictures taken with her. Oh. Well, just to show my friends in America. They have no idea what goes on here. You are leaving for the United States shortly, huh? Tomorrow morning. And that's too far off. I'd leave tonight if there was a plane out. That's you can see here, Larry. There's a cablegram for you. Oh. It was forwarded from your hotel. Oh, no. You open it, Schiller. What? You are not curious? I know what it says. You're going to leave me stuck here in Europe forever. No. You are wrong. What? You are to leave the continent immediately. I don't believe it. Let's see that. See? They are sending you to North Africa. Oh, no. Good night, Herr Inspector General. <laughs> Case of the Broken Key. The Case of the Broken Key. That's the title of next week's Adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that although love may laugh at locksmith. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Marta. Now, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Army Intelligence is firing me to Casablanca. Yeah, that's the place in North Africa they made that movie about. No, they don't plan to star me in a picture, but uh, if I behave myself, they may use me in a frame. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the broken key. According to the encyclopedia, Casablanca is a seaport on the Atlantic coast of Morocco. Situated 33 degrees, 27 minutes north, 7 degrees, 46 minutes west which shows you how little the encyclopedia knows. What does that tell you about Casablanca? Does it conjure up the romance and intrigue? 
Does it say if you peek behind the beaded curtain in the Café Tangier, you'd find both there personified by Helene Grant? And though Helene may not be Ingrid Bergman, it works out even, because the boy who just parted those curtains isn't Humphrey Bogart either. Mademoiselle Grant? Yes? I am Moulay Hafid. I was told to meet you here. Of course, you can identify yourself. My credentials, comrade. Mm -hmm. Well, they seem to be in order. You are disappointed? Very. These papers show you're Moulay Hafid, but how do you know I'm Helene Grant? I naturally assume... You had no right to. A common turn agent takes nothing for granted. Forgive me. Sit down. Would you care for a drink? I am a Muslim, comrade. Oh, yes. I forgot. You find it strange a follower of Mohammed can be a member of the Communist Party? I don't care who you follow as long as it doesn't interfere with your work. You cabled Paris that Robert Foch is in Casablanca. He is. You're sure you've got the right man? Yes, I... I took this photograph of him last week. Mm-hmm. It's Robert, all right. Who's the girl? She arrived with him from Marrakesh. Her name is Yasmin Marim. So, Robert has gone native. Pardon? I meant no offense, Moulin. It was a natural reaction. You're annoyed. Disturbed is perhaps a better word. I have a problem, comrade. I would like to disaffiliate myself from the party. Oh, ridiculous. Just because I hurt your feelings. My feelings count for nothing. I made this decision many months ago. I joined the party hoping it would improve the lot of my countrymen. You're an idealist, Moulin. You are amused. No, oh, I realize such people exist. Even among ignorant natives. I apologize for my remark. Now, about Robert Foch and this woman. Mademoiselle has not answered my question. Mademoiselle has the same answer for you she has for Robert Foch. Why do you think we're looking for him? I have no idea. Comrade Foch was a member of the party in France. A valued member. Ten months ago, he asked to resign. Naturally, the party couldn't release him, so he disappeared. Now he turns up in Casablanca with a... Native girl. Yes. And I've been sent here to reason with him. Mansell had better work quickly. He leaves tonight from Kazes Airport. What? He purchased a ticket this afternoon for Cairo. Oh. Well, maybe I can talk him into cancelling out. Get a car, comrade. We'll try. <laughs> Robert. Why, Robert Bush. You learn. Now imagine finding you here. Well, it certainly is a small world. Much too small. Mm. You going somewhere? Why? Well, if you are, I'd avoid Cairo. I don't think you'd like it this time of year. Well, if I knew you were in Casablanca, you'd I... You'd have arranged to stay. Naturally. Oh, that would have been lovely. Still, it might have posed a problem. What about Yasmin? Yasmin? Mm. Isn't that her name? She's beautiful, Robert. Moulay showed me her picture. Suppose we leave her out of this discussion, eh? She knows nothing of my activities. Why, Conrad, you haven't gone middle class and fallen in love. I said we will leave her out of this. Yes, you will. Now, here are your orders. I refuse to accept them. I wouldn't get on that plane, Robert. I don't think you'd like the welcoming committee in Cairo. Do you remember Emile Rousseau? Emile? Mm-hmm. He's waiting for you at the airport there. Now, personally, I never believed those stories that he learned his trade working for the Nazis at Dachau. Still, one never knows, does one? You win. Oh, I'm so glad you decided to stay. And won't Yasmin be pleased? Suppose I drop you at the hotel and you can break the news. Yes? 
Have I the privilege of speaking with Yasmin Marin? Who is this? I am called Mulai Hafi. What is it you wish? For myself, nothing. I merely desire to be of service to Mademoiselle. You are acquainted with Robert Foch? Are you a friend of Robert? I am a better friend of yours. Did you know Monsieur Foch plans to desert you? You lie. Robert would never leave me. Did he ever mention a European lady named Helene Grant? Why are you torturing me? Why are you telling me all this? Because we have a great deal in common, Yasmin. We both have been betrayed by foreigners. I do not believe you. But you are not as certain as you were before. No, you are lying. If it pleases you to believe that, so be it. But I suggest at least an investigation might be in order. May Allah be good to you. Robert. Robert, open up, Robert. I told you a thousand times, Oh, Chérie, I should have known he was lying. What? Imagine I almost believe him. What are you talking about? That man who called the one who gave his name is Mulai Hafid. Mulai Hafid? He said the most awful things, Robert, that you were running away with some woman and I was jealous enough. So... What are you staring at? Those suitcases. Well? He was telling the truth. You are planning to leave me? Don't be a fool, Yasmin. Then why are the bags packed? Well, this is none of your concern. I suppose Ellen Grant is none of my concern either. What is she to you? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Yet you were going away with her. Look, Yasmin, there are certain things you will never understand. Because I am an ignorant native. That has nothing to do with it. It's true I was running away. So you admit it. I'll kill you. I'll kill you both. Oh, you little fool. Put that down. I'll show you. You are insane. Put it down. Stop it. Put it down. You will. Now get out. Oh, no, Robert, please. I never want to see you again. I did not mean it, Sherry. I would never do anything to hurt you. Will you get out or must I make you? Put me down. Put me down. Not till you are outside. I'll kill you. You will never have another opportunity. Oh, help me. Let me in. I did not mean it, Thierry. Go away. Not unless you say you forgive me. There's nothing to forgive. Promise you will call me. Otherwise, I will not go. All right. You promise? I promise. You won't be sorry, darling. Women can be difficult, can't they? What? Where did you come from? A bedroom. I suppose I should apologize, but I didn't want to be spotted coming up here. Who are you? Take a card. Michael Waring, Private Investigations, New York. Oh, uh, it's the wrong one. Here, try another. You are with American Intelligence? Uh Uh-huh. Now you can understand the reason for my dramatic entrance. What do you want? Well, I thought you might be interested to know there are several commentary and agents looking for you. Oh, that's absurd. Oh, I suppose Helene Grant is in Casablanca for her health. What what has this to do with you? We uh, want you to come over to our side. You do not realize what you are asking. They would kill me. No, they won't. We'll get you out of Casablanca. How? They're watching my every move. Oh, we'll manage somehow. Isn't there a railroad that runs between Fez and Tangier? Yes. All right, I'll rent a car and drive you to Fez. you use my name. When you get there, look up a man named Ab Ilkrim. He'll know what to do. Now, you hurry up and pack. We leave first thing in the morning. <laughs> Service. This is Elaine Grant in 412. Oui, mademoiselle. I don't want to make a noise like a tourist, but one hour ago I called room service. I haven't heard from them yet. A thousand apologies, mademoiselle. Well, what do I have to do to get... Oh, well, never mind. They finally made it. Just a second. I said just a second. Well, what do you... Oh, no. No, you mustn't. You can't. You don't know... No. Let's pause for a moment. Les Damon returns as the Falcon right after these messages. 
The 60 Greatest Old Time Radio Show starring Frank Sinatra and Friends. Radio Spirits presents a collection of 60 rare radio episodes guest starring Frank Sinatra. Here's Sinatra on Suspense, Jack Benny, Rocky Fortune, and the Lux Radio Theater to name only a few. You'll also receive a 64-page booklet with photographs and show histories. Order now and save $20 off the $59.98 catalog price. Pay just $39.98 during this limited time offer. Call now, 1-800-RADIO-48. That's 1-800-723-4648 or order online at MediaBay.com. And now let's rejoin Les Damon as the Falcon in The Broken Key. Well, that's Casablanca for you. Not a bad place if you want to live it up, but a horrible spot if you've got to die. But then what place isn't? Well, I don't imagine it made much difference to Helene Grant and her condition. The first I knew of it was some four hours later when I remembered my promise to Robert Forsh and hustled over to Comrade Grant's hotel room to meet her. Well, when nobody answered, I walked in. And that was my first mistake. She was lying on the floor under the big ceiling fan. And in the dim light, the blades made like a windmill above her head. The effect was almost hypnotic. And then the spell was broken. Pardon me, moi. Uh, what? Permit me to introduce myself. I'm Henri Boulanger at the prefecture. The monsieur... Uh, Waring, Mike Waring. Mike Waring? I don't think the name would mean anything to you. You are too modest. Correct me if I am in error, but you are with American intelligence. How did you know that? We too have our intelligence. You uh, know who she was? Mademoiselle Grant? But of course. She was a Comintern agent. You were, as they say, on opposite sides of the fence. Oh, now wait a minute, Inspector. If you think I had anything to do with her murder... Why, monsieur, it would never occur to me. I'm a most unsuspicious type. Still, as long as you mentioned it, what are you doing here? I wanted to talk to him. I should have guessed that for myself. And at the time of her death... I was in my hotel room reading. It's very strange... You are ready with an alibi when you have no idea when she was murdered. Well, it's pretty obvious. She's been dead about uh, three hours, which would put it around nine o'clock. How do you arrive at that conclusion? A state of rigor mortis. Look at her arms. Most interesting. I wonder if you would be kind enough to accompany me to the Place de France. And in the meantime, the killer gets away. I don't think there is much danger of that. Look, I tell you, you're making a mistake. Then I shall have to pay for it. Uh, no, thanks. Stay where you are, monsieur. Another step and I shall be compelled to shoot. Well, in that case... Sorry, fella, but you left me no choice. You mind if I borrow your gun? Who is it? Mike Waring, Robert. Open up. Just a moment. Come in. Try and keep me out. I'll lock it. But why? Just humor me. You secured the car? Huh? You were to drive me to Fez. Oh, yeah. Well, the situation's changed somewhat. Elaine Grant has been murdered. No. Yes. Have they any idea who was responsible? Where were you at nine tonight? Oh, surely you don't think that... Why not? Now, where were you? At the Rouge et Noir. Rouge et Noir? It is a cafe near the Place de France. I thought I told you not to go out. Then it is most fortunate I ignored your instructions. Otherwise, I would not have an alibi. I went there to say goodbye to Yasmin. So you were with Yasmin? From 8 to 10. All right. Nice long goodbye. You mind if I check that? Yes, I do. You are not to disturb her. Oh, well, I wouldn't advise you to try to stop me, Robert. If I dumped a police inspector who tried it, it figures a mere civilian wouldn't stand a chance. I'll be seeing you, fella. <laughs> Hello, Yasmin. Yes? I, uh, hope you'll forgive the intrusion, but it's important I talk to you. I'm sorry. I'm very busy. Well, this won't take long. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Yes, I'm a friend of Robert Forsh. Robert never introduced him? No, well, naturally. There was no need to. I do not believe you. Okay. And how would I know you two pitched a battle royal in the Hotel Splendide over Helene Grant? Robert told you that? Oh, Robert tells me everything. Uh, incidentally, you don't have to worry about Helene anymore. She's dead. Not really. Well, you don't seem very upset. Why should I be? She was my enemy. You don't realize what you're saying. But you knew this. You say Robert told you everything. 
Yeah, he also said you came back to the hotel again between 8 and 10. Robert said that? Yes, why? Isn't it true? No. <laughs> I knew it. But why should Robert say I was at his hotel when he was visiting here with me in my dressing room? He what? You sure Robert was here between 8 and 10? Positive. Well, then he was telling the truth. Pardon? Uh, nothing. Uh, how did you find out about Helene Grant in the first place? A man told me. This man got a name? Yes, he called himself Mulai Hafid. Mulai Hafid, Mulai Hafid. Where did I hear that? Sure, he was Helene's contact in Casablanca. I do not understand. Well, that's just as well. Well, that's my cue. I'm sorry, I must go. Oh, that's okay, so do I. Cigarettes, candy, all American kinds, monsieur. You like to buy, monsieur? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, maybe some postcards. Very lovely lady. No, no, I'm sorry. I stocked up in Paris. Uh, where can I find a coppersmith, uh, Moulay Hafid? You are sure you would not like to buy the postcards? Oh, well, come to think of it, I guess I would. I... I forgot my grandmother collects them. Oh, she will like these, monsieur. And it will be 500 francs. Uh, there you are. Now, uh, where can I find Moulay Hafid? That is his shop over there, by the sign of the Iron Jug. Oh, thanks a lot. If your grandmother would like more postcards... I'll keep you in mind. Salam alaikum. Alaikum, salam. What can I do for you, monsieur? Well, that all depends. Are you Moulay Hafid? Your servant, sir. I'm Mike Waring. Mike Waring? I'm a comrade from America. Oh. Where can we talk? Here. A little public, isn't it? I shall lower the shade. Well, I guess you know why I'm here. The party is awfully disappointed in your work, comrade. And I am disappointed in the party. Why did you tell Yasmin Marin about Helene Grant? You know this? We know everything. Then you are aware I informed Mademoiselle Grant of my desire to leave the party. Well, it's getting to be an epidemic. First Robert Forsh, and now you. What's your reason? I explained that to Comrade Grant. She found it unsatisfactory. It was her privilege. Mm -hmm. So you killed her. Monsieur is pleased to jest. You knew she was murdered. All Casablanca is aware of this. Yes, I know, but I think you had inside information. Uh, how would you like to take a little ride with me? I do not think I would care for it. Well, I'm afraid I'll have to insist, Moulin. Uh, first... Allow me to show you something. Oh, a knife, huh? Oui, monsieur. A knife. And I have met a <laughs> little... Let's take a short break right here. Les Damon returns as the Falcon in a moment. Dimension. George Burns and Gracie Allen. Hopalong Cassidy. Edgar Bergen. The Shadow. John and Blanche Bickerson. The Whistler. Choose from among thousands of downloadable old-time radio shows and spoken word titles at mediabay.com. The best voice on the net. Yeah. <laughs> and now, Les Damon returns as the Falcon in the conclusion of... The Broken Key. Here, monsieur, permit me. Huh? I think a little brandy would not harm you. Oh, Inspector Boulanger, <laughs> how did you know where to find me? A friend of our department advised us. Well, his name isn't Moulay Hoffard. It is indeed. Would you like to tell me what happened? Yes, I'd like to very much. He tried to kill me. It is understandable, n'est-ce pas? Not to me. You posed as a Comintern agent. So? So naturally, Moulay thought you would come to his shop to avenge the murder of Mademoiselle Grant. And that proves he killed her. Why? Because he desired to protect himself from one he considered an assassin? I tell you, he murdered her, Inspector. He wanted to leave the party and she wouldn't let him. That is true of Robert Foch, too. Well, I grant you that, but Foch has an alibi. So has Moulay. What? Nine o'clock last night, he was stationed in the lobby of the Hotel Splendide. Accompanied by one of my men. But well, that doesn't make sense. It doesn't? No, if Moulay, Robert, and Yasmin have alibis for the time of Helene Grant's murder, who does that leave? You, monsieur, as I maintained all along. I am so glad we are finally in accord. 
Now, if you will take my arm, monsieur, I shall be only too happy to assist you. No, no. <laughs> Wait a minute, Inspector. If you're thinking of making another escape, I beg you not to attempt it. I have three men stationed outside, all of whom are fleet of foot and excellent shots. No, 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 no. You don't understand. Uh, you say you had one of your detectives with Moulay Hoffert in the lobby of the Splendid last night. I did. Why? We were keeping Robert Frosch under surveillance. We anticipated a little difficulty with the gentleman. Obviously, it never developed. Obviously. And Moulay was never out of your man's sight? Never once. They were together till midnight. Well, they couldn't have been. Or could they? Pardon, Emma? Oh, brother, am I a chump. Listen, Inspector, I think I see it all now. Just give me ten minutes with Robert Forsch. That's all I ask. It is not unreasonable. After all, why shouldn't you have Forsch for ten minutes when I expect to have you for life? Hello, mon enfant. Hello, Yasmin. Monsieur Waring? Yeah. What happened to you? Ask me better what didn't. We'd like to see Robert. You cannot. Well, maybe I cannot, but this gentleman can. He's Inspector Boulanger of the Prefecture. Bonjour, Mademoiselle. Now, where's your boyfriend? I tell you, he is not here. Then you won't mind if we search the place? You are wasting your time. Now, let's try the bedroom. Go right ahead. It will avail you nothing. I fear she's telling the truth. Regard, his clothes are gone. I'm afraid you will not have your ten minutes with him. Well, I'll settle for a couple with her. All right, where did he go, Yasmin? I do not know. You're lying. You must have planned to meet him somewhere. You will never find her. Oh, I wouldn't bet on it, Angel. Why did you lie to me about meeting Robert in your dressing room last night? I did not lie. He was there. No, he wasn't. That alibi was strictly a phony. No. Well, Roger had a couple of men downstairs. They would have seen him go out. He did not kill that woman. No one said he did. But you claim his alibi was fabricated. The one he volunteered was. He said he spent the evening with Yasmin. But if he was lying... It follows she couldn't have been with him. Then where was I? Over at the Bonaparte, killing the woman you thought was your rival. You are insane. Oh, no, you're the one who's insane. And it was that old green-eyed monster that did the trick. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. No, you don't. Let me go. I'm sorry it had to work out like this, Angel, but it was either you or me. I guess when you come right down to it, I'm no gentleman. Well, it merely goes to prove, Waring, the poets knew what they were talking about. Hmm? What is that line again? Oh, yes. Hail at no fury like a woman scorned. Oh, like a woman who thinks she's scorned. Actually, Helene wasn't Yasmin's rival. Perhaps she was. A man who embraces the Communist Party can afford no other love. Well, you got a point there. So I was not completely wrong when I said this was a political murder. Oh, no, not completely. Let me assure you, Waring, we of Casablanca are forever in your debt. If there is any way we can ever repay... You. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, Inspector, because there is. Uh, while I was looking for Moulay Hoffit, I ran into a peddler who made me buy some postcards before he'd give out with any information. I see. You think you could locate him for me? You wish to have him arrested? No, no. Uh, I promised to mail these to Grandma, and it just occurred to me... Um, I'd better get a set for Grandpa, too. Good night, Inspector. <laughs> The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert. Written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Anne Shepard as Yasmin. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Iris. No, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. I'm on my way to Cairo. No, Cairo, Egypt. The land of the pharaohs. Mm-hmm. Seems someone there started a new pyramid club, and army intelligence wants me to find out if they're paying off in lead. Once again, the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon... Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, 
risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Lonely Hunter. Well, the boy who first said there's no place like home must have had me in mind. But I never realized how much truth there was in those five words till Army Intelligence picked up my option and sent me flying to Egypt. And if you think I'm the only one who feels this way, you might query Vince Torrio. Mr. Torrio is a rugged-looking gent sharing a table with the character wearing the tarbush in the Cafe El Cala near the Arab quarter of Cairo. Vince is a long way from home, and obviously that's where he feels charity begins. Go on, beat it. But she's missed. I said beat it. Arms for the love of Allah. Oh, how I hate this place. For my part, they can take it and give it back to the pharaohs. <laughs> you are not very charitable to a land that granted you asylum. Well, for my Joe, you some of it stinks. Where I made my mistake was not going to Italy with Lucky. Lucky? He's the guy I told you about, the one I used to work for. Now, there was a sport, Hussein. When we went into a club in New York, all the flunkies used to knock themselves out. My best places, too, not sores like this. Boy, would I love to see him again. Then why did you come here? Because I was a big schmo, that's why. Lucky would have taken me with him in a minute, but no, I had to come to Egypt. Romantic land of the Nile. Well, you watch how fast I shake the Sahara dust off my shoes when I make a score. I gather you mean money. That's exactly what I mean. Then I have a proposition that might interest you. A friend of mine has two kilos of pure opium he would like smuggled into Morocco. What'll he pay? One hundred pounds. We could share it equally. Uh-uh. Include me out. I'm not taking a chance of winding up in your local flea bag for that kind of... D- well, I'll be... Carol! Carol Morgan! Uh-huh. Beg your pardon? What's the matter, baby? Don't you remember me, Vince Torrio? I'm afraid you're making a mistake. Are you kidding? I'd recognize you. Any trouble, darling? No, Abdul. This gentleman thought I was someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I guess I did. No hard feelings? No, of course not. Shall we go, Abdul? Anytime you're ready, dear. I think you might enjoy seeing the Citadel. It was built by Saladin in the 12th century. Well, that's one for the book. The eyes play strange tricks, eh? Huh? What'd you say, Yusuf? Uh, You were mistaken about the young lady. No, I wasn't. It's Carol Morgan, all right. It sure is a small world. Remember me telling you about this guy Lucky I used to work for? Well, Carol was his girl. I wonder who that character was with her. Uh, Perhaps I can be of some assistance. He's Abdul Salim Bey. Where'd he pick up that accent? I believe he attended Oxford. Loaded, huh? If you mean wealthy, the answer is yes. Well, what do you know? Leave it a little cow to land on her feet. You think you could uh, scout around and find out where she's staying? You have an idea? I have a couple. You know something, Yusuf? I was wrong about Egypt. This could be the land of opportunity. <laughs> Who is it? Ground service. Mr. Melwick, please. Hello, Carol. I guess I should have known. I guess you should have. Hey, this is quite a layout. You ought to see the dump where I'm staying. I swear the flies are so thick. What do you want, Vince? Well, you might at least ask me to sit down. Uh After all, it's been how long? Six years since I saw you? Incidentally, what do you hear from Lucky? Nothing. I bet that's because he don't know where to contact you. And he's not going to find out. There's no reason he should. Live and let live is my motto. Hey, mine. What are you getting at, Vince? Well, you were just a young kid when you met Lucky. What did you know? Should have known better. You're being hard on yourself, Carol. Anyone's entitled to make a mistake. You just weren't used to the big league. I learned fast enough. But that's all behind me, Vince. I haven't done anything in the last six years I wouldn't want anyone to know about. Does that go for the, uh, Sultan? The Sultan? That character you were, the one with the fez, his name is Abdul Salim Bey, isn't it? How did you find that out? 
A friend of mine, Yusuf Ben Ali, told me. Yusuf says, uh, he's loaded. If it's money you want. What kind of a heel do you take me for? Then what do you want? You know, I always had a yen for you. What? Of course, I couldn't say anything while Lucky was around. But now it's different. Let me go. Oh, now, don't tell me you've fallen for the Sultan. I said let me go. Okay, baby. That's the way you want it. I can play like that, too. Ow! I was going to be nice, but you wouldn't let me. Okay, what do you think the Sultan will say when he finds out who you are? I wouldn't tell him. How much do you got? Eight hundred dollars. Don't make me laugh. What about all that jewelry Lucky gave you? I gave it back. What do you call that rock on your finger? That's my own. We'll take it off. Come on, come on, Carol, give. (laughs) Now will you get out? Sure. But I'll be running into you again. We old friends ought to stick together. I'll be seeing you, baby. Oh, Captain. Will you slow down to about ten knots? I don't want Miss Morgan to miss this. Look, Carol, over there. That's old Cairo. Those ruins are part of the Roman fortress of Babylon. Hmm? Better pay attention to how I'm going to ask questions later. I'm sorry, Uncle. That's all right, darling. Now, that island we're passing is the island of Rhoda. According to our tradition, that's where Pharaoh's daughter found Moses and the bulrushes. That's very interesting. Is it? What do you mean? There's something bothering you. Oh, you're wrong. Whatever it is, I want you to feel you can tell me. There's nothing to tell. That man you met yesterday in the Café El Cala... I told you he was mistaken. You heard him admit it. He knew your name. He knew nothing of the kind. You know how I feel about you, darling. Does that give you a license to pry into my private affairs? I never maintained it did. Well, then for heaven's sake, stop needling me. Carol. And take that hurt look out of your eyes. It doesn't do a thing for you. Now go away and leave me alone. <laughs> Yes? Have I the pleasure of speaking with His Excellency Abdul Salim Bey? Who is this? I am called Yusuf Ben Ali. Yusuf Ben Ali? I could not expect His Excellency to recognize the name. I am unworthy of such honor, though our paths have crossed. I was in the Café El Cala yesterday with a foreigner when His Excellency entered with the American lady. So? So my companion, too, came from America. His name is Vincent Torrio. If I can offer a suggestion, you might find it to your advantage to investigate the gentleman. Why are you telling me all this, Yusuf? As it says in the Koran, we Muslims should be helpful to one another. Who knows? Someday you may be of some small service to me. May Allah show you the way? That you, Yusuf? Yes. Wait a minute. Come on. Hello, Vince. Who the devil are you? You don't remember? No. Well, it's been a long time. The name is Waring, Mike Waring. Oh, sure. You're that private dick they call a falcon. Comes back to you now? Yeah, but I uh, don't remember inviting you in. Well, you just forgot your manners. Ah, what in the world of a possessed you to move into a dump like this? I like the view. Yeah, I bet on a clear day you can see eight million flies. Lucky he did much better for himself. I hear tell he's got a villa in Italy that's out of this world. How come you two separated when you were deported? None of your business. No, but it's Uncle Sam's. I'm working for him these days. What are you babbling about, Cigarette? I asked you something, Waring. Well, it's come to Uncle's attention that narcotics are being smuggled into the States by way of Egypt. We've got a hunch the traffic is being directed by Lucky from Italy. What's that got to do with me? Well, isn't it strange I find you in Cairo? I'm studying to be a Muslim. Oh. And what's Carol Morgan's reason? Who? Lucky's old girlfriend. Is she here? You mean you didn't know? No. 
It's funny, I tailed a boy to our hotel yesterday who looked exactly like you. A look-wise guy. Well, you can't blame me for being suspicious, Vince. With you and Carol in Cairo, who looks like the gathering of the clan. I tell you, I haven't seen her. Isn't that her diamond ring? Huh? You shouldn't leave it lying around, Vince. It's much too valuable. How come she gave it to you? She's crazy for me. <laughs> well, there's no accounting for taste. I guess I'll take a little ride over to the Ministry of the Interior. Like to join me? Not on your life. Come on, fella. I said not on your life, and I mean it. Now, put away that gun, Vince. You know you wouldn't use it. Wouldn't I? Well, yeah, I guess you would. So, in that case... Get back. Well, you can't hate a guy for trying. Who can't? Personally, I can hit him like poison. Oh. Hurry with that, Walter Muhammad. I believe our friend is coming, too. Thank you. I'll give it to him. Oh. Try some of this, Mr. Wedding. What? What is it? Just water, unfortunately. Oh. Where am I? Oh. I'm afraid your headaches are just beginning, sir. What the devil are you talking about? Muhammad, will you be good enough to lift the blanket? You recognize the gentleman? Uh, it's Vince Torrio. It was, Mr. Torrio. It will probably come as no shock to you. He was stabbed to death. Who did it? I imagine you'd be in the best position to know. Uh, wait a minute. Where do you get off asking these questions? Uh, forgive me. I should have introduced myself. My name is Abdul Salem Bey. Oh, I thought I recognized your fez. I've seen you with Carol Morgan. You're a friend of Miss Morgan's? Not exactly. Well, would you care to tell me your version of the affair here? Why should I? Because I found you right next to Mr. Torrio's body and as chief assistant to the Minister of the Interior. Oh, don't give me that. I met the chief assistant. His name is Hassan Pasha. You must have met him a week ago. Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, when King Farouk abdicated, naturally there was a shake-up in the local police. I now hold the position of chief assistant. Oh, no. Oh, yes. I'd love you to see our new headquarters. But frankly, old chap, I don't think you like them one bit. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. They say there's nothing like travel to broaden one. And that must be true, because Egypt certainly flattened me out. And they really kill themselves to make things interesting for tourists. Look at me. After I was slugged by Vince Torrio, I come to find Vince on the floor beside me with a knife in his back. And if that isn't enough, standing over us is a big shot in the local police named Abdul Salim Bey. Now that's service for you. I hate to rush you, Mr. Waring, but any time you're ready... Now wait a minute, Abdul. You don't seriously believe I murdered him. You admit quarreling with Mr. Torrio? Yes, and he knocked me silly. So when did I have a chance to kill him? I was unconscious when you found me. You might have been shamming. Okay. Then riddle me this. If I was faking, why didn't I beat it before you arrived? You probably didn't have the opportunity. You're real anxious to pin this on me, aren't you? That's unfair, Mr. Waring. My only motive is to see justice done. Mm -hmm. Even if Carol Morgan is involved? I beg your pardon. You should. Did you know Carol and Vince Torrio were old friends? You're lying. I tailed her to a hotel yesterday. Suppose he was blackmailing her. Ridiculous. And why did she give him that diamond ring? All right, Abdul. What did you do with it? Do with it? There was a ring on that table when I walked in. And you think I removed it? Yes, I do, to protect Carol. You're mistaken, my friend. Well, we'll see about uh, that. Just a moment, Mr. Waring. Where do you think you're going? Over to see Carol. No, you're not. Oh, does this mean I'm under arrest? I thought that was fairly obvious. Okay, I'm doomed. Who are you calling? The American ambassador. Operator. Operator. That won't be necessary. Oh, may I go? Yes. However, I must caution you. Not to go too far away. On the contrary, old man. You can't go far enough to please me. I shall notify your ambassador my government finds you persona non grata. Which means... You have six hours to leave Egypt. And what about him? Mr. Torrio? It's no problem. 
After all, when a man commits suicide... Suicide? Oh, 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 that's a hot one. I suppose he stabbed himself in the back. Exactly. What? You forget. This is the mysterious Egypt. The strangest things can happen here. How are you, old man? I bear that in mind. This is Abdul. Oh, darling, I'm so glad you called. I want to apologize. Oh, that isn't I... necessary. Carol, do you love me? You know I do. Then you must have confidence in my judgment. There's a Michael Waring on his way over to see you. Michael Waring? He was formerly a private investigator in the States. At present, he's with American intelligence. What does he want with me? There's no reason for alarm. If he asks you if you know a Vincent Torrio, deny it. But I, I don't know him. That's fine, darling. You just stick to that story. Listen, Abdul. Later, sweetheart. Right now, time is of the essence. Just remember, you never heard of Vincent Torrio. Yes? Hello, Carol. Remember me? Should I? Well, I like to think I made some kind of an impression... The name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Mm-hmm. Oh, of course, you're that private detective they call the Falcon. Yeah, shh, not so loud. I'm trying to live it down. May I come in? Why not? I've got nothing to hide. Are you sure? Positive. Sit down. Thanks. What are you doing in Egypt? Well, I was just about to ask you that. Lucky's in Italy, isn't he? I wouldn't know. I haven't seen him since he was deported. Mm-hmm. Well, what do you hear from Vince Torrio? Who? Well, now, don't tell me you've forgotten good old Vince. How could I forget him when I never knew him in the first place? He used to work for Lucky. Lucky never mixed business with pleasure. Uh, just the same, you might be interested to learn that Vince was murdered. Really? I'm sorry to hear that. I'd imagine you'd be glad. It keeps him from spilling anything about your past to your new boyfriend. My boyfriend? Abdul Salim Bey. Suppose we leave Abdul out of this. I wish I could, but uh, he thinks I'm the guilty critter. Are you? You know better, Angel. Then who is? Oh, I can think of several possibilities. You, for one. I told you I didn't even know the man. Well, it won't wash, Carol. He was up to see you yesterday. You're mistaken. When he walked out, he had a diamond ring that... Well, (laughs) how about that? How about what? I see you wearing it again. Last time I saw it, Vince had it in his room. Are you suggesting... I'm suggesting there's only one way you could have gotten it back. You took it after you killed Vince. Get out! Okay, but I'll be back, if only to turn the other cheek. Take care of yourself, Angel. I wish I had time to. Uh, Yusuf Ben Ali? Who goes there? The friend, Salam Alakim. Salim. Salim. Uh, you, Yusuf? I can be of service to you? Yes, indeed you can. My name is Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Vince Torrio suggested I look you up. You are acquainted with him? Well, acquainted is hardly the word. Uh, we spent a nice couple of hours together this afternoon. Vince tells me you know Cairo like no one else. Oh, he's most kind. You uh, familiar with the Savoy Hotel? I was once employed there as a porter. Oh, well, then this ought to be a steal. Uh, there's a young lady staying there named Carol Morgan. Think you could get into her room? Mm, may I inquire for what purpose? She's wearing a diamond ring. I'd like you to get it for me. You are not suggesting I steal it? Mm-hmm. By the beard of Allah, I am offended. Well, I'm sorry, Yusuf. Yes, I got the wrong boy. Oh, if you know anyone who wants to make himself a fast hundred pounds... Uh, uh, you will pay one hundred pounds for the ring? On delivery. Uh, please be seated. You're no longer offended? How could I possibly be? You are Vincent Torrio's friend, and any vin- uh, friend of Mr. Torrio's is a friend of mine. It will be a pleasure to be of service to you. Mm-hmm. 
Ministry of Interior. Have I the honor of speaking with His Excellency Abdul Salim Bey? Who is this? Your servant, sir, Yusuf Ben Ali. What is it, Yusuf? I wish to prove my sincerity. Twenty minutes ago, I was approached in the Café El Cala by a gentleman named Michael Waring. Well? He had an illegal proposition for me. He wished me to enter the hotel room of the American lady, Carol Morgan, and steal her ring. Really? He offered me 100 pounds sterling for the task. Uh, Did I not do well in informing you? You are most wise, Yusuf. I'll tell you what I'd like you to do. Accommodate Mr. Waring. His Excellency does not mind? On the contrary. His Excellency insists on it. Just advise me when the theft is successfully accomplished. May Allah aid you in your task. Yusuf! Yusuf, over here! Ah, Mr. Waring. Did you get the ring? It has been said of Yusuf Ben Ali that failure and he are strangers. Uh, uh, Miss Morgan gave it up with scarcely a struggle. Uh, I knew I picked the right boy. All right, let's have it. Uh, the gentleman is forgetting something. Huh? I was promised a hundred pounds. Oh, yes, that's right. You were. Fifty, seventy, eighty-five. A hundred, there you are. Oh, you are most kind. And now I am happy to complete my end of the bargain. Come to Papa. It is permitted to ask to what purpose you intend to put this ornament? Yes, it is indeed. This is the little gimmick that's uh, going to give us Vince Torrio's killer. What? Oh, didn't I tell you? Vince is now in the land of Osiris. But who... Well, that's did... the question of the hour. But I've got a hunch this ring will provide the answer. I'm so happy for you, Mr. Waring. What? Oh, please keep your seats, gentlemen. In case you've forgotten, I'm Abdul Salem Bay. I didn't forget. What you failed to remember was that I gave you six hours to leave Cairo. I'll get out in time. I doubt it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but the ring you're holding is the property of Miss Carol Morgan. How would you know that? Elementary, old man. I gave it to her. What? And since I now find it in your possession, it forces me to one conclusion. You're a receiver of stolen merchandise. Now, wait a minute. You're wrong. Perhaps. Perhaps I am. Here I gave you six hours to leave my country, and I'm afraid we're going to have to play host to you for the next five to ten years. I guess it proves even the best of us make mistakes. Mama warned me there would be days like this, but she neglected to mention they come once a week. No, Mama wouldn't have approved. She would have hated the Cafe El Cala. She has a sinus condition, and the smoke in the joint would have played the devil with it. And it was certainly no place for her boy. When you're caught with a hot piece of ice in your hands, you can't very well insist it's a frame. But obviously, Abdul Salim Bey didn't think it was going to stop me from trying. I suppose you'll maintain you're a victim of circumstance, Mr. Waring. You boys are pretty cute. Why, what in the world do you mean? You and Yosef cooked up this little stunt between you. I swear on the Koran. Oh, cut it out, Yosef. You're breaking my heart. Really, Mr. Waring, I'm surprised at you. You expect me to believe this is all coincidental? Frankly, old man, I don't care what you believe. Well, you should. Because I had no idea this ring was stolen. I bought it in good faith. That's most amusing. Well, if you search him, you'll find a hundred pounds. I paid him. No doubt. But you knew the ring was Miss Morgan's property, and you hired Yusuf to secure it for you. I wouldn't insist on that theory. Why not? Might prove very embarrassing to Carol. The last time I saw it was in Vince Torrio's room shortly before he was murdered. And if Yusuf here got it from Miss Morgan, you see where that takes you. I'm afraid not. Well, you're not looking in the right place. Suppose we adjourn to Carol's hotel room and do a little peeking there. And I hope for your sake she can stand an investigation. I assure you, darling, there's nothing to worry about. I just want you to answer a few questions. Uh, suppose you let me phrase them, Abdul. Carol, you recognize this man? No. The lady is mistaken. That's enough out of you, Yusuf. Sweetheart, I promise you there's no reason to be frightened. But you must tell the truth. Do you know him? His name is Yusuf Ben Ali. Yes, he was up here about an hour ago. What happened? He stole a ring. That's all? Yes. Is this it? Yes. Take a good look, Angel. You're sure it's the same one? Absolutely. Well, I see a diamond is the hardest substance in the world, so let's see. Put away that knife. Now, don't worry, Abdul. I'm just performing a little experiment. What the devil are you doing? You call it. 
You've marred the stone. Mm -hmm. Then obviously it wasn't a diamond. I don't understand. No, but you do, don't you, Carol? No. You're lying. This is a paste copy of the ring Abdul gave you. I tell you, you're wrong. Come on, admit it. You gave the genuine article to Vince Torrio. Well, didn't you? Yes. Carol. I'm sorry, Abdul. What for? That proves you didn't kill him. What? Well, a killer walked off with the McCoy, and if you had it, you would have worn it instead of this phony. Then the motive for Torrio's murder... ...was old-fashioned robbery. Right, Yosef? How would I know? Who would know better? You walked in on Vince while I was out cold. You thought it was too good a chance to miss, so you murdered him, waltzed off with the rock, figuring I'd be blamed for both. Oh, you are wrong by the beard. No, no, no. There's no reason to go modest on the folks, Yosef. You did a nice piece of work. I wouldn't think of letting anyone else take the credit. I can't tell you how much I appreciated your assistance, Waring. I don't know what, I, what I'd have done without you. But you'd rather, hmm? Well, you can appreciate my position. Oh, sure. You thought I was going to nail either you or Carol for Vince's murder. Actually, I didn't care about myself. Though I suppose you considered me a suspect all along. No, no, I didn't. If you had killed Vince and taken the ring, somewhere or other you would have arranged for Carol to get it back. The fact that she was wearing the copy proved both of you were innocent. I... Hey, what are we stopping here for? Isn't this your hotel? Well, yes. Well, you'll have to start packing if you plan to leave Egypt within the six hours I gave you. Uh, now, wait a minute. I it... hope you don't take this personally, old man, but you're such a troublemaker, I just as soon not have you around. But you can't kick me out. I'm an American citizen. Farouk was king of all Egypt. Oh, and you did it to him. Exactly. <laughs> Bon voyage, Mr. Wedding. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Lisa. Uh, you'll have to include me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is sending me to Sicily. That's right. The island off the coast of Italy. Uh huh. Seems some boy down there is running wild with a knife, and they hope I might offer just the kind of proposition he might like to take a stab at. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Rolling Stones. Anyone who thinks hide-and-seek is strictly for kids ought to take a look at Mario Gentile. Mario's been playing the game for years, and very successfully, too. But then look what he'll do not to be caught. 24 hours ago, he was in Naples, where he grabbed a night boat for Palermo, Sicily. And while the ship plowed through the Straits of Messina, Mario made like a butterfly. When he emerged from his cocoon, his brown hair was dyed black and his mustache was gone. Six hours later, the new Mario was relaxing in a furnished room off the Via Vittorio Emanuele in Palermo. But even the best of us have to be it once in a while. And if you believe in sound effects... This may be Mario's turn now. Who? Who is it? It's Eda, Mario. Who? Eda Casalini. Un momento. Oh, my darling. No, stop it, Eda. Oh, forgive me. But it's been so long. Who told you I was in Palermo? No one. Then how did you find out? Every night I watched the boat from Naples, hoping someday you would return. Tonight, my wish was granted. How did you recognize me? <laughs> it would take more than dyed hair to fool a woman in love. Oh, Mario, why did you leave me? Because I had business to attend. There was not another woman? No. You lie. I saw a girl with you that morning you left. She was a business associate. I'll kill her if I ever see her again. Don't be a fool. Now get out. No, no, I did not mean it, Mario. Give me one more chance. Will you behave? I swear on my father's grave. All right. You won't regret it, darling. If, if there is anything I can do. There is. Can you get in touch with Bianca Naldi for me? 
Is she the one? You are talking like a fool. I must see Bianca. Mario. Shh. Open up, Gentile. There is no one here by that name. We know better. This is the place. You idiot. You led them here. Oh, darling, I was most careful. You might as well surrender, Mario. We have the building surrounded. Listen, Edna. Hmm. There is a staircase in the kitchen. It leads to the roof. I will not go without you. You will do as I say. Oh. If anyone asks you, you've been hanging wash up there. Now hurry. When will I see you? Sooner than you think. Now go. Arrivederci. Arrivederci. This is your last chance, Gentile. Are you going to open this door? Or shall I have my men break it down? That won't be necessary, Trente. All right, Sergente. Take three men. Search the place. See, si, my Trente. What is the meaning of this? May I see your papers, please? My papers? Of course. <laughs> but I assure you that your superior officer will... Yes? <laughs> I seem to have mislaid them. I submit you never had them to begin with. What is your name? Mario Gentile. It was not always so, was it? You were once known as Mario Toselli. You are insane. But uh, you know who Mario Toselli is? I have no idea. Well, if you will be kind enough to accompany me to the Palazzo Chiaramonte, I will be only too happy to enlighten you. After you, signore? Forgive me if I seem ungrateful for your hospitality, but I've been here for three hours, and I've yet to learn the charges against it. Patience is a great virtue, Mario. You should cultivate it. As it happens, we are waiting for an American. An American? A gentleman named Michael Waring. Perhaps you have heard of him? No. A distinguished personality. He was once a private investigator in the United States called the Falcon. A very colorful name, no? No. A matter of taste. Today he is with American intelligence. It is of no interest to me. Well, I am sure you will be of interest to Senor Waring. You see, uh, Avanti. Hello, Lieutenant. Michael, my good friend. Uh, how are you, Emilio? Better now, as I regard your countenance. <laughs> I did not expect you till noon. Well, I flew over as soon as I got your message. Ah, it aroused your curiosity. No end. What's it all about? Uh, first, I should like you to meet Mario Gentile. Mario, this is Signor Waring. I am delighted. Well, I'm not. Look, Lieutenant, you didn't bring me all the way from Rome to meet him. Well, you are familiar with his reputation. Yeah, he's an organizer for the Communist Party. And that does not arouse your interest? No, the party is not Lord Italy. Ah, but suppose I told you in an earlier day he had another name. Prior to 1945, he was known as Mario Toselli. Toselli? Ah, you recognize him. Yeah, sure, the Allied War Crimes Commission has been looking for him for years. They've got a rope necktie they'd like to try on him for size. This is absurd. I never even heard of the man. And you're the only one in Italy who hasn't. Toselli organized a squadra d'azioni and the Militia Volontaria for Sisti. They were Mussolini's personal strong arm squad. And think of it, Michael. Today we are honored by the presence of its founder. You are mistaken. Well, what were you doing in 1945? I was fighting with the partisans near Genoa. Who was your commander? You will not find any record for him. We were a small group. And prior to 45? I was in France. Doing what? That is my own affair. But I tell you, I'm not Toselli. Well, that should be easy enough to check. Lieutenant, didn't Toselli come from Messina? And... See. Si. Well, I'll take him there first thing in the morning. In the meantime, can you put him away on ice? I'd hate for him to spoil after all these years. Or Who goes there? It is only me, Your Honor. I wish to see the prisoner, Mario Gentili. It is not permitted. I have written authorization from Lieutenant Balbo. Let me see. You are holding it upside down. Hmm? Can't you read? Uh, do you take me for an illiterate? Of course I can. Uh, this is most strange. I was instructed that the you prisoner... You question the authority of the tenente? Of course not. What do you have in that basket? Some food for my cousin. See? A bottle of wine and some cheese. All right. Edda. How are you, Mario? How in the name of... The lieutenant was most kind. You may have five minutes. We are most grateful, Your Honor. I warn you not to create any disturbance. 
How did you manage this? I paper? had a pass. A pass? It was most official looking. Now he's a great artist. You should not have taken the chance. They will discover the forgery in a minute. A minute is all I require. I brought you some food, Mario. See? Your favorite wine. Uh, ma- My mother prepared especially for you. She hopes you will drink her health. Careful. <gasps> there is a stiletto in here. Huh? It may be thin, but it's made of the finest steel. Good God. Now good you God. know how much I love you. Oh, there was never any doubt in my mind. You'll be able to use it? Yes, indeed. Tomorrow I'll leave by railroad with the senior wearing for Messina. And this may be just the thing to relieve the monotony of the trip. Very good, very good. My thanks to your very dear mother. What time have you got, Sergeant? Uh, it lacks ten minutes of one o'clock, Senor Wary. How's our friend Mario doing? He's asleep. Shall I waken him? No, there's plenty of time. I wonder if they got anything to read on this train. I saw a vendor in the next car. Well, now, if this were the super chief, all I'd have to do is buzz. If you were to like me... Uh, no, thanks. I'll do it myself. Keep an eye on Sleeping Beauty. You may rest easy, Senor. Sergeant Giovanni Martelli has never betrayed a trust. Okay, Parzan. I'll be back in a couple of minutes. Ah, I trust you slept well, Comrade Mario. Huh? One observing you would think you had not a care in the world. I haven't, if you overlook these handcuffs. Uh, would you happen to have a cigarette? Oh, si. Grazie. You know, Sergeant, you are a very good fellow. You know, you made a very definite impression on my cousin. Your cousin? The young lady who visited me in my cell yesterday. She thought you were very handsome. <laughs> she did? Yes. <laughs> She's the most attractive female herself. Hey. Uh, would you like her address? Uh, very much. Uh, she lives at numero 300 via 47. Well, why don't you write it down? Uh, I... Uh... I will remember it. You said that Trashen... Ah, uh, you cannot drive, huh? <laughs> My schooling was interrupted at a tender age. Ah, si capisci. It's very understandable. <laughs> if you will remove the handcuffs, I will be very glad to do it for you. What? No, no, come, Sergeant. Certainly, you have no fear of me. <laughs> well, proportioned men like yourself. That was the first thing Edna noticed about you. Even that uniform couldn't hide those muscles. Eh, uh, hard work, does it? Well... It is out of the question. Oh, of course. You are afraid of the American senor, eh? Sergeant Giovanni fears no one. Stick up your hand. Ah, many thanks, my friend. Hurry. Write it down before senor Waring returns. It will be a pleasure. Ah, I believe I had a pen in my pocket. Oh, yes. Hey, where did you get the knife? You are mistaken. This is a pen. Here. You can feel the point. <laughs> Mario? Yes, Sergeant. Yes, indeed. <sighs> I'm sorry it had to be you. I would have preferred it if it were Sergeant Wary. Arrivederci, Sergeant. I fear we shall never meet again. and your children can expect to live long thanks largely to better medicine and surgery. But you could expect to live even longer were it not for the danger of automobile accidents. If driver education could be taught in all of our schools instead of only a third of them, it might someday help to save the life of your own son or daughter. Remember, in your own automobile, to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's Sicily for you, the land of hot tempers and cold steel. And when I got back to my compartment on the train, I found Mario Gentile was gone. But the good sergeant was still waiting. He was huddled on the floor, the blood pouring from half a dozen wounds. Yeah, Giovanni had reached the end of the line... But I had a hunch the big attraction for Mario was in Palermo, where we all started. So I headed back for the Hotel Rodolfo to await further developments. And they weren't long in coming. Excuse me, please. I'm looking for the Signor Michael Waring. Come in. 
My card, senor? Cesare de Lavoro. See, si, it was suggested by the Lieutenant Balbo that I see you. Uh, well, sit down. Gracias, senor. Mm. You care to join me? Uh, later, perhaps. All right, what can I do for you, de Lavoro? You have it within your power to save my life. Huh? You had in your custody yesterday a man who has called himself Mario Gentile. That was not his right name. How would you know? Because I have known him since 1934. In those days, he was known as Mario Toselli. You sure of that? Positive. We were almost inseparable. I see. I assure you, Signor, I was not a fascist. I knew Toselli purely in a social way. He was in love with a woman named Margarita Pecci. I took her away. Uh, let me get this straight. She here. honored me by becoming my wife. Oh. And how did Toselli take that? Oh, most badly. He swore to kill us both. It was only by going to France that we managed to escape his vengeance. Mm -hmm. And you think... He uh... returned to Palermo to keep his oath. For myself, I do not care, senor, but Margarita... Uh, does she know Mario is in Palermo? All Sicily knows. The papers have carried little else. It was her idea I consulted the Carabinieri. Well, where's your wife now? Well, she waits for me at Laura's hotel. Laura? Uh, Laura Reynolds. She's an old friend of Margarita. What does she look like? Well, she's most attractive. No, no, no. I mean, is she a blonde, a brunette? Well, why? Well, a woman visited Mario Gentili in his cell before he escaped, and we've got a hunch she supplied the stiletto. Oh, it could not be Laura. Why not? Well, she's an American. Oh, I see. All right, tell your wife not to worry, De Lavoro. Not that that will stop her, but I promise you we'll do everything we can. <laughs> Quattro, cinque. Is the clock right, Laura? No, it's a couple of minutes slow, Margarita. But Cesare promised to call by four. Something must have happened to him. Maybe he was hit by a cart. How can you say such things? It's real easy. You never liked my husband. I never liked spinach either, so what does that prove? As far as Cesare is I will concerned. not permit you to say another word against oh, him. Margarita, I all I... used to listen. Ever since... The... That must be Cesare now. Come in. I uh, trust you ladies will excuse me, but uh, I am searching for the Signora de Lavoro. I am Margarita de Lavoro. I kiss your hand, Signora. I recognize you immediately from your husband's description. I am Antonio Lombardi. Antonio Lombardi? Did Cesare not call and advise you I was to drive you home? No. That is most strange. That is the understatement of the week. No capisco? Oh, uh, forgive me, Signor Lombardi. This is my old friend, Laura Reynolds. Delighted. Oh, it's my pleasure. Why didn't Cesare come here himself? Uh, with the problem at hand, he thought it best not to take chances. What about... It has all been taken care of. Shall we go? Yes, of course. Goodbye, Laura. Uh, Marguerite, wait a minute. No, sorry, dear. I do not wish to keep Cesare waiting. Uh, well, call me the minute you get home. I've got the strangest feeling... Your concern does you credit, signorina. But uh, you need not to worry. Rest assured, I shall take care of her uh, properly. Arrivederci. Signor Lombardi. Si? Did you not say we were to meet Cesare at home? Did I? Yes. Then so be it. I would never think to contradict a lady. But this is not the way to Via Toledo. We are going south. There is the marina. The sea is over there. <laughs> well, the miracles never cease. I would have sworn. Uh, what are you stopping here for? For this. <gasps> it can't. You must understand, my dear. I bear no grievance against you personally, but my employer. Who is your employer? Would you care to venture a guess? No, I don't have to. I know. Uh, let's yeah. go, you fool. Let's go before... Uh, oh. Why must you women always be so difficult? Is that you, Margarita? No, it's Mike Waring. Oh, just a moment. Senor Waring, this is a surprise. Please come in. Thanks. 
I'm so sorry my wife is not here to meet you. She would be most honored. Uh, look, Delavaux, there's something I've got to tell you. I just came from Lieutenant Balbo's office. He has apprehended Mario Gentile, eh? No, not yet. Well, then what is it? But tell me, senor, what is it? It's about your wife. Something has happened to her. Yes. But where is she? Where is she? You must take me to her at once. It wouldn't do any good. Oh, no, no. I'm afraid it's yes. He kept his promise. Uh-huh. I feel kind of helpless to Lavoro, but if there's anything I can do... No, no, senor. No one can help me. If you will be so kind as to leave me now, I would like to be alone for a while. <laughs> the story, Miss Reynolds. The Carabinieri found a body an hour ago. Naturally, I thought you should know. Oh, I had a feeling when I saw that man. Couldn't you trace him through the car? You tell me how. Well, I watched them from the window as they walked out. His car was parked right across the street. It wasn't the Blue Nash. How did you know? A tourist reported the stolen early this afternoon. Now, getting back to this Antonio Lombardi, what did he look like? Well, he was about five foot five, dark hair, dapper. You sure it wasn't Mario Gentili? No, no, I'm positive. I've seen Gentili's picture. And he must have been an old comrade doing Mario a favor. Then why did he say Cesare sent him? Well, you don't think your friend Margarita would have gone with him if he admitted he came from Mario? Oh, why didn't Cesare call the way he promised? Because when he left me, he went into a huddle with Lieutenant Balbo at the Palazzo Caramante. Well, I still think it's strange. Well, that's your privilege. How long have you known De Lavoro? I met him at Cannes a year ago. And his wife? I met her at the same time. That's funny. I had an idea you and Margarita were practically sorority sisters. You know, I don't think I like your attitude. Oh, I don't blame you. I don't like it myself. You mind if I use your phone? Go right ahead. Thanks. I uh, hope that's a local call. It is. I'd like to see how DeLavoro is getting along. I've got a feeling I shouldn't have left him. Hello? DeLavoro? Who is this? Mike Waring. Oh, in the name of heaven, senor, where are you? I have been searching all over Palermo for you. Why, what's up? I just heard from Mario Gentile. When? Not more than five minutes ago. He said now that he had disposed of Margarita, it was my turn. Well, listen to Lavoron. I'm going to hang up. As soon as I do, I want you to call Lieutenant Balbo. It does not matter anymore, senor. I just wish to thank you for all that you do. Hello? Do. Hello? De Lavoro. What's the trouble? And you call it, Angel. But from where I'm sitting, it sounds like murder. Let's hope I'm wrong. <laughs> doesn't answer. You didn't really expect him to. All right, get out of the way. What are you going to do? Put my foot through the panel. There ought to be an easier way. Well, there is, but this is more fun, Laura. Yeah, that ought to do it. Now, let's see if I can reach the lock from here. Contrary, madame. Thank you. Oh, uh, now what? Well, don't you notice anything unusual? Well, what do you expect me to do, scream? I had my hopes. Well, I'm sorry if I disappointed you. Oh, <laughs> Now, that's what I call a double take. He, he isn't dead. No, see if there's any brandy around. Uh, you think he should have it? No, but I could stand a drink. It's in your wearing. Now, don't talk. You, you you got here a little late. Well, don't you worry, Delavoro. You're going to be fine. Oh, you cannot fool me, senor. No, I mean it. It's practically a scratch. But it, it burns. Well, that's to be expected. Was it Mario Gentile? I couldn't say for sure. I did not see his face. Now, wait a second. What's this in the corner? Huh? Well, what do you know? Oh, it is a gun. Yep, it's what it is. A German Mauser. You know, it looks kind of familiar. Is it the same weapon that was used I wouldn't on... be surprised. You got a handkerchief? Uh, here. I finally managed to locate some brandy. Nice work, Angel. Give him a shot. Um, uh, what about you? I'll take a rain check. Right now, I want to see Lieutenant Balbo. With a little luck, I think we can wrap this up. <laughs> And much as it pains me to disagree with you, you are wrong. Mario Gentile is not within 50 miles of Palermo. Then who took that shot at De Lavoro? The same assassin who killed his wife. No, I doubt it, Lieutenant. If a man is motivated by revenge, he'll want to do some of the trigger pulling himself. Otherwise, why did he come back to Sicily in the first place? Ah, that is a very good question. Uh, we got a million good questions. What we need is a couple of answers. Uh, you think your ballistics department is through checking the gun? Hmm. We shall see. Uh, uh, Sergeant, uh, Tenente Balbo, qui. Ha finito con l'arma. A ver. Hmm? <laughs> che interessante. Bravo, grazie tante, Sergeant. 
Oh, what do you say? <laughs> the gun was of German manufacture. It was a Mauser. Oh, tell me something I don't know. What about fingerprints? Not a one. Well, we expected that. I don't suppose they were able to run down the serial number. On the contrary, Michael. There they were most successful. Huh? The gun was purchased two weeks ago in Naples. In Naples? And you will die when you hear the name of the man who bought it. Oh, don't tell me. Yes, it was purchased by an American named Michael Waring. Oh, no. You are upset? And I thought you would be delighted by the news. Uh, I guess there is no pleasing some people. We all shudder and shake our heads sadly over the catastrophes we hear about. The floods, explosions, and other accidents which take five or more lives. We wonder if it could happen to us, too. Well, there is one type of catastrophe to which most of us are exposed many times every day if we drive or ride on the highways. It's the head-on collision between two motor vehicles. It means almost certain death or injury to the drivers and passengers of those vehicles involved. Take a lesson from the fatality figures... And drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there's one thing you can say about cops the world over. They all get the same look on their faces when they're pleased. And Lieutenant Balbo was wearing that look now. And no wonder... Here I've been needling him about Mario Gentili, and it turns out the gun that killed Margarita de Lavoro belonged to me. A most revolting development. Well, my friend, what have you got to say for yourself? Oh, very little. No wonder that gun looked familiar. Mario must have stolen it from my hotel room. But I was right about one thing. He's in Palermo. So it would appear. If there was one link we could find in the chain. Say, how far do your records go back on Gentili? As Gentile, only till 1950 when he came to Sicily as an organizer for the Communist Party. And you have no idea what he did before then? Only theories. But you don't know for sure. <laughs> no one does. <laughs> well, that's where you're wrong, Lieutenant. I know one thing now about our mystery man. What? How to trap him. And maybe Signor de Lavoro will be kind enough to furnish the bait. Let's ask him anyway. Senor Waring, I do not like this idea. I do not like it at all. Look, De Lavoro, either you have confidence in me or you don't. Well, I don't know about him, but I don't. Well, that's not too important, Laura. You're just part of the scenery. But I do not understand this business. It seems to me that I'm what you call a target. That's exactly what you are. Don't you see? It's our only chance of grabbing Mario. By this time, he knows he didn't kill you this afternoon. Well, if he's a man of his word... He'll return. That's what we're figuring on. But if he kills me... Not a chance. Lieutenant Balbo's got the place surrounded. Not entirely, Signore. Huh? You will oblige me by raising your hands. You're the doctor. Listen, Gentile. Ah, Signor Del Lavoro, I believe. Yes, yes. You know, you have taken the name of Mario Gentile in vain. Naturally, I'm displeased. I can explain everything. But why? Explanations are so boring. Well, you're just going to stand there, Weary? What else can I do? He's right, Signorina. You see, I'm a man with a purpose. I do not intend to be frustrated. All right, Del Lavoro. If you have anything to say, now is the time. In heaven's name, have mercy. Wearing, I beg you. Stay where you are, signore. I swear, Gentile, I did not mean any harm. I did not think it would matter to you. It matters a great deal. Tell them the truth. I never saw this man before in my life. What? Continue. He was not responsible for Margarita's murder. I was. I hired the assassin. Mascalzone! Oh. Mike. It's all right, Angel. It's all right? Uh, nothing wrong with him. He just fainted. But that bullet... It was a blank. Right, Paisan? Uh-huh. I don't get it. Allow me to introduce myself, signorina. I am Sergente Achille Bresci. Sergeant Bresci? Yeah, he's one of Lieutenant Balbo's boys. Well, you did a beautiful job of acting, Achille. Ah, uh, so what good is it? With my luck, signore, I'll wager Rossellini wasn't even listening. Well, Mike, maybe I'm thick, but I've got to admit that I still don't get it. Oh, it isn't difficult, Laura. It all comes down to the fact that De Lavoro hired that man to murder his wife. Yes, but how did Mario Gentili figure in this? He didn't. I don't understand. Well, you see, when Mario escaped, it gave De Lavoro the bright idea. The papers had played up Mario as a man of mystery. Nobody knew anything about his background. 
Claude de Lavoro spread the story that Mario came to Sicily for the purpose of killing him and Margarita. Oh, yes, but she knew the truth. Sure, but no one had a chance to ask her. She was murdered before either Balbo or myself could see her. Well, then, the shot we heard over the phone while de Lavoro was talking to you... Was self-inflicted. Oh, you're guessing all this. Well, that's why we had to bait a trap. And when de Lavoro mistook Achille Bresci for Mario Gentili, that clinched it. You know, you're pretty clever. Uh-huh. You ought to see me do card tricks sometime. Aha, uh-huh. I'd love to. All right, I'll show you one of my favorites. Now, uh, let's pretend you're a woman and I'm a man, and we're all alone on the marina facing the sea. And then what happens? Well, that's what makes this such a wonderful trick, Angel. Even I don't know how it's going to turn out. <laughs> The Case of the Gorgeous Greek. The Case of the Gorgeous Greek. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon when Mike Waring learns that when Greece gets too hot, somebody is bound to catch the devil. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake, produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert, Written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Joan Allison as Laura. This program came from New York. This is Fred Collins speaking. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Twilight. I'm glad you called. I'll have to have a rain check, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Athens, Greece. Yeah. Seems some boy over there is proud of his marksmanship, and they figure I'll give him something to shoot at. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the gorgeous Greek. The boy who first gave out with the line, appearances can be deceiving, had something there. As a case in point... I'd like you to meet Theodoros Gunario. Monsieur Gunario is a chubby little character who just walked into the Café Olympia in Athens. To look at him as he makes his way to a table in the corner, you'd think here was a man who wouldn't hurt a fly. And you'd be right, which puts the local flies away ahead of his fellow men. Ah, Nicholas, my good friend, it's great pleasure for to see you. Unfortunately, I can't say the same. You know this isn't wise, Gunario. Suppose the police here together. So? Who else knows Nicholas Venizelos is number one man in Communist Party in all Greece. A position you obviously feel much better qualified to hold. Oh, you are wrong, Nicholas. I think you are best man for job. I want to tell Comrade Molotov if it can help the party, that Nicholas Venizelos would cut off his hand up to here. Never mind, Gennario. Did you see Iris Richards? Oh, yes. Uh, we have a very nice talk. She knows why she was brought to Athens? Of course. For to become good friends with General Zagliani. Well, our Bulgarian comrades would like to know why they weren't advised that Greece would defend the island of Gamma from their attack. <laughs> they find out different, huh? The situation seems to afford you some amusement. <laughs> After all, I am Greek. So am I. Oh, it's different for you, Nicholas. Your whole family is living in England for a long time. I'm still a Greek. But I'm a communist first. Why didn't Iris inform us of General Lignani's plan? How did she know when she has not seen him? Why not? He was interested in her? Yes, but uh, she's not interested in him. What? Oh, you must not be too hard on girl, Nicholas. But uh, <laughs> she is in love. That isn't funny, Gennario. No, it's very sad. But love is feeling very difficult to control. She is to give up this man at once. I say this to her, but she finds it very hard. Well, if Comrade Richards hasn't enough self-discipline to give him up... We'll have to do it for her. Get rid of him. Get rid of him? You seem to take a strange delight in misunderstanding me, Gennario. 
You don't understand, Nicholas. To get rid of this young man is a very difficult problem. This is not a boy we can drop in Mediterranean and nobody will ask questions. I don't care who he is. I want it done. <laughs> then maybe you do it yourself. You have best chance. What are you talking about? This young fellow Iris fell in love with is your brother, George. What? Oh, she's real crazy for him, Nicholas. You're lying. It is enough to find out. Why don't you ask Iris? I will. Oh, I'm so happy. Imagine, five years I know you, and this is the first idea you take from Gonario. Maybe someday i give you some more. <laughs> Second. Iris Richard. That's right. I wonder if you could spare me a few minutes. I'm Nicholas Venezuelos. Oh. Obviously, you're familiar with the name. Obviously. Come in. Thank you. Hmm. Very lovely sweet. I like it. All right, Mr. Venezuelos. Let's get on with it. Pardon? You came here for a reason. Naturally. I understand you're in love with my brother, George. Where do you understand that from? The usual rely on the source. Have I been misinformed? No. You care a great deal for him. More than anything else in the world. You know, oddly enough, I believe you. I'm overwhelmed. I'd like to tell you a little about our family. Don't bother. George has already briefed me. Why don't you leave him alone? You must understand, Iris. My brother is very young. He's 29. He's still a child in many ways. Maybe that's because you never gave him a chance to grow up. Perhaps I should explain. I'm very fond of George. And he hates you. That's not true. You'd better open your eyes, Mr. Venezuelos. He can't stand you. You've interfered with everything in his life. Someone had to. This situation proves it. Meaning I'm not good enough for him? If you prefer to believe that, that's your privilege, but I order you to give him up. You order me? Yes. Oh, you've got the wrong girl. On the contrary, I've got the right one. Does George know you're a common form agent? What? That you're in Greece on party business. You're, you're crazy. Your contact here is Theodora Scenario. Why, you... You're a comrade yourself. My party card bears the name of Paul Papalus. You're, you're Papala? Yes. Oh, but I had no idea. Naturally. Benario is the only one in Greece who knows. The party is outlawed here. Please, comrade, may I say something? No. But I'd, I'd like to explain. You couldn't possibly. You were sent here on an important mission. To date, you have betrayed that trust. I feel my brother is responsible. You are never to see him again. Is that understood? I ask you something, Iris. What can I tell him? That you were just using him to pass the time of day. No. No, I... I can't do it. And I say you will. Good day, comrade. I know I can depend on you to fulfill your obligation. <laughs> I guess we better start looking for a parking place, Iris. What? Well, I, I'd love to drive you right into the Acropolis, but unfortunately the road hasn't been paved since 500 B.C. Ah. Shall we get out? Wait a minute, George. Hmm? There's something I want to tell you. Now, darling, I'm sure it's not that serious. Yes, it is. I'm not seeing you anymore. <laughs> I'm not planning, George. All right, dear, I give up. What the joke? It's no joke. But you couldn't possibly mean that. Couldn't I? No. You're in love with him. Well, of all the conceited, egotistical males, what have you got that makes you think you're so special? Well, I never claimed I was. No, but your attitude shows it. Sure, you may be hot stuff here in Greece, but I come from a big country, honey. Guys like you are a dime a dozen on every street corner. You don't mean that, Iris. You want to bet? But you told me. I never had it so good. You didn't believe me, did you? Yes, I did. Well, you poor sap. I guess your brother was right. My brother? Well, 
Well, didn't you tell me that he, he said you needed a nursemaid? Has Nicholas been up to see you? No. You're lying. All right, so I am. Yeah. Yeah, he was up to see me. What did he say? Well, it wasn't what he said, sweetie. It was what he did. He gave me a check for 20,000 drachmas. You didn't take it. Now, baby, be reasonable. A girl's got to look out for herself. You can't mean that, Iris. For heaven's sake, what does it take to convince you? Maybe I should have made a tape recording of the dialogue. Get this and get it straight, Mr. Venezuela. You never meant a thing in my young life. You couldn't possibly. Iris. And stop irising me. I know my name. I've had it long enough. Now, will you, will you take me back to the hotel? <laughs> Good evening, Mr. George. Good evening, Paul. Is my brother home? No, sir. He went out right after dinner. Have you any idea where I can find him? I'm afraid not, sir. Well, did he say anything about... Oh, uh, shall I... No, no, I'll answer it. Hello. Hello, is this Venezuela's? Yes. This is Gunario. How are you, my friend? Who? Theodore is Gunario. Oh, well, you have the... I just see Comrade Iris. I understand everything has worked out fine. What did you say? What's the matter? You can't talk now? No, no, just a moment. Paul. Yes, Mr. George. Would you mind leaving me alone? Not at all, sir. Thank you. I'm sorry, Gunario. Uh, what were you saying? It's not important. I just called to congratulate you. I see now Moscow is right. Moscow? When they make you head of party in Greece instead of me. Head of the party? What matter, Nicholas? You don't seem for to understand me. It's, it's just that I've been asleep and I'm still rather groggy. Oh, I'm sorry. It's better I don't call, huh? Oh, I'd, I'd never forgive myself if I'd missed this. And now, if you'll excuse me, Gunario, I'll hang up. I've got one or two calls of my own I'd like to make. Hello? Have I the pleasure of speaking to Mr. Michael Waring? If that's your idea of pleasure, who is this? I'm afraid my name won't mean much to you. George Venizelos. George Venizelos? Yes, your embassy suggested I get in touch with you. Well, what can I do for you? I believe the shoe was on the other foot. I'd like to do something for you. You're aware that the Communist Party is outlawed in Greece? Yes. Well, suppose I told you that the number one man is right here in Athens. What would you say to that? Well, the first thing I'd say is, what's his name? I take it then you're interested. Interested is hardly the word. Well, I live at 14... Tricopas. Tricopas. That's the street right near the monument to Byron, isn't it? That's the one. Can I expect you at ten? You wouldn't want to make it earlier? Try to be patient, Mr. Waring. After all, you chaps have been looking for this fellow for years. A few hours, more or less, shouldn't matter. I'll see you at ten. <laughs> George Venezuelos. I figured as much. Then may I take your coat? Don't bother. I don't think I'll be staying long. Cigarette? I'll stick to my own brand, if you don't mind. Thanks. Funny. You look nothing like I had imagined. Does anybody? Well, I only meant when I was in the States some years back, I heard a great deal about the Falcon. I rather fancied he'd be tall and lean. Maybe I'm not the Falcon, then. What? That's right. I'm not Mike Waring. Then, who are you? Eddie Welch. Eddie Welch? Did Waring... Send me? Perish for bed. I'm here strictly on my own. Let this be a lesson to you, Georgie. Next time you make a phone call, make sure it don't go through a hotel switchboard. It's like a radio show, you never can tell who's listening. <laughs> On the highway, speed is the number one killer. It takes more than half of the lives lost in traffic accidents in many states. Last year, speeding drivers caused 15,000 deaths in the United States. That year, more than 500,000 persons were injured in automobile accidents blamed on excessive speed. That's the bloody price tag on too much speed, the cost that you may pay sooner or later for a few minutes saved by speeding. Slow down for safety's sake, and remember, drive as though your life depends on it. 
It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, that's the way it goes sometimes. And apparently this wasn't George's day. It may have started badly enough when Iris gave him the air, but Eddie Welch sure ended it for him with a bang. But I knew none of this when I got out of the cab in front of 14 Tricoupis. I never even noticed the official-looking car parked at the curb. I guess I was asleep. But the boy who answered the door certainly opened my eyes. Yes, please? I'm looking for George Venizelos. On your name? Mike Waring. I'll be so good as to enter. Uh, maybe I'd better not. Pardon? Well, I learned a long time ago, and I'm greeted by a man in the blue coat and brass buttons. The better I should have stood in bed. Permit me to introduce myself. I am Emmanuel Kumandores, lieutenant in His Majesty's police. Yeah, I was afraid of that. Now, where do we go? Right here. Uh-oh. Is that George Venezuela? You did not know him? Only as a voice on the phone. Uh, may I? Allow me. Oh, Stratos. Yes, sir. Take three men and interview the neighbor. Yes, Lieutenant. All right. You, 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 come with me. Well, seen enough? Too much. Apparently he knew what he was talking about. Pardon? He called me a couple of hours ago at my hotel. The American embassy had referred him to me. Why? Well, he claimed he knew the identity of the number one boy in the communist underground here. Oh, that's ridiculous. Now, someone was real anxious to shut him up. Did he have any family? Just a brother. What's his name? Nicholas Venezuelo. Think I could talk to him? I do not imagine it would do any good. Still, you never know unless you try. I'll be seeing you, Lieutenant. I wish there was some way I could help Mr. Waring, but I'm afraid there isn't much I can tell you. Well, you never know, Mr. Venezuelos. Was your brother a communist? What? Well, he claimed he knew the identity of the head man in the party here. Oh. It must have been George's idea of a joke. Believe me, he took absolutely no interest in politics. Well, then what do you think was the motive for his murder? Robbery. According to the police, there wasn't a thing taken from his apartment. Mm, perhaps the burglar was frightened off. Well, that's a possibility. But let's look at another. How did you two get along? You know, I'd be within my rights to say it's none of your business. Mm -hmm. But somehow, I've got a great deal of confidence in you. Well, I appreciate that. George and I never got along too well. I suppose it was all my fault. I insisted on treating him as a child. And naturally, he resented it. Naturally. I never realized how much until recently. How did you find out? Through a mutual acquaintance. Iris Richards? Where did you learn about her? To Lieutenant Commandoris. You think she might know anything about his murder? Of course not. Still, I think we ought to have a talk. I'd rather you didn't, old man. You and your brother weren't rivals for her affections. Don't be ridiculous. And why do you object to my seeing her? Because there's nothing to be gained by it. Well, you never can tell. Nevertheless, I forbid you to see her. You, uh, forbid me? Yes. Uh, you sound like you're used to giving orders. I am. What happens when another day? That's a very good question, Willing. And if you insist on seeing Iris, you'll have the opportunity of finding the answer for yourself. I rather doubt whether you enjoy making the discovery. Yes? Hello, Miss Richards. Who are you? A fellow American. Oh, and you think this is old home week? Well, I had hopes. Sorry, I'm busy. The name is Waring, Mike Waring. Mm-hmm. I'm still busy. I'm a friend of George Venezuelos. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, if... If George sent you over to plead his case, he's wasting his time. Mm hmm? Well, isn't that fine? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Uh, so, may I come in? It won't do you any good. Won't do me any harm, either. Um, how, how is George? Not so hot. You'll get over it. Well, I kind of doubt that, Iris. You never get over his kind of trouble. He's a fool. He'll find a million other girls. Not George. Sure, he will. He's just a kid. You sound like his brother Nicholas now. Well, that's what he is. Something tells me you were in love with the boy. Don't make me laugh. Why'd you see so much of him? Well, a girl's got to have something to do in a place like this. Then he meant nothing to you? Not a single solitary thing. Well, then you won't be uh, interested in the fact that he was murdered. What? what? What did you say? Yeah, he was shot to death last night at a quarter to ten. 
You're lying. I'm sorry, Angel. Where is he? Where is he? I've got to see him. I thought he didn't mean anything to you. We, he didn't. You're crazy about him. No, no. Why did you give him up? Because I couldn't stand him. Why did you give him up, Iris? Did Nicholas have anything to do with it? How many times must I tell you he didn't mean a thing to me? Not a thing. Now you get out of here and leave me alone. <laughs> Ah, uh, Nicholas, my good friend. What are you doing here, Gennario? I just hear about your brothers making me for to be very unhappy. Come in. Thank you. I uh, cannot tell you what is in my heart, Nicholas. I know how you feel about Georgie. Who do you think do such an awful thing? I wish I knew. Maybe that fellow Michael Waring find out, huh? Who told you about Waring? Oh, it's little. I don't know. It was up to see Iris. Did you tell him anything? Not Comrade Richards. She feel about party like you do. It's like I tell you on the phone yesterday. You told me on the phone? Well, sure, when I speak to you around 7 8 o'clock. Where did you call me? Here. I wasn't even home at the time. It's impossible. The fellow I talked to of exactly the same accent. <gasps> Go on, Gario. <laughs> I, I... I must have made a mistake. You certainly did. You spoke to George. What did you tell him? Well, nothing, Nicholas. I, I, I just ask how you feel. Uh, how is business? You're lying. You must have mentioned something about the party. No, Nicholas. You stupid, blundering fool. <laughs> you should never do this to Gunario. Uh, I forgive you because you are upset. Get out. Sure, Nicholas. I know I have been a great disappointment to you, but... Maybe I can make up for it. You see, if I don't gonna try. Yeah? Hello, Waring. Do I know you? Well, if you don't, it's not my fault. I'm Eddie Welch. Eddie Welch? Oh, sure. Uh, would you like to come in? Try and keep me out. I assume that gun is loaded. Uh-huh. Then I wouldn't dare. I just flop anywhere. That sofa is pretty good. Thanks. And suppose you sit right here where I can keep an eye on you. Anything to oblige an old friend? <laughs> oh, you're Eddie Welch. Hmm? It register? Yeah, very definitely. You're a trigger man for the CP. What are you doing in Athens? I'm crazy about ruins. I thought you made your own. Yeah, it's pretty good. No, not very. Did you take care of George Venizelos? What do you think? I think, yes. What bothers me is who gave you your orders. Tell you what I'll do, Eddie. Make you a deal. You make me a deal? Well, occasionally you have to bargain with rats. Why, you no good. <gasps> What's the matter? Nothing. You're sick. Get back. I just want to help you. He said get back. Or you I'll... what? Oh, come on, drop it. Drop it. I'll break your arm. I mean it, Eddie. <laughs> All right, now, who sent you around here? Get a doctor. Who sent you around, Eddie? Please, please, get me a doc. I'm on fire. Sure, you've been poisoned. The dirty louse. Who did it, Eddie? Come on, you want to get even, don't you? Oh, no good, dirty. Eddie. Eddie. Hello, operator. There's a dead body in my room. I'd like it removed. Maybe room service can help me out. Most of us are looking forward to the Labor Day weekend and planning to spend it out of town. And that's fine for most of us. But we should always keep in mind that these long weekend holidays are often tragic times for some of us who start out gaily to enjoy them. More than 1,300 American families will lose one or more of their loved ones in accidents on the highways. At all times, and particularly on long holiday weekends, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, I guess it only goes to prove you can't leave the ads. Here, the Hotel Olympia boasted of their deluxe service, yet when Eddie Welsh keeled over in my room and I buzzed the operator for room service, it was 20 minutes before someone knocked on my door. And when I opened it, there stood Lieutenant Emmanuel Comandoris. Naturally, I was disappointed. Ah, Mr. Waring, we meet again. Well, don't blame me, Lieutenant. The uh, gentleman is a friend of yours? 
Him? Heaven forbid. That's Eddie Welch. What was he doing here? Well, I've got an unpleasant idea. He came over to give me a treatment. A treatment? Mm Mm-hmm. The same kind he gave George Venizelos. You feel he was responsible for the murder? He practically admitted it to me. Why should he? Because he figured he had nothing to lose. He was going to put me away, too. And what happened? Well, he didn't watch his diet. He was poisoned. Ridiculous. Just turn him over and take a sniff. Need any help? No, I can't manage. Thank you. Uh, Strychnine. That's what it is. I do not understand. Well, my guess is that the same party who ordered him to kill George Venizelos hated loose ends. So Eddie was sent around to take care of me. Then why was he poisoned? Because Eddie himself was a loose end. I guess his boss hoped that he would get to me before the strychnine took effect. Lucky for me, his timing was off. But why was George murdered? Well, I hate to use the phrase, Lieutenant, but it fits. It was all a communist plot. You know who was responsible? I've got a pretty good idea. But in fairness to all concerned, I feel his brother Nicholas should be the first to know. I hope he appreciates the honor. Hello, Nicholas. Miss Richard. It was Comrade Iris the last time we met. What are you doing here? I wanted to see you. That was most unwise. I thought the situation warranted it. Is Comrade Gonario here? Should he be? Mm-hmm. I took the liberty of telling him you wanted to see him. Sit down. Do you know what you're doing? Yeah. It's not a switch. I'm giving the orders now. It's funny what a little gun can do for your morale. You regret this, comrade. I can assure you that the proper authority... Oh, could... please don't threaten me with party discipline. I've had all of that I can stand. For eight years, every minute of my time belonged to the party. For eight years, I did everything they told me without questioning. They were going to make a better world. Well, just between us girls, comrade, I haven't seen one soul they ever helped. But it took your brother's murder to open my eyes. The poor kid never... Oh, I guess that's Comrade Gonario. Shall I? By all means. We couldn't possibly proceed without him. Just a moment. Hello, Nicholas. Mr. Welling. I think you know, Lieutenant. Well, if it isn't Iris Richards. That's who it is. That wouldn't be a gun you're holding. Wouldn't it? Yeah, I guess it would. Better put it away, Angel. This man is a police lieutenant. I must warn you, you young ladies. Don't that... bother. Just sit down over there. Really, Miss... Go on, all of you. Now, if you're going to behave like this, Iris, I'm not going to let you in on my surprise. What are you talking about? I know the motive for George's murder. What? Well, accidentally, George learned who was head of the local communist setup in Greece. I could have told you that. Yes, but you wouldn't. It's Brother Nick here, isn't it? Yes. Really, my dear, you're being most absurd. No one else could have made me give up, George. But uh, even granting all this... You still would like to know who killed his brother? Yes. He did. Really, old man, I... Just stay where you are, Nicholas. Go on, Waring. Well, Nick here was completely dedicated to the party. It came first, last, and all the time. Naturally, when George threatened to end his use to the common form by exposing him... He had him killed. That's right. You certainly don't believe this, Lieutenant. I don't know about him, but I do. No, Iris... Venizelos! Venizelos! Well? He's dead. Anybody want to buy a second-hand Colt automatic? I'll let it go real cheap. I'll take it. Sold to the man on my right. All right, fellas, let's go. I think I took care of everything else. Some more wine, Michael? I never could say no. You know, I am completely mystified. I don't see why, Lieutenant. Well, Nicholas and George were brothers. So it came and Abel. Oh, yes, but there was a difference here. Hmm? Nicholas was very fond of George. He did everything he possibly could for him. Oh, sure, but his first love was the Communist Party, and anything that threatened it was his enemy. So when it came to a showdown between his brother and the party, George didn't have a chance. I see. Well, I guess it proves one thing. Romancing a woman can sometimes lead to trouble, but having an affair with the Communist Party is just asking for murder. Good night, Lieutenant. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Margot. Uh, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Lisbon, Portugal. Yeah. 
Seems some little girl there is playing fast and loose with Uncle Sammy's secrets, and I gotta run her down if it kills me. Once again, the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risked their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the silent butler. I guess the boy who first gave out with good things come in small packages must have had Maria Costa in mind. Maria is the luscious-looking brunette walking down one of the steep, winding alleys in Alfama, the old section of Lisbon. She's so pretty, even the beggars stop their panhandling to watch her go by. And 15 feet behind her is a man in a white suit and a white Panama hat who obviously feels she's worth more than a second glance. He must. He's been following her for days. All right, senor. What is the meaning of this? You talking to me, lady? Yes. What can I do for you? You can stop following me. Following you? I saw you at the Castello de San Jorge. You mean that Moorish fortress up on the hill? Yes. Oh, not me, sugar. Well, I wouldn't make that climb for anything. I know it was you. And yesterday you were on the Rue Aurea. But that's the section where the goldsmiths have their shops. You're mistaken. I aim to cover that tomorrow. You are lying. Not me, no man. You ask anybody. They'll tell you Dixie Harris ain't told a lie since he was knee-high to a grasshopper. No, ma'am, it must have been some other tourist in a white suit. Well, in the future, you will be so good as to leave me alone. Why, sure, Maria, anything you say. How did you know my name is Maria? Did I call you that? Yes. Well, now, what do you know? I guess there must be something in that mental telepathy business after all. I demand to know why you are following me. Well, I told you, honey, I'm just doing a little sightseeing. And you're the prettiest sight I've seen in all of Portugal. And you can't blame a fella if he comes back for a second, look. Can you? <laughs> I'll be seeing you, sugar. help the senorita? Please. My name is Maria Costa. Oh, yes. Senor Butler is expecting you. Just follow me. Has he been waiting long? Oh, perhaps a half hour. Maria. Oh, hello, Stephen. I was beginning to worry. Sit down. Oh, thank you, darling. Would the senor care to order now? Yes, I think so. What would you like, Maria? Oh, a double Smirnoff and orange juice. Double? <laughs> I developed a great fondness for vodka. All right, Jose, I'll have the same. Oh, very good, senor. Oh, Stephen, it is so good to see you. I, I cannot tell you how glad I am. <laughs> Ever since you called this morning, I felt like a bird. All right, Maria, what's up? What's up? Why are you so nervous? Has my wife been bothering you again? Oh, no, Stephen, honest. Then what happened? Nothing, sweetheart. Now, don't tell me that. You're trembling all over. What happened? <laughs> I do not wish to worry you, Stephen. You you have enough trouble at home with Anne. Come on, Marie. I want to know. Well, well, some man has been following me. What? Ever since Thursday, I, I think his name is Dixie Harris. Dixie Harris? Was he an American? Yes. What does he look like? Well, perhaps as tall as you, but much heavier. Was he wearing a white suit and a white Panama hat? You know him? I saw him in Black Horse Square on Monday and in Alcantara on the day... Yes, I have your order. Well, thank you. Will there be anything else? Not just now. Yes. Go, senor. What does it mean, Stephen? Hmm? Why is this man following us? I don't know, honey. But I sure intend to find out. I'll drink up and I'll get with it. Have I the honor of talking to that distinguished gentleman known far and wide as the Falcon? <laughs> How are you, Dixie? How in the world did you know it was me? I recognize you by a white suit. How are we doing? Well, not so hot, Mike. Maria spotted me. When? This morning in Alfama. Tough. I'm sorry, pal, but it couldn't be helped. Though I managed to tailor to the Cafe Europa where she heisted a couple with Steve Butler. It's always Steve Butler, isn't it? Uh-huh. You learn anything else? No, not a single blessed thing. If you ask me, friend, we got a bum steer. That gal's no spy. 
And what about those confidential reports from the embassy we found in her apartment? I'm beginning to think they were planted. By whom? By the same little lady who gave us the original tip. Are you able to latch onto her again? Nope. That name she used was a phony. Well, I don't get it. Me neither. But a lady six two and even somebody's trying to frame Maria. What gets me is why. Yeah, that's a very good question, Dixie. I'll get busy on the answer right away. Keep in touch, fella. I may have news for you real soon. <laughs> You Stephen Butler? That's right. My name is Mike Waring. Oh, of course. Army Intelligence informed us you'll be dropping by. You probably want to see the ambassador. Oh, there's no need to bother him. You're his aide, aren't you? Yes. Well, I think you can give me all the information I need. Sit down, won't you? Thanks. Uh-huh. Cigarette? Uh, yeah, please. You uh, see much of Maria Costa these days? What? Maria Costa, the uh, girl who works in the coding department. Well... Working together in the embassy, naturally, I run into her every once in a while. Yeah, naturally, but uh, how about on the outside? Why should I? No good reason. I suppose I told you she was a spy. That's ridiculous. We found confidential material in her apartment. I don't believe it. Well, that's your privilege. She ever tried to pump you? Of course not. You're a married man, aren't you, Butler? Oh, what's that got to do with it? Uh, Nothing, nothing. Uh, What does your wife look like? Why? I'm just curious. We got our tip about Maria from a tall, statuesque blonde. A blonde? Yeah, blue eyes, fair complexion. Little birthmark on the right cheek. You know her? No. You sure? Are you calling me a liar? Oh, heaven forbid. I was just wondering why she would try to frame Miss Costa. I have no idea. Uh, well, if through some accident you find out, give me a jingle, huh? I'm staying at the Prince George. I'll bear that in mind, Waring, but I can't make you any promises. If I learn anything, you can trust me to do the right thing. Steve, you startled me. I didn't think you'd be home. Yeah, it, it is kind of early for me. Oh, I've got to get off my feet. I had the most miserable day. Oh. I had a pretty lousy one myself. A fellow named Mike Waring dropped in to see me. Who? Mike Waring. He's with Army Intelligence. Seems they got a tip that Maria Costa was a spy. Really? Really. According to Waring, his informant was, uh, how did he put it? Oh, yes. A tall, statuesque blonde with a birthmark on her right cheek. (laughs) Darling, you're not suggesting that... Yes, I am. You're being absurd. Why should I? Because you're out of your mind. All right, Mr. Butler, I did it. Sure, I sicked army intelligence on your precious Maria. Why don't you ask me why? I don't have to. No? Do you think I was blind? I know you're in love with her. You know, it's a funny thing, Anne. I bet I've heard you say that a thousand times in the last seven years, and for once in your life, you're right. No. Yes. This time, you've hit the nail right on the head. Steve, you don't mean that. You couldn't. You're just trying to hurt me. I don't have to. You're the kind who hurts yourself. Steve, please, listen to me. I know I was wrong, but I love you so much, darling. Every time you look at a woman, I go crazy. I know. You've got to understand, I just do these awful things because I'm so afraid of losing you. Well, you have, now. No. You love me. You know you do. It's all over, Anne. I'm going to marry Marie. No. I couldn't live without you. You better get used to the idea. I'm moving out now. I won't let you go. Stop. Don't kill her. So help me, if you move out of here, I'll kill her. You're insane. Stephen, don't go. I promise you, darling. I'll send for my things in the morning. Steve, please. Continental Hotel, your order, please. Uh, this is Louise Butler in 419. Yes, senora. Uh, what's the house detective's name? The house detective, Luis Machado. Oh, Are yeah. you having difficulties, senora? Uh, no, no, I, uh, I just would like to see Senor Machado. Is he around? Not just now, senora. Well, uh, the moment he comes in, will you please send him up to my room? It's very important. You might even say it's a matter of life and death. <laughs> Senora Butler? Yeah? 
I am Luis Machado. Oh, yeah. come on in. Obrigado. Uh, suppose we uh, sit right here, huh? Oh, the telephone operator said. I, I, uh, have... I know, but uh, wouldn't you care for something to drink first? Oh, senor. I, I, I am on duty. The management expects me to do... <laughs> what the management doesn't know won't hurt them, will it? Let's <laughs> see how true. There we are. The senor is most kind. If there is any way I can reciprocate... There is. You have but to command Luis Machado. How would you like to make yourself $500 American? I would like you very much. You must know all sorts of dangerous criminals. Oh, unfortunately, yes. It is unavoidable in my calling. You know a professional killer? Hmm? A man who would commit murder for a price. Senor, a butler. I'll pay him $5,000. You are jesting, no? $5,000 cash and 500 for you. I got the money right here in my purse. <laughs> It pleases the senora to make fun of Luis Machado, eh? You don't believe me? Oh, naturally not. If, if I did, it would be my sacred duty to inform the police. <laughs> You're right, senor. I was just pulling your leg. It was just a bad joke. <laughs> Are you relieved? <laughs> For a moment... You I... thought I really meant it, huh? Uh, yes. Now, what would I want with a hired killer? After all, if you want a job done right, there's nothing like doing it yourself, huh? I do not understand. <laughs> it's not important. Uh, senor, I hate to rush you, but uh, would you mind finishing your drink? Huh? I just remembered I got something to do. To the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there's one nice thing you can say about being married to a girl like Ann Butler. It makes life kind of interesting. You never know what she's going to cook up next. And while Mrs. Butler was comparing recipes with Louise Machado, the obliging hotel detective, Dixie Harris and I were cruising on the Avenida de Libertade past the obelisk which memorates the liberation of Portugal from Spanish rule. But Dixie never even noticed it. Apparently, he thought I was a more interesting sight. What's eating you, Mike? You look unhappy. Yeah, that's me. Old transparent face wearing. You worrying about that Maria Costa? Uh-huh. Ain't you convinced yet she was framed? She's no spy. That's what bothers me, Dixie. I don't get you. Watch it. You almost got that pedestrian. Shucks, and I thought I had him for sure. <laughs> What'd you make of Steve Butler? Strictly the lanolin plus type, a real smoothie. Ah, uh, that's where I had him pegged, too. But I figure he's real gone on Maria. Yeah, which forces us to the unhappy conclusion that the frame for Maria was staged by his wife. Hey, you think that's who our blonde tipster was? But deaf. <laughs> well, wait till she finds out a little stunt fell flat on its face. She's gonna be real annoyed. Yeah, and a gal like Ann Butler believes in the old saw, if you don't succeed at first, try, try again. What do you think she'll try next? It's no telling. Yeah, I guess you're right. <laughs> Douglas, I always knew a doll like that back in Atlanta. She was real crazy about a friend of mine and real jealous, too. <laughs> Man, every time she blew her cork, you'd have to make for the hills, because that gal was murder. <laughs> she was what? She was murder. Yeah, that's what I thought you said. <laughs> Where does Maria Costa live? Right off the road of Prince Pitt. Well, turn this heap around. Let's go. Hey, you don't think Miss Butler... I think she's exactly the same type as that girl you knew in Atlanta. Step on it, boy. we got to make like the Marines. Oh, no. Let's get out of here, Mike. Just a moment, please. You are looking for someone? Uh, yeah, but I don't think we'll find her in. Is this Maria Costa's apartment? It is. Uh-huh. That's what I was afraid of. Excuse me. Oh, don't mind him, Lieutenant. He always acts like this when he sees a man in the blue uniform. He's from the South. He keeps forgetting the Civil War is over. That is most amusing. May I inquire as to your names? Uh, sure, I'm Mike Waring, and this is Dixie Harris. We're attached to American intelligence. I see. Be so good as to enter. No 
Well, where is she? In the bedroom. Dead? She was shot twice. Tough. Obviously, this does not come as a surprise to you, senor. Hardly. I would be most interested to hear why. Can we see her first? Of course. Over here, senores. Uh, can we take a peek? You would like me to remove the blanket? Yes, please. Holy smoke, that ain't Maria Costa. No. You are surprised? That's the understatement of the week. You do not know this lady? Well, judging from the blonde hair and that birthmark on her right cheek, I'd say she was Ann Butler. You are absolutely correct. Where is Maria Costa? Senorita Costa has momentarily disappeared. But it is of no import. We have already apprehended the assassin. Who is it? The victim's husband. Steve Butler? I don't believe it. He has even obliged us with a confession. Where is he? In the Palace of Justice. Can I see him? It will be my pleasure. This way, senor. Who's there? Hello, Steve. Where is That's who it is. The embassy sent you over? No, I'm here strictly on my own. Why? Oh, I don't know. Maybe it's because you're a fellow American in the jam, or maybe I'm just plain nosy. Cigarette? Thanks. Well, how are they treating you? I can't complain. They tell me you signed a confession. Mm Mm-hmm. Why did you kill her? The usual reason. We didn't get along. Now, from what I hear, you haven't been getting along for years. Oh, when she tried to frame Maria Costa for espionage, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. So you picked up a gun and shot her, huh? Twice. Well, makes sense. Thanks. But uh, why did you pick Maria's apartment to do the job? Well, it seemed like the best spot. Well, didn't it occur to you it might be embarrassing for Maria? I guess I wasn't thinking too clearly. It's funny. You impress me as a boy who always knows what he's doing. Where's Maria now? I, uh... I have no idea. You wouldn't have made that confession to shield her. To shield her? (laughs) Don't tell me I impress you as the noble type. Well, strangely enough, you do. (laughs) You're out of your mind. Mm -hmm. Well, we'll find out when we latch on to Miss Costa. Look, Waring, you mind your own business. Well, this is my business. You're an employee of the American Embassy. So is Maria. I don't want you bothering her. You understand? She had nothing to do with this. You're in love with her. I was not in love with her. It was just a little extracurricular activity. Uh-huh. I killed Anne, and that's all there is to it. Well, you ought to know best. But I like to keep an open mind. I'll be seeing you, Steve. Can I assist you, senor? Uh, you can if you're the house detective. I am, senor. But how did you know? You're wearing a derby. Uh, my name is Michael Waring. Me wear Waring? No, that's close enough. And I am Luis Machado. Well, glad to know you, Luis. Uh, suppose you take a look at this. You are with the American intelligence. Uh-huh. And there is some way I can be of aid? Yes, I think so. Oh, come on, me, senor. You, uh, heard about the senora... And Butler? Oh, yes. It is most sad. She and her husband were guests of the establishment. Yes, I know. The switchboard operator tells me a couple of hours before she was murdered, she asked that you come up to her room. Oh, yes. It was most puzzling. Oh? What did she want? Well, knowing of my profession, she wished to know if I was acquainted with someone who might commit a murder. How much was she willing to pay? Huh? Well, naturally, she didn't expect him to work for free. Oh, no, no. She said she would compensate him in the amount of $5,000 American. Hmm. Uh, Understandably, I was horrified. Then she explained it was all a joke. Did you believe her? She was an American. (laughs) Yeah, they'll do anything for a laugh. Well, what happened after that? Well, as I took my departure, she said something... uh, Let me see if I can remember... Uh, if you wish a task well done... Do it yourself. Exactly. Well, that explains how she wound up at Maria Costa's apartment. She went there to kill her. Oh, it does not seem credible. Well, yeah, take my word for it. That's how it happened. All right, thanks a lot, Louise. 
I have been of some aid. Oh, uh, indeed you have. Maybe I can make it up to you real soon. Hello? That you, Dixie? Yeah. Mike Waring. Oh, what's a good word, Pappy? Look, I'm at the Continental. I just got through at the hotel, Dick. Uh, was there any help? Not much. How did you make out? I didn't. Did you find out who identified Ann Butler for the police? Oh, they didn't need anybody. They found a purse right next to the body. Was there a gun in it? No. Everything else but. Passport, driver's license, twelve dollars and change, and her keys to the hotel. What about Maria Costa? Oh, she wasn't in there either. <laughs> I mean, have you been able to locate her? Uh uh-uh, uh, not yet. Well now look, we've got to find her, Dixie. Go through our application at the embassy. She must have given the name of her close relatives. Maybe she's holed up with one of them. Oh, I'll get right on it. Good boy. I'm going back to my hotel. If you learn anything, lift a phone. Come in, Senor Wary. Huh? You will be so good as to close the door. Oh, yes, of course. Well, you know, you can't beat these Portuguese hotels. If I knew my room came equipped with something like you... You will stop right there. Say, isn't that an awfully big gun for a little girl? I can manage. Please sit down. Oh, never, while a lady is standing. Oh, I insist. I just wanted to show you I never forget my manners. You're Maria Costa, aren't you? Yes. Ah, you've been giving us a lot of trouble, Maria. And we've been looking all over Lisbon for you. Obviously, you did not look in the right place. Obviously. You know Steve Butler confessed to his wife's murder? Mm-hmm. That does not surprise me. But we both know he didn't do it, don't we? Then who did? You. You're showing up here with a gun proves it. <laughs> you are absolutely correct. Well, I always say if two people share a secret, it uh, ain't no secret. Is that what you always say? Mm-hmm. Well, I think the problem is easily resolved. If I should kill you, that would leave only one. Hey, now, wait a minute. If there is a fallacy in my logic, Senor, I will be happy for you to point it out. I'll give you exactly one minute to try. I don't know if you've ever been alone in a hotel room with a beautiful girl, but take my word for it, it's overrated. Especially if she's chaperoned by a gun. Still, I was awfully pleased that Maria gave me a full minute to dig up a reason why she shouldn't use it. In this day and age, most girls wouldn't have been that patient. Well, senor, have you any final request? Yeah, I'd like to see Brooklyn again. Look, Maria, killing me won't solve anything. I believe it will. It doesn't bother you they'll hang Steve Butler for his wife's murder? Not at all. You were in love with him. You're being very childish. You know he confessed to Anne's murder just to shield you. And you feel I should do as much in return? It's what I would have expected. Yes, yeah, seems to me. It seems to me, senor, you have exhausted your allotted time. So if you will forgive me... Oh, no. Now what happened, Angel? The gun was fired. Let me go. Don't be silly. No, you don't. We only allow one chance to a customer. Come on, drop it. <laughs> All right, now sit over there while I phone. Ask him in. You behave yourself. This is your wearing. Ah, if it isn't Louise Machado. Yeah, come on in, Louise. My uh, visit is not inopportune. No, as a matter of fact, your timing couldn't have been better. Oh, but the lady... Uh, naturally, as a hotel detective, you'd think of that. Uh, this is Maria Costa. Maria Costa? Yeah, she just tried to kill me. I will succeed yet. I wouldn't make book on it, Angel. Certainly not with this gun. The firing pin is gone. What? Am I right, Louise? Uh, let me see. Oh, but yes, someone has filed it off. It would require a miracle for her to harm you with this. Mm -hmm. Well, strictly between us, I don't think she was really trying. You're insane. Really, senor. Don't you get it, Louise? She's in love with Steve Butler. So? So he confessed to shield her. Now, if she had just walked in here and did the same, what would have been my reaction? Well, senor... (laughs) You would have thought that she was trying to protect him. That's right. I would have patted her shoulder and told her to go home like a good girl. So she decided to incriminate herself and 
taking a shot at me seemed like the best way to handle it. No, no! Yes, yes. And being the type girl you are, you wouldn't want to see me hurt, so you filed off the firing pin, hoping it would go unnoticed in the excitement. I tell you, you are wrong. Just relax, Angel. I, I do not understand. If she did not kill the senor or butler, who did? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, Machado. Because I just happened to be prepared with an answer. Now, who knew that Ann Butler had $5,000 on her to pay a gunman? Who alone had the opportunity to follow her over to Maria's apartment and kill her there for the bundle? Who? You. Oh, really, senor? Now, now, don't be unhappy, Luis. You couldn't use that money anyway. It's not inflammable. Where you're going, you'll need money to burn. See, looks like my plane's all warmed up. Madrid, I'm on my way. Now hold it, Pappy. Oh, you don't want me to miss it. <laughs> You're not leaving Lisbon until you answer one question. I can see how you figured Maria didn't kill Ann. But what made you so sure Steve Butler didn't do it? Well, that wouldn't have been ethical. Ethical? Yeah. <laughs> well, it may happen in detective stories and uh, radio programs. But don't you know in real life, the butler never does it. Ooh. So long, Dixie. Hello? Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Virginia. I'm glad you called. Now, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is flying me to Berlin. Yeah, it seems some boy there set up a murder that's as pretty as a picture, and they figure I'll look good in the frame. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon, dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves The Case of the Careless Corpse. There's one nice thing you can say about working for Army Intelligence. You certainly get around. How else would a guy like me get to see such wonderful places like Berlin and meet such interesting people like Maxwell Oppenheimer? And just in case you're curious, Max was a cute-looking character in the tight-fitting green suit and the gray gloves, surveying the crowd at the Europa, a sidewalk cafe near the Willemstrasse. To look at him, you'd think he didn't have a care in the world, and you'd be right. Max lets the next man do the worrying. Why, Herr Christopher, imagine finding you here. You're late, Max. I could not help myself. I received your message at five o'clock. You're lying. Schnabel told me he spoke to you at noon. I never can hide things from you, can I, Christopher? Sit down. Uh, Schnabel tell you about your assignment? He started to, but I prefer to get my instructions firsthand. This way there's no chance of a misunderstanding. An American intelligence officer named Michael Waring arrives from Madrid this evening. He has an appointment tomorrow morning with Professor Heinrich Schiller. The expert on rockets? Yes would be in the best interests of the Communist Party if that appointment were never kept. I think it can be arranged. Where does the Herr Professor live? At 14 Leopold Strasser with his wife, Margot. Margot? She's an American. What an amazing coincidence. Here, Professor Schiller, a German, is married to an American. And you, an American, are married to a German. Suppose we leave my personal life out of this. Yes, of course. You are to introduce yourself to Schiller as an agent of American intelligence. You'll find all the necessary credentials in this wallet. Tell him Waring sent you around to pick him up. Where would you like to have him delivered? To the bakery in Leipzig Strasse. I'll try to make arrangements to smuggle him into East Berlin on Wednesday. I'll be only too happy to look after him till then. I don't want to hurt Maxwell. Why, Christopher, it never once entered my mind. I mean it. 
Professor Schiller can be very useful to the party. I wouldn't touch a hair on his head. Unless, of course, it was absolutely necessary. I'm warning you, Maxwell. I only meant I would resort to violence purely as a last resort. You know I'm always ready to sacrifice my desires for the party. I hope the Herr Professor will be as cooperative. Yes? Excuse me, but I would like very much to see Herr Professor Heinrich Schiller. Well, of course. I am Frau Schiller. Won't you come in? Thank you. You're very kind. Uh, whom shall I say is calling? Permit me. Maxwell Oppenheimer. United States Army Intelligence. What do you want with my husband? Well, naturally, we are very interested in his experiments with rockets. Naturally. But when he was in a concentration camp, who cared? Oh, you say that with a great deal of bitterness. Why can't you leave us alone? Everybody wants to use him. First the Nazis... Now you people and the communists. Oh, Sheila. Hasn't he suffered enough? Why don't you stop bothering him? I'm sure the Herr Professor does not feel this way. If I could have a word with him... He is not home. That's very strange. I spoke to him on the telephone, not more than... Margo? Yes? Ah, is there someone to see me? No. Ah, Herr Professor Schiller, I believe. Yes? Hi, Maxwell Oppenheimer. Your lovely wife told me you were out. Why, Margot? Because they're all the same. They're all trying to use you. They just want to pick your brains and... Oh, please, Liebson. What will our guest think? I don't care what he thinks. I must apologize for my wife, Herr Oppenheimer. But ever since I was released from Dachau, she's most concerned for me. It's very understandable. Well, Herr Waring is waiting for us. Shall we go? Of course. No. No, I won't let you. You're going to stay out of this, Heinrich. This is none of your concern. Now, Liebson, you are upsetting yourself. I warn you, if you go with him, don't expect to find me here when you come back. You're talking like a child. I mean it. You'll never see me again. Never. All right, Herr Oppenheimer. If you are ready. By all means. Auf Wiedersehen, Liebson. Heinrich! Oh, Heinrich, Heinrich. <laughs> I believe this is the one. Yes. Uh, if you'll wait till I turn on the lights. Ah, there we are. Uh, be so good as to enter. Thank you. Uh, I know it isn't much, but please try to make yourself comfortable. I... I find this very strange, Herr Oppenheimer. You don't like my room, Professor? Well, it it is hardly what I expected. You mean the bakery in France? Yes. We think it's very dramatic. Who would ever suspect such a proletarian establishment would... Where I... is Herr Waring? Herr Waring? The gentleman I was supposed to meet. Oh, yes. He'll be here in a few minutes. In the meantime, perhaps a little schnapps? No, thank you. Herr Oppenheimer... My friends call me Max. May I see your credentials? Isn't this rather late? May I see them, please? I suppose they do not meet with your approval. That would complicate matters. If Herr Wedding arrives, you just tell Herr him... Herr Professor, you're not thinking of leaving. Yes. If I've offended you in any way... Will you be good enough to open this door... I wish you didn't feel like this, because you leave me no choice. Put away that gun. It does not frighten you? No. Not even a little bit? Are you going to open this door? You know, Professor, I admire men of spirit. They offer a challenge I can never resist. Oh, never. Oh. How do you feel, Professor? Oh, I'm so sorry. I guess it proves there must be something to feminine intuition. Remember your wife said if you left with me, you'd never see her again. Well, she was absolutely right. Oh, oh. Second. Oh, 
Hello. Um, I- I'm looking for Mike Waring. Well, you picked the best possible place. Come in. Thank you. Is, is he angry with me? Is who angry with you? My husband. He should have known I never meant what I said. Uh, do you mind if we take this from the top of the page? I'm a little confused. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have introduced myself. I'm Margot Schiller. Margot Schiller? Wait a minute. You're not Professor Heinrich Schiller's wife. Yes. Well, what do you know? Sit down. Oh, thank you. I knew he was married, but I assumed it was to a German. Well, didn't your assistant tell you? My assistant? The little man you sent to pick up Heinrich, the one in the green suit. When was this? You did send someone. Now, look, Mrs. Schiller. Well, didn't you? No, I just got into Berlin an hour ago. But he used your name. There must have been a leak. You're lying. You've hidden him somewhere. No better. Well, then what happened to him? He was supposed to meet you. Not till tomorrow. He was kidnapped. Yes, I'm afraid so. Now, this man who came for him... They'll kill him. No, they won't. They wouldn't dare. Why? Are you going to stop them? Oh, why couldn't you leave us alone? Now, look, Mrs. Schiller, I know you're upset. Let me take you home. No. Please. And I promise you, we'll get your husband back. You promise me. Now, I know how you feel, but give us a chance anyway. Now, let me drive you home. I'll get to work on it right away. Is it? Just a moment. Hello, Christopher. Let us see. Huh? Professor Schiller. Oh, in the bedroom. Is he all right? But of course. We spent a very enjoyable evening. We've got to get him into the Soviet zone immediately. I thought you said we'd move him Wednesday. We can't wait. American intelligence has ordered the house to have. What's the matter with him? Nothing. He's covered with blood. Oh, I can explain that, Christopher. He he had a little accident. He what? He tripped over that table. It it was very dark. Schiller. Schiller. I think he's asleep. You stupid, blundering fool. He's dead. You must be mistaken, Christopher. Herr Professor. You killed him. No, no, I give you my word. I, I... told you not to touch him. Shouldn't have done that, Christopher. But I forgive you. You forgive me? What do you think Moscow will say about this? You wouldn't report me. Wouldn't I? Please, Christopher. I know I've been a terrible disappointment to you, but if you give me another chance, I may surprise you yet. You and your children can expect to live long thanks largely to better medicine and surgery. But you could expect to live even longer were it not for the danger of automobile accidents. If driver education could be taught in all of our schools instead of only a third of them, it might someday help to save the life of your own son or daughter. If your schools don't have these courses, demand driver education for your children. And in your own automobile, remember to drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Now back to the adventures of the Falcon. So, like they say in Time magazine, death came for her, Professor Schiller, at the ripe old age of 42. But the first I knew of it was some six hours later when I received a call from the West Berlin police. It fished a body out of the spree and they thought I might be interested. I was. Then I remembered the promise I made to Margot Schiller. And I thought if I couldn't return her husband sound of wind and limb, the least I could do was show myself. I figured to be a mighty poor substitute. Oh, Mr. Waring. May I come in? Did you find him? Yes. Where is he? You said the minute you did, you'd bring him home. I know. Well, then why... He isn't dead. Yes, he is. I knew it. I knew it had to end this way. Oh, why couldn't you leave us alone? You don't understand. I understand that my husband's dead. Isn't that enough? And you feel we're responsible? Yes, I do. He was a scientist. You had no right to involve him in cheap politics. This isn't cheap politics, Mrs. Schiller. 
or fighting people to whom decency means nothing. Your husband's murder proves that. He was killed by common form agents. Well, I promise you... You promised me that you'd bring him back safe and sound. I know, but he was dead when I said that. Now, this man who claimed to be my assistant, what name did he use? I don't remember. But what did he look like? I can't remember that either. I don't think you're trying. You're absolutely right. Don't you want to see your husband's murder avenged? It will be, Mr. Waring. But I intend to take care of it myself. And now, if you'll forgive me, I think I would like to be alone for a while. Yes? I would like very much to speak with Frau Margot Schiller, please. Uh, This is she. Forgive me for disturbing you at a time like this, Frau Schiller, but I have just read of the unfortunate death of your husband. Permit me to extend my condolences. But who is this? You do not know me, but I feel I can be of some service. Would you be interested in knowing the man responsible for the Herr Professor's murder? What? Please do not think me a crank. I'm really well informed. Your husband was kidnapped by a little man named Maxel Oppenheimer. How do you know that? Are you convinced I'm not a crank? Yes. Well, the murder was ordered by an American named Vincent Christopher. Vincent Christopher? Yes. And from what I've heard of your affection for your husband, I am sure you will put this information to excellent use. Good hunting, Frau Schiller. Operator. Operator. Your order, please. I gave my order 20 minutes ago. This is Mr. Christopher, Suite 4A. I asked you to get me Grenadier 413. I wish to speak to Maxel Oppenheimer. I'm sorry, Mr. Christopher, but that number does not answer. That's impossible. Try it again. Shall I ring you back? No, I'll hang on. Is that you, Gabrielle? Where have you been? I told you... I told you. Yeah, Christopher, is there something wrong? Yeah, Christopher. Hello, Mr. Schiller. You know, this is getting to be ridiculous, Mr. Waring. Well, I'm sorry, but it can't be helped. Can you spare me a couple of minutes? What's the point? I've already told you everything I know. Well, maybe this time I can tell you something. All right, come in. Sit down. Thank you. Did you ever hear of a man named Vincent Christopher? Should I? I hope not. He was shot to death an hour ago at the Kaiser Wilhelm. In going through his room, the police found these papers. Would you care to look at them? Not particularly. Well, they definitely established that Christopher was the number one man in the communist apparatus in West Berlin. So? So there's no doubt he was responsible for your husband's kidnapping, if not his death. I see your point. And now with Mr. Christopher's murder... I become the most obvious suspect. Yes. But this all assumes that I knew who Christopher was. Someone might have tipped you off. Who, for example? That's what I intend to find out. Well, I wish you luck. But there's one thing that puzzles me. Just what side are you on? According to you, Christopher was a communist. That doesn't justify his murder. That's one of the differences between the Reds and ourselves. So you intend to find his killer? Yes, I do. Well, far be it for me to keep you from your self-appointed task. Good day, Mr. Waring. I hope never to hear from you again. Who is it? Who is it? Hello, Gabrielle. What are you doing here, Maxwell? I just heard about poor Christopher. Naturally, I came immediately. That was very foolish. He was my friend. I wouldn't feel right if I failed to pay my respects to his widow. I'm sure he would have been happy to do as much for me. Would you happen to have a cigarette? You'll find some in that container. Ah, Christopher's favorite brand. He was so fond of them. You had better leave, Maxwell. The police were here all afternoon. They may return. But I have nothing to hide. 
I wonder if you can say as much. Huh? I have a feeling you are not overly fond of your husband. You are insane. Oh, please don't misunderstand me, Gabrielle. I don't blame you in the least. Vincent was very difficult. I remember one night at the theater when he struck you for forgetting the tickets. My heart went out to you. Don't sure. It's true. I'm very fond of you, Gabrielle. I feel I owe you a great deal. You might just as easily have told Frau Schiller I was responsible for her husband's death. What are you talking about? A very dear friend of mine operates the switchboard in the hotel here. I'm afraid she was guilty of eavesdropping. Yes, she uh, she heard you telephone Frau Schiller. If that's all you have to say. Oh, no, I have lots more. Well, I'm not interested in hearing it. I wish you wouldn't take that attitude, Gabrielle. We should be kind to one another. As Christopher's widow, you have so much, and I have so little. Are you attempting to blackmail me? It isn't as though I wanted a great deal. Fifty thousand marks would suit me fine. Get out. I think I'm being very reasonable. I said get out. You know, it's a funny thing, but your husband did that to me. Then the poor fellow was killed. I do hope you will have better luck. Auf Wiedersehen, Liebchen. Intelligence, Major Thornhill speaking. Would it be possible for me to talk with Herr Michael Waring? Well, I don't see why not. Hey, Mike. Yeah? For you. Who is it? He didn't say. Hello? Herr Waring? That's right. Who's this? I don't believe my name would mean anything to you. Now try me. I would rather not. You wouldn't be Maxel Oppenheimer. And... Maxel Oppenheimer? I never heard of the gentleman. You don't know what you're missing. I've just been going through Vincent Christopher's diary. Oh? Yes, he thought very highly of your talents. He liked me. I bet everybody does. Did you kill him? Of course not. But you did kill Professor Schiller. Oh, no. According to Christopher, you did. Oh, he was mistaken. Yes, I'll bet. Yeah, Major. Yeah? I've got Comrade Maxwell on the wire. Try to run it down. Will do. Yeah, well, I... Yeah? I hope you're not being so oh, childish as to attempt to oh, trace this call. Oh, no, never once entered my mind. There's a call on extension. All right, what can I do for you, Maxwell? Well, nothing, but uh, I would like to do something for you. Why? It's my nature. Would you be interested in the name of the party who informed Margot Schiller what? that Christopher was responsible for her husband's death? Definitely. It was Christopher's yeah. wife, Gabrielle. You're crazy. Why should she do that? Can you think of a better way to get rid of an unwanted yeah, husband? Well, you might have a point there. If I've been of any service, I'm delighted. Hello, Maxwell. Maxwell! Did you hang up? Yeah. Were you able to run it down? No. Nope. That's tough. Well, if anyone else calls, tell them I've gone over to see Frau Christopher. I hate to stick my neck out, but I'll lay you six to five. This is in the bag. Yes? Frau Christopher? That is correct. Glad to know you. I'm Mike Waring. Mike Waring? Yes, I'm investigating your husband's murder for the American authorities. Oh, won't you come in? Thank you. Please make yourself comfortable. I don't mind if I do. Can I offer you a drink? Well, being Irish, I'll take some Jameson's if you have it. I have it. Do uh, you feel up to answering a few questions? Of course. Thanks. Uh, were you aware of Her Christopher's political activities... Political activities? Mm -hmm. He was a writer. Well, that was just a blind. Actually, he was head man in the communist cell in West Berlin. But seems incredible. He didn't confide much in you, did he? No. Tell me something, Herr Waring. If Vincent was, as you say, a communist... He was. Then he was your enemy. Why are you so determined to solve his murder? 
Well, I know it sounds ironic, but that's how we do things in a democracy. Anyway, I've got a peach of a theory I'd like to uh, try on you for size. Well? Well, suppose someone who hated your husband figured Professor Schiller's death was a heaven-sent opportunity. I do not see how. Well, all this party would have to do is inform Margot Schiller that your husband was responsible for her husband's death. But who would do such a horrible thing? What's your guess? Max Oppenheimer. <laughs> it certainly is a small world. You thought of him, too? No, Maxwell thought of you. I do not understand. Oh, sure you do, Angel. You were the one who tipped off Margot Schiller, but you couldn't depend on her to do anything about it, so as the saying goes, you took matters into your own hands. You think I killed Vincent? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Well, I didn't think it was that funny. But it is. However, I would not tell it to the Berlin police. Oh, why not? Well, at four o'clock when Vincent was shot, I was at the Chancellery being interviewed by an officer named Hans Gerhardt. I wish to renew my driver's permit. But if you were at the Chancellery... Well, obviously, I could not be here at the hotel murdering my husband. Still, it was the most ingenious theory, Herr Waring. Drop by again, if you ever think of another. Most of us are now enjoying a happy Labor Day weekend. Or thinking of it, anyway. But we should always keep in mind that these long weekend holidays are often tragic times for some of us who start out gaily to enjoy them. More than 1,300 American families will lose one or more of their loved ones in accidents on the highways. Last year, when Memorial Day fell in the middle of the week and was a one-day holiday, traffic accidents cost 85 lives. But over the Labor Day weekend, which always lasts three days, the average was 153 deaths a day in traffic mishaps. This clearly spells out the difference in the traffic death tolls of short and long national holidays. At all times, and particularly on long holiday weekends, drive as though your life depends on it. It does. Back to the adventures of the Falcon. So, for the 999th time, I learned what it means to fall flat on your face. And after Gabrielle Christopher pulled the rug from under me, I picked myself up and took a stroll on Unter den Linden. When I didn't find inspiration there, I made for the nearest phone booth and dialed American intelligence. Unlike Shakespeare, I hoped there was something in a name. Intelligence, Major Thornhill speaking. Oh, Thorny, this is Mike Waring. Well, where the devil have you been? Out communing with nature. Well, hustle back here as fast as you can. We just picked up Max Loppenheimer. Wonderful. Not so wonderful. He refuses to talk. Well, maybe he needs lessons. Huh? Suppose we confront him with Margot Schiller. If she identifies him as the man who kidnapped her husband, that might do the trick. Say, it might at that. Yeah, well, keep your fingers crossed, soldier. I'll make it as fast as I can. <laughs> understand you, Mr. Waring. You think if I identify this Maxwell Oppenheimer, it might induce him to confess? It might. Well, you don't seem too confident. Well, I was originally, but now I'm beset by doubts. I can see Maxwell admitting to your husband's murder, but not to Christopher's. Why not? For the obvious reason. He didn't do it. Well, then who did? Well, that's the question of the hour. You know, we discovered who tipped you off, that Christopher was the man responsible for your husband's kidnapping. Who? His wife, Gabrielle. Well, that doesn't make sense. Sure it does. She wanted to get rid of him, and she figured if you knew his name, you'd take care of it for him. But she must be insane. No, as a matter of fact, she's pretty clever. Because that's exactly what did happen. Are you suggesting... Yes, I am. Why didn't you let her do her own dirty work, Margot? That way it would have been easier on all of us. All right, Angel, let's go. Just called for Paris Express passengers, Mike. 
I guess that means me, Major. Yeah, I guess it does. I'll bet you're happy to see me go. Well, I would have been happy if you never stopped by in the first place. Did you have to nail Margot Schiller for Christopher's murder? It was my job, Tony. Well, why couldn't it have been one of the others? Well, I wish it had been, too. But that's life for you. Every once in a while, the only decent actor in the cast has to be it. Believe me, I'm as sorry as you are that this was one of them. So long, Major. The Case of the Jack of Diamonds. The Case of the Jack of Diamonds. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcons. When Mike Waring learns that when the cards are marked, someone's bound to make a killing. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert. Written by Eugene Wang and directed by Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Leslie Woods as Margot. This program came from New York. Fred Collins speaking. Yes, this is the Falcon speaking. Oh, Carol. Now, you'll have to cancel me out tonight, Angel. Army intelligence is sending me to London. Yeah, it seems some gambler there will take a chance on anything. They want me to prove that murder is a bad bet. Once again, the National Broadcasting Company brings you the transcribed Adventures of the Falcon, starring Les Damon. The Adventures of the Falcon. Dedicated to private investigators everywhere. Those hard-hitting detectives who, like Mike Waring, risk their lives to aid law enforcement agencies. So join him now when the Falcon solves the case of the Jack of Diamonds. There's one nice thing you can say about working for Army Intelligence. It teaches you people of the same the world over. Now take, for example, Diane Halsey. Diane's the gorgeous-looking blonde at the corner table in Sherry, the swank cocktail bar in London's West End. To look at her, you'd immediately suspect something's wrong. She's not the kind of a girl you'd expect to see alone. But that's purely a matter of choice. Diane's only waiting for the right man to come along. And here he comes now. I'm sorry if I kept you, darling. Oh, that's all right, Bruce. I don't mind. Did you order? No, I thought I'd wait for you. Oh, sweet. What would you like? That all depends. When I'm celebrating, I prefer champagne. <laughs> well, then I... I guess you'll have to settle for something else. Why? I didn't see DeSantis. You didn't see DeSantis? Oh, believe me, Diane, I tried. But I couldn't do it. I knew I was wasting my time. N no, don't go. Take your hand off me. Darling, please. You're going to do as I ask. Just give me a chance to explain. I'm not interested. All I know is you threw away 2,000 pounds. What makes you so positive? What do you mean? Well, you're depending solely on this Jack Diamond. So? So how do I know I can trust him? I never even met the man. I have. Well, what's his real name? You can't expect me to believe that Jack Diamond isn't an alias. Oh, now, look, Bruce. All I'm getting at, Diane, is how can you be certain those photo stats he gave you are authentic? There's an accepted way to find out. How? Show them to DeSantis. If they're legitimate, Mr. DeSantis will think that 2,000 pounds you're asking very reasonable. Please, don't make me do it. You call yourself a man. Where are you going? That's no concern of yours. This time I would advise you to try and stop me. No, you can't. I, I won't let you. No? Well, what? Wait, I'll... I'll do it. I said. You will? Yes. When? Tonight. That's my darling. You do love me? 
But of course, silly. Now order us some champagne. I'm in the mood to celebrate. Yes? Are you Julio de Saltis? That's right. Well, I'm Bruce Graham. <laughs> hey, take it easy, Mr. Graham. I bet you think I'm intoxicated. Never. Well, I am. Well, Mr. Graham? Ever see this before? Uh, where, where do you get this photostat? In case you're interested, it's for sale. <laughs> How much is it going to cost me? Two thousand pounds. Uh, it's a lot of money, Mr. Graham, but maybe he's worth it. Huh? You want them in cash, no? You mean you're actually going to give it to me now? <laughs> you bet your life. Get away from that box. But you said... I said get away or I'll put a bullet to you. You're not fooling me. I'll open it myself. It's okay with me. Why, there's only money in here. Ah. Only money, he said. What do you expect? Well, I thought... Yes? Never mind. Count off 2,000. It's a pleasure. 500, 750, 1,000, 2, 4, 6. Oh, Mr. Graham. You dropped your gun. <laughs> no, don't. You know something? You have it on safety all along. What? In your work, you should know better. <laughs> Go on. Get it over with. You think the Sanders want to hurt you? No. Here. What? <laughs> Go on. Take. But, but... Don't be shame. Enough for your money. Where was I? Oh, yeah. Do it. Quattro. Say. And four. Make uh, two thousand. There you are. What are you up to? <laughs> That's a funny question coming from you. <laughs> I think I behave very nice for somebody who's being blackmailed. Why didn't you kill me when you had the chance? It's not going to solve anything. Your friends know you're here. My friends? Oh, you never convinced the Sanders you're working alone. So I make the best of a bad bargain. You got the money? I got the photo stand. But I don't think I want to do this again, Mr. Graham. Please, remember this, huh? <laughs> See, Bruce, there was nothing to it. He could have killed me, Diane. He could have shot oh, me. Don't be ridiculous, darling. He wouldn't dare. Not with what we know about Mr. Design. Well, I wouldn't go through it again for twice the money. How about a hundred times? Huh? Don't you see the possibilities? This was just a test case. As you pointed out, Jack Diamond could have been mistaken. Who is this Diamond chap, anyway? Don't you bother your pretty little head about him. I've got a right to know. All you need know, darling, is he delivered the goods. Now we've got Mr. DeSantis right where we want him. But you promised. I promised what? There would only be this once, that we'd take the money and go away. Oh, don't be absurd, pet. Jack Diamond made a dozen photostats and we'll sell them to Mr. DeSantis one at a time. I'm not going to do it. Yes, you will. I mean it, Diane. So do I. <gasps> oh, darling... Oh, darling, I'm terribly sorry. Did I hurt you? No. Oh, let me see. There. Feel better? Yes. Oh, Bruce, it was your own fault. You shouldn't upset me. Oh, but I forgive you. I'm sure it won't happen again. <laughs> DeSantis and Company. I'd like to speak with Mr. DeSantis, please. Who is this? Just tell him it's the chap who was up to see him Sunday afternoon. Just a moment. It's for you, Julio. Who is it, Danny? He didn't care to give his name. He said he was up to see you Sunday afternoon. Ah, oh, yeah. Do you want to speak with him? Sure. Hello. DeSantis. That's right. How are you, Graham? Fine. That's good. You're probably wondering why I call. No. How much is going to cost this time? What? I ask how much is going to cost the poor DeSantis. 
25,000 pounds. You heard me. Oh, sure. I'm just disappointed myself. I thought perhaps your first try would be your last. I'm serious, DeSantis. I know you are. Have it ready at nine o'clock. My place again? No. You familiar with Park Slope near Wembley? Eh, I'll find them. You better. And just so there'll be no mistake, I'll be driving a blue nose convertible. Hello? Hello, Graham. Who was that? Eh, just a fellow I know from business, Ronnie. Julio, is something wrong? Because if there's any way I can help you... You good boy, Ronnie. You're making sport of me. No, honest. But uh, let me ask you something. Suppose a Mr. X have papers that can make lots of trouble for you. What would you do? You mean if I were being blackmailed? I think maybe we can call him that. Well, I'm not much of a hero, Julio. If I were in a jam, I'd give this Mr. X whatever he wanted. <sighs> You're right, Ronnie. In a case like this, there is nothing to do but to give my friend what he asks for. See? I always told you we think alike. Yes? Hello, Diane. Why, Jack Diamond, of all people. Come on in. Thanks. You know, this isn't very bright of you, darling. I Graham. couldn't help myself. I'm worried, Diane. Oh, well, if it's about Graham, he needn't be. He'll behave. He's going to see DeSantis at night. No, he mustn't. Mustn't? Julio is simply furious. But do tell. I refuse to run the risk of having him discover that I'm involved. <sighs> Seems such a shame to quit now. Suppose I that... won't hear it. Graham mustn't see DeSantis. Now, are you going to stop him? Or shall I? You're not leaving me much choice, darling. But let me think about it for a little while. I'll let you know when I reach a decision. Four. One. One. Two. Hotel Carlisle. Uh, Mr. Waring, please. Michael Waring. Hello? Mr. Waring? That's right. My name is Bruce Graham. Bruce Graham? You don't know me, but... But you feel it might be worth my while if I did. Yes. I live at 427 Charleston West. That's right off Piccadilly. How soon can you be over? Well, not so fast. What's this all about? Well, it's about something you should be interested in. You're with American Intelligence, aren't you? How did you find that out? The same way I found out you were staying at the Carlisle. Which, of course, tells me nothing. It wasn't meant to. I'll fill you in on the details as soon as you get here. But it's got to be before nine. Well, this is all kind of vague, fella. I don't think I can make it. You've got to. You don't understand... Excuse me. Who is it? What? What are you doing here? You said... Hello, Graham. You said... Graham, what's going on there? We can't win a war or a political campaign or even a peace without a slogan. But it helps in a big way to do the job ahead. A good slogan makes people think. If it's repeated and repeated until it becomes part of our language, and if the thought it expresses becomes part of our lives and our daily actions, then that slogan does what it's intended to do. Take, for instance, the universal slogan, Safety First. All motorists should be sure to follow the tip of the best current slogan for them, Drive as though your life depends on it. It does. <laughs> Now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. Well, there's one thing travel teaches you. Telephone companies are the same in England as they are in America. But I had a hunch that more than the line was dead here, so I hustled over to 427 Charleston. When I walked in, there was no question that someone had Bruce Graham's number. He was lying on the floor with two neat little holes in his head. There was nothing I could do for him, so I made myself at home and looked around. Then in the corner of the room, I saw it. It being a thirty-eight Colt automatic. I pulled out a handkerchief and picked it up. That was my first mistake. I didn't have time to make a second. I say, old man. What? what? I wouldn't do that. You're tampering with evidence. I don't think the police would approve. Oh, I wouldn't be too sure. I would. I'm Inspector Beecham of the CID. Oh. 
Well, I'm glad to know you, Inspector. You're just saying that to make me feel comfortable, old boy. But please don't bother. I'm quite accustomed to this sort of thing. Now, just a minute. You don't think I had anything to do with this? My name is Mike Waring. I'm with American Intelligence. If you'd like to see my credentials... I'd love to. This is to certify that Michael Waring was most impressive. What was your connection with Mr. Graham? He called me at my hotel about 20 minutes ago. Said he had to see me. In the middle of the dialogue, I heard two shots. And naturally, you dashed over. Naturally. What do you suppose the poor chap wanted? I don't know. But it must have had something to do with security measures. He knew I was with American intelligence. Obviously, he felt the CID was hardly as efficient. You don't believe me, huh? Why, my dear boy, it would never occur to me to doubt you. Still, you must admit it's rather suspicious finding you standing over a body, wiping off fingers. I wasn't wiping them off. I was just examining the gun. Of course. Now, look, I tell you, Graham was frightened of something. He claimed he had to see me before nine. Why? Well, I can only guess. But what do you make of this note I found scribbled near the phone? DeSantis, nine, Park Slope, Wembley. You must have had an appointment to meet this DeSantis there. Well, Chab, I don't think he'll keep it. No, but I can. Now, what do you say, Inspector? Well, it might be a nice touch. Sort of a fitting memorial, don't you know? All right, Waring. You keep that appointment for Graham. And I'll keep an eye on you. DeSantis? DeSantis. Hello. What? I frightened you, huh? Yes, you certainly did. Get out of the car. Now, wait a minute. I'm sorry, I don't have time. Is that gun loaded? What do you think? I think I better get out. Hey, you're not Bruce Graham. That's what I tried to tell you. Who are you? Name is Waring, Mike Waring. I'm with American Intelligence. Oh, I'm sorry. You see, I expect someone else. Bruce Graham? That's right. Well, Graham couldn't make it. What happened? What's the worst you can think of? Murder? Thanks, DeSantis. You just won a bet for me. I had a hunch your mind would run along those lines. You understand, of course, Mr. DeSantis, that we have no desire to intimidate you. But if you'd like to make a confession, you'll find us most appreciative. You crazy, Inspector. I know kid Graham. What the reason I got? Well, I'm glad you asked me that, because I've come to the conclusion he was blackmailing you. I hardly even know the fellow. Then why did you arrange that appointment to meet him tonight? I don't arrange him. Graham does. He say he wants to see me on business. And exactly what is that business? I'm in Porto. Olive oil, wine, things like this. And where were you when Graham was done in? How should I know? Uh, what time it happened? What time was it, Waring? About 7.30. Ah, half past seven? Sure. I was in my office. Anybody with you? Just Ronnie. Ronnie. Ronnie Payton. He's a nice young boy who worked for me. That check, Inspector? Well, that's hard to say. Friend Ronnie has apparently vanished. <laughs> what do you mean, vanished? Disappeared. Perhaps you can tell us why. Well, Ronnie's very sensitive. Maybe all this publicity make him nervous. So he takes off when you need him most, huh? How are you going to know I need him for alibi? How indeed? Uh, wait a minute, Inspector. There's something that doesn't add up here. Does for me. Mr. DeSantis had an appointment with Graham. When you kept it, he greeted you with open arms and a loaded revolver. Yes, well, that's just it. Why should he take a gun to me at nine under the impression I'm Graham if he killed Graham an hour and a half earlier? Hey, I'm much obliged, Mr. Wedding. Well, you can make it up to me. Now, why was Graham blackmailing you? He wasn't. Are you affiliated with the Communist Party? Me? Of course not. Well, what other reason could Graham have for getting in touch with me? How should I know? Well, when you think of an answer, give me a ring. I'm at the Carlisle. Let me out, Inspector. I'm going home. Oh, come in, Mr. Wedding. Oh, Thanks. I suppose you think this is very forward of me. No, there's nothing I like better than having people drop in unannounced. Who are you? Jack Diamond. Jack Diamond. Well, you must be quite a card. That isn't very funny. I know, I'm pressing. What can I do for you, Jackie? Well, you might ask me to sit down. I don't think you'll be staying long. If you're going to be insulting... Yes? No, I'm not going to get angry. You thought I would, didn't you? I had hopes. You don't seem to understand, Mr. Waring. I'm here to do you a favor. Supposing I told you there's a communist cell in Paris. 
There must be thousands. Well, I can give you the names of a dozen members, all with high positions in government. How soon can you leave? Or when would you like me to? Well, there's a seven o'clock flight to Paris. And by an odd coincidence, you happen to have made a reservation for me. Well... Uh, so that's awfully sweet of you, Jackie, but you shouldn't have bothered. Now, suppose you tell me why you're so anxious for me to leave London. I told you. I hate communists. Yes, well, let's have the real reason. All right. You're investigating Bruce Graham's murder. Oh, I wouldn't put it quite that way. I would. It doesn't concern you, Mr. Waring. I demand that you mind your own business. You're going to make me? Yes. No. Why, you little devil. Let go. Will you be... Ow! Will you bite me? Will you... Now sit down and behave yourself. I could kill you for that. Well, you may yet. I better have myself inoculated against hydrophobia. If I could get my hands on you... Don't you know when you're well off? You shouldn't let yourself be carried away like that, Jackie. It's bad for your health. What time that phone? Now, listen, you... Oh, I didn't think your recuperative powers would be that good. No, and you never thought I might be carrying a gun. No. Hit me, would you? Now, how do you like that, Mr. Waring? I don't. No, you're like all the others, aren't you? You're quick enough to push people around when you're stronger than they are. But why don't you try it now? No, thanks. Yes, you're afraid, aren't you? A big, strong man's afraid. Be careful, Jackie. You're working yourself into a snip. Shut up! If you think I'm fooling... No, I don't. You'll have nothing to do with Julio DeSantis. Do you understand? If that's what you want. That's what I want. Okay. And don't think you can hoax me, either. Because I'll be watching every minute of the time. And the minute you break your word, you'll be hearing from me. Hello. Are you Diane Halsey? <sighs> That all depends. Now, if you were a bill collector, I'd be silly to admit it. Oh, you don't have to worry. My name is Mike Waring. That still tells me nothing. Well, if you want the story of my life, you'll have to invite me in. Is there any danger involved? Well, I couldn't say for sure. I am a creature of impulse. Come in. Thanks. Ah, oh, say, this is nice. Sit down. Oh, never while a lady is standing. I was just about to mix myself a drink. Will you join me? Yes, if I can have a Smirnoff martini, about five pots vodka to one of vermouth. Oh, that sounds like a good idea. Fine. Need any help? No, I can manage. Yes, I'll bet you can. Why don't you tell me about yourself? Oh, I've led a very dull life, Diane. Diane? I'm a great believer in shortcuts. Yes, I can see that. You are. Thank you. Just what is your occupation, Mr. Waring? I'm with the American British Assurance Company. Doing what? What I'm doing now. Mm, that tastes good. You mean you get paid for this? Oh, no, this is my unexpected dividend. My job is to make settlements on life insurance policies. I don't understand. Well, you see, you were engaged to a man named Bruce Graham, whom we insured for 5,000 pounds. Would you mind repeating that? Well, didn't you know? You were one of the principal beneficiaries. This isn't a joke. Well, do I look like the kind of a man who would deceive a beautiful woman... When do I get the money? Just as soon as we observe a few minor formalities. Well, by all means, let's observe them. Well, as I said, Diane, you're one of the beneficiaries. There's another, and as soon as I can get a release from him, you can cut the pie. Uh, Graham told us we'd be able to locate him through you. What's his name? Jack Diamond. You're pretty clever. Bruce didn't even know Jackie. And the inspector was right. You did serve as the connecting link. You get out. Yeah, well, just brief me on this. What was it you people had on DeSantis? Was he a commie? Are you going to leave? All right, Diane. But once a man like me finds a girl like you, you can't expect him to stay away. I'll be seeing you, doll. <laughs> well, that's a story, DeSantis. Now, have you any idea who this Jack Diamond might be? No. Look, you don't seem to realize you're on a spot. You know, they could hang you for Bruce Graham's murder. You say before there isn't any chance. There's always a chance. Now, you know who this Jack Diamond is. I swear. It's the boy who works for you, Ronnie Payton. Uh, you crazy. Look, according to your story, you met Graham for the first time last week. So? So it stands to reason that whatever he had on you came from a third party. And a third party wasn't Diane Halsey, because you didn't even know her. So Ronnie Payton must be our friend Jack Diamond. Oh, you're wrong. Ronnie's like a son to me. Why would he do this? I told you. He must have been the instigator of the blackmail plot. 
And he was afraid that if you latched on to Bruce Graham, the whole story would come out. Then you think Ronnie killed Graham? Yes, I do. Now, where is he? If your friend, the inspector, say it's okay, I take you to him. Hello, Ronnie. What? Wasn't it nice of me to wait for you? How did you get in here, Diane? The door was open. You're lying. Oh, that's no way to talk, darling, after I came clear to Whitechapel to warn you. Warn me? About what? A man named Waring. I'm afraid I haven't had the pleasure. Well, he knows about you. At least he knows about Jack Diamond. He was up to see me tonight. What did you tell him? Nothing yet. What's that supposed to mean? Really, Ronnie, this whole thing's been a terrible disappointment. No, it's almost enough to make you believe crime doesn't pay. We got 2,000 pounds from DeSantis. Oh, I'm glad you mentioned that, darling. What did you do with your share? Why? I'm afraid I'll have to borrow it. <laughs> That's not fair. You know you'd never repay me. Well, probably not. But then if I spent the money on a trip to Spain, I'd be in no position to call Waring. You can't do this to me. It's blackmail. You should know. I won't stand for it, Diane. Do you hear me? I won't stand for it. Ronnie, stop that. I can't burn. You filthy little creature. Ronnie, please. There's one type of catastrophe to which most of us are exposed many times every day if we drive or ride on the highways. Because some drivers habitually travel on the wrong side of the road. They pay no attention to the painted lifelines of the highway that should never be crossed. It's these drivers who often pay with their lives for that foolhardy act. Drive as though your life depends on it. It does. And now, back to the adventures of the Falcon. It's a funny thing about hunches. The first time I saw Diane Halsey, something told me I'd be seeing her again. Naturally, I didn't expect it to be so soon. But the credit for bringing it all belonged to DeSantis. But when he brought Inspector Beecham and myself to Ronnie Payton's little nest, there she was. Of course, she looked better at our first meeting. But then she didn't have those bruises on her throat, and that might have made a difference. What a tremendous waste of talent. Yes, isn't it? Think friend Ronnie is responsible? Well, don't you? Excuse me, please, but uh, can I say something? Why not, DeSantis? It's open forum tonight. I think the lady is not dead. Mm. Huh? My joke. Get some water. Right on. Hey, something we can do in the meantime? Yeah. Help me lift her on the sofa. <laughs> Easy. Yeah, no. yeah, no. That's the way. Got the water? Well, will you look who's here? Ronnie. Get away from me, Julia. You brought him here. I know, but... Uh, and who... What's that girl doing on my sofa? Well, I hope you don't mind. There was a draft on the floor. Who is she? Don't you know him? If I did, I wouldn't ask. Who killed her? She's uh, not dead, Ronnie. She isn't? No. But don't feel too badly, old thing. you still got one murder to your credit. Here's the water welling. Thanks. You are Diane. You've got to believe me, Inspector. I didn't kill Bruce Graham. Then who did? Diane. You know, I rather suspected you'd say that. Oh. How's the patient, Waring? She'll be all right. I tell you, she killed him. Naturally, you've got an alibi for the time. Yes. I was in a cinema in Limehouse. Oh, how ordinary. I, 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 I'm I, disappointed in you, Ronnie. But I can prove it with the attendant. You see, we had an argument and I reported him to the manager. I... But you you believe me, don't you, Julio? Well, uh, I don't know about him, Ronnie, but I do. Now, come, where is... Oh, he's telling the truth. You mean this? Uh, sure, DeSantis. How could Ronnie have killed Bruce Graham when we both know it was you? Hey, now we all know. Mr. Waring, you're quite talented in a peculiar sort of way. Why? Because I figured out that DeSantis was the killer? Uh-huh. Well, it was simple, Diane. Graham was murdered around 7.30, and DeSantis claimed at the time he was in his office with Ronnie. Well? Well, Ronnie had his own independent alibi. He was at the cinema. But if DeSantis killed Bruce at 7.30, why did he keep that appointment at 9? Well, he had to. What reason could he give for not showing up? He knew Graham was dead? Oh, that would really have ruined his act. I see your point. Good girl. 
Now, what I'd like to know is what you people had on DeSantis that started the whole thing off. Well, what would be your guess? Well, communism isn't outlawed here or in Italy, so I got a hunch he's a member of the other end of the spectrum. I suppose he was a big wheel under Mussolini. Then, as a former fascist, a lot of people might be interested in his whereabouts. You are talented, aren't you? Oh, you have no idea. I know I'm the only man in London who can do the Indian rope trick. You mean you can make a body disappear? Just like that. <laughs> you want me wearing? Yes, she's all yours, Inspector, for blackmail. Why, you rotten filthy... Oh, I'm sorry, Angel. I know exactly how you feel. Because making a body like yours disappear is a dirty trick on me, too. Good night, folks. The Case of the Strawberry Blonde. The Case of the Strawberry Blonde. That's the title of next week's adventure of the Falcon. When Mike Waring learns that when a gal reaches for the peroxide, someone is bound to die. The Adventures of the Falcon are based on the famous character created by Drexel Drake. Produced and transcribed by Bernard L. Schubert. Written by Eugene Wang and directed by... Richard Lewis. Les Damon was starred as the Falcon with Francis Cheney as Diane. This program came from New York. Brett Collins speaking. The case of the treacherous trio. There's one thing to learn working as a private detective. Planning is half the battle. For the case in point, I give you Frank Marshall. Mr. Marshall is a burly gentleman reconnoitering down the fourth floor corridor of the Belmont Building. Like a good general, he surveys the terrain as he proceeds on the mission. His objective? Apartment 4A. And a cannon in his pocket may help him to it. Just a second. Yes? I'm looking for Dave Leonard. Well, he's come to the right place. My name is Frank Marshall. So? Does that mean anything to you? Should it? I think so. Do you mind if I come in? Very much. I hope you wouldn't take that attitude, Leonard. I didn't want to show my hand out what? here. What's the idea of that gun? What's generally the idea? Pardon my ignorance. You'll find my wallet in that coat. Now what? Well, isn't this a stick-up? Sit down on that sofa. What for? I said sit down. You and I are going to have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk. Well, this is a brand new wrinkle. Since when have burglars been getting psychoanalysis? This isn't a high school. You know the lingo. I know a lot of things. Now let's start all over again. My name is Marshall, Frank Marshall. Did you ever hear it before? No. How about Arlene Marshall? Arlene? She's my wife. That's her tough luck. You don't know her? Am I missing much? Don't get gay, Leonard. I thought I was behaving very well under the circumstances. After all, it is my home. Then why did she tell me you were the boy? Why did who tell you I was what boy? That woman who came to my office. I'm sorry, Marshall. You lost me at the turn. Can we uh, run through this again? Maybe I'd better take it from the beginning. It's going to be an awful miss, Mark, if you don't. You know a girl about 5'4", brunette? I know a hundred like that. This one had the initials R.L. on her purse. R.L.? Yes. Can't think of a soul. You sure? I'm positive. Then why should she claim you and my wife are holding hands? Oh, that's me. There are a lot of screwball dames running around loose. Why should this one pick on you? Maybe she didn't. Huh? Did it ever occur to you that there may be a couple of other Dave Leonard's in a town the size of New York? How's that? If your wife's been running around, she hasn't been running with me. But this woman... I don't it. care what she said. I'm not the Dave Leonard you want. If you're lying, fella, I know. You'll do a repeat. You're so right. Take care of yourself, boy. For your sake, I hope I won't be seeing you again. I had a visitor 20 minutes ago. It's lucky you weren't home. I don't understand, Dave. Why did you go to Frank Marshall? Frank Marshall? 
Mm-hmm. You played it real stupid, honey. If there was any doubt in my mind, that purse was your initial end of it. Sure. I did go to Mr. Marshall. Maybe I was wrong. It's nice of you to admit it. But I only did it because I was desperate. It's all on account of that woman. Suppose we keep Arlene out of it. How can you be so blind? Don't you realize what she's doing to you? And don't you realize what her husband could have done to me? He came here with a gun. No. I'm telling you, yes. But he promised he's me. He promised you. What happened? I convinced him he had the wrong man. But if he finds out. Uh-huh. Charlie, you've got to leave town. Oh, don't talk like a fool. It's all her fault. She's a rotten. I said we'd leave her out of it. Do you really believe she's in love with you? Yes. Don't make me laugh. I know all about Mrs. Marshall. You think this is the first time she's done this? Shut up. Ask her about a man named Mary Schubert in Los Angeles or a Jack Powell. Oh, let's stop. Please don't let her do this to you. If I, I don't care. About Sorry, where are you going? Jack! <laughs> For Michael Ray. Any particular reason? I don't think I have to discuss that with you. You want to bet? Oh, you mean? Yeah. Come on in. Are uh, you the one that called the Falcon? Yes, but don't ask me why. Yeah. Well, it's all right. I won't bite you, Mrs. Uh... Leonard. Ruth Leonard. Well, what can I do for you? I don't know exactly. You see, my husband's disappeared. When was this? Yesterday. He hasn't been home all night. Did you report it to the police? No. Why not? Well, Dave would be curious if I did. And Dave, I take it as your husband? Yes. I know something awful has happened. What makes you say that? Well, he's never done anything like this before. Is there any reason why he should now? No. Did you ever fight before you left? No. We, we never quarreled. You must be an unusual couple. Was Dave doing anything he shouldn't? How do you mean that? How do you think I mean it? Well... He was seeing some girl. But there was really nothing to it. What's her name? Arlene Marshall. You think he might have run away with her? That's ridiculous. I tell you, Mr. Waring, something terrible must have happened to it. You seem obsessed with that idea. But I just want you to find him. Found your fear is contained. I get fifty dollars a day plus expenses. I don't care what it costs. You'll find him. You've got to. <laughs> Your wife had me in serious policy. 
And if I'm not mistaken, you're the beneficiary. You are crazy. Crazy, hey, listen, I've got a lot to sit out. We'll make it look like a whole lot of it. Believe it, it's the simplest thing in the world to erase. No. All right, if you don't want to do it yourself, we'll get some money. I don't want to hear any more of it. All right, please. Then suppose we have to get to him. Listen, No, please. not unless you're going to talk to him. But what's your suggestion? He's the only possible solution. <laughs> Let me think about it. All right, please. But I'll... Not another word. We better not talk for one night. Now, let's just relax and enjoy this. Well, what do you think of that? Well, I don't know. Well, I'm going to have to expect you on it. Looks like you didn't expect me to call. Get out. Now, where's your hospitality? If you don't get out of here, this is too What are you going to do? I'll okay. tell I've got a gun here, as you want. What? Now, please put down that phone. There must be some mistake. You are there, Mark? Yes, but what does that matter? There's no mistake. So I kind of wish there was. You're the best looking. No, Mr. Jimmy Hamilton. Jimmy Hamilton. You better watch out for me. That's pretty good, isn't it? Watch out for me. Hmm? I, uh, I don't understand. Forget it. If it's money you're after, well, I couldn't. My purse is right here on the table. Well, I must say, this is real nice of you, Miss Martin. Now, will you be kind enough to me? There's this one little old chore I still gotta do. No. She was so pretty. Well, that's my point. moment, we'll return to the adventures of the Falcon. of the Falcon. Well, like the man said, that's life for you. The first time we were Arlene Marshall's murder was some eight hours later. I was grabbing a bite at Eddie's the little diner near headquarters when Sergeant Corbett walked in. Speaking of murder, that was enough to kill my appetite. Well, well, if it isn't the Falcon. How you doing, kiddo? Just yes, easy. Mind if I join you? Are you doing any good to say no? No. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, Eddie, let me have a ham on rye with a little A1 sauce and a cup of coffee. All right, Corbett, what's on your mind? Well, can a fella just drop by for a sandwich without you getting suspicious? Not if you're the fella. You know a Ruth Leonard? Why? Mm, just curious. You're never just curious. If he asked you to do a job for her? Yeah, yeah, she wanted me to locate her husband. And did you? You know the service I give my clients. Well, maybe you can give her a little more. Come again? You mentioned anything about a woman named Arlene Marshall? Yeah. Yeah, yeah she thought this Arlene and her husband were carrying on. Well, they won't anymore. What are you babbling about? Arlene Marshall was murdered this morning. And you think Ruth Leonard did it? Nah. You're out of your mind. Ruth isn't capable of murder. You talked to the woman all of five minutes and already you know everything about it. Already I know. Where you got it? Down at headquarters. Well, then what are we doing here? Hey, what about my sandwich? They don't cheat. You're not going to put on a food bag while Ruth Leonard is eating her heart out. You've got to believe me, Mr. Waring. I didn't kill Arlene. I never even met her. But your husband did. On an average of seven nights a week. I don't believe it. I suppose you didn't tip off Mr. Marshall. Why would I do that? Maybe you hoped he would break her neck and save you the trouble. Not true. Now look, Ruth, I'm going to help you. I've got to know the truth. Did you go to her husband? Yes. Why? I was all mixed up. I thought maybe he was fighting Dave away. What happened? Dave convinced him he had the wrong man. Your Davey must be quite a boy. It was all her fault. Before he met her, he was a wonderful husband. Many kids. I don't know how she got to it. I used to use voodoo. Anyway, Davey should know, and maybe he'll be willing to tell me. All right, Sergeant, let me out. You sure you won't 
going anywhere, and I make a great smear off my team. If you don't mind, Mr. Leonard, I'll take my vodka and information space. So, you want me to tell you about Eileen? That's what I want you to tell me. And where would you like me to begin? In the customary place. How'd you meet? I picked her up one night in a bar. I say. No, you don't. It wasn't like that at all. Then how was it like? Well, I can't describe it, but at the time, it seemed like the most natural thing in the world. Come again. I didn't think you'd understand. You'd have to know, Arlene. That's what I'm trying to do. Why? That's how I hope to find out who's responsible for her murder. Unless you're convinced your wife did it. Oh, don't be an idiot. You got any other nominations? No. Let's get back to Arlene. Someone hated her enough to kill her. I know it's hard for you to believe. No, no, I can understand that. She was no good. If I told you some of the things she said, why does it? All right. She wanted me to kill my wife. What? You heard me. You know something? When she outlined the plot, it seemed awfully logical. Yeah, she is a two. Yet you were in love with her. I certainly were. Why? Can anybody ever give a reason? All I know is that when I got near her, nothing else mattered. I'd have given up everything for her. Then why did you go ahead with this plot to murder Ruth? You want an honest answer? Uh-huh. I was thinking it over. It was nice of you to do that. Well, I'm a real sweet kid. That you are. You'll have to give me credit for one thing. At least I'm honest. Poor Ruth. She never knew what a heel she married. No, she didn't. Well, where do we go from here? I don't know about you, but I'm off to see Frank Marshall. Take care of yourself, Dave. I wish I had time to. You should be. I generally have a very bad memory of the I guess I'm just lucky. Can I come in? Well, it's so happy. I won't take much of your time. I don't think you'll take any. Suppose I told you I knew who murdered your wife. Maybe you better come in. Thanks. Sit down. I don't mind if I do. Hey, it's quite a layout. I like it. I can understand why. Please, sir, get Arlene's picture on the piano. Yeah. Who took it? But there must be a reason for all these questions. Well, I met her, she doesn't look anything like I imagined. Does anybody? Well, I picture her as dark and sultry, you know, real femme fatale style. She said she looks like she might have played Peter Pan. So what does that prove? Maybe it takes all kinds to make a world. Just what are you up to wearing? It's very simple. I'm working for Ruth Leonard. Oh, so Ruth Leonard, the girl who kicked you off that Arlene was running around with her husband. What are you reading about? She wasn't very smart about it, I grant you, because she was rattled. How could she know that Dave was just another guy to your wife? Take that back. Easy, fella. You'll ruin the grave. Take it back. I'll even never look at another man. Say, who's kidding? Who? He never loved anybody but me. The police know for a fact that there was just... They meant nothing. You said you looked like Peter Pan. Well, that's what you was. You never grew up. All that running around came under the heading of good, clean fun. Get out before I tell you. Now, listen, Marshall, I know you were crazy about the girl. I gave you the idea. Oh, I'm real clever. Then prove it by leaving under your own steam. Now, go on. Get. <laughs> Very funny. 
Where's Bruce Leonard? Where's Sissy Dave? Well, get ready to release her. She didn't kill our own Marshal. But then who's dead? I'm not prepared to say yet. You're not prepared to say yet. Well, when can we expect a statement, Mr. Waring? I'll notify you through channel. But in the meantime, if I were you, I'd post a guard around Frank Marshall. Why? But unless I miss my guess, he's liable to get a visit from Dave Leonard. And if Davey ever gets to him, there won't be much left of him to protect. Did you hear that prediction? Dave, you person better watch out. You need it happen already? And exactly the opposite of the way you called it. Don't tell me Marshall beat up Leonard. All right, I won't tell you. But any time you feel like uh, setting my let me be your bookie. I could retire overnight. <laughs> Just a moment, we'll return to the adventures of the Falcon. Wide open. 
He knew Arlene was an NG type game, especially after she suggested killing his wife, but he couldn't help himself. The only way he could figure to get her out of his system was to kill her. That's it, exactly. A little drastic, don't you think? Well, Arlene had a hold on him that nothing could break except death, so that's what he gave her. He must have been quite a gal. Yeah. I used to know a girl like that. What happened to her? I don't know, but this ought to be a great time to find out. Good night, Sergeant. 